Watch me both. Test, test. Test, test. Test, test, test.
Test, 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 Test. Test. The Swiss are moving the ball around, but a bit too much in the same corner. So we had the Austrian player was able to push out and go for the ball to disturb the attacker. The Austrians could do with another forward between the ball and the goal to try and recover the ball. Um, but so far, it's a good the start at 8 a.m. is pretty early in the morning for a game. So let's see how the game keeps on evolving.
We have number 42 is very well positioned at the goal and now moves up. She recovers, she keeps the ball for Switzerland. Here we see Simone Büchler trying to attack from the top. Passes to number 10. And the Swiss are trying to attack from the bottom, now pass from the top, at pass to the bottom of the basket, now have number 26. Jackie Hayes recovers the ball, passes to the front, and we have an Austrian counter-attack. Two players immediately at the goal, another one very oh. well positioned. Gets intercepted by the Swiss players who drag her up. And now the scrum is moving back towards the Austrian half. Quite a lot, actually. Just one minute and ten seconds to go in this first half. One minute! One minute! The game is pretty even so far. Um, and actually, the Austrian national team consists of two thirds of um, Vienna players, and the Helvetia is basically the Swiss national team. So it's a rematch from this summer's European Championship, where um, Austria and Switzerland played twice against each other. It's two very similar teams in the way of playing. But I think Austria has a bit of an advantage and takes a bit more open actions, especially in the counter-attacks, they are more underwater compared to Switzerland. Like Switzerland tends to drag, to drag them up to the surface. Now we have again Sabrina with the ball, passing to Lise Schwarz. The ball gets intercepted again by the Swiss. Half time! And half time! <laughs> and it's half time break. So let's see, do we have many people here on the live stream already? Okay, 64 people watching the game, welcome everyone. So this morning we have three women's games to start the day. First Vienna against Helvetia that we are watching right now. Um, this is Group F. Coming up, we have Amaga from Denmark against Barcelona from Spain from Group G. And then Langen from Germany against Vesalis from Italy. That is the last game for Group E for this very early morning. And then we have two men's games. So the men's games will be um, the quarterfinal, quarterfinals one and two. Molde for from Norway against Stefan Berun from the Czech Republic, followed by Orcas from Colombia against Vienna from Austria. So yes, this seems like quite a, an even game um, so far. Let's see um, how they play the second half time. I reckon the teams will want to, to score. They both lost against um, Akaden yesterday from Norway. No, sorry. Austria lost yesterday against Akaden from Norway, as did the Victoria Sea Dragons from um, Australia, who are the fourth team in this group, and um, Switzerland plays against them a bit later on. So to 
the, the teams then still have to meet the ev even la level team, so to say. And um, the Sea Dragons beat Helvetia 2-0 this morning. So for Vienna, it is important to beat Helvetia and the Sea Dragons if they want to make the second position um, for like in this group. And okay. the same for Boy Helvetia. I'm pretty Do sure they, want, they really want to beat Vienna because otherwise I'm not sure they can beat uh, Akaren, which is one of, like they were the previous Champions Cup winners. They are a very, very good team and a clear favorite. And now we see Vienna has the ball. Therese here. Have a scrum going up to the surface again and pushing towards the Austrian half. The Swiss have done that a few times and it seems like the Austrians are not that aware that they get pushed back all the way to the center of the court. The ball falls out, and we have a Swiss player passing to her teammates, going directly down for the basket. But the Austrian defense is there and pretty solid. Again, a small scrum moving into the corner. The Austrians get the ball, that's only okay. Post passing the ball down. Here the Austrians we need some more support. We had just one player and the ball is going at the bottom of the pool towards the front with two Austrians player. Good morning Dragon X. Thanks for watching. The Swiss recovered the ball again from the scrum and we are there's not many players on the water. We have a bit of a fight in the midfield, but three Austrians Aus three Austrians against one Swiss player managed to come through. Have someone on the closed side and on the open side from the Austrians. And the Swiss recover the ball with it. Swim through. The Swiss are moving the ball around the Austrian basket. Um, and the Austrians kind of struggle um, to keep the ball when they are attacking or they get it stolen by the Swiss in scrums quite a lot. We have a bit less than six minutes left on this. Halftime is very, it's a very clean game. We had one free throw at the beginning, maybe a second one that I didn't see. Um, but the game is running through, not many game interruptions. That also means not many goals either. 
but it's a very even game and the teams don't don't really go in. I mean they do go in for a goal but they get immediately stopped by the opponent. Ooh, now the Austrians recovered the ball, passed to the front and get blocked in the center of the court. And again we have a scrum at the surface. There's one player trying, one Swiss player trying to swim through at, at the surface, so she didn't have anyone down to be able to receive a pass, so of course she was blocked. An Austrian player recovered the ball, but was kept at the surface, managed to pass down. And now the Austrians would need more support if they want to keep on swimming forward. Oh, they just left their teammate there. And again, the Swiss move the ball up into a scrum and push towards the Austrian basket. That seems to be the signature move. Grab the ball, push all the way up. Oh, and now we had quite a few Swiss players, like two of them coming for the basket, and there was no back, but they got into position on time. Miriam Rosny coming in, trying to push the goalie off the basket, uh, but Sabrina is lying pretty solid there. Teresa recovers the ball. Oh, she didn't see that Sabrina was just in front of her. That would have been a good pass opportunity. Lizzie gets the ball. Passes to Nausicaa, I guess. Who tries an attack. The goalie is away. We had a small gap at the basket. For a bit there. The ball is in the corner, in the close corner of the Swiss um, on the Swiss side, and the ball is down. So the Swiss haven't managed to bring it up into um, a scrum, which is good because it seems I mean it's good for the Austrians because it seems to be um, their weakness. So for scrums pushed back all the way or two way two thirds into the other way. Of Denise here trying to throw the ball down. Two Austrian players under the goalie, no back, but they got intercepted by a Swiss player. And this might have been the goal. The Teresa hasn't seen the ball, which is just behind her. Now we have a referee call. Pushing. Ole. A white free ball. I'm going to take a blue timeout. Blue timeout. So Vienna is taking a uh, timeout. We have and then free throw for holding. So we just have one minute. 45 to go on this game. Um, it's very even. It seems like um, yes, the teams, both teams are trying actually to um, to come Hi through. Sir. Both teams are trying to come through and to and to score. Vienna is a bit more aggressive, maybe, but now they got a free throw against them and there's not much time left on the clock so if um, they want to score they will have to recover the ball from the Swiss which hasn't been that easy that easy so far and um, now the Swiss have the advantage because they have um, a free throw for them.
I don't know if this player now got confused or if she is stalling. She got intercepted by a Vienna player, but managed to pass down. And now we have a scrum. The Swiss have the ball in the closed corner of the Vienna side, keeping the ball underwater. Have someone positioned at the goal, but. The defense is there and pretty solid. Again, a surface crumb. And this was like Helvetia moving the ball. Ulrike going for it, disturbing. Vienna recovers the ball, lacks some support to be able to pass the ball. Okay. Daria has the ball, passes to Ulrike, who is bit by herself at the goal. 20 seconds left on the clock. If something happens, it will need to be very quick. Passing the ball on the closed side. There's someone working the goalie, but Helvetia is making sure to have enough people there and the game is over. Ending with 0-0, zero, zero, a very even game with some intense faces. A bit too much surface crumbs um, for my taste. I know that the Swiss are very strong, phys they have some strong, physically strong players. Um, and uh, they managed to, when they were under attack at their goal, if they would get if they managed to grab onto the player with the ball, they would go up to the surface and push them all the way to the center or into the Austrian or the Vienna half. Um, happened a few times, which is not ideal for the Austrians, of course, because they managed then to get uh, pushed back and had to go back into defense from having been attacking, which is something you try and avoid. So that's it for the first game. Thanks for watching. We have um, coming up Amaga from Copenhagen in Denmark and against Barcelona in white from Spain. Yeah. Your help? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my bad. So the games cannot finish zero zero. So now we move into penalty shootouts. And here we have uh, Lise Schwarz from Vienna attacking against number 81 from Vizia. And this is a goal. That's a very strong performance by this goalie. He was on the water for 39 okay. seconds. This is a very long time to be the goal. goal. A white team! <sighs> now we move on. 14 to white against 31 or something. 37. Now we move on to the Austrian side, and Helvetia will make the penalty. 37. So 
guess this is Simone Büchler, I reckon, attacking against Denise Schmutz. Two very strong and very experienced players. This was almost a goal, but the ball fell out of the basket. I'm not sure if Denise has a full control of the ball. I don't know. She has the ball. That is, uh, yeah. Control. Control. So the, the Vienna goalkeeper managed to grab onto the ball and was in full control, so she was allowed to go more than two meters away from the basket. Um, Simona Bichla was holding onto her, but she didn't have control of the, of the ball, so it counted, and now the game is over. I reckon now the Swiss are discussing with the referee because um, they are arguing that the Vienna player was not 100% in control of the ball. But the referee has decided, and it looked also on the camera, that Denise had the ball completely in her arms and, Denise uh, and Simone didn't have her hands on it.
Blue team ready. White team ready. So the second game for today is about to start. As we said, Akaren in blue against Barcelona in white. Good morning, Berlin. Good morning, world. I uh, was a little bit late today, so I missed the first game. Thanks for Lisa jumping in. We have Amager. No, this is Akaren now. Amager? This is Amager. Oh, okay. Okay, have to get up to speed here. Let's Free go throw, into the game. blue team. Free throw, blue team pushing. So Amager in blue and Barcelona in white. And we have uh, Barcelona already in the defense because of a free throw against them. And Amager already took the position under the basket. It's very interesting because the previous game also started with a free throw very early on. All right, um, Barcelona now in ball possession uh, on the surface. Ball fell down, and we have blue number eleven rough game. So the referees free jump in really White early in this game. We can see that with a free throw and with uh, the call for a rough game. So it's already um, the second free throw, and this one is against Amager. So a chance for uh, Barcelona to place themselves on the under the basket of Amager. Here, start in the middle. Okay. Ah, the referees are uh, are pretty uh, tough this morning. Yes, and I was um, yesterday. I was for a few minutes at um, their meeting, <laughs> and they were saying that they really want to watch out that people don't get to kick the head, push on the head. So this pay special attention to rough play because they don't want people getting injured and it's not the game right? it's the games are getting more and more physical because yes. people get excited that yeah and in general like players are very strong and watch out and train also outside the pool a lot and suddenly so you have physically strong people and, and it can get rough easily or and then you have more danger that more injury risks so it's important that the game stays clean Amager is now on the basket of Barcelona and tries to push in but Barcelona does a good job here keeping them away now on the surface still in the area um, of Barcelona in the area of, of the pool of Barcelona ball in uh, Amager possession and they're coming in from the open side directly on the goalkeeper but that was just a probing just a testing and Amager is coming from the wall side building up their structure positioning themselves under the basket of Barcelona they're good moving the ball left and right yeah so this is to find uh, the right spot and to test the oh. defense Barcelona recovered the ball and mas managed to pass it down to the goalie and now they are bit at the surface pass forward but that's always a dangerous pass to to pass it down to the goalkeeper to the goalie that was pretty risky but they managed to get through and now have Barcelona trying to move the ball around the Danish basket they missing a bit of support there so they stay quite far out they're not in the three meter zone yeah they are no danger to the um, basket of Amaga right now and the players, like, the support should be to the front and lower. And not now they were lower or yeah. to the back or <laughs> to the front and a bit higher. So it's very hard then to make a pass. And they're a bit too far for where they were. And it was what happened now. Amager was uh, uh, able to interfere. And they're really fast now back on the basket of Barcelona, putting pressure there. And Barcelona is already back in defense around their basket. Ramager is raising uh, the pressure. Well right the, the shoulder of the goalie looks a bit deep. But 
Normally, if uh, there is no situation uh, where Ball there's pressure, you get line. probably a warning. Free throw. Yes. And another free throw free because... Throw, white team, ball outside the lane. Okay, out of bounds. So Amager had the ball out of bounds. I think we can hear the referees on to the live stream. Yes, yes, we don't have to uh, repeat it. The sound is much better than yesterday. We didn't have the referees half the day, so now it's perfect. You can hear them. If you need an explanation, let us know. We are switching in the chat uh, in a second. So you can uh, ask us in the comments. There's 90 people watching. Woohoo! I think along next to breakfast or next to work. And mostly of them probably are just listening because they're sitting at work. <laughs> so we have to be your uh, eyes and we try to as describe the game as much as we can. Um, because our idea is we, li we uh, deliver you radio um, over the commentator live stream. Okay, so we had a bit of a surface um, fight and Barcelona managed to keep the ball, passed it down and there was a pass a bit too far and Namager player managed to intercept it and Barcelona pu pulled it upwards again. This is a thing they do quite a lot. Um, it's a team I've met quite a lot on the water that they move on to surf surface crumbs a lot and what Amager did before is that they left them by themselves, they just had one player there, gave the ball over and, ma and caught it as soon as it fell down. So same situation as before, Barcelona is um, in uh, the half of Amager but the same thing happened as did before, Barcelona was quite far away from uh, the Amager basket and so it's, it's easier for the forechecking team of Amager to interfere with the ball play of Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And they are on a constant pressure. They have to get closer to the basket and put pressure there to pin the players on the basket of Amager and start to work there without that much interference. Yeah. And again, the player moved to the surface, but they managed to keep the ball and always get it out of the scrums they create. And Barcelona is really getting into the game now. Now we have pressure for Barcelona players around and under the basket of Amager. And uh, the ball carrier is tackled away to the surface. And Amager recovers the ball. That's the risk when you use crumbs. If the ball falls down, it can yeah, also fall into the hands of the, of the opponent. This close to the basket is really risky. And now Amager counter-attacks through. And they stole the basket. Not really. That was. That it was didn't stick their pass, uh, and there is a free recovery. throw. White team. Here, uh, free Barcelona throw was really lucky. Team. That was a dangerous situation uh, when the uh, Amaga players stole the basket from Barcelona. It looks like it was hol holding onto the basket from Amaga, or holding onto a player without the ball. But the game is quite fast and Barcelona is playing pretty well. Yes, um, they are on, on the same height of uh, awareness and I think Amager is a little bit faster, a little bit more better in ball control. But now is Barcelona back on the basket of um, Amager and putting pressure there. And like before, what we've seen, they're tackled up to the surface just above uh, Yeah, the but the thing basket. is like Barcelona is like staying in the three meter zone or slightly yeah. outside of it, they barely go to the basket. Yeah, yeah. While they're Amager that goes like that, and they spend a lot of time hanging around the Danish basket. Yeah. But the Danes go, and when they go, they immediately make it all yes. the way to the rim and to the goalie. Like we see right now, they are in the counter attack and they go directly for the basket. And, the and that was an empty basket. And the Amager player saw it. There was just a defender lying in front Blue of the. Blue team scored the number 96. Blue team scored number 96. Can you pull the team list? Yes, uh, team list is here. It's not almost unreadable. Number 96, Marie Christine Lundius. I think she's a national team player, I reckon. I've seen her name quite a few times. And this is something uh, you see in the good players. They see the situation and react immediately. There is no hesitation. You need to take the advantage you have if you see an empty basket and go for it. And yeah. she did. Uh, Amager now was going towards a closed corner of the Barcelona side. It took a bit of time for support to arrive, but now they're trying to move the ball around the basket. I had a bit of a 
holding without the ball face there. And again Barcelona goes into a scrum, takes the ball to the surface and tries to push away. The Danes recover the ball. Half time break. Already half time. That was fast. Half time. Um, and it was a game, I guess the first half was more in the advantage of Amager, of the Danish team. They had better ball control and their attacks have been team more decisive, White. more concentrated, White. more um, focused on the uh, on the goal of Barcelona. So this uh, uh, fits to what you just said uh, about the referees. Um, about the referees trying to control the, the game better and um, setting the boundaries for the players. So always in a in a tournament if, if the, the game heats up and if it gets more physical like you said Lisa the, the players get stronger um, faster especially with the new fins with the fiberglass fins the game changed in the last 10 years and uh, the speed and uh, the, the strength of the players just is on another level now than it has been 10 years ago so the referees have to be more careful have to stop um, these how do you call them situations where where it's heating up and it's getting rougher and it, you know it from a game you just know it and you play the same you react like it it looks like the Danes complain the Danish players complain that someone is slippery so now we have the referee checking for smoothness and slipperiness of the bottom of the players interesting I sent someone to the show well, maybe, you know, you have some people, like, applying lotion after the games yesterday yes. and didn't shower before getting in the pool, but which actually they should do. People should shower with soap that also Definitely. Good water quality. But it depends on the lotion you use. Some of them are really water resistant. But I only yeah, but actually... Yeah, then you shower with soap. That's what, yes. that's what you should do anyway should. before a competition. Yeah. And but mostly I, I don't know it from uh, open air contests uh, when there's, for example, the uh, Firenze Cup, um, in the open air when there is some people apply sunscreen and then you just like uh, this is just wow you're unstoppable because nobody can hold you um, i don't know it that much from uh, close quarter pools but pools but like you say if they use lotion after shower and don't shower before the game totally true yeah, but to go back to the game um, it's a pretty good game barcelona is doing well they do drag the ball to the surface quite a lot, but not as much as as, <laughs> as in some other games I've um, seen or played against them. Um, but they spent quite a lot of time in the half, in the Amaga half, but without being dangerous. So they hang around the basket, they move it a bit, but they're far enough that the Danes could easily say, okay, now we just push out and yeah. score immediately. Um. So Barcelona definitely has to step up and bring their attacks closer to the Danish basket. Otherwise, they will not be able to to put pressure on them and to to force the situation where you could score. Because the Amager doesn't look stressed. No, they spend not a lot at of all. time. Like yeah. they have a back and a goalie at the basket, but exactly. they they just lie there. They're not actively defending. And then when they recover the ball, they are very precise and counter-attacking and immediately going to the Barcelona basket. And now we have three Danish players down, four. They were directly for the, the goal. And the, 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 the correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I guess the, the Danish players are physically stronger. They look stronger than the Barcelona girls. Um, but they only have 11 here. Amager is a team that typically appears at competitions with 10, 11 players. Yeah, yeah. And, and they, they do pretty well. They do well, they're a yes. strong team. So Barcelona is under pressure here and immediately the players from Agar position themselves under the, um, under the basket 
and take up a uh, space. And now we have again a surface crumb moving towards the Amaga half. But they recover the ball. And we're on the surface. Uh, there's a the, the cluster on the surface now. And uh, back in the uh, ball is back in possession of Amagar, and they're going again for the basket of Barcelona. This is going to be a tight game for Barcelona if they don't step up now and get out of the half and into the basket area of Amagar. So now the ball is at the surface with two Amagar players just underneath the scrum waiting for the ball, but none from Barcelona. And Amager attacking again, one player going in. Support coming just behind. Attack from above. Barcelona is, is defending pretty well, but that will not be enough to win this game if they stay in this defense mode and uh, manage only to, to tackle and push away Amager. Okay, free, free throw, throw now. This right free throw again. Here, this is a good chance. Uh, the uh, Barcelona player stole, looks like she stole the basket. We have the camera view on the left. But that will be if they are fast now executing the free throw and if they but break through, they but they didn't. They were fast, but they dropped the yep. ball. The pass didn't land and it fell all the way down to the hands of an Amager player. Yeah. But these are the, the, the strategies you have to use be fast, uh, execute a free throw fast, steal a basket and go for it. That was a, at least an attempt to, to change the, the score for them. Amager is now coming in really strong in the basket of Barcelona, pushing into the goalkeeper and they are positioning themselves around the basket, really ready from all sides to score. And Barcelona, I have to admit, their defense is pretty well. Mm -hmm. Defense. Their oh. defense, yeah. yeah. Because it's not easy. You see uh, the, the Danish players all around there. Here, the pass from above to the open side, tackled away immediately from Barcelona. The ball is falling down into the hands of a defender from Barcelona, but now there are only Amaga players under the basket. The ball is dropping down directly in the hands of the goalkeeper from Barcelona. And uh, Barcelona player a little bit alone now, but breaking through into the half of Amaga. That was a nice catch. But it's dangerous what uh, the game they are playing now. And uh, they let Amaga play the, play the game Amaga once. So they really have to be aware to keep the ball more in the half of Amaga. Otherwise, they will have a, a second goal in, uh, in, in the time with all the pressure. Yes. Oh. Referee call. Free throw, white team. Free throw, white team. Looks like grabbing the equipment or the holding, head? Holding on to the equipment. Was it equipment or the head? Uh, no, it was, was equipment. I think she was, uh, the referee was showing the mask, mm. holding on to the mask. Yeah, and that this is, if Barcelona needs to be a little bit more faster than because Amager really steals these balls that are, that are uh, uh, free floating and they're they're a little bit too fast, already back on the basket, Ooh. no defense here. And uh, Barcelona is now under pressure, doing pretty well under pressure because the forechecking is trying to tackle away the Amaga players. But this is dangerous. The attacker has the ball and was lifting the goalie, but the second goalie got into position immediately. But Amaga was passing the ball around the baskets all the time and trying and passing to the next player, and next player, and next player. And this is very tiring <laughs> and stressful as a... Yeah, and they come the again and again. Duo. They come again and again in, the, in, in waves that are really well... Referee call. Really well organized. I have a referee call. I Two minutes. Oh. Two minutes. Time penalty. Probably for Barcelona. No, I guess, I reckon for Amager, if they were attacking... Two them. minutes. Blue number ah, yeah. 11. Two minutes time penalty. Two minutes. Because of what? I reckon it might have been attacking the head. Pushing, okay. attacking the head, okay. That's what, I w uh, what the referees were discussing yesterday. It looks like Barcelona is taking a timeout as well. So blue number 11, so Marianne Haidam. Um, out for two minutes. She's a very, very good player. She's one of those long-time players. Team. Time out, white team. 
So time penalty, we saw that um, in the yesterday is a good chance for a team to push everything forward and to raise the pressure because one player less is always causing not chaotic and the teams experienced teams are prepared but nevertheless there is a hole there is a player missing and um, if you attack hard if you attack put a lot of pressure in it, you can create the the gap in the defense you need in these two minutes let's see what barcelona is up to and uh, the question is barcelona we're in the second half barcelona um, can throw everything forward, but even with five players, Amaga is able to counter and to go forward and go for the Barcelona basket. And if you throw everything in the offense, you are vulnerable in the defense at this point. So uh, I'm, I'm curious how they will deal with it. It's their chance now in the second half to equal the score. Yes, and Amaga is way more precise as well with yep. the ball. So Barcelona, let's see what you have in store here. Ah, yes, they, they they are back again into their game too far away from the basket, interfered by Amager. And this is what shouldn't happen in this situation. Amager is taking the ball, taking control, and the time is ticking, um, even though they are one player less. I think Barcelona managed to get the ball out, but passed it directly to an Amager player. And, um You have to be, uh, in these two minutes, you have to be more aggressive, more um, risky to go for a goal, go into the defense and try to force them uh, to, to make mistakes, which is not easy in an, with mm. an experienced team like Amaga. And this is a, a group of three teams. We have Orcas from Colombia, Amaga and Barcelona. And um, I reckon that, no, Amaga played Orcas yesterday. So it's important for Barcelona that they um, that they win this game if they don't want to be third in the group because Amager lost against Orcas. Yes, this is an interesting uh, combination. Orcas seem to be quite strong, so um, I, I see Orcas, um, Akaren, and Langen uh, in the in the high echelon of this championship of the women. I'm curious what we will see uh, in the next games. So again, Amager is now under pressure and Barcelona is coming a little bit closer here to the basket, but the defense is wide awake and the forward checking too. So they are again in ball control. Time is ticking, 10 seconds left into this penalty time. And Barcelona didn't manage to use the time to create enough pressure on the basket to uh, force them to make a mistake and be able to score. Amager was in a uh, surface scrum now, but really managed to swim back, push the scrum all the way into the Barcelona half. Ball drops down, and we're directly at attacking the goalie again. And Amager is back <coughs> in full strength. All the players are in the game back again, six players. So this was a chance for uh, Barcelona. And uh, we have uh, one and a half minutes left in the second half, and it's going to be tight for Barcelona to equalize here. I don't see Amarga making any mistake now and uh, allow Barcelona to come near their basket again. Let's see, they ah, here we go. That could be a chance for them. Come on, Barcelona, but go in with strength. We had one player counterattacking, the support was a bit far, and the next two players were very late, and you already yes, had. Yes. You had some of the Amager players who went down to the basket and were already taking a turn, like, okay, this is They are not coming, so yeah. Have a free throw for holding without ball and for Amager. Lisa, what do you think in the last minute, in, the, in a situation like this, in ba with Barcelona, you go in with everything, you nothing go in to with lose. Everything. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I've been saying yesterday as well, if you lose 1 0 or 2 0, you're exactly. still lost. So try and score. Yeah. Even if it means that you leave your goal open in yep. the back. Amaga back uh, in the basket area of Barcelona, putting more pressure onto the basket. But nevertheless, altogether, 
Barcelona did a very good job defending, keeping Amager away. A 1-0 against such an experienced team, um, strong team, is not that bad. So it, it was a, a good game for Barcelona, but I guess they would have had a chance to be more aggressive on a mugger um, basket and not lose the ball too far away from the Amager basket, from yes, the Danish they basket. They, didn't, they spent a lot of time in the Amager half, yeah. especially in the first half time, but didn't really go in. And when Amager recovered the ball, they would swim through all the way and immediately attack the basket. Barcelona has a very good defense, very solid defense. Yeah. So they managed um, to recover the ball and push out again, went into their <laughs> scrums. Um, but there was not enough to win the game. There was not enough to win the game. You can win a game by just defending. Yeah. You can keep it to 0-0, zero zero, yeah. but if you want to win, you need to take risks at some point yeah. and go out. They, they've been in the mode where if they would have been uh, in lead, if they would have led 1-0, uh, that would be exactly the way to play, but that was not enough to win the game. So, welcome to Champions Cup uh, 2022. My name is Wolf, here from the home team Sporthofer Berlin. And next to me is... Da -da -da -da! <laughs> I'm Lisa from Graz and um, a guest here in Berlin for this Champions Cup. Yeah, famous guest. Uh, Lisa organized uh, the World Championships in Graz. And uh, quite an experienced player and uh, also deep into the background organizing team. Um, tournaments played a lot so this is what we need as commentators to have these insights and to give you the possibility to understand the game because what we think when we do the comments is uh, the people who play themselves and are really experienced they don't need technical technical or tactical analysis from us what we want to do is deliver a description for those people, relatives or watchers who are not so deep into the game and try to understand where the hell is the ball. Because I have a feedback from a lot of people watching relatives, for example, they don't even get what's happening. And we try to explain and describe what's happening, where's the ball, what they are doing in the moment. And another feedback we got uh, from the last championships commentating, a lot of people are just listening to the live stream because they are working or they don't want to spend that much time in front of the screen too. So they have their earphones and they're listening to the game, uh, to our comments. And if we can give them a radio experience with talking nonstop and describing what's happening, they're into the game. And if they hear our excitement for a special situation, they can switch on the screen and watch what's happening. Yes, I think it's you still need to describe, but also explain yes. what is not just describe what is happening, but what could have been done and yeah. why they do certain things and maybe relate it to other game faces or One other minute. games. One minute. And um, yes, to get a feeling I think a good commentator is a kind of a media player who, re who knows what the others do wrong because they do the same mistake as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, understanding is a lot because you have to understand if we are we're not criticizing, but we're like um, we're telling things that we see, so every team gets its best, and it's a high level here in the Champions Cup. Okay. And try to remain neutral as much yes. as we can. But we are excited too here. Yes. So now coming up, we have Uze Langen from Germany, the, so the German champions with a lot of national team players and um, also a few younger players as well in blue against uh, Firsalis from Italy, um, which has quite, quite a few younger players, new, new, newer players Newbies well. that are not that experienced. They some have, have they played, the, it's their first competition. Yeah, some of the uh, Italian players are really experienced like... Uh, uh, Valentina, yes. uh, Federica. Yes, but uh, this is going to be tough for uh, Italy. Langen uh, is on a high level and is one of the teams that uh, I expect to see in the in the last uh, uh, in the top level of this uh, Champions Cup 2022. So we are already on the Italian basket, and Langen is putting pressure from the close side and probing the defense. And Italy does uh, no, that uh, German player actually. Uh, um, holding, clustering around the ball up to the surface, ball is dropping down in the hand of a Langen player coming from the open side, pushing into the defense of Italy and this is, oh this is again first goal, yes 
That was uh, number 12. Logo we don't have the number list. Number 12 is Anne-Christine Rouche. Um, I think she's a goalie on the on German mm. national team. We see the replay here. The fourth she goes in. And uh, that would be the job of the forechecking to stop these attacks from on the goalie from above or from the side. That's also possible for the defender to push these players coming in the height of the uh, basket coming onto the goalkeeper, push them up with the fins. But at this point, she was too close and pushing away the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. Lange coming again in strong for three players at the basket of Italy. Yeah, so Langen have bo won both their games yesterday and Fiesalis has lost both. And then we will have later on today um, Isbjörnana from Sweden against the New Jersey Hammerheads from the USA. That's the last game that's remaining in this group for positions two and three. And that will be a good game, I think. Yes. Thank you for giving us the insight into the, the schedule because I'm a total dummy to understand it. All right, Langen is still, um, we're still at the Italian basket. Langen um, is building up uh, the pressure and Italy starts getting a little bit chaotic because there is so much Langen, um, Langen players, so many of them in the defense area around the basket. So one uh, Italian player got hold of the ball. She's trying to, 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 to hold on to the ball with her with a dare life and they're up to the surface, balls dropping down again in the hands of a uh, German player and they come from the close side. Italy is really under stress here around their basket and Langen is taking their time, testing, now coming from above. Yes, that's, you see the experience, they, they work their way from above. Yeah, the Germans attack from the top quite a lot. Um, they're good at that. So, number 10, so number 10, Anne Re, also a national team player. And so she pulled the goalie up, the back, Fefe saw it and tried to save it, but it was too late. And what the Italians were missing here was a forward yeah. to forecheck and to be between the defense and the ball. It's the job of the, the forward the, the forward defense, for checking to keep um, the area above the goalkeeper clean. And this didn't happen to you. But the, the Germans are pr playing pretty clear. They're like they're going in for the goal. I think they know that they're the best team yes, here. Yes. Yes. So it it shows they are not under stress. They are building slowly up and wait for their chances. Wide free throw. Attack equipment. Wide free throw. Attack equipment. Just when I was saying that the Germans yeah, are playing it very always happens. These are, It always <laughs> happens. You just explain something, uh, how, how you see it, and it changes completely. Uh, it happened to me yesterday many, many times. Mm -hmm. So good morning to everybody in the live stream chat. Um, hello to Colombia. Hello to the world watching. Um, please leave your comments in the um, chat. Ooh, and again, Langen, oh, that, that was too one, easy. There was a one against one, so Logo the back was there. Number eight. Um, the number German eight. attacker saw the opportunity. Here you see the replay of this, uh, and this play. And here the back went into her position, but I think it must be a bit uh, less days. experienced player. Like yeah, she, she was... If you were by yourself, you kind of try and block a bit like a penalty shootout. You can do one against one, but the back assumed the back position and also not completely glued to the to the goal. And the goalie was a bit late. But and in this case, you go on top and try to yes, defend. Yes, but I think the, the, what the way I saw, uh, I think she thought there was a goalkeeper on the goal behind her. So yeah. this is you, if you don't test and and uh, have the experience, you think. Yeah, you think that the the. The goal is safe, yeah. like that. The last game yesterday evening um, was like that. That an opponent stole the basket yes. and the back thought that there was someone, so didn't even fight it. The screen froze for a minute, so we're back in the Italian half. The Germans are moving the ball around very comfortably. We have a German player position under the backs. And uh, Langen is taking their time here. They, they are not 
really going in with everything. They're waiting for a moment, waiting for a, a chance. Nicely played here from uh, Italy, just when uh, the Langen player took it too easy. The ball was snatched out of her hand um, on the open side. And uh, Italy is in ball possession on the surface, attacked, the players attacked by two uh, um, German players. So, yeah, very well done. Ball dropped down in the hands of Italy. And now we see the first chance um, without a free throw of Italy to go into the half of the German German team. But the forechecking is relentless from uh, Langen. And I guess in, in this kind of ball control and Italy is lacking a little bit of it. They are not that secure with the ball. And what we see, yeah, they lost it. And again, counter-attack, two players under one goalie from both from Italy and another goal from the open side. Yes. It was a um, pretty good try from Italy. They pushed out and um, the problem is that they were a bit too long on the surface then. Mm. And they didn't have enough support to take the ball down again and go forward with it. And in the moment when the ball fell down into the hands of the Italian player, they should have secured it in the corner and built up. But it was, you see the insecurities of not experienced players in this moment. And this is uh, like, uh, uh, Germany would say, gefundenes fressen for the uh, German players. <laughs> I don't know the translation of that. Uh, it was a gift, basically. Yeah, a gift. No, uh, uh, white river. So, vielleicht auch... Um, no goal. We start with a white free throw. Oh. No goal, white free throw. No, no goal. goal, white free throw. We didn't hear the explanation here. Uh, maybe pushing without a uh, ball. That's the, the most common um, explanation with, for not giving uh, a goal. Hallo auch uh, an die deutschen Zuschauer, die jetzt hier für uh, Langen mitfiebern. Hallo aus Berlin. Um, es ist grau, regnerisch, aber relativ warm hier. Und äh, wir sind hier im Champions Cup 2022, der erste Champions Cup ähm, seit Beginn der Pandemie. Und jeder hier ist so froh, dass wir wieder ähm, uns alle sehen können. So we're back. Uh, no, we're not back, but we are at the basket area of uh, Langen. Haven't been here a lot in this first half. And Italy is doing it now right there, coming from the closed uh, corner trying to get into the defense area of Langen, but not really putting pressure or stress into the defense of Langen. They are too experienced to let them come close. Yeah, and you see here you have Italian players, they come one and then you have a second yeah. or a third, but you don't have this sustained wave of attack of two, at least two to three players coming down all the time and rotating. You have one player by herself and then a second one coming, getting the ball, but then the second one is by herself as well. So th they cannot score against the German against the Germans yeah, like you that. Have to, you have to go really in with a lot of player. You have the ball has to be moving fast to, to outplay uh, uh, experienced defense like uh, the one of Langen. Even a, even a not very experienced defense, yeah. if you have one player by, uh, by themselves, it's they're easy to catch. So and Langen again, Putting pressure on the basket of if Italy, but Italy managed again to catch the ball and go away. Virginia number 10. Oh, it was Valentina who got the ball and swam out. Valentina, one of the real experienced players here um, in the Italian team. Ball fell down, was out of uh, the playing area. It looks at like one of the players has like... One arm, yeah, she has her arm tamed under her... Uh, um, is this Kalindi with a uh, GB shirt? They could she only plays with one arm, which is totally tough because your whole movement pattern is uh, difficult. Again, yeah. Langen under the basket of Italy. And they have a lot of time here building up uh, their their positions. But Italy is... Oh, they dropped the ball, fell down and had number five seat immediately uh, but yes. they, ma they managed to recover it and the Germans recovered it and now as the as the back went for the ball there was no more back at there the goal and the goalie the was the, her the goalie was a little bit up looking for the uh, but here you see she's coming up and turning yeah. around and try to see yeah, look to the other side too late and there was a huge gap used by the German player and she scored
So we're in the middle of the pool. Half time. Out to half time break, three minutes uh, break. Well, Lisa, I'd say um, Italy does its best. They're um, learning in the, the new players, I guess, will learn a lot in this uh, championship. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what you, you have to take out, what you can from these games where you will lose. They will lose against Langen. But nevertheless, what can you take out of it? Yes, uh, they're doing a good job. They're doing the, the best they can. Uh, they're not playing bad. It's 4-0 it's at halftime, which is not bad. No. You, you know the level difference. Yeah. Uh, no, they're doing a good job and they're trying, they're going out, they're not only defending. No. They're, they're really trying to go in. Then they're lacking the support sometimes, the uh, coordination, but it's not a gifted game for Langen, for sure. Yeah. And uh, Langen really, um, if they are to take it too easy, I'm sure um, Italy would be up for it. If they see a chance at the basket, if Langen really makes a bad mistake, Italy will be up for it. So it's, it's not like uh, um, Langen can, can just uh, take it easy and ignore Italy. They have to control the game, they have to be awake, and they have to play their game, which they do. So um, my bet is uh, we will see some other goals from Langen, but Italy will try to at least score once. So Langen has to be careful. I think so too. Hello from Berlin for those who are just uh, switched in or uh, coming into the live stream. Buongiorno, ciao to Antonio. Buongiorno to Underwater Gabri number two. Do you have also Underwater Gabri number one? No, it's Gabri has number two. I know. <laughs> I'm very confused with the cap numbers here because uh, they have some cap numbers that are not the ones on the list. Yes, this happens, uh, sadly this happens a lot here. The list is not always correct uh, to the numbers of the players, but uh, well, that's what it is. So like I already said, uh, this is uh, the first Champions Cup in a, for a long time and uh, I talked to uh, the Italians, to the Colombians, um, and a lot of other team uh, leaders and players and everybody is so happy to be back here in Berlin and to feel this normality of underwater rugby, of the underwater rugby community coming back again. And the Champions Cup in Berlin is a big part of it where the um, underwater rugby community comes together every year to exchange ideas, to talk each other, Six to players, to network. It's so important for us and the whole community. Mm -hmm. We're happy to be back. Teams ready? All right, we start in the second half. Langen uh, in ball possession and already quite forceful with four players on the way to the Italian basket. And Italy managed to tackle away the first wave, second wave coming in. Oh, this ball was snatched away. That was nicely done. Here the, the German player was a little bit too easy with the ball, not expecting Italy to go in between. I had a bit of a frozen screen, but um, for now, that's <laughs> last thing we saw was a surface scrum swimming towards the center. Yep, uh, we're, uh, yes, we're back here. Okay, they're still in the center of the court, but Langen moved the ball underwater again, and the back was not very solid in her position. Low goal by number eight. And the two German players number were eight. able to pass the ball Low behind four. her back and score. This is a risk when you're back, you really need to be very solid. Oh, okay, the blue. Yeah. Number, number six, the attacker was able to score immediately by herself. Um, the backs the against a team like that, if you're lying with your just your arms touching the, the, the goal as a back, this is too risky because yes. they can pass behind you, they can move yeah, you very easily. I agree. Easily. In, a, in a game like this, I would tell my defense to be close as possible to the basket. You really have like your the back of your neck, yeah. like your shoulders yeah. touching the, yeah. the goal. Yeah, I agree. As a defense player, um, this is what I always do. I have to, 
have contact, close contact to the basket and check for my goalie if he's on the basket. If not, I will take the position, I will take a different position, more defending yes, or blue goalie. Free throw. Blue, f blue free throw. It sounded like out of bounds, right? I think that's what you said. Uh, blue free throw. He didn't check it. I was trying to find my word. <laughs> okay, Italy Please goes in go uh, defense position. Langen go is uh, getting position for the free throw. Like this, like now you see uh, number five. I think that's Marge uh, lying at the goal. That is how you lie as a, as a back. You're not allowed to swim in in the two meter. You're just allowed to swim out. Blue free throw. So there's an area. Uh, around the ball carrier who is executing the free throw and that's about two meters and you're not allowed as a as the opponent to enter this before the free throw is executed. So Langen is back again wide uh, positioned around the Italian basket ready to go into the the scoring mode but Italy managed to tackle away the ball they did that a lot, actually, and I'm uh, pretty surprised they had so many Ball chances to surface. take away the wall. The ball. Blue free throw. That's the risk then when you grab the ball and make a scrum and bring the whole player away, and white. ball up to the surface. Then it can be that it goes yep. um, a bit out, and there might be a bit of tolerance if, like, it, if you just see it at the surface by some referees. But I reckon the referee oh now is that like that wants to penalize all the, the surface crumbs. I would have said the number seven pushed in this case. She was like, yeah. yeah. Holding. Holding. Okay, I would have. White free throw. I would have said number seven Holding. pushed the goalie up. Pushing on the goalkeeper. Pushing yeah, on pushing. the goalkeeper. Yes. White free throw. So <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> Holding and pushing. Thank you, Antonio. Um, thank you for uh, um, giving us feedback for the comments. Appreciate it. And uh, yes, please give us feedback uh, in the live chat, live stream chat. Oh, the ball dropped down, and now we had a Langen player who saw it immediately and went and started a counter attack. But we have a good defense on the Firsali side. What I love, Lisa, is to see these teams growing within the championships. Um, Italy, from compared from the first game to this game, they are grown. They have grown and they are getting oh, better. Look, the German players tried to pass the ball around the basket. The back got it for a minute, but it still dropped down. And so they ma managed to move the ball. It went close side up and then back down to the open side, which is for the back and the goalie quite tiring because they have to turn and yes, to follow where yes. the ball is going. That's what you try to do if you attack. These 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 attack patterns mm -hmm. have to make the like the the best do it. The, the Colombians they make yes. them dizzy. You, they make the defense dizzy. So the Italians had recovered the ball, but uh, it fell ah, again. Yeah. Went into the hands of the Germans. And on the second wave, they managed to score. Right now, there was Blue three players against nine. just the goalie Blue by herself. Nine. And that's a good situation. The replay, you see it. Langen is not forcing. Um, the the goals with everything they have, they are just waiting for the best chance, for the best position, like in this. And uh, the goalkeeper of Italy was not aware of the player behind her, and so it was easy for her to lift up her neck, her head, and put the yeah. ball behind Langen her. Langen also moved the the back out of the yeah. way, and th I'm again, there were again they were um, lacking a forward there for the forward checking and to yes. help keep a distance between the ball and the defensive player. Yeah. I think to interfere with uh, the, the attack strategy like Langen, you need to have experience and not only react. If you only react, you're lacking behind against a team like Langen. You have to have an idea what is happening and go one step forward, not only reacting and be already there where you are needed. That's really difficult, that's experience. And you only get it from playing a lot. Yes. So Langen is uh, quite relaxed. Uh, we see Kati Velo here with uh, the number 10. She's, uh, I think it's Kati. No, Laura Büchner, sorry. This is Laura. Um, 
Time out over. Kati is number seven. Kati is uh, Kati Velo is the national uh, Ready? team, team coach. Uh, coach of the German national team. She's also playing um, here in Langen. Well Ball is dropping down again here in the start. And yep, Italy has to step up its ball control. Definitely something they have to put on the list training at home. But they have three or four players that have played maybe one competition. So that yep. they're yeah, not yeah. doing bad for Absolutely. like so. Yes. Um, such a small pool of players are doing well and then their experienced players are there really to organize and the game and see that things keep a certain order and react to some situations last minute where the newer players maybe didn't anticipate. We're uh, back at the Italian goal and uh, the Germans, German players are there, but again, the forwards are grabbing them up and pushing them to the surface. Thank you, Anna, for the feedback. Yes, uh, we have Kati here on the team list with the uh, number seven, but you are right, she's not in Berlin. I just see her everywhere because she's so fast. So I always have an expression when I see a German uh, team or Langen in the water, I see Kati everywhere. Happens to me if I play against her. So I'm sorry about that, Anna. Thanks for the correction. Okay, so we're now in the close corner of <laughs> the Langen side. The Italians were trying to move the ball, but they made a bit of a risky pass. And referee called free throw for blue for holding without the ball. I, I reckon the player who the Italian player who Blue dropped free throw. Who lost the Blue ball free throw. Was might, still have holding on. might have yeah. grabbed onto the player. Yeah. White player move out. Ah uh, she was too close, She's like too a close two again. meter uh, So you need to keep when there is a free throw you need to keep a uh, two meter distance to any side and to the bottom as well yes. from the ball before the free throw starts. Oh a German player has stolen the the basket but the Germans are not very close so far let's see how long she can stay there looks like the Italians have recovered the ball but they're fighting for control have a scrum again that is moving to the surface and the Germans, it looks like Langen managed to push the scrum a bit back uh, towards the Fisali's goal. Um, the ball dropped and now we're fighting for control again. Langen gains control and swims directly to the Fisali's goal. The back managed to kick the ball away. We have uh, one minute left here in the second half and th this is the game of Langen. It was not a big effort for them to win. Um, so there was a warm-up for the games coming up for them. And Italy uh, got a, a, a lesson here. Um, we see Langen again pushing into the defense from the close side. Um, but like I said, they are not working this hard. They are waiting for their chances. S look where the, the gaps are and go in. Um, when there's a nice possibility. Oh, the Italians had the ball, but uh, <laughs> it slipped out of the player's hand and bounced against her leg. Langen going in again with one player, second one getting the ball, moving around the basket. And they scored, they found a gap next to the goalie's head. So it was again a goal from the top. A German favorite. see the replay here. No, the goalie was not 100% on the goal. It looked a tiny bit like shoulder and basket, but then yeah, so but number but 10, she she dragged her up a yeah. bit and created this way uh, enough space, yeah. a gap big enough to shoot the ball next to her head. And this is something you, you cannot do, for example, with my, uh, 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 with Lorena, my, my uh, life partner, uh, partner for life, love of my life, um, because you, you what she does is like uh, if you try to get hold on her, she's pushing away your hand with her hands. Even she's if pushing you get away a, you. Uh, what you could do as a goalie, if you get pushed like that, is then if you you know they have you, you put your arms to try and cover the the goal yep. maybe so that the ball cannot go. Um, yeah. Let's hear like the the goalie when she got 
pulled up. Yes. Her hands were fighting, trying yeah. to push a player away. But when they're so close, maybe put your hands up. Yeah. And, <laughs> and she was not really like um, taking hold of the hands of the, the other player and pulling them away. You, you always have a chance to react to these attacks. But she's, I guess she was lacking like experience for these situations. Yeah. We see now the replays of the scores. And that, uh, yeah, solid win for Langen, not surprising here. So that was 7-0, and for that we now have the full um, group, what group is this? Um, full group E, so, no, Langen is first, and Fesalis is fourth, and we still need to know for the positions two and three, Ispirnana and the, the Hammerheads heads. need to play against each other. Okay, game uh, coming up now. Um, interesting, Molde against Triton Barun, so uh, Norway against the Czech Republic. Yesterday we saw Molde um, having, let's say, an easy day. Um, not real challenges uh, in the games they had. Triton Barun was facing the Colombians, we see right now, we were, were facing uh, the Diorcas, um, which are uh, warming up right now here in the pool area. And uh, they lost against uh, the Diorcas. So Triton is facing another one of the high, uh, of the top teams here in this Champions Cup 2022. And this is going to be a tough team for Triton Barun. I'm curious uh, how they react to Molde. Uh, I talked uh, and then I commented um, on the game uh, Berun, uh, Triton Berun against the Orcas. And uh, Lorena and I, we agreed uh, the, the Orcas were just a kick too fast in their ball playing and swimming for Triton Berun. Let's see how the more physical game, probably the physical game of Molde will correspond to the game of Triton Barun here. They know each other, they played against each, uh, against, uh, each other. And this is going to be an interesting game. And we will see kind of uh, the strength Molde brings to this Champions Cup 2022 here in Berlin. Referees getting ready in the water. We always have uh, teams coming in and out here, warming up uh, outside, running around uh, the pool area on the outside. So there's always a lot of movement in the pool area around the, the pool. And you see teams coming in and out. It's a uh, come and go because the, the air here in the pool area is not the air you want to have to recover from a game. So the teams leave the pool area as fast as they can after they played and come back, let's say, one game before they have to play themselves to warm up again, to warm up in the water. Um, here we see Manuel and Kaiser, two of the referees. Come on, Manuel, do something, dance. No, he's not dancing. Kaiser, dance. No, Elma, this is uh, one of my uh, uh, team, the, the guy sitting in front is uh, Elma. He's doing the referee table and Carl next to him. Um, also very important to help here in the Champions Cup, the guys who are taking care of uh, referee table, of checking everything, technical stuff, uh, rearranging the cameras, putting back the lines. All this has to be done by the free help of the people here in the Champions Cup. Big thanks to them for all the work they invest. And uh, the referee on the service is uh, Robert um, from Austria. And in the water, I'm not sure, uh, Serkan. I, no, this is uh, Horus here on our side, on the open side. On the closed side, looks a little bit like uh, Birgit Lütke. Teams get ready. So here we go, game starts uh, and uh, Molde in ball possession trying to get over this uh, bulk of people m uh, f uh, p p coming together in the, in the middle. They try to do the, what they did before, 
kicking in in the first step to, to reach a goal. Didn't succeed. First wave uh, was shattered on the defense. Second wave didn't make it. Third wave coming in and Triton Baroon is up for it. This is really good to say because Triton Baroon knew what was coming and they were prepared and they are defending massively and we have now a fight one-on-one -on -one and uh, Mold is still in ball possession and they're building up their second attack uh, pattern coming up and there's multi players left and right off the basket of Triton Baroon and it's uh, tough. This is really tough. Well defended by Triton here in the first attack wave. Are you excited, Lisa? I am. I'm very excited. I really like um, Triton Baroon as a team I've played against quite a few times and they're it, I think physically the two teams are pretty yes, even. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I'm so curious. There's a big Czech guys against yeah. big <laughs> Norwegian guys. And, um, Very well done so far. Um, it's not like Trichon was able to leave their own basket. Uh, the, the ball possession, ball control of Molde here is, uh, oh, like oh I say, they I say it. Yeah. <laughs> they just dropped the ball and Trichon uh, had the ball, was trying to go out. They were lacking um, passing opportunity, like some support. Now the back into defending. I like the fins with a smiley face on them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Lorena has written stop on her uh, fins. That's also <laughs> That's funny. A good one. So now the ball is in the close corner. Um, and this is demanding for Trito what they're doing. And another attack from the open side. Very well done by the goalkeeper. He changed his back away from the attack uh, while being attacked. Very well done. Um, uh, impressive uh, defense here from Triton. Question is, can they hold out, hold it up? Can they keep it up the way mm -hmm. they do? Yeah, and I think both teams have um, so older players. They both have players in their early yep. 40s. Yep. Um, so very experienced players playing for 20 years, yep. 15, <laughs> 25 even for some of them. Oh, Triton gets the ball ah, and we done. have a player... <laughs> Trying to push out, but missing a bit of support, fighting. And uh, the four checking through. defense of uh, Molde uh, stopped them at once. But now we are in the Molde half, and Triton Baru has his first chance to attack the basket of the Norwegian players. It looks like Molde kind of let him them pass through and went directly to the basket. And we oh have a referee, the referee call. Referee free throw against Molde. Call from, oh, call from above. Interesting. What could that be? I think that the deck ref has deactivated the microphone. Let me try and check if we can change that. Anna says, uh, hello, Lisa. Hi. She says hi back. OK. Triton Baru still in ball possession and Ah, now they lost it, and this is what's so dangerous about Molde. These super fast attacks, these counter attacks, yep, and they made it. They, they, they came in with such speed and force and overswam oh, the, the defense, uh, the four checking defense of Triton Baroon, and they reached the basket before the goalkeeper um, with two players. This, this is, uh, wow, that was fast, and this is the danger. They, they keep you. They keep you in the area, let you play, and when they have the chance, they uh, snatch the ball, and the counterattacks are deadly. Yes. It was a bit the same with the women's game before with Amaga. Yeah. It was a bit the similar thing, like, okay, let them hang out around the basket, and when they get the ball at the very bottom of the pool and going through to the basket and score. And uh, the, 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 the Molde players, the, they're switch from defense into offense is needless, seamless. It's it's one thing. and uh, but, but Triton is working very well together. The players also know yep. each other very well. Oh, that looked like a goal, but fell next to the basket. Triton gets the ball again. Robert Pollack swims with the ball. And uh, this was the, 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 for the first five minutes here in the first half, that was the, the first goal for Molde only by this super fast counter attack, but they didn't succeed in scoring. Um, Watch while your working elbow, on the watch basket. Your elbow. So you have a warning, watch your elbow. Wide free throw, rough fling. So the elbow of a multiplayer was uh, moving too, uh, too close to dangerous body parts of the Triton Baroon player, so they got a warning. 
Tree Tomb Baroon now back in ball position. And it's the, the, the Tree Tomb Baroon can deal better with the game of Molde than they did with the um, uh, Orcas. Again, fast yes. counterattack. Very fast counterattack. The goalie made it on time. Back was a tiny bit oh, late. Completely holding, holding oh onto oh the basket <laughs> <laughs> with closed fist. That was uh, holding but not uh, under pressure and Molde is coming in from the um, closed side. But the, the, the defense, interfering defense is pretty good. So Baroon, Tutorian Baroon players are uh, very good interfering. Another goal because goal the from pressure above is so it high. It looked like it really came um, on the side of the, of yeah. the goalie's head. Goal blue team number 47. But nevertheless, amazing defense work by Triton Varun here. Um, but the pressure is, is very high, and you see the cost. Like I said, can uh, Triton Varun keep it up? Yes. Um. Oh, they passed the ball down, but uh, the other players were not there. Still have the ball. We have here yeah, Pollack going from for the goal. But as soon as the Beroun players get close to the Molde basket, you have um, four Molde players yes, on yes, them. Yes. They get swarmed. It, it feels like all of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally right. So uh, Beroun didn't really put pressure on the Molde basket. And if they lose the ball like they, oh, oh. they did right here, the the penalty yeah, counterattack uh, is coming so fast. Now you had uh, <laughs> the Beroun player kind of held onto the fence. <laughs> Holding. So it's a free Blue throw against Triton Baroon. Holding. Yes, because he tried to hold the player. I think he slipped and then yeah. it got the what fence, got the fence yeah. and one player and lost uh, the fence. For those who don't know it, you're not allowed to hold on to the equipment of uh, your opponent. Yes. So Molde is at the basket again, trying to attack. Wave after players wave. Wave after wave. You have one, two players coming and they make like this tiny corner in the yeah. side and then yeah. it, they kind of secure this corner and can always come through and secure a passage. This looks like holding onto the head. Yes, I would call that too. I then would call... Like struggling, strangling or... Because uh, he was really holding onto the head. Yeah, yeah the they're with making the signs. Yes, yes here yes. we go. White yes. free throw, yeah. attacking the head. Yes. White free throw. Would have called it too. That was too obvious and too Why too long. Because yeah. he was really holding yeah, his yeah. head onto his uh, his chest. Yeah. yeah. So here we have Birgit Lütke on the closed side, uh, Odo Sepulveda yeah. on the open side, and Robert Klock as a uh, deck referee, I reckon. Yeah. So Molde is uh, controlling the game. Uh, they uh, can play their game, um, but. Triton Baroon is not only reacting, but this these mistakes getting punished this fast if you lose the ball in the middle of the pool. Uh, Molle is too awake to let that uh, slip. And I think there is two things as well by now. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so one, one against uh, one. There is. I oh know, no goal. It oh, looks he like was holding on to like the holding. basket, yeah. Seven. We no. see it now, yeah, he comes in. Yes. yes, yes, he was holding he the ring like with his whole ring. arm around. Yes, uh, he kind of ring. grabbed, left it, but still it gave him yeah. an advantage, no especially when you're trying to yeah. get holding closer. Yeah. Wide yes. Interesting, uh, these the high-level player throw. make this mistake because it's it's uh, uh, you you invested your energy in, in scoring and uh, you don't get the goal um, because of this mistake uh, holding onto the basket. Yes. Interesting. It was a very good game, and um, what I'm noticing now is that Mold is very fast and can keep it up physically, and that they have the condition. Yep. The Czechs kind of like the condition by Blue now. It's been they've holding. been defending a lot yes. at yes. the beginning. Oh, okay, holding. You see the cost uh, in the defense work Triton Baroon has to invest here. And yeah, especially on counterattacks, the um, assist is a bit late, like support comes a, yeah. a bit late when um, you have the goalie, but the back comes a bit too late. When they go out, the support is not here all the time, or yeah. when they finally make it to the Molde side, um, they lack another player or yes. two and yes. to be able to build up waves. But it's a very good job. Someone kicked the camera. Oh no. 
Okay, we have to uh, say tell that. I go, you go tell. Yeah, you can keep on talking. Take a tiny break. <laughs> keep on talking. Yeah. Yes, a very good game, and we we saw the the level of Molde here in the Champions Cup. The top players uh, of Molde um, in the water and up for it. So really looking forward to the other games of Molde, especially. Um, Probably we will see Molde playing against Malch or uh, the Colombians, the Orcas. And this is going to be the uh, interesting games of this uh, Champions Cup. And what what I just see is Triton Brune, they, they play a very good game here, but they are lacking a split of a second behind Molde in their game of passing the ball so th it takes them a second to pass from one another and a lot of these passes are interfered by the very fast very um, into the game focused into the game all the players who intercept and interfere in these uh, passes so it's a very good game and uh, Molde is up for it I'm looking forward for the second half now Triton has uh, three minutes now to recover. And I don't think they will change a lot in their uh, tactics. They're doing a good game here against this uh, superior team, I'd say. And they do their best not to be overrun, which costs them a lot of energy. Yes. Hello, Lisa. Hi. The orcas kicked the camera one more. The orcas kicked the camera. <laughs> they fixed it. The orcas fixed the camera. <laughs> yeah, it happens really easy. The cameras are uh, behind the second line. You can see here. They're just underneath the line, yeah. kind of. And, uh, and it's easy if you uh, swim there or even for the referees uh, sometimes. No, the, 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 the referee is not really because the referees are really in the field. Yeah. But for the people warming up, yep. can be if people are watching the game. Teams get ready. So second half coming up. Uh, Triton Baroon. There's a blue team warning for exchange. Just get into the water if the other guy is out of the water. <laughs> okay, Don't so get into early. That's a warning for the blue team. So Mold team morning, the Mold is jumping it too, Don't too fast. Hold on, on the basket whenever you land the basket, okay? <laughs> it's so funny because if you're a high team top ready? team, like uh, Mold gets warnings and the, the guys from Mold just look at each other. What? Yeah, but this, this pool is tricky because you have a, yep. a high um, uh, side. So to switch out, it's always a bit tricky. So... Uh, Kickoff, uh, Molde got the ball and is attacking the Berun basket. The we had a bit of an empty basket for a minute there. Oh, a few seconds. So. And referee call. Already a referee call here. Free throw against White Molde. Watching. 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 Okay. Yeah. So one of the player was was pushing in between uh, the defense. So Triton does uh, what they did before, um, doing their very solid uh, defense and try now to use um, their advantage with the free throw to go into the defense of uh, Molde. But uh, like before, they are uh, losing the ball in the defense area from the throw checking of Molde really fast. And we have uh, another fast counter attack from Molde into the basket area. Of Trichon Barun. Oh, this this took quite a while right now for this uh, Molde player to get to, to, to get to his teammates. His teammates didn't make it in time. First time I saw this much time passing from the first to the next throw. You had a player who tries the number 11, oh. tried to uh, push onto the back of the goalie, but got intercepted and they didn't have support down, so the b ball fell down into the hands of the Berun back. And looks like we have a surface scrum and a call by the open side referee. Eight minutes left here in this first half. Free throw for Rafael. Wide free throw. 
or punching. Holding, white free throw, holding. No, okay, and the free throw was roughly. executed quite fast. Berun is in the mold the corner, trying to move the ball, but Molde is not letting them get too close. Oh, they got very close to the basket, but couldn't really pass to the player positioned under the goalie. And a pass onto the hands of a Norwegian player who fumbled, went back into the Czech hands. And now let's see if the, if the Czechs can keep on building those waves. And they were doing pretty well in this uh, attack uh, sequence to c hold on to the ball and at least uh, trying to get closer and closer to the basket, working their way into the defense area of Molde. Mm. And then they lost it. And we see this fast counter attack. It's amazing how fast very, they switch. Very, very fast. And here the checks are... One. The goalie is doing an extremely good performance for that he was by himself for three, five seconds. Yeah. Defending yeah. against three Molde players. Goal, blue team number eight. So quick feedback here uh, in the comments. Jens uh, Rasmussen is asking if we can uh, update uh, the result list. I was asking uh, Winner that. He said he did. I will ask him again. They, they um, are updated for the games that play this morning at least. Um, so we see on the website, you can see if you go to the, the website of the Champions Cup, you can see all the games until um, 4 p.m. today or uh, 3 p.m. today you can see them you can see the schedule and uh, back at the basket of uh, Molde Trichon Berun again keeping holding on to the ball under heavy pressure from the four checking uh, defense of Molde and uh, Triton does not really get that close to the Molde basket, they are keep they are kept at distance um, from the the four checking is relentless here from Molde, and they don't allow them to 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 dug into the defense area of the basket. But the checks are really trying to go in, and they're yes. they're not giving up. They're not just defending, and they're uh, really going for it. Molde in ball possession again, uh, call from the referee. Holding without ball, free throw against Molde. Wide free throw. Oh, and holding, wide free throw, holding. It looks like number 13 from Berun is back in the water. Robert Pollack, I think that's him, who just got the ball. He's his top, top scorer in the Czech League, or top three. Very strong player, very experienced. But this is so, they, this, the, the situation, Trichon Barun, they have to be so careful because Molde is keeping them occupied in their um, offense and uh, then bam, they switch and they go into, into their own offense and th they have these counter attacks. So they just like hypnotize you in your own attack mode and then they switch and uh, break out of it. Yeah, and Molde just waits for, for a mistake. Yeah, like this moment, we see it. And Bam! Very, very fast counter attack. Well, the, the back was there on time this time. Yes, yes, yes. It was, a, it was not that fast as we've seen uh, before. And uh, the goalie is quite oh, good. Oh, a penalty. That was probably shoulder in the basket or holding onto the basket from the goalkeeper. Penalty. Let's listen to Ouch. That's always. Well, you, you let's risk it. Let's listen to what the, okay. the referee says. Penalty says. for holding onto the basket. Yep. Uh, with the with the hands uh, behind uh, his head, but that's Lisa. Do you would agree? I guess that's something you risk as goalkeeper if you are under pressure. Wait, if something happens, it's like a, it's a reflex. I guess yeah. like you swim okay. fast, like let's grab here and. Um, but you also. I, I, don't you think, I, don't I don't think it's on purpose. But, but you can risk it if you are really under pressure. Yeah. And you say it's still 3-0. I would rather risk. Yeah, but you have still the chance to, to catch uh, the, the penalty. Know. So ready. we have shooting, we have Jordale from Molde against number two, Pavel Havranek. Pavel also a very experienced player. He actually has an 
international referee. Yes, he, he, he does. Yes, international referee. Yes, and this is uh, always the hard part if the attacker goes up to the surface and takes a pro. Oh, that was that was pretty good. He's too far away. Pavel is too far away. He has, he has full control of the ball. Yeah, well, he had full control. Of yeah, I mean, he went for the ball a bit far, maybe. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty. I don't know what the referees will what say. what the referees will say. Because um, when you're defending a penalty, you're, uh, you're not that the goalie cannot attack the ball yeah. if it's away more than two meters away from the basket. Yeah. But he was when he got hold of the ball. You're totally right. He was in control of the ball, so it was fair. Six we see it again here in replay. He kicked the ball uh, out of the hands. Uh, he's still in body yeah, length. He, yeah, he was, yeah, he was, was one, one body length he was away. Pretty safe. Yeah, yeah. Well done by Pavel. Very good. Very good, very good uh, 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 holding here of this, uh, uh, stopping here of this penalty. Nicely done. Mold is coming back again uh, on the basket of Triton Baroon. And is pushing uh, pressure, putting pressure up in the defense, as we've seen before. And Triton. As we've seen before, is up for it. And I think this is good uh, mentally. This is good. Like, hey, we just yeah. defending oh, defended yes. the penalty against Molde. Yeah. And another goal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have it, Lisa. We don't have to jinx it. We don't have to. It oh, uh, happens to me all the time <laughs> if I comment. <laughs> how look how good they are defending. Bam, goal. Oh, okay, sorry guys, was my my mistake. Well, maybe they got <laughs> too happy and a bit too careless. <laughs> No, but that was a very good performance, and um, now it was a, a proper goal, so to say. Yep. None of the goals have been gifted. No, nope. ha yep. Molde yes. has had two fights totally for each agree. of them. Yes, totally agree. Uh, it is a good game, and uh, it looks like a fun game as well. It's not. Some of the games I've seen yesterday was were very physical. Yep. And this doesn't look that physical, like that rough. True. Yes. Yes. It, it's yes. it's fluid. The game is quite yep. fluid. Okay, you you they have. Um, a lot of move, faces lot where, of the where the they're open struggling space, yeah. for the ball and fighting here and there, but you don't have lots of scrums. Um, it doesn't look violent. Yeah, uh, it's, it's aggressive, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Oh, one-on-one oh. one situation. The goalkeeper is really yes. good. Who is the goalie? They're like number ten. He he kept up kept up the the pace with the attacking molded player interfered with his pass and kept him away so he stopped the oh damn the two Baroon player blocked each other and there was a gap and uh, the ball bounced on the rim yeah so that was a, that was a fun goal yeah but uh, in the in the first wave first counter attack wave ah yes yeah the the goalie went down and the back saw that the goalie was not there yet yeah. and so tried to go up and they blocked each other yeah. But very nice performance here from this goalkeeper from Triton Baroon. Number how he 10, I don't the know, <laughs> they're not on the team list, of course not. But they're doing <laughs> very, very good job. At each counter attack, they've been there by themselves. And the game is over. 5 0 for Molde from Norway um, against Triton Baroon from the Czech Republic. Great game. That yes. that looked, it looked like a fun game. I think yes. both teams enjoyed it. We have, uh, yesterday, we had some. Uh, um, Games that got really, like I said, stuck in the movement. That there was there was so much blocked. That there was the there was no. Yeah. There yeah. Was there, was there was no was fluid. There was not fluid. Yeah. And um, this game was a fluid game, and, and you you saw how we see again the penalty here. Pavel hold, did hold it uh, very nicely. Do we say five zero seven zero? Five. 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 I think. Let's see the update on the. Probably we have it on the website. Um, so next game coming up is one. Uh, ah, the Orcas, uh, the male team, the Orcas from Colombia against uh, Vienna uh, from Austria. This is going to be a tough game for Austria. Curious how they will deal with the fast. Uh, back and forth play of the Colombians. Um, it's going to be tough for Austria. You agree? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. Even the referees were saying the game is so fast; it's mm. hard to follow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes, yes, yes, like, yes. oh, well, when did that happen? So. But on the other hand, Lisa, w would you also agree it's a, a pleasure to play against a team like Molde or like uh, uh, the the Orcas because it's. Yeah, it's I don't an know. experience. The, the thing is, for a European team, you're used to play against a team like Molde, like the 
style they have. Yeah, that's the difference. And Orcas is very different. Yeah. Of course, the Spanish play a bit Colombian style. If you play against um, the French um, teams, it's also a bit Colombian style, especially. But the level is not there, yeah. so they cannot really do their game all the time. And I have a feeling that yesterday the games against Orcas, it was a lot of clashing of two different styles totally. and they would, they would just cancel each other yeah it, it looked frustrating yeah but the orcas have the the uh, this is what we talked with uh, samuel gaviria the head coach of the orcas in our talk um in the underwater earthquake academy the orcas have the capability to adapt you see it in the games if they cancel if they are got cancelled uh, by the gameplay of the other team in the in the game they adapt to it because of their um, um, fluid style and what um, Samuel told us he, he they try to develop the tools but each of the players has their own capabilities to execute to use these tools so they don't have these these strict rules who have to do it like this and that mm -hmm. they are just guidelines and each one of them can adapt them to the situation and to the to their own capabilities body size uh, strength speed so this is an advantage the the Yorkers have here. Um, I don't see in many other teams. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we'll just turn off the microphone for a minute <laughs> until the game starts to rest our voices. No, I want to talk. Uh, All right. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. I'm always looking forward to the games of uh, the, the check, Orcas. Check. It's, it's a beauty to watch, Ooh. and uh, Ready? each game I learn. Let's try and be neutral on this game. Well, <laughs> nevertheless, I can say I love the playing style. No, they have a very Teams ready. playing style. Let's see how Vienna is doing. They have yeah. some, and I love to some say players are, are sick. Uh, they can make it, and they have a few new players as well. Whoa. So they start very fast. Yeah, the, 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 ah, nice interception here from Vienna into the fast ball playing, but the distance, wide distance covering ball playing of the Colombians. Very nice interception here from Vienna. Okay, Vienna is up for it. Wow, nicely done, nicely intercepted. Uh, and the Colombians are a little bit like, hey, 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 that's our game. Wow, nice. I think uh, maybe the Colombians started. Like got in thinking it would be easier yep. than it yep. actually is. Yep, yep. Yeah. That it's really a surprise moment here for the in the first wave for the Colombians. Very good game uh, interception game by the uh, Austrian players. So Colombia is like, okay, let's try something else. Ah, the ball control of Colombia is really beauty to watch. And they are going in now closer into the defense. They're probing. They're testing. Let's take a bite, chew it. Oh, it tastes but good. But Vienna is swimming around. We have always a Ford really protecting yeah. the goal. Really dynamic game here from uh, uh, Vienna. Really up for it. Really awake. Really focused. I just recovered the ball but got it kicked off his hand. Call from the referee. Free throw against Free Columbia. throw. White team. Yeah, punching the ball. Yeah, exactly. But when I said like Akos had the ball and it got punched away from his hand. Holding. Oh, hold it, okay. And back here in the middle of the pool. It's, it's uh, an amazing game here from Austria. And uh, Colombia is uh, in their adapting mode to this fast forward checking game, interfering game from Austria that does not allow Colombia to really play their game. They haven't had any pressure on the basket. Now we're going in on the basket. Closer, but Austrian does. Oh, that was a, how fast they scored. That was, that was Goal. not even that was very visible. Very fast. Number 32. Let, let's see that Three, in two. the replay again. Was 32. it that scissor movement? Yes, it was. It was the push against the shoulder and uh, the, the immediate 
scoring, amazing. It came out of nothing. It was just like there. And it's the defense was like, everything was, was perfectly arranged for Austria. And bam, there was a score. Mm -hmm. Impressive. And it looks so effortless, but I know uh, from talking to the players, they uh, train a lot. Oh, and uh, the Orcas are back again, uh, attacking from the open side. Second wave coming in. First wave didn't make it. Nicely uh, interfered by Austria here. Ball is still in, in possession of the in the Colombian hands. They're coming in from the close side. Nice interference again from Austria right above the basket. No goalkeeper on the basket. That's dangerous in a situation that close above the basket if you have players like the Orcas close to Free you. Throw. White Another team. free throw. Strangling. So the referees, uh, um, as Lisa Strangling. told us in the beginning, were talking yesterday to uh, stop the game immediately if you see see it heating up too much. And, uh, and especially attacks to the head and yep. attacks to the head of the referee. Those, they uh, are really watching out for that. It's really hard. In a game like that where you have... Um, like an intense game with big players and where it goes fast, it's hard to see when Free exactly throw. what happens. Yep. White team holding. That's interesting. It looks like the Orcas cannot really do their thing. Yes. Vien Vienna is a good team. It's with uh, experienced players as well and um, they're training a lot. Wait for me. Kay. Hey. The players wanted to start too fast. Hey. Second time, you have to wait for me. Free throw, blue. Okay, so Vienna wanted to start the free throw too fast. Twice in a row. So, so the Orcas got a free throw for them. That was a little bit of confusion what's happening here now. I think that Vienna wanted it to... It just changed sides. Yeah, it changed yeah. sides because Vienna yeah. wanted to play fast. Yeah. But they didn't started, the they didn't wait referee. for the referee, yep. so twice in a row. Oh. Camilo, Camilo Diaz is in the live stream chat. Hey, Camilo, brother, how are you? Good to have you with us. So, um, one zero lead from the Orcas after five minutes here in this first half, and Austria does a pretty, pretty, pretty good job here. Um, they they seem to have a, a good tactic and the understanding how to deal with the play of the Colombians. The Colombians have to adapt to the situation and uh, don't think they are struggling, but they are like, uh, Ooh, number have to try something like new. Do you see the Orcas oh. player got in under the, the just yeah. in the goalie switch, he got under the goalie, but the other pass Orcas could try to bomb, pass, yeah. he tried to pass over. Oh, oh no. there was an empty basket. And uh, the number one, uh, Federico Goal. Fede, just scored. Again, the situation, number one. You, you always, have a, the top players has, have always the overview, where is the goal, where are the my players, where are the... Because um, now you just had the back who was under the basket, yeah. but and otherwise there was no one else. The back, it was very empty. Yeah, and uh, Federico looked like this, he reacted immediately. Uh, he didn't even swim, he threw because before the defender realized I don't have a goalie here. Oh. And again, wow, that was another throw. They tried, they did it yesterday and it was perfect. This one didn't work out. The, the goalie just goalie managed to pat the ball away. Yeah, but the pace is now, you, I have the feeling the pace is now stepping up. The uh, Orca machine is adapting. And uh, adapting to the game of the Austrians. Uh, an attack from the open side didn't succeed, next wave coming in, pushing hard into the defense, Austria is holding up, it's uh, really solid, the defense is quite solid here from Austria, and uh, the 2-0 here after 7 minutes is a compliment to the defense and play of the Austrian team. It's not, it's not an easy game. No. Oh, now we have the Austrians recovered the ball, try to sm swim through, but are intercepted in the center of the pool by Orcas just passed behind the back of the Austrian player and we have a free throw against Orcas for free pushing. Throw. Free, free throw. Roughing, roughing. White. Holding. 
holding. That's I haven't seen that sign for holding. No, that's Rafael. Yeah, I think so too. Well, whatever. It is a free throw, and it's a chance for Austria it's right. to it get close to the Colombian basket, which the they haven't seen that much in the game yet. No, not a lot. We Call have from the, the referee. I reckon the Orcas were too fast. Yeah. The um, free throw wide. Ball start. So yeah. yeah, the Orcas went for the ball too fast. Okay. So uh, uh, repetition here of the free throw executed. And uh, here we go with Austria in direction of the Colombian basket. Pretty fast intercepted by the Colombian forechecking. Colombia is in ball possession. Oh, that was a, a dangerous pass here into the open field in the middle of the pool. And it's not that easy for Colombia to break through. Um, Austria is really aware. Ah, from the open side now, we see an attack and another goal. This is these, these dangerous movements they do a push to the shoulder Go and the ball into the basket look again 11. how you see it it's the, the movement is also you you almost don't see it it's push bam and he's in and it's really like what what just happened he does the in this movement they don't pull the goalkeeper up they just push them on the shoulder parallel to the bottom of the pool which is much easier than uh, lifting him up mm -hmm. so 3-0 uh, here now for the orcas in the first half, and we have uh, 40 seconds left. And Austria is trying now again to get close to the Colombian basket, uh, tackle away to the surface. We have a cluster that is uh, th the ball is falling down on surface and Colombia is going with two players really fast again to the Austrian basket but they don't break through they uh, stop before the basket and the second wave comes in and really pushes in so this is like a, a it looks like a hesitation isn't it isn't it is like first wave stops and the second wave comes in with more force but uh, yes and another goal let's see it, it's really like they they found the weak spot in the defense and they don't try it in the the common style with uh, pushing it? the ball on the bottom and lifting the yeah. the defender the goalkeeper up but they do their uh, scissor thing like um this this pushing on the shoulder and putting the ball inside the basket we have an, uh, uh, a long video with uh, federico from the orcas where he's explaining this movement and uh, really puts it into perspective and how they train it and they did it three times now in this first half here on the champions cup 2022 in berlin and this first half orcas from colombia against the team from vienna austria amazing game and um, especially amazing uh, what we've seen time, time was ending before the goal no goal oh no goal interesting so the time was up already uh, and uh, the orcas did score afterwards so it's still a 2 zero, zero. yeah well well Vienna is putting up a very good fight yes Vienna does pretty, pretty well. Yeah, we have a comment here from uh, Bobby Simpson in the in the um, live stream chat, and uh, he says the the level of the teams. Um, during the pandemic it seems like the teams got closer to each other in the level of gameplay and uh, uh, on, on all levels the strategy tactical game f uh, the physical uh, capabilities endurance is it the whole champions cup is on a real high level i agree with you totally agree with you bobby i was wondering uh, and talking to it about uh, it uh, with lorena uh, what to expect from this uh, champions cup um, 2022 here in Berlin if uh, some teams really suffered 
from the pandemic. But what I heard from uh, the teams who had, uh, couldn't play in the water, in the lockdowns, because the pools were closed, a lot of them started to, a lot of uh, um, land work out, um, so running, going outside. So what a lot of people did in the pandemic, they worked out. And uh, this translates into the water. And when they started to, to train again in the water and play together again in the water, they had these uh, uh, upgraded capabilities Listen to, to me, put white into team, action. I white think this is part of what it is. Goalies, white team, warning for wedging, shoulder, goalies and defenders. Don't use this to the rim to hold down. Yeah. Okay, so Vienna is. They want you. Vienna is getting a warning. The refer the goalies and backs have been a bit too okay. wedging a bit too much Continue. in the basket. So next time they do that, um, they might get a penalty. A penalty. Again, a fast uh, start kickoff from the Colombians in ball possession and intercepted by Austria. Very well done. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I have to say I'm totally impressed. I know Austria is a good team, but what we see here is uh, better than good. It's, it's very good. I'm uh, really, guys, you do a very impressive game here. And compared to the game that I, I saw yesterday yes. of Austria, uh, what was it? was Vienna against Molde, this, way, this is way better. Yeah. That's also the thing, they've pa played a few more games now. Probably. All the game of the Colombians relates better to the playing style of the Austrians. It could be. So now the ball was a bit in the half of Vienna, not very dangerous, not too close to the, to the goal. Orgas pulled back out to the half of the field and now going back in. Sometimes you need to take a bit of distance and, yeah. and go back in with reorganize yourself. The Austrians had a player there. Vienna had a player trying to intercept. It didn't give them completely free reign, but it didn't block Orgas from Whoa, coming in. This is uh, the pass to the uh, La Verde, Juan Jose, uh, Jose uh, La Verde on the open side. Oh. And uh, he was uh, free. There was no defender under the basket and he just Goal executed blue it. 99. Um, it was a very strong goal. <laughs> yeah, he wa had a perfect position. And this is, the, the, if we see the replay here, this is the movement uh, uh, Samuel the taught us. Textbook yeah, textbook movement. movement. He this taught us in the Underwater goal. Rugby Academy with this biomechanic and analysis, and they trained it like that, perfectly executed. So a solid lead here for the Orcas. Do you think, uh, uh, Lisa, they, they uh, take out a little bit of speed to uh, save energy and... and uh, uh no. No? I don't think so, because they're in um, scoring mode. Yeah. If, they, if they say now, it's their quarterfinal. If they say quarterfinal, we take it easy, and then the semifinal, like, semi-hard, and then the final, we go 100%. Um, it's mentally, it's better if you're like, we give everything Yeah, in ev we can. all the time, yeah. You don't stop, Th you they don't They want back. to win. Ooh, yeah. now we have the no back there, and we had two Colombian players. Back, make it, made it back into position a bit late, and, and that goal. was a goal. Blue number seven. It, it, it's really like what we talked before. Um, Colombia adapted to the Austrian play. It took them half. Uh, uh, it took them ten minutes. Now they adapted and they found the weak spots and yes. they uh, they exploit them. Yes, and it can also be that um, Vienna Austria is getting is a bit exalted. tired. Yeah because they've been defending a lot and they've been trying to go out. Yeah, and, and they did an amazing first half. It was is a uh, very fast team, so yeah. it's not very easy. And holding up with them uh, as Austria did in the first half is really demanding. So uh, Austria tries now to get close to the Colombian basket. Uh, ball was intercepted and intercepted back uh, from Austria, intercepted again back from Colombia. Nice play here from Austria, but we're back at the Oh, wow. Again, have you seen it? The the attacker, I think it was uh, Samuel. Goal, blue number Let's 11. Let's see the, the replay. Far pass. Yeah, it's uh, Time Samuel. Out. White team. Time out. And he didn't even lift him up. Th that's the thing. He put the hand behind White the team. back Time to... Um, um, 
he, he tricked him because exactly. he he, tricked it, him. it, it yeah, yeah, felt yeah. it felt like he would uh, lift, lift him, him from up. the back, and so he man then managed to score next to his head. Yeah, there was uh, that's what the, the, the thoughtlessness because some ways to score look like a struggle between the goalkeeper and the attacker, yes. and this looked thoughtless because there was no struggle. The the goalkeeper was really uh, surprised yes. and didn't realize. Oh, there was a goal. Nicely done, impressive, and uh, the adaptability of the Colombian players is amazing. Mm -hmm. So time out for uh, Austria. So they they. What, what would you say they're talking about right Dive now? Off. They Up. Let's start. They have six minutes left. They are lagging behind six goals. Almost impossible to win this game, but they want to score. I think that's the thing they are going for. We at least want to try to score once. That's I reckon, yes. That's, that's what I would uh, try to do. Just as a if they just start defending, they will be defending for six minutes and get one goal per minute. Yeah. yeah. So let's better try and... Uh, Try and score, play a bit open, fight in the midfield. We that looks like he was kicking his the with his knee, the number six. It looks like Kale was was kicking wide. the Vienna player's head with his knee. Yeah. Because he had him like in yeah. in his holding. belly. Yeah. Oh holding. Peter Maricek has the ball, managed to pass oh, behind his back. Oh, there's an Austrian player uh, positioned to uh, execute the Merla. Yeah, but the ball is too far. And yeah, and the, the Colombian zone allowed to get it closer. Yeah, and the, the support was too far. Mm, Colombia counter-attacking. Oh, uh, the, 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 the movements are Goal so fluent. Goal number 10. Yeah, they were too slow rolling back. Yeah. And uh, the, the movements of the uh, Colombians here, the, the movement from right in front. He was looking at the defender and uh, looking in the eye. You know what will happen now? Yeah, because you had yeah. the back. You yeah. had the forward coming <laughs> as a, in second position from, from the Vienna side. So Peter is a forward. But then you had three Colombians attacking and the goalie was yeah. not there. Yeah. Uh, again, impressive. Uh, again, uh a good fight in the midfield. The Orca's going in. Oh, it's two players full speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, coming yeah. in, and, and it's Blue the, number the, 11. the reaction to a mistake is immediate. Look at this. There is no uh, defender under the basket. Attacker comes, and the movement is just one movement. He doesn't even stop to pick up the ball. The, the ball was passed to him, and he just executed this attack. Mm -hmm. Textbook again. Beautiful. Again, number 11. Uh, Samuel, I guess, was it? Let me check. Okay, so now we're in the closed corner of the yes, Orca's Samuel basket. Vienna, yeah. So Vienna, um, like we said, they will uh, just for their own satisfaction and self-understanding as a as a good team. They want to try to score now to at least um, to to say we scored against the Orcas. You have Matthias Neuenteufel here. Going towards the basket. That's such a great name, Nine Devil. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing name. Imagine uh, Thomas Nine Devil. We have I love it. And a free throw, wide. Okay, free throw for Vienna. Strangling, Vietnam. strangling. Well, both Nine Teufels, husband and wife, are very good goalies. So and they're, they're 18, 18 Nine Devils. <laughs> well, they have children. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, Austria. Trying hard, and they spend more time now in the um, Colombian half. Um, could be due to the fact uh, we just said they would try to score, but this uh, costs them in their own defense, um, which they have to pay with uh, uh, the goals we just saw. And Colombia is again attacking, and look at the forcefulness and the, the, the straight passes, the Orcas passing back and oh, forth. The back had a bit of trouble getting into position, but now is well positioned very much on the open side. Goalie got lifted up, recovered the ball, 
and now is holding on to the ball. Whoa. Someone managed to yes, cover six. the goal again, but yeah. not properly. Goal. Yeah, the, the back. Number seven. So had Thomas Hufman switch up to the basket, but I think he was expecting a goalie to come, so he was not lying properly. Yeah. And uh, in these, these, uh, as we saw in the replay, these chaotic moments in the in the defense of the opponents, the um, orcas strive really in these moments. They they just exploit it. And it's also the problem with like the high side of the pools. Is the changes take a tiny like subbing out longer, takes yeah. a tiny bit more time, yeah. and that's when you have a gap being created in your rotation. Okay, the orcas recover their ball. The ball at their baskets are in the midfield, but Vienna is fighting and trying not to let them through directly. And the Orcas are now uh, above the Austrian basket and three Austrian players are trying to interfere here with the game of this Orca player. Next wave comes in. Uh, the, the, the player in front of the basket was holding the ball to the open side. Player uh, from the Orcas came too late. Doesn't happen that often. Very well uh, um, interfered here by Austria again. Oh, the back is holding onto the basket, but the referee here cannot see it because it was a head of the other back. Call from the referee. Rough playing free, free throw, throw against wide. the Colombians. Holding. 30 seconds left. Okay, this uh, game is over. And it's... Uh, Beautiful, we saw beautiful rugby from the Colombians and we saw an amazing rugby from Austria that uh, played against the, well, they are the world champion. Most of them played in the, uh, in Graz did win and the ruling uh, the champions. Oh, we champion. have now, let's see the last seconds, uh, attack Vienna trying to go in for the Orcas basket. Peter Maracek now gets the ball and that is it. The time is out. Very strong performance. Um, so congratulations, Orcas. That was a very good, yeah. very strong game. 9-0 uh, against Vienna. Vienna had a good game. They got some fair goal scored on them. They didn't do like mistakes like they no. did against Molde. That you yeah. they, they would like some counter attacks yesterday on an empty basket. Like and now they really had they had a way more solid defense and they looked like they trusted each other more they got to know the pool they got to got know to this exact team configuration in this environment and it looks like they enjoyed it yes. and I think it was also for Orcas it must have been a, a good good game it was also like the game that we just saw before Molde against Triton Berun um, pretty fluid yes it was not this clashing of brute force yeah. and just trying to get it through there was a um, difference of level of course but um, no, it was it was a good game there was room the, the ball was was moving there was no clusters not many of them mm -hmm. there was a lot of action a lot of back and forth and uh, I think Austria can be really satisfied with this game they played if they see it in the replay I can I think they can say okay we did a good job here. yes coming up right now three women's games uh, we're still in the group games for the women so Akaren against Helvetia, so Norway against Switzerland. Helvetia played this morning already at 8. So let's see how fresh they are. Uh, then Orcas against Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona also played the second game this morning, okay. so they didn't have that much rest either. And Ispirtnana from Sweden against the Hammerheads from the USA. Um, right now, about to start. I am off for the next couple hours and I will come back um, at 2 p.m. Thank you, Lisa, for doing the comments here with me at the Champions Cup 2022. See you in it's a bit. It's a pleasure to talk with you. It's a pleasure you commenting with you all. <laughs> all right.
So, Akaren uh, was warming up here. We saw them uh, outside of the pool in the fresh air. And uh, Helvetia, the Swiss team, Akaren from Norway, and Helvetia, the Swiss team in uh, white. It's going to be tough. Akaren is um, the team that is uh, ruling the Champions Cup, uh, the female part of the Champions Cup now for uh, the last years. I don't know exactly how many, 10 years, probably. Um, and Switzerland will know they uh, are facing the top team in, of the Champions Cup. This is a challenge and a pleasure, like I said before, to play against these top teams. You uh, can learn a lot. It's a uh, huge insight into your own capabilities and the capabilities of the other team. And as we saw here with, Aus with Austria, um, Colombia was uh, dominating the game, but Austria did a very good game, and uh, we can expect the same here from, uh, from the Swiss team in white. So, do we have uh, people in the live stream from uh, Switzerland uh, watching uh, the game? People from uh, Norway, please comment in the, uh, the live stream Six. chat. Two Where minutes. are you watching from? Two minutes. Two minutes left to the start two of uh, the game. Two minutes. No, no, two, 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 two minutes. <laughs> Just uh, can repeat what I said yesterday. We have uh, waterways, um, um, fins, the fiberglass fins, the standard fiberglass fins uh, for underwater rugby. The producer is here from the Ukraine. Um, Anton, the son of uh, Bogdan, the producer of the Finns, drove from Kiev uh, to Berlin with the Finns. Uh, he's here with uh, Christine, who's helping him. And they're selling the Finns. So if you need uh, fiberglass Finns, please uh, ask someone you know around the pool area uh, to bring them to you. You will uh, uh, um, wait, wait, wait. not have to pay the shipment. And uh, we try to sell, uh, to buy as many Finns from Anton here, so he does not have to take any of them back to the Ukrainian. Uh, um, so that would be uh, my uh, uh, my wish for this uh, Champions Cup uh, by all the Finns ready? the producer has here. All right, ready? you see the team list. Team's getting ready. Referees are um, in the water. At least I see the one on the close side. And the game begins. Uh, Akaren, as expected, uh, first one on the goal, for on the ball. Oh, that was nicely intercepted. Uh, Akaren tries to do their power move in the in the kickstart, but uh, intercepted by the Swiss player. Ball still in Swiss position. Uh, heavily attack, for checking attack uh, by Akaren, but uh, nevertheless, uh, Switzerland holds on to the ball. Very good uh, first seconds here, and uh, the Swiss were not overrun by the fast play of Akaden and uh, are still holding on. Now they lost the ball and we are still in the half of Switzerland and Akaden is now coming into the dangerous area around the Swiss basket, getting closer and closer. Heavy foot checking from Switzerland, now an uh, attack from the open side. Um, very good defended. Uh, the ball is free, dropping down to the bottom in the hands of a Swiss player who got uh, hold, uh, was holding by a, a current player, but very well, first uh, one and a half, uh, one, two minutes uh, from uh, Helvetia here. Akaren didn't manage to score. Ball Dark is now out of, uh, out of uh, reach, out of the, the playing area. And uh, free throw for Akaren. Dangerous uh, situation here in the beginning of the game. Akaren coming from the open side, defender is ready, try to tackle the player, next wave comes in, close from the open side, working on the goalkeeper, uh, also fend off uh, 
next wave. Very good work here from uh, from the Swiss defense. Next wave coming in, and that was a goal. Yes, but uh, um, seven goal, dark. As I said, um, very well. Uh, number seven scored. That is Barry Tadelli. She uh, was playing with the German, uh, my uh, uh, the team of my club, the women's team of my club, uh, some years ago. So we know her quite well, and she scored here. Bet it. Call from the referee. Free throw against um, Akaren because of uh, holding onto the mask. Okay. Of the, uh, the opponent. Live free throw. Live free throw. Uh, almost three minutes. Uh, over here in the first half, and Helesia, the Swiss team, did a good job. Um, let's hope they can keep up uh, the pace and the the, 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 the speed and the, the tactics they have here to interfere with Akaren throughout the game. Now we are almost reached the half of uh, Akaren, but uh, the ball was lost and is back in the current possession and they are on the close side in the corner the forward checking of a swiss team tries to keep them uh, at bay but now they come in number six from the open side of their current team and number eight in the middle very well defended again nicely done and uh, Yes, the Swiss team really um, is uh, not taking any gifts here from uh, Akaren. They're fighting hard and Akaren is, uh, it's not that easy for them as they probably expected to break through the defense. Again, uh, attack from the open side. Goalie was uh, very solid on the basket. Uh, the current player didn't manage in the first attack. Ball is on the surface above the Swiss basket, still in possession of the Akaren team. Ball is loose in the hands of Heletia and uh, immediately tackled by three Akaren players. And uh, we're on the surface in a cluster. And uh, Heletia is trying to work hard to break through, break free. They did, the player was a did a fast body turn, ripped out of the tackle of a current player and was free and the ball is still in possession of Helvetia. And they try to work step by step uh, into the direction of uh, the Norwegian basket, but uh, the forechecking defense is very solid. So they are still, uh, let's say, three meters away and kept at that distance from the current basket, so there's no danger. And the current is now in ball possession, turning around, and we see the fast uh, counter attack. Two current players against one goalkeeper on the Swiss basket. First wave uh, didn't make it, second wave coming in from the open side, and the third wave coming in from the open side, pushing hard, and the goalkeeper managed to hold on to the ball in this attack. Very well done. and. No, that looked like, uh, but the ball was behind the basket. Very well defended here uh, by uh, uh, the Swiss team. It was not that easy and uh, Switzerland is now in ball possession and working its way into the half of the, Den uh, the, the Norwegian team. Got intercepted and we're moving back with Norway into the Swiss half. For checking, uh, did stop them, so it wasn't this fast counter attack we saw before. Nice play here by the Swiss. And uh, Akaren is uh, coming in on the open side again, pushing hard on the goalkeeper. Mm, call from the referee, pushing uh, without a ball. Light. Time free out. Thro free throw against. Light free throw. Akaren and uh, timeout time out. for White. Light. Time out, light. Nice. It's a good game. Uh, and uh, 
really Swiss players are uh, uh, working hard here to to be up for it and they are and most of the time the defense is there and uh, they are not making it easy for the Norwegian team to score it's not like a not like a hot knife through butter, but there is resistance. There is, uh, uh, the, the balls get intercepted. Switzerland can get hold of the ball and even break free out of their own defense. Let's see if they can keep it up. It costs them, it's hard work, and uh, Akaren is not under stress. So they can build up weight uh, until they tire the Swiss team. And they are not that um, focused and uh, powerful anymore. So let's see if Switzerland can keep it up here in the first half in this game. It's a good game to watch. Uh, you never know what happens if a uh, uh, team, a female team faces Akaren. Um, some teams really get destroyed in the first seconds and broken in the first seconds with these massive fast attacks and goals in the, after the kickstart. But uh, this didn't happen to Switzerland here. And uh, curious what will uh, what Karen will do now here after this timeout. We have uh, three minutes left in the first half. And we're at the basket of the Norwegian team. And uh, we're really close here. And an attack from above. The player is all alone. I uh, guess he will not succeed. But uh, there was an attack and the second wave of Switzerland comes in again from above. Again, the players alone are on the heavy attack, but managed uh, to rip the ball free, but it fell in the hands of the current player. And now they're switching. current switches uh, back into their attack mode. That is a fast counter attack going for the Swiss basket. Three, two current players coming from both sides. Um, but they didn't manage, they were intercepted. There was a, a forward-checking player uh, above the goalkeeper exactly where he had to be to interfere with an attack like that. So well done, well job, well uh, stopped. And uh, good defense work here from Switzerland. Impressive and nice to watch. Okay, next wave, still uh, Karen in ball possession. And uh, they start to play back and forth and wait until their uh, attack players position themselves around the basket. But the forechecking does not allow them that much uh, freeway into the dangerous area. Uh, the Swiss immediately intercept and go in between the basket and ball and uh, try to tackle and rip the ball free. So Akaren is not... Uh, hectic here but also not really successful in their uh, in their attacks uh, on the other hand um, Switzerland is really successful in interfering with the play of Akaren he, like the scene we saw just the, the Swiss player was uh, going up was a defense player and managed to interfere the pass and now we have Akaren coming from uh, the one player was pulling the goalie up from the basket and passed uh, the the, the player eight, was passing goal. to the other player waiting on the open side and he eight, used to eight. get to score so it's a 2-0 now um uh here in the first half and we have uh, 40 seconds left and uh, switzerland can be proud they can well. re-watch this first half and can be proud of uh, that they how they played and how they uh used uh, the best of their capabilities to deal with uh, this amazing uh, current team. And Switzerland uh, is again in the close corner on the Norwegian side. They lost the ball, the ball was uh, ripped out of their hands and we have a fast counter attack now again to a current player is going for the goalie. The first wave didn't succeed because the four checker was intercepting call from the referee. Penalty. Well, that's uh, what happens. No, half break. Ah, sorry, oh, the sign was not above the head. Sorry, I, uh, this is the end of uh, the first half and this will be penalty or penalty. Sorry, so end of the first half, no penalty. I'm still not awake. Try to be. 
Yes, amazing game. Um, a beauty to watch. Uh, Akaren, the, the, the movements and the, the, the waves coming in. Uh, see it in the replay. First wave, second wave. And they exactly know what they're doing. But also impressive game from Switzerland here in the first half. Because they... Uh, they really rise up to the task that is uh, in front of them. Uh, and Akaren really is a challenge for every team. So uh, going into the second half with the 2-0 is something the Swiss team can be proud of. Really a uh, good game to watch. Uh, not uh, boring at all. It's really interesting to see these two play, two teams um, trying to find uh, a way to deal with each other. And uh, my opinion, uh, Karen um, cannot play the game they they would love to. They control the whole. Uh, they control the whole game. That's that's for sure. But uh, it's not that easy for them. So one minute left here in the break. The teams are uh, taking a breath. Akaren does not look really exhausted. You see the difference in the teams uh, if they come out of the water after uh, or uh, in, the, in the break of a really exhausted team. They're just lying around, breathing, not talking. Here, Akaren is uh, there. The players are standing in a circle and uh, does not look like any of them is breathing heavily. So, yeah, it's their game. And they lead a 2-0. But it's not a, a demolition game for them. Uh, they can play against Switzerland. <coughs> Let's see what the second half brings. Uh, if uh, Switzerland uh, tries to change their tactics or if uh, Akaren goes into the second half with... Uh, with another tactics or uh, another motivation here to do it differently. But I don't think so. I think we will see a, a very similar second half now. Here we go. Game starts again. As usual, Akaren uh, on uh, the ball and they do their uh, th throw up high up uh, in, the, in the game uh, start. And uh, again, Switzerland managed to fend off this first attack and not only fend it off, but getting hold of the ball. And they try to break out of the heavy forward checking of uh, Akaren. Oh, this is a dangerous situation. The no goalie there and the ball is uh, on the surface in a cluster. Always dangerous if the ball drops out and there's an Akaren player. But uh, now we are uh, with this uh, cluster on the surface uh, drifting in the uh, part of the <coughs> of the Akaren uh, players, but they recover the ball and go now again back to the Swiss basket. At least they try because they are stopped by the Swiss players in the middle, and we are uh, see uh, stopped uh, Akaren game that is uh, not taking it up its full speed as they probably would love to. Akaren um, positioned. Open side of the corner. Now it's a dangerous part. They're coming from the open side, uh, but the goalie who was uh, under pressure managed to get hold of the ball and uh, push free. So no goal here. Very well defended again. Um, impressive, impressive work. And uh, Switzerland really does a good job um, keeping everything Akaren is throwing into their defense. Uh, at a level that is manageable for them and uh, they are not only surviving but also breaking out keeping the defenses the the defense a little bit farther away from their own basket so their defense has a chance to recover now the next wave of akaren tries to position it under the basket and uh, akaren uh, is taking a little bit of distance reorganizing next uh, Wave coming in, also intercepted by Swiss above the basket. Attack from the close side. Uh, amazing forechecking defense work from Switzerland. Akaren is really like, uh, uh, like, like punching on the door of uh, the Swiss defense and uh, 
the Swiss are not opening up. They don't let them in. Amazing. Um, let's see if they can keep it up. But it looks like, and they really Switzerland really found a way to to um, intercept uh, these attacks uh, again and again. It's a n relentless attack. And now it happened. There was a goal, but. Uh, Nothing Switzerland should be ashamed of. Uh, that was hard work for Akaren to score here. And uh, I, I would love to, to talk stop, to Akaren the, the after the, the game. Stop. Stop the time. Uh, the referees are on the surface. And uh, there was. Team uh, referee. Team referee. Time referee. Uh, hey guy. Call from the referee. They stop Goal the time. Number three. There was some un uh, something unclear with the referees, and uh, yeah, goal number three, and we're back in the game. Um, Switzerland started, but the ball was uh, out of their hands. But they recovered it, and we are under the basket of Akaren right now. And they are trying to push in one player alone. That's not possible against a team like Akaren. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I, I don't know how Switzerland does it, but they really found a way uh, to to deal with Akaren here and don't give them the the room they don't give them the pool they don't give out their game they play their own game and they keep it up in a way that is uh, impressive and uh, good underwater rugby and akaren is uh, not struggling at all not at all they control the game that's for sure but uh, they they cannot do uh, it as easy as they want and another attack uh, from uh, the open side call from the referee i think it was because it was not uh, uh, the, the, the free throw. grip to the, to the equipment. head uh, and equipment and it, you should go if you try to pull up the, uh, the goalkeeper as a current player did you should go for the neck and not for the head touching the the uh, the equipment so free throw for uh, switzerland And we have five minutes to go in this uh, second second half here. And a 3-0 lead from Akaren. That is uh, way enough for them to win this game. And they will win this game. And I don't see um, Switzerland score here. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it's not that easy for Akaren. Another call from the referee. Pushing, no, holding. Holding. Let's see what the decision from the referee is. The referee is talking to the player. We don't hear the decision. Uh, yeah. It's like a live free throw. No free throw. So the current player looks uh, quite Light unhappy throw. with the decision. And it's a free throw for uh, Switzerland. Just four and a half minutes left in the second half here. So free throw executed. And immediately the Swiss player is under attack from Akaren, and we have a cluster going up to the surface. Ball free again. Tried the Swiss player tried to play to uh, pass it to her teammate. Didn't succeed. Interception and fast counter break from uh, Akaren, and uh, was uh, left and right of the basket where was a player from Akaren, and the one in the open side uh, succeeded in pushing um, the. Player three with dark, the ball uh, to the side. Goal. Dark three goal. By free throw, show the ball. Four zero and uh, less than in the first half. Four minutes left. They just they have timeout. The white team will have timeout. Yeah. In the middle of the pool again. Uh, 
And uh, Switzerland again keeping the ball um, in the middle. And now uh, Akaren is breaking through onto the basket in the corner. They're taking their time. Uh, solid lead with 3 0. And uh, it looks a little bit like uh, uh, Switzerland is uh, losing some of his momentum here, some of the speed and uh, endurance. 23. And 23. another goal that from Akaren. So two and a half minutes left here in this second half. And Akaren will be the winner of this game. And I don't see, like I already said, Tevitia to score. But nevertheless, in the replay, the Swiss player can be totally satisfied with the game they uh, put in the water here. It was uh, impressive. Uh, work uh, in defense and breaking out from time to time. So they uh, didn't make it easy for the Akaren uh, players to establish their game. And uh, another attack um, on the Swiss basket from Akaren, coming from above, passing down to the players around the basket, intercepted by Switzerland. And uh, we're on the surface, we don't see the ball right now. It looks like a fight on the surface. Ball is passed down in the hands of the Akaren player. Another player coming in from the close side. Number four uh, from the Akaren already, already play, waiting on the open side, but the pass or the, the attack uh, succeeded from the close side. And we had another goal. Number so, yes, I think uh, it's uh, exhaustion now goal. in the Swiss defense. And uh, they have all the right uh, in the world to be exhausted after what they uh, just showed here in these first 19 minutes. So the time is ticking. Last minute is counting down. Akarin is again going on to an uh, attack. Didn't succeed in the first wave. Intercepted uh, by the Swiss players. And uh, they are trying... Yes, another attack here from Akarin again from the close side. Didn't succeed either. Next wave coming in. Switzerland is still up for it. It's still way awake. You know the moment when a team just loses focus? Not they are broken or beaten, but uh, Switzerland is still focused here in this game. Exhausted, but they don't make it easy for Akarin. And uh, oh, this is this is tough. Four seconds. Yes, Switzerland, you you will not allow this score to happen here in the last seconds. Very well. That was an amazing game to watch from both teams. A current uh, like we know it, uh, really fast counter attacks. Uh, a team that is working like a clockwork, um, attacking, building up their momentum, but a surprising, well defending. Uh, Swiss team that was not only defending but also switching uh, into offense mode, catching the ball, getting it out of the offense of Akaren and switching into a uh, not successful but nevertheless in a mode that allowed them to get away, to get the ball away from their own basket. Impressive and it was uh, fun to watch. Thanks a lot. And it was uh, six or seven. Oh, I'm not good with numbers. I have to admit. You. Uh, let's see if the results are already updated. Six or seven. I think it was more like uh, seven. Next game coming up uh, is um, the female Orcas against uh, Barcelona. So uh, Colombia against Spain. Always uh, also an interesting uh, game, and uh, the Orcas are really strong in this uh, championship. Really, a lot of new players in the team, and also a good uh, core team of experienced players. So uh, let's see what they bring in the water today.
All right. Just had a, a little talk yes. with Reinhard Schottmüller here, who just came in with a team march, uh, getting ready for uh, their game, One which minute. will be against uh, Wales. One minute left. Um, hi, everybody who's just uh, jumped into our live stream. My name is Wolf. I'm uh, with the home team here in Berlin, the Sporthof Berlin. And I'm doing the comments here, waiting for uh, Lorena uh, to do the, the um, comments with me. And uh, until then, I'm doing it myself here, trying to keep you updated uh, with what's happening on the screen. And uh, yeah, please go to the comments. Let me know where are you watching from? What's your hometown? And uh, if you're watching this uh, live stream alone, hello to uh, Barcelona rugby in uh, the rugby team, female rugby team in white here on the on the bench. On the and on the other side in blue are the uh, Orcas from uh, Colombia. So my bet would be uh, um, if I had to bet uh, my money on a team, it would be on the Orcas. But we saw two teams surprising teams uh, already in Austria, like against the Colombian the Orcas uh, the males. Blue team ready. And uh, White we saw team a Swiss ready. team that was really good defending. So let's see what the Barcelona brings here in against the a little bit um, superior Orcas. Uh, ball uh, already uh, after the kickstart in the hands of the Colombians and they are positioning them uh, around uh, the uh, Spanish basket. Defense is uh, up for it. They didn't, the Colombians didn't manage to break through in the first run. Second wave comes in all around the basket. We see Colombians ready to build up their uh, fast uh, ball play back and forth to uh, to play the defense dizzy, trying, they're trying now to come from above. Now again from the open side, passing to the closed side. So it's a, it's a back and forth, so the defense has problems to overview from where the next attack is coming. And this is where you succeed in scoring. And here we go. First score, Goal. under one minute. Blue team, number 24. Thank you, Christian. Uh, yes, I do enjoy it, as you can imagine. Uh, uh, it's where I strive. It's, uh, I love it to sit here and do the comments. And uh, it's uh, like breathing uh, pure underwater rugby and being part of the games. So Barcelona in ball possession uh, under heavy attack by the Colombian players in the half of uh, the Spanish team. And uh, fight back and forth for the ball. Uh, none of the teams can really get a good hold of it. Now uh, uh, the Orcas have the ball and go into the dangerous area just next to the Spanish basket. But the defense is really strong. The, the forward checking is able to intercept a lot. Uh, the attacker from the Orcas pushed the goalkeeper from the open side away, turned around and had the goal, empty basket right team, under uh, number the ball 11. In very well executed here we see it in the replay pushing away turning away from the defenders and having a, a clear open basket right in front of her so it's a 2-0 uh, difficult here for Spain to withstand uh, the very forceful attacks and here we see Spain trying to enter the Colombian half of the pool stopped in the middle and uh, we go forward again. And we go forward again uh, with the Spanish team pushing. And Colombia is again in the attack mode. Slowly building up their uh, capability to, to position themselves. And... Uh, Coming in from the open side, nicely caught out of the hand of the Colombian player coming from the open side. Uh, nice interception and uh, interference with the attack. And the ball is on the surface, pushed to the surface. But uh, nevertheless, 
a goal. Goal, because blue team, number 24. You can see it, the, the exhaustion and the, the concentration you have to bring into defending in this way. And, and after uh, this uh, the w attack like that was fended off, there is a gap in the concentration and in the, in the capabilities. And that was used by the Orca player to score again. We have people uh, watching from Colorado here. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, keep a little bit uh, the communication with me here in the comments uh, and the live stream chat. I'd like to know what you're doing, if you're looking alone, if you're looking as a team. Ball was... Uh, out of, uh, out of the bounds. playing area, out of bounds, so it's a Blue free, throw free throw against Ball out of Spain. Bounds. And again, Arkas in the attack mode coming in from uh, both sides. Uh, pe uh, players waiting and the player with the ball is above, pass to the uh, close side, back to the open side. But uh, Barcelona did a good job here being in between the four checker do a really important job here, stopping the game of uh, the attackers above the goalkeeper. So they don't uh, have the free space to distribute the ball at their free will. So the four checking is quite good right now from Spain intercepting, but again, it costs them. And here is the goal again after the, this, this effort they put in to fend off Blue these uh, goal reoccurring number 28. attacks. We see it here. It was just no defender now under the goal. And uh, the ball went into the goal in the exchange of the two goalkeepers from Spain. White team. Yes. Very well done by the Orcas. We already have a 4-0 after... Um, Less uh, more than five minutes um, in the first half here in this game, Orcas against Barcelona. So Barcelona really wants to know now what's uh, happening at the Colombian basket, and uh, does not look like Colombia is uh, allowing them to find out. They are stopped um, three meters, let's say, before they could reach uh, the basket of the Colombian team ball was ripped out of their hands and two Colombian players now at the Spanish basket. First wave coming in, like we've seen before, uh, the first wave is fended off pretty well. And now we are waiting for the next wave of Colombian players coming in. Here it is, Colombia in ball possession. And uh, left and right to the basket, Colombian players are waiting to receive the ball to attack. Uh, the distributor player is above the goalkeeper, but uh, the goalkeeper manages from Spain, the goalkeeper from Spain manages to snatch away the ball from the Colombian player. And we are with, together with uh, the Spanish team, entering the half of the Colombian uh, uh, Orcas. And uh, the Spanish getting better and better and getting deeper and even now attacking the basket pushing the ball on the goalkeeper but it didn't succeed didn't score and the hand uh, the ball is back in the hands of the Colombian player and uh, we have a fast move into the corner of uh, the Spanish team and from the corner to the basket already Colombian players left and right first wave coming in really hard fight here with the goalkeeper it didn't succeed and the ball is on the surface, dropping down again, left and right of the basket. Coming from the open side, was uh, uh, interfered again, and again from the open side, the second one. Uh, it, it's like I said, the Goal, first... blue team, They can fend nine. off the first wave, they can fend off uh, the second wave, but um, on the third wave, they are lacking behind uh, against the speed of the Colombian players and their attacks. 5-0 now um, for the Orcas. And same, same. After the start, ball was uh, taken away from the Swiss, from the Spanish team and is in the hands of the Colombians. 
And they are uh, back again on the Spanish basket. Left and right. Attack from the open side. Oh, that was really fast. I didn't even see that coming. Let's see the Goal, replay. Goal, blue team, curious number what 15. Here. So she was from the, the play was on the open side. Uh, looking around for a player, there came one player from the closed side, got the ball. Ah, she scored herself. Uh, she was turning around. That was nice. Um, on the closed side. Uh, pretty well executed. So a 6 0 um, for the Orcas. And we have uh, less than a minute to go in the first half. Beautiful game here from the Orcas. And uh, they don't make it easy for Spain to defend the basket. Ball out of bounds. And Blue uh, free throw out free of throw bounds for Colombia. Uh, that was a pass in the in nowhere recovered by a Colombian player. She lost the ball to a, a Spanish player. Call from the referee. No clear signal. And it's a free throw. Yeah against uh, the Orcas. That would have been... Uh, and timeout, not timeout, uh, half break. So there was a, a second of uh, uh, irritation here because uh, there was a signal, there was a horn signal from the referee, but the referee on the close side was not sure what the decision was. So the two referees are discussing now. Um, so this will not happen again. And I uh, can repeat uh, what I said yesterday about uh, the refereeing. Uh, thank you for the replay uh, here again. Yeah, nicely done uh, from the close side. We see the goals from the Orcas. What I said yesterday about the referees, a big thanks to them. Um, it's uh, super exhausting uh, to, to referee these uh, amount of uh, games every day and breathing the bottled air uh, nonstop for a whole day. So you get really tired, but you have to keep up your uh, concentration. And this is exhausting. Big respect and thanks to the referees. Um, refereeing this Champions Cup 2022 <laughs> and we start again 10 minutes to go no ah. that was just the beginning of the first half <laughs> so we have uh, one minute to go uh, in, the, in the break here and uh, the teams discuss uh, their strategy for the upcoming game Take a breath, recover, and concentrate. Orcas are pretty uh, chilled. They really look uh, relaxed. We see uh, Federico, the one, the guy uh, swimming away now. That's uh, their coach. Um, he's also working with a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, he was uh, staying with me and Lorena for one night when he arrived in uh, Berlin. So we team is talking a lot. Get ready. It's interesting how he works Ten as a coach left. and what the theory theories are. So. Five seconds to go in the mm. break, and we go in the second half here of this game of uh, Barcelona from Spain Teams ready against uh, the Colombians in blue, uh, the team Orcas. And the Orcas uh, are first at the ball and are entering uh, once again the area of uh, the Spanish basket and are already attacking the defense 
tackled away to the surface. Ball still in the possession of the Orcas. They're coming in from the close side of the close corner. From above now, trying to push it in. Yes, uh, first the uh, first throw went on the ring of the basket, but the second, uh, uh, but the, the blue ball goal then dropped number in. nineteen dropped in on the inside the basket. So th this this game will not offer a lot of surprises, I guess. Um, again, the question is, can Spain manage to break free of their own, def out of their own defense more often and challenge the Colombian basket? My guess is not that much, but you never know. And Spain is uh, really awake here. We have an attack on the close side. And uh, that first attack was uh, fended off. And uh, Colombia is uh, reorganizing. Coming again from above. Passing on to the open side player. Swimming around the basket on the open side. Ball dropped down again in the hands of the player on the open side. Nice game, but also uh, of the Colombians here back and forth. But um, the, the Spanish are really concentrating here to be in between and uh, from time to time they manage to step in now a colombian player stole the spanish basket that would be a chance yep this is uh, blue goal number 12 when you when you are under such a load of pressure in the defense you need the structure of your team to function and in the moment um, you're goal is stolen by uh, by uh, the opponent player you lose the structure and there will be a goal it's uh, pretty sure can uh, Spain tries to break uh, in the in the kick in the start of the game um, tries to kick into the Colombian half but didn't manage and we are already with Colombia back at the Spanish basket um, with an 8 0 lead they don't have to put too much effort into it, but uh, they can uh, use their advantage. And another goal here. Blue goal, number 99. Yes, uh, no surprise here. Here we go, the game uh, restarted. Spain in ball possession, and that would be a chance. Ah, that was uh, really fast intercepted here, the pass uh, by a Colombian player on the surface. And uh, Colombia switches into attack mode. Lost the ball, recover the ball. Spain is doing uh, quite well here, interfering as good as is, is possible for them. But... Uh, Again, the, the basket was stolen, and now their luck was uh, the ball was in Spanish hands. And uh, since the Colombians were concentrating on the attack, uh, they managed uh, the Spanish managed to break through to the basket of the Colombians and get really close and challenge the defense of the Colombians. Now we're on the surface, ball is dropping down and Colombia is going for a fast counter-attack. Two players, two against two. One player of Colombia on the, uh, over the basket, didn't manage the first wave, second wave coming in. But uh, Spain very well in between ball and uh, basket. Again the, ball, the basket was stolen by Colombia. Spain recovered the basket and we have a cluster in the corner of the close side going up to the surface and the ball is locked in this cluster. Another... The, the, the Colombians try to build their uh, next wave but the interception interference is uh, from Spain is very good. Now we have an attack from the open side again and the player tries to punch the ball next to the to the head into the basket didn't succeed
And again, the basket was stolen. So uh, now they're uh, really fond of the Spanish basket. And uh, ha, the player, the Colombian player lying on the basket got the ball but was uh, locked, uh, cluster locked by uh, two Spanish players. And uh, even the second one who stole the basket didn't manage uh, when she received uh, the ball to, to score very well sequence here, very well defending sequence by the Spanish here with uh, less than four minutes to go in the second half. <coughs> Quite impressive. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so uh, looks a little bit like Colombia is slowing down. <coughs> Sorry. Here we go. Colombia is coming in again uh, from the close side. Just one player. Um, teammates are not there on spot. We have three Colombian players on the close side. Ball up on the surface again. Spanish defense is pretty good in defending here and keeping up uh, their interference, their interceptions of the game of the Colombians. And it's not that easy for the players from Colombia to score. Um, them arranged around. And another score from Blue Columbia. goal number 10. White timeout. Timeout, timeout begins. <coughs> timeout for Spain. Uh, I have a comment here in the live stream chat. Video is freezing. Is it uh, working again? We had uh, two stops for some seconds. Um, hopefully, you. Hopefully, uh, the video is playing again. Please let me know, so I can inform the technicians. So um, this is the third uh, game we see here, where uh, um, where. It that's say it and don't misunderstand me, inferior team um, is doing a pretty good defense job. Uh, we saw it by uh, um, the, the game of Triton Berun against Molde. We saw it um, from um, um, against Langen. And uh, we saw it uh, from Time out over. Akaren. And uh, Spain here is doing it uh, also pretty well, even. And you would say, if you look at the score, it's a 9-0. How could they, uh, how can you say they're defending very well? Uh, they do. Otherwise, it would have been a 20-0. Because the attacks of the Colombians are relentless. And not all of them succeed. And that's the good defending work of the Spanish defense. So, Colombia, um, we, we spend a little time, a bit of time in the Colombian half, but now we're going back with, a <laughs> it looks like all the Colombian team at once to the Spanish basket and another score. Uh, let's see the replay, I guess it was. Uh, Blue goal, the, number uh, 24. Pass from the open side to the middle. Yeah, I guess it was from the close side, as far as I could see. Thank you, Juliana, uh, for the uh, feedback. Uh, the, the stream is working. Okay, same, same, same here. Um, what we see in the second half last minutes of the second half, Colombia in the attack mode and uh, messing around the Spanish basket, but uh, intercepted by Spain, by the defense. And the forechecking um, of uh, Spain is really on point. It's really uh, up, up for the task of uh, being at the right moment, at the right spot and interfering with this 
very fast attack structure of the Colombians. 40 seconds left. We have uh, guess uh, we will start stop this game with an 11-0 uh, or even uh, another one. Uh, yes, no, it's 12-0. Uh, uh, we're gonna face blue Douglas, goal uh, number 99. Uh, from the middle of the pool, a Colombian player got the ball, saw the empty basket, and the goalkeeper was on the <laughs> way to the basket. And she made it in time, but wasn't lying properly on the basket, so uh, the Colombian player had a chance to score. Game over. So it's a 12-0 for the Orcas. And uh, yes, so the Orcas uh, qualified as one of the top teams here uh, in the in the fight for the for the trophy, which is right behind me here, the trophy of the Champions Cup for the women. It was brought back from uh, uh, from Norway from uh, with Akaren, and uh, I guess Colombia. Uh, wants to know now if they uh, they can do the honor take uh, the trophy with them to Colombia. Let's see how the games in the future develop. Next game uh, game coming up is uh, Espiar Nana uh, against the uh, uh, New Jersey Hammerhead. Interesting combination. We haven't seen yet both teams played uh, already. And uh, as always, I'm curious, what's your guess? Um, which team is your, uh, would you bet your money on in this upcoming game? So let me know uh, from which part of uh, the world you're watching this live stream. And let me know if you're uh, watching it alone or uh, in a group, if you're watching it at work or uh, uh, what's your surrounding. Always curious uh, to know what our, who uh, our audience is. So we see the uh, hammerheads, no, it's Bjarnana. Um, getting in their crew concentration uh, before the game and uh, their war cry. <laughs> really important uh, this this moment for the team to um, build focus. As a, as, a, as, a, as a whole, not being uh, single players, but being a team, being as a whole. And this, this war cry or this team cry in the beginning is like, we are ready, we are up for it. And this is our game, this is our ball, and the pool belongs to us. So really important to have this, this, this second, this moment to concentrate. And I would recommend it for every team to have their proper war cry. Um, to start a game. So the referee is getting ready. This looks like uh, Horus elegantly jumping headfirst into the position. Probably means he's on the open side. Yes, uh, here we see the team list of uh, Ispior Nana and uh, the Hammerhead. So Sweden against. Uh, the United uh, States and uh, both teams are uh, pretty up for it and uh, no hesitation. What's your guess? Let me know in the uh, live stream chat. Let me know um, which is the team you would bet your money on. Um, I'm curious, 
not really, don't really know what to expect. And uh, I guess we will see soon how this game develops in this group of uh, the Swedes and the US. So referees are in the water, ball is in the middle. Yeah, referees in the water, ball in the middle, we have what we need. Thank you very much for that information. Um, we have Daniel watching from Holiday on Grand Canaria, but uh, in, in, in the internet. Okay, Hi, Daniel. Ready. Thank you for letting know. One so team ready. Vamos, uh, Hammers. And here we go. Uh, Sweden uh, first to reach the ball and going into the attack mode. But uh, already the Hammerheads try to stop their advance and not giving them the room to enter their uh, area. So we are still in the middle of the pool and the forechecking of the Hammerheads is uh, pretty uh, relentless here. It's back and forth, but none of the teams yet had the real good ball control. Here we go, Hammerheads. Yes, they, uh, no, ball control. It's, it's really like uh, both teams are struggling to to get a structure throw and white it's a free team. throw for free throw white team. the Swedish team. Which give them, uh, gives them a chance to restart and uh, enter the pool area of Sweden. But it's not that easy. Both teams seem to be uh, able to disrupt uh, the, the, the building of uh, their game. So I think this, this uh, will be interesting to see which of them is the first team to establish their game. None of them has yet as far as I can see. It's lacking structure, ball control and coherence which is due to the fact that both teams are heavily intercepting for checking, but we are now in the half of the Hammerheads. And uh, the US team is digging in in the close side, trying to build their attacks from there. And now coming from the Close side, fend it off. Coming from the middle. Yes, teammates are positioning themselves. The ball keeper is attacking. Yes, oh, that was nice. That was a really... Um, Blue team scored number eight. Really team number nice eight. movement here. Coming from uh, the side above. And you had this, you pulled up the goalkeeper and pushed the ball behind the goalkeeper into the basket. That was... Nicely executed and 1-0 uh, uh, lead for Sweden against the Hammerheads from the US. And here comes the Hammerheads. We are at the Swedish basket, uh, better to say under the Swedish basket. Two players uh, from the US are pushing into the defense. Call from the referee holding free throw, free throw for free throw. Sweden. So I'm. Um, uh, uh, it's it, the 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 favors are uh, turning a little bit here, uh, in my opinion, for uh, the Ispiriana team, and so for the Swedish team. But uh, it's no decision yet. The one-zero lead uh, is nothing with uh, altogether 15 minutes. Five minutes more, more than six minutes left in this first half, and ten minutes in the second half. But um, Sweden establishes its game. Oh, there was a ball loss of ball in the second of uh, not concentrated. The ball was pushed out of her hands by a, a U.S. player, and we are in the half of the Swedes. And uh, player from the. Hammerheads coming from above, tries to hammer the ball into the basket, tackled away. The ball is free. 
still in the hands of the Hammerheads. And uh, almost uh, Sweden recovered the ball, but it was uh, back and forth here under the basket, which is always a dangerous area to have a loose ball because when a player uh, sees the goalie exchange and he's in the right spot, he can score at once. So always try to keep it as far away as possible from your basket. And now we have a Swedish player trying to break into the half of the Hammerheads, passed on the ball to a Hammerhead player, which was not very effective, recovered it. And uh, back again, we have the ball in the hands of the Hammerheads and going for the Swedish basket. And there was an empty, oh, there was an empty basket. White and uh, that was a surprising uh, mistake here by 20. the Ispernana because uh, the U.S. player was far Time out. deeper Dark in team. the Time Swedish out. half and uh, almost half a body length uh, away from the defenders behind her. And the goalkeeper coming from above was still far away, so it was a total empty basket. And uh, that led to a 1-1 here in this first half of the Champions Cup 2022 in Berlin. So, all bets are open. And um, as far as I've seen, both teams are up for it. And both teams are able to, to turn it around in their, in their favor. 20 seconds left here in the break, and the timeout that uh, was taken uh, by um, the Swedish team. Okay. And we have uh, 21 seconds left in the first half, so this is uh, as good as over. No, sorry, there was still the the remaining time of the timeout, so we have four minutes okay. 36 Lennon. left. And here we go, game restarted. And we're in the US territory and Sweden is trying to come from above, tackled away to the surface by US players, call from the referee. Free throw, white team. Free throw, white team. So it's a free throw against uh, the Swedish team didn't see what was happening, probably pushing without ball. Not quite sure. Didn't get ready to execute. And here we go, free throw executed. Oh, the ball was, was intercepted, falling down. And uh, two Swedes are now on their way to the basket. But the, the defense made it and even made it to snatch the ball away and try to get away with it, but intercepted immediately by the Swedish players um, around her. But still the ball is in uh, US possession and the players from the US are pushing forward the ball carry on the open side, passing to the middle and going forward to the close side. Coming from above now, US player with the ball is coming from above. Again interfered by, forechecked by a Swedish player. So it's not that easy for them uh, to break through, but they have the will and they have the bite to, to dig into the, the defense of the Swedes. So they really have to be careful not to make any mistakes that could be exploited by the US team playing here. A very good rugby even though they are lacking behind a little bit in uh, behind uh, the the Swedes. One one, and we uh, have two and a half minutes left in the first half. All bets are open. Both teams are able to defend and attack and to win. So. Uh, 
US is uh, lost the ball in their attack, and we have a fast attack that uh, stopped. Uh, don't know why the player stopped uh, three meters in front of the basket of the US, but the second player came in, and there was an attack from above on the goalie and uh, scored score for scored the Swedish team. The number 20. So it's a 2-1 for Sweden. Blue team number 28 scored. Nicely done. And uh, a kind of attack um, you are not allowed to, to lag behind. You are not allowed to make a mistake. Otherwise, you catch a goal. But... The U.S. is now on the attack and can return the favor. Let's see if they're able to equalize to a 2-2. One minute left here in the first half. Last minute. The U.S. still in attack mode. They are not really finding the, the weak spot to break into the defense. They are swimming around, being under constant attack by the Swedes, which makes it difficult for them to concentrate and build up their own pattern. Free throw, white team. Free throw, white team. Clock is uh, ticking in the first half. Nine seconds left. Blue team. So nothing's going to happen here. Free throw executed. One and zero. And break. Halftime break. S change Half of sides. Break. Two teams will change their sides. Huh. So I guess, um, yes, like I said in the beginning, the advantage is uh, altogether a little bit in favor of uh, the Swedish team. The Hammerheads are not at the same level as uh, Swedes in the first half. They are uh, reacting and their attacks on uh, the Swedish basket are not uh, the, 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 the powerful uh, execution they need to score. The score they did, uh, like we just saw in the replay, was a, a very lucky ball that went in the hand of a player who just punched in a counter-attack from the half to the empty basket and scored, which is really something you uh, can uh, be thankful for as a player. <laughs> Perfect condition. So the Swedes are... Uh, <laughs> discussing their strategy fine-tuning here, preparing their war cry, getting into the cluster, putting their hands together. Is Brianna. So it's the second day here of Champions Cup 2022. Um, all the teams we are watching now already had uh, games yesterday and our the exhaustion uh, starts to wear in. You, you sum up uh, uh, little injuries like cuts, like uh, uh, rubbed uh, uh, skin, like uh, little, little punches, not, even not from, from the opponent, but, uh, you know, in fighting at the basket, you turn around and you, you punch your shoulder in the basket by this move. So these little 
I won't call them injuries, but it's, uh, you feel it. You feel it adding up after the first day. You feel it the second day and the third day. It's hard again to, to reach that level of preparedness and, and get the stiffness out of your, your joint. Hammerheads and ball possession. Trying to get into the half of uh, Sweden. Good interception game by the uh, Swedish team. Call from the referee. And it's a free throw against the Hammerhead. Free throw. Free throw, dark team. So uh, Sweden still in ball possession, coming in in wave now in the first wave, massive wave here from the ghost side. Interesting, out of this very massive wave of uh, Swedish players, it's like a swish out uh, of a, a hammerhead player with the ball, very well done by this player and we are already in the half of the Swedes. That was uh, very well done. And uh, give them a chance to give a get out in the surprise attack before uh, Ispirinana can uh, establish their uh, defense lines and keep uh, keep them at bay. But uh, wasn't successful in the first run. And uh, now we have a uh, fighting on a close side on the. Sorry, was a little bit distracted. We're back in the uh, US area and Sweden comes from uh, the close side, above from the close side. But the hammerheads really prevent this uh, easy attack and the second wave comes in. Wow, that was that was uh, close when the change of the goalkeeper. Oh, this this attack is heavy, and uh, how the player, the Swedish player on the open side, didn't see the other one on the close side trying to push the ball in, and she could have had a, a little gap pushing the ball. That would have been easy for her, but she didn't see the ball, didn't uh, react to the touch of the ball, and the Swedes are back at the surface and uh, coming down with their second attack wave here in the sequence. But the forechecking of the hammerheads does it make, doesn't make it easy for them. And uh, like we see now, the hammerheads recover the ball and are on the way to the Swedish basket. So Sweden with a 2-1 uh, lead is in the advantage, but they have to be careful because the hammerheads um, really like their shark uh, name they have. They smell blood and they really want to go for the goal and they want to score to equalize and to get into the 2-2 um, in this uh, second half here in this game, Sweden against the US. Ball is uh, above the goalkeeper. Oh, that was close. That was really close in the exchange. The US player was above the basket. Uh, ball was uh, loose there, but the goalkeeper made it in time. But it was uh, this, this little window you need as an attacker to score. That was dangerous and close. Now we have a uh, cluster on the surface and uh, two players fighting for the ball, swimming on the surface but drifting slowly in the direction of the uh, US basket. Ball dropped down in the hand and was recovered by a Swedish player. And the teams now change sides. US in defense and Sweden in the offense again, coming in from the close side. Pushing in really hard now from the close side. Five minutes left. Ispjörnana has to control the ball 
and keep up the pace so they don't give a chance to the US to score. But here again, as we've seen before, suddenly there is a, a US player popping out of these clusters, uh, carrying the ball, and this is uh, very well done. This is really uh, difficult to escape these uh, tight clusters and carrying the ball. Very well done. And the US player uh, stole the basket from uh, the Swedes, but the ball was too far away. There was a good chance again. So uh, U.S. is getting closer and threatening the basket here of the Swedes. They have to be careful to hold on to their lead of one point. And again, we are at the U.S. basket. And uh, attack from the open side. But the interference of the forechecking, of the defending of U.S. is heavy. So no success here in scoring. Sweden still in ball possession. And working really hard to open a gap and uh, to create the chance to score here. Middle of the pool. Two players fighting for the ball. Uh, relief players coming in, helping out. U.S. is holding on to the ball. And we're in the half of the Swedes. Ball carrier from the U.S. is uh, in the corner on the surface. But uh, the Swedish forechecking attack is quite, uh, quite far away. And now we have a fast attack on the basket, uh, there's a gap in the basket, uh, but it was closed quite fast by a goalkeeper. And uh, the ball is locked uh, between two players, which are drifting to the closed side and away from the Swedish basket. So Sweden is in ball possession, coming back to the U.S. basket. Call from the referee, heavy attack here from the U.S., heavy forechecking. Free throw, looks like free throw against Sweden. Free throw, white team. Free throw, free throw, white team. Yep. Yep, free throw, white team. Time out, white team. Time out, white team. So the US uh, has taken a, a timeout of one minute. Um, they, yep, yeah, that's what you should do. And the, the, the point of the game, they are, they are uh, lacking behind one goal. The time is ticking in favor of Sweden and now is the time you should start to put more energy, more effort into the forward movement and uh, take less care of the defense. Because like Lisa said, and I repeat it, and uh, have the same understanding of the game, um, when you have only minutes left in the game and you are lacking behind uh, one goal, you need to step up and risk something Two you seconds. you have to go forward to score otherwise you lose the game and if you if you ready. catch a goal with a, a, a weakened defense you lose three one four one but nevertheless you lose so the game so but if you score you have team. a chance to challenge um, the other team again so let's see if the Hammerheads are using uh, the last two minutes to do exactly that, throw everything they have forward and uh, try to force uh, gaps into the defense of the Swedish team. Nope, that's th th this would be the wrong direction for the uh, US. We're again at the US basket in the corner of the US basket and the Swedes are uh, holding on to the ball 
for checking by the US is uh, understandably very uh, heavy because they need the ball now to go for the Swedish basket to score. And if uh, Sweden holds on to the ball and uh, pass between them, control the ball, the time is ticking in their favor. One and a half minute, less than one and a half minute left. So this is not enough um, effort for the well, they, they do a big effort. I don't want to estimate what they're doing here, but it's it's not enough to turn the tides around to change uh, the game in their favor. And the uh, problem is Sweden knows the same, so they just need to Free keep throw the game white team like holding. this. Okay, Free one throw minute left. Team Free holding. throw for the white team. That would be the moment as coach I would tell the team, okay, Everybody, everything goes forward now. Everybody in the water goes into the attack mode. Don't care about the defense. Don't care about your own goal. Go fast and go strong with everything you have in this last 30 seconds. Now let's see if they do it. Come on, yes. Nope. Very nice done, intercepted by Sweden. And uh, I guess this, this is the decision. Was there a call from the referee? Didn't hear anything. Picture is frozen right now. Uh, we don't see the... Uh, separate. Separate. So the teams are separated to their sides. Even though it's only 12 seconds left here in the in the second half and uh, the team leader of the Swedes was talking to the referees and both r both underwater referees are at the surface talking to the head coach, uh, to the uh, deck referee. But it's only 12 seconds left, so... Okay. It's not... Uh, White free throw. White free throw. Okay, another free throw. Free throw, White but free 12 throw. seconds are not enough, I'd say. Never say never. There are uh, miracles, but uh, time is ticking. So, come on. Where are the six players that have to be underwater now in the US team? Where are you? I only count uh, one, two, three. Yes. Game over. Game over. Very well played uh, on both sides, but uh, as we've seen, there was a, um, how can you call it, uh, uh, a little bit of a, um, advantage, let's say, let's say experience, let's say in, in uh, speed, team coherence, um, for the Swedish team. Okay, next game coming up um, is Malch against uh, Wales. I haven't seen uh, Wales playing yet. I didn't do the comments for the Wales teams. That was Lisa with Jared, um, and I didn't have time to watch them. So I'm curious about that. We see the replays now of this. Uh, just uh, past game Sweden against US and I'll be back in a second.
Line team ready? Line team ready? So, uh, missed uh, the start of the game, I'm sorry about that, but there are certain needs. Here in the game, uh, Mulch in uh, blue against Wales in white, and uh, started just uh, half a minute ago, and uh, Wales is in the offense now, pushing uh, the defense of Mulch on the basket, in front of the basket, but uh, as far as I can see, there's no real danger yet for the... German basket, uh, the cluster on the surface on the closed side, and it's a, a mulch player, a ball dropped out, caught again in this cluster on the surface. Mulch in ball possession, on the in the corner on the closed side, and already the, it's really how fast the the team players click into their positions as soon as the ball is close uh, the wall is close to the uh, open end basket and uh, this is quite hectic now uh, the defense of wales is struggling oh, and the goal yeah that was uh, the 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 goalie exchange number 15 tried to push in on the on the other side let's see it in the replay here and uh, there seemed to, there has I to be a, a free gap That was uh, a clear sign here um, in the beginning of this game. Uh, who's the boss in the pool? And uh, curious about the answer from Wales. March can uh, recover the ball in the middle of the pool and is in ball possession, doing the same thing again, establishing their uh, attack mode. The players are uh, clicking in and coming from the close side and another goal. There was a uh, yeah, textbook-like uh, uh, attack and uh, Wales does not seem to have a, a good Number remedy seven. Seven. To, to prevent these uh, forceful, fast, relentless attacks um, from the Mulch team. So 2-0 um, uh, after one and a half, about three minutes into the first half. Um, that was uh, pretty, pretty, pretty clear. So, für alle ähm, deutschen Zuschauer auch einen kurzen kleinen äh, Kommentar auf Deutsch. Ähm, sagt mir bitte, woher ihr zuschaut. Wahrscheinlich haben wir Malche äh, Zuschauer, aber wahrscheinlich auch andere aus ganz Deutschland. Ähm, Malch hat hier wirklich seine Dominanz im Pool sehr schnell, sehr klar etabliert. Auch jetzt wieder in dieser Szene, die wir hier sehen, der Angriff kommt und äh, die 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 Mannschaft der Wales hat gar keine Chance, überhaupt ihre, ihre Verteidigung sauber zu etablieren. Das sind schon die Malcher da und äh, hauen das Ding mit, mit so einer Überzeugung und Klarheit rein. Es, es gibt aber überhaupt keinen äh, Zweifel hier an den Bewegungen. Es ist super sauberes Textbuch, äh, Rugby, das hier gespielt wird von Malch. Und wir haben ähm, jetzt nach... Äh, Vier Minuten in der ersten Halbzeit 3-0-Führung für Malch. Viel Spaß beim Zuschauen und äh, freue mich auf eure Kommentare in, uh, in the Livestream-Chat. So, back to English. That was a little bit of German. Uh, my uh, mother tongue. And I'm back in the game here uh, with an uh, uh, English comment. So, Wales is a little bit overrun, overwhelmed here by the fast, forceful, bodily uh, attacks um, from the Mulch team. And the, 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 like a scene we saw just now, the, the whole team from Wales was on the surface. Uh, cannot do that against a team with the speed and the experience like Mulch, super dangerous. Very well done by Mulch here. And uh, Wales needs to find an answer to deal with these uh, attacks. Uh, 
And we see the, the same uh, situation. It's uh, Mulch is building up his uh, power and uh, coming in from uh, above. And uh, I'm sure in the second there's another uh, Mulch player on the other side. Ball is loose on the close side and I have uh, Jared with me who uh, Light will jump in Holding. in the comments. Holding Light and a free throw, throw against Mulch. So this could be uh, a chance for uh, Wales to get a little bit of uh, structure into their attack game now. So welcome, Jared. G'day. How you going? Ah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm oh. totally fine. It's Champions Cup. I'm, uh, like, excited. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> Very good. So let's go into the game. Uh, it's already a 3-0 start uh, for Mulch and was very like establishing their control of the pool. Um, established uh, very, very well played. And Wales does not seem uh, to have an answer to react uh, in a way that could stop uh, the attacks and the game of Mulch. Do you know the Wales players? Uh, yeah, quite well. Um, uh, we played Na the Australian national team played against them a couple of weeks ago at our first training camp, um, sort of in preparation for Champions Cup as well. So, yeah. Oh, uh, empty basket. Yes, basket. Uh, yes. So, wha what's your impression uh, of Wales? Uh, I don't know how good you know Malch, but Malch is like the German champion. It's like a, a really established team, um, and Wales seems a little bit overwhelmed here. By yeah, the speed. usually the that sort of counter-attack doesn't Time happen out. on their team, Why? so um, yeah, maybe just a Why? bit of over-commitment. Yep. Um, yeah, unfortunately I missed the first three goals. Um, well, it we was a little yeah. bit, it was not that easy like the, the first yeah. one you saw, so uh, Marge had to work for it, yep. but uh, it was the first goal happened in the first minute and they went in and it was textbook-like uh, going in on the first Time attack players on both sides uh, passing back and forth and the one behind uh, on the open side uh, next to the basket scored yep. and it was like bam 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 yeah just textbook yeah so uh, what, what what would be the reaction possibilities for Wales here in your experience as you know the team um, they would play a bit more possession and just yeah quick movement around the court um, you know, there's a lot of fit players and fast, fast players on that team. Um, but yeah, just possession, good passing, and and speed. Um, yeah, if they can get into that, um, you know, they might be able to fight back. Yeah, but they 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 give me the, the me the impression they are not yet in the game. Yeah, that it's okay. like uh, not that they are asleep, but they are like, uh, okay, what's happening? We mm. we they react. And yep. they don't uh, find the, the, the means to establish their own game. Yeah. So Malch is coming from above now. Again, uh, uh, Malch players are around the basket. And uh, Wales gives them here m much too much space, in my opinion, around and behind the basket. It's another dangerous situation, but pretty well uh, um, solved by the defense, so the attacker from uh, the open side didn't score. And uh, the next wave comes in. And this is really heavy. This, is, it, this looks like uh, there is a lot of pressure here. Not like uh, rough playing, but uh, the, the, the pressure of these bodies against each other is, is you can, you can feel it by watching it. Yeah, the constant pressure is just, yeah. Relentless. Relentless. But, uh, oh, they stole the basket. Malch stole the basket now. And uh, this didn't uh, help Malch. Oh! The, the ball was... Uh, the, 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 the Wales received the ball, tried to push it away from the basket. It was kicked by a Wales player back to the basket. And that was a dangerous situation because there was no goalkeeper. A little bit of hectic now around and um, uh, in the open side of the basket. So, really, Wales have to... Uh, to chill down their game but it's so difficult because they yeah. are under constant con uh, attack heavy four checking from Malsh at their basket 
and you see them massing there. You see uh, the Wales players are uh, almost not visible in, in these uh, waves of March players going in. But I have to admit, it's not that easy anymore for March to score. In the beginning, it was like uh, uh, a little bit easier, it seemed. But now Wales is waking up. Yeah, getting their full defense in. See, this is more of the defense that we see from the Wales. Very strong. What is the average age, do you know, of the players? Or um, probably mid to late 20s. All right. Yeah. So young players. Yep. Yeah. But some have been playing for, you know, 10 years or so. Nice. As well. Yeah, you see it now. They, they can bring it back. They bring it in the water now because the... the Attacks from the Malta are the same as in the beginning, but the defense from Wales is up for it and even managed now to break out. We're in the middle of the pool and uh, Wales managed to break through the forechecking defense of March and we're in the half of March of the in the pool and they are going for the basket of March. And half time. Wow. Good. Difficult situation for Wales, I guess. Yeah. Because a 4 0 lead uh, is, is solid. Um, March wouldn't have to do any big effort now, even. And we see the replays now of the goals from the March team. This one didn't succeed in the first run. So. Defense is working now with Wales. That's what we saw here in the end of the first half. Now we need to see their offense capability to challenge Malch and to pin them on the basket so they create probably a chance to score and uh, to, to keep up uh, with the Malch game. So I'm curious what they will uh, do in the second half. What will be uh, your advice uh, as, you in you as you go in as a coach with Wales now? What would you tell them? Um... Yeah, just be confident in their own game. Um, you know, they're getting a bit rattled in their defense. Um, yep. And just as they burst out of out of defense, um, yeah, being confident in those passes and the support. Um, yeah, just at the end there, you saw a bit of hesitation, um, even in that last counterattack. So hopefully they can, yeah, capitalize on those breakouts. And, um, yeah because they could do some amazing counterattacks as well. Okay. Got a lot of fast players in the team. Do you think, uh, do, do these uh, players, uh, have they heard of Malch? Is this something like, uh, you know, we yeah. in the scene we know the top teams. So is there respect? Is there, uh, not intimidation, but like a little bit of a, uh, uh, oh, oh, we're playing against Malch? Uh, maybe, but they did, they have been here for a week already. Ah, yes, I saw, yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, them on Facebook, yeah. Playing against Kerfoot as well, so. Um, I think they sort of knew what was coming. Um, okay. So, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure if there's that sort of, you know, overarching intimidation potentially, but um, I think they knew what was coming. Um, yeah. Let's see uh, their capabilities to adapt. Uh, we saw that that's uh, an amazing feature with the Colombian team, how they adapt to every new opponent and their gaming style. And let's see if Wales is able to um, turn it a little bit around, establish their defense and go from there, uh, start from there to attack and stay in the mulch uh, area of the basket. I'm, I'm pretty curious and I don't think we haven't seen the potential yet that uh, Wales is able to put in the water. Mulch did, I guess. <laughs> Light team ready? Dark team ready? Jared ready? Ready. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, March in ball possession. Uh, and, and what are your what are your thoughts on Malsh? Like, um, have they been playing over the the weekend so far, and how they're playing in this game? I, I was surprised in the first game against uh, the Sea Lions um, with a only let's say only a one zero. Yeah. I think uh, March was a little bit. Uh, not sure how to deal with the game of the sea lions, which was very uh, um, aggressive in a good way. Even though March was so Light much in the room. in the in the attack, they didn't score that much as they wanted. So mm. I was a little bit surprised about this game. The rest uh, was what I expected. And here I see uh, March the way I know them. Yep. 
So again, uh, Wales, and no, not again, but <laughs> Wales is in ball possession and zooming in on the mulch game. That's what we just talked about. That's yep. what they have to do. And this is fast. And this is, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, this is what we want to see um, if a game, uh, if a team challenges mulch. So you can see three, you know, three Wales players down. This is what we typically see in their game. They have a lot of support and fast passing. Yep. But uh, the, the forechecking the of Marsh is also really Very relentless and, and painful to watch that the Wales players are really, uh, it, 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 it's instantly you are attacked if you uh, receive the ball. Yeah. And this makes it difficult. And uh, it happens like this. So Marsh uh, recover the ball and uh, oh, the Bayer is locked. That, that gives him a little bit of time to react to the change of the game. And we go up to the service. Marsh players holding on to the ball, attacked by two uh, Wales players and we have a cluster on the surface i hate these clusters i always leave them at once yes it's uh, no use in my opinion yeah good support waiting underneath ready yeah. for the pass down yeah. okay. there's a call from the referee no yeah, 24 two minutes oh 24 from mulch roughing there's a 24 on Wales. Can you read it? I don't have my classes. 24. Is it 24 on the Wales? Oscar Garcia. Time out. Blue. Oh, time, time out. If blue. If but no 24 on Marsh. So we'll see. Yeah, the numbers are not right, but I guess ah, okay. if uh, Blue uh, took a time out now, the, the time penalty is on the Marsh side. Otherwise, I don't think it would be used to take a time out. Um, because you would use the advantage to go in the game as fast as possible to overrun yep. the team before well, they it. can reorganize. Yeah. So um, we don't have the right numbers here, so we guess uh, Malch is, and uh, we have no picture now. <laughs> Who needs a picture? Jared, let's okay. improvise. <laughs> Tell me about the game. <laughs> um, yes, um, Malch has to reorganize now. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you and your team, uh, do you have a, 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 a plan B if uh, one of your players has to go onto the penalty bench? Um, usually, in our, yeah, so I'm, I'm from the Victoria Sea Dragons yeah. male team, so um, usually, yeah, we, we chuck a forward out. Yeah. Um, yeah. If it's, well, sorry, yeah, chuck a forward out, so we've got Light the full rebound. defense. Yep. Um, that's usually out. I think that's a pretty standard yeah, strategy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and depending on what time of the game it is, uh, playing more possession if you're one player down. Yeah. Just getting the ball and... Um, Survive yeah, the two minutes. It. Yeah. yeah. Looks like two metres. He, di yeah. he didn't even play the ball and you attacked him. Yeah. How it's could you? It's not the signal, <laughs> it's the play of the ball. Stop the clock. It was like, Stop how could you? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't no, even play it, poor he guy. He didn't play it. You <laughs> attacked him before he played up. the ball. <laughs> So for those that Sorry. don't know at no, home... No, two minutes? Really? For those that don't know at home, a free throw. Um, the, play, the the team taking the free throw will hold up the ball, wait for the signal from the referee, wait, wait, yeah. and they've got a two-metre circle of, you know... Yeah, um, it's, it's no like a ball. Like, it's yeah, like a round display. That, that the opponents can't come into until they pass. Yeah. Um, and the Mulch player just attack before the signal. So now Mulch have two players out. So just only four in the water at the moment. You think two out? Yeah, two. Yeah, there was yeah. a... Ah, yeah, yeah, you're right. There was really the two out. The ref was pretty because of harsh the wrong on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Wow, let's see Mulch under pressure. <laughs> this is tough. Especially with no time out time. Though, so they had to rearrange on the fly. Yeah. Ah, oh, this is a chance for Wales. This is definitely a chance for Wales. That is tough. So yeah, uh, Mulch will hold on to the ball and uh, try not to risk... Uh, risk some tricky passes. Yes, yeah. like that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're still but it doing quite well. It's a lot of pressure if you only have four uh, players in the water and the other team has six. Mm. So you're an, on every way you're overwhelmed by the numbers. And... Uh, 
probably Malch really has just hold on to the ball and the time is ticking in the favor 10 seconds for the first player in the penalty and 45 so yes they will make it unscathed I think so we get one player in now oh that was a oh nice one Th these moments decide sometimes a goal if you can do something unexpected and then change the tides. But it, the Wilson Minich, uh, there was one player punching out the ball from a Malch player, and uh, but the, the, the Wales team didn't switch in the attack mode fast enough. But now we have uh, Wales on the attack. Shallow nice, Wales. nice pass behind the back to the player on the open side, but didn't succeed. And looks like now Malsh has the full team in again. Six players. Yeah, so that was, uh, I guess, the chance for uh, Wales. I'm a little bit uh, surprised they didn't go in with, with more uh, pressure, with more like uh, throw everything in, because with a 4-0 yeah. lead of Malch, you need to throw in everything when you have a chance like this. Yeah. Some good pressure from the from the whales there. Yep. Maintaining possession while attacking. I guess even Malch has to reorganize now with the next two players because the shock, the moment is, is there when you're just like, okay, um, next step. Because when you have a double time penalty, that's, that hurts. Nice attack here from uh, Wales. There's a huge cluster under the mulch basket. That's always dangerous because in these up clusters, if they drift upwards, the goalie can easily be ripped from the basket and that would be a chance to, to score, but not here. Mulch is in ball possession and is breaking free in direction of the Wales basket, intercepted in the middle of the pool. Nice for checking here from the Wales side. Would you say that this this uh, half is a little more more possession in the uh, UNSW attacking side? Oh. The goal. Oh, we get Malsh get another goal. Yes. Yeah. Would you say that there's more possession goal in the attacking goal. half of yeah. the Wales this this half? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So they they uh, really tried, but probably Malsh. We saw it in some teams now. They let them attack yep. um, and, and uh, give them the, the illusion they are in attack mode and then switch into counter attack. And it's for some teams, it's difficult to switch back into defense. And yep. that's the moment you can use to score. Yeah, I guess especially when they're in the lead, they can try those, yep. those different things. Yep. Michael, I don't know what is a German textbook. You want to learn German, want to uh, um, uh, learn German, or uh, do you want uh, the the tactics and strategies? What is a German textbook? Jared, do you know? Not sure. Maybe he's referring to when uh, we commented saying it's textbook textbook goal. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. true. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that textbook. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. So the this is how you do a textbook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I will look for that. Okay, call from the referee. We have uh, less roughing. than two minutes left. Roughing. Uh, and the warning was for? The Wales, I believe. Five zero. And again, question for you, Jared. Um, in this situation, would you uh, risk everything and try to score? If you could, uh, another goal. Uh, it's, it's hard for yeah. Wales. Number 10. Because now, with the, with the when they restart the game, Wales will have ball possession. Ten. I would throw everything forward I have. Yeah. Uh, because you, if you lose 6-0 or 8-0, catch a goal without defense, don't mind. Go forward and try to score. Mm. That would be what I... Uh, recommend uh, what I recommend to my team if I would be in the place of Wales. Yeah, just see what they can do in the last few yep, minutes. But they are, look, they are really going in there in numbers. Yeah. Yeah, it's really open now. It's really like uh, that. But uh, March knows this too. 
yeah. so uh, they they even uh, <laughs> they even turn it around and go in the offense and put pressure on Wales and pin them on their uh, basket. It's Thirty seconds left. It's not much time, and uh, Wales would need a miracle even to score once now. Fifteen seconds on March scores again. Wow! Yes, yeah. uh, they are. Uh, Goal number four, Fia. We see the replay here. March Bay received the ball very deep in the pool, and he goes directly to the back on the open side of the goalkeeper and uh, textbook, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> Thank you, Jamila, um, for the compliment to the video stream quality. We said it yesterday, the first day in the Champions Cup is always... Uh, uh, we are plagued with uh, glitches and uh, problems because every, until everything runs, we build up the whole system on Thursday uh, and on Friday the game starts and then we see the things that are not working out after some time. And uh, yeah, we try to improve. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot more like graphics and stuff. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah, replay. Yeah. Yes, so these things are all in and uh, working, and it will be the perfect live stream on Sunday. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> You've jinxed it now. Yeah, <laughs> I did a lot, actually. Okay, next team coming up. Um, uh, next game is uh, Hesu, and uh, I will not try to um, say the name, the whole, the whole name. name. No, nope. uh, Lisa's is not here to do that. And uh, Aqua Quick. So, yeah, that will be interesting because uh, I guess these teams know each other and probably played against each, against each other. Um, where's, uh, where's Aqua Quick from again? Um, um, it's the Danish team. Danish. And uh, Hesu is uh, Rixu. Hesu Rixu. Because uh, when uh, I was really surprised, I didn't see the. the the players list before and I was walking in I only knew Finnish team is Hasu I was walking in I saw Jim Holmbeck Tom Holmbeck and all the other guys from Rixu that nice. played in the last Champions Cups and I was like hey are you yes we are <laughs> <laughs> so I guess these teams are on a pretty equal level You want a coffee, Jared? No, I'm no. good, thank you. <laughs> we are uh, here served for the coffee. Again, I get me a coffee and uh, leave you to it, Jared. No. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we're almost ready to start the next game. Let us know where you're watching from in the comments. Got a few. Looks like we've got a few Australians up. Oh, what time is it there? Oh, 10:30. Not bad. Do we have any Finnish Hasu or Aqua Quick supporters? So, here I'm back again. Did you miss me, Jared? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My heart, I think everyone else My heart well. is beating faster now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is? have you seen a lot of uh, games already? Uh, did you watch a, a lot bit. of them? Yeah. Um, what, what was yeah, your... Mainly around the Australian teams. Okay. Um, but, yeah. Understandable. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> But uh, w which was your favorite so far, what you have seen in, in the games? Um, I know, I think, I think the first game with the, with the UNSW Wales play was quite good. Yep. It was a good game, nice tight game. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm biased, so I'm talking about the Australian teams. Um, and the, yeah, and the girls 
last night against uh, the Victoria Sea Dragons against Akron. Yep. They played yep. very well. Very so, well, um, yes. That was yeah. impressive. Yep. Very exciting. Have you seen the Colombians yet playing? Uh, yes. Yeah, they're, they're doing very well. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's think I, the, the game I saw was a, um, yeah, a bit one-sided. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and just the yeah, speed. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's really it's amazing what they yeah. what they developed and how they uh, because I know them for ten years uh, th since they are coming to the Champions Cup and the beginning was a different team. Okay, let's go into the game here. Aqua Quick and White and uh, Hesu from Finland in uh, blue and uh, well the Finns are under pressure here on their basket because Aqua Quick wants to know how it feels to score against Hesu. Um, really fast, really uh, powerful attack on the basket, probing, testing um, what do we have here in the defense. But uh, Hesu now uh, recovered from the first shock. <laughs> yeah, and shock, hold but uh, holding yeah. well. Yeah, and uh, they are tough guys and they are experienced guys. Yeah, good structured defense, the Finnish team. But um, Aquakvik is still in ball possession and Hesu is trying to get hold of the ball. Succeeded now, they did. Uh, ball is uh, not really safe. Now it is safe in the hands of a Hesu player right in front of their baskets, but still the pressure is high from Aqua Quick. Wow, the forward checking is relentless and Aqua Quick recovered the ball. Looking for support there, but got a couple more players from Aqua Quick coming in now. Being held up in the closed side. So um, they are uh, trying to start. Uh, Aqua Quick is trying to start from the close side, from the corner, to uh, get closer to the finish basket. But they are not succeeding. The finish for checking is now uh, very well installed. They give them room. They are rarely yeah. Aqua Quick is on the heavy attack. They're very static in that corner. Yeah. But uh, Hesu does not manage to get the ball. They do not manage to get away. Mm. And uh, this is dangerous because it's a question of time until Aqua Quick has a chance to get close to the basket. It might be a it minor be mistake. A yeah. Yeah. Heavy fighting. That's exhausting to watch. It's probably what we're expecting. Yep. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's, uh, I think w w w if uh, Hesu managed to... We have a dark free throw. Dark free okay, throw. Okay, now we will see uh, how. Uh, I believe it's holding. Dark free throw holding. Manages to uh, attack the. No, uh, attacking equipment. Dark free throw. Attacking equipment. Danish basket. Let's see the defense of Aqua Quick now against Hesu. All right. Hesu is going in uh, with a lot of strength, but... Uh, it's like uh, Aqua Quick have recovered the ball, but scrum over the basket. Dangerous situation uh, if you have... Uh, a goalie or a back in that scrum. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So ball is still in the cluster. Yes, Hesu recovered the ball. It's going in uh, really fast on the goalkeeper. That is an was an attack on the head, probably advantage. Uh, has a player, another has a player on top of the goalkeeper. Number 86 again. Looks like they recovered the ball second time. But the, 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 the we see almost the same situation as we saw on the, the other side um, when uh, Akko Quick was attacking. Yeah. Um, the Hesu is a little bit more aggressive on the basket than Aqua Quick was on the on the finish basket, but oh. no score yet. Looks like a good pass over to the open side, but unfortunately got knocked out. This is a, a really how yeah. can you exp how can you describe it? it? It's 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 fast, but it's not fast like the the uh, Colombian rugby. It's it's it's, it's really 
aggressive yeah. short movements in a close quarter. So it looks exhausting. And we're still on the uh, Danish uh, in the Danish holding. area, holding and a free throw against uh, White free Finnish throw team. Holding, light free throw, holding. <laughs> I guess in this game, Jared, we only will see a change of side through three throws. Through three throws, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really good possession around the basket from both teams so far. Quite quite equal, you could say. Yes, Peter, that's what we are. We are sharks and uh, piranhas going for the food. And our food are golds. <laughs> yeah, Peter, we are. It's our first time watching, Peter. So let us know how you found the sport. Was it just through a random YouTube hole? Or are you watching a friend? And uh, same, same. Um, uh, Aquahuig is attacking. Dark free throw. And we have a change of a side. Dark free throw. Through a free throw. That's really funny. None of the both teams made it uh, to the other side on their own power. They only did it uh, through a free throw. <coughs> it's a good method of counterattack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting way uh, to, to change the sides. Okay. Now it's again up to uh, the Finns to try to score here they come from the close side and there are always three of them uh, quite tight around uh, the the aqua quick basket going in in waves next one coming in but the four checking makes it difficult for them to get close enough uh, to the basket and uh, aqua quick is really doing a got good job here to put them under pressure and the hesse hesse players don't uh, get enough support. So we saw that again in the, in the first attack. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. First good time we cross the pool by uh, with Un a team on a counter attack. Unaided by yeah. a free throw. Unaided. Yes. Unaided. Call from the referee. Attack it's to the head. Dark free throw. Let's go back to Aqua Quick. Dark free throw. It's a pretty uh, equal uh, level we're facing here, in my uh, point of view. And it can be easy. One goal decides the game if uh, one is lucky and the other one makes a mistake. Very fast attack, uh, played to the player on the basket, uh, over the basket, the goalkeeper. And uh, it's, it's get more and more physical in these closed uh, cluster uh, kind of uh, attacks. A lot of players here, a lot of quick, hard movements. We're on the surface in the close corner. Ball is on the surface in a lockup. Hey, hey! Sorry. Roughing. Light free throw. Like Lisa Roughing. said, uh, the referees uh, talk to themselves and uh, they said we have to stop. Uh, if the, the escalation really fast. So yep. if we see uh, um, roughing, we go in at once. No warning. Yeah, I guess we saw that in a previous game with the yeah. second exclusion exactly, from Walsh yeah. when they attacked in the free throw. Exactly. So the referees are saying, don't mess with us. In the middle of the pool, Hesu wanted to change uh, the uh, area, but stopped by uh, Aqua Quick. We're back at the finish basket. And... Uh, Again, good support for Aqua Quick. Yeah. The basket. Actually, the support uh, of their uh, offense is better than the one of Hesu, but the attacks on the uh, basket itself are uh, more aggressive uh, from the Hesu side. Interesting uh, variation in both teams. So one attack from uh, Aqua Quick after the other, but uh, tackled or. Uh, well, uh, checked away by Hesu. We are now above uh, the Finnish basket. As we already said, dangerous situation as the ball drops down and the defense has to be in position all the time because it happens so fast if a ball falls around. Like here, very well reacted from the exchange player. He already he stopped the ball coming in from uh, 
the aqua weak oh, player. Pasu has got the ball doing a fast counter on the surface. Manages to get. Oh, he stopped pretty much all the way to the basket. <laughs> all the way. <laughs> they don't let him down. Yeah. About two uh, aqua weak players holding uh, the uh, Hesu player from uh, diving. Wow, the level of uh, close holding body movements is really uh, exhausting to watch. And half time. Wow. Exciting game, isn't it? Yeah. It's really, uh, to watch it is... Uh, Thanks. Wow. I uh, would, lo would love time. to have a look now at the, at the players, if they are exhausted as I feel. Okay. This is a new addition, the, the pool, the mobile pool cam. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, that's, that's also new. I love it a lot because it gives a little bit of the atmosphere um, you have here in the Champions Cup. It's beautiful. And uh, the little window we have down there. That's a new one today as well. Yes, it? yes, yes. Tomorrow we will have 3D simulations <laughs> of the game. <laughs> <It'll be laughs> Holograms, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that would be nice. That would be uh, uh, irritating, I guess. Okay, they don't look that exhausted, the Finnish players. They are really a, a nice group of guys, really funny. I talked a lot uh, with them uh, on the in Graz at the uh, World Championship. And they are really like, uh, 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 they are like uh, grown-up boys. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's really, really nice to, to yeah, be around them. When we played, we played them in the uh, World Cup, uh, yep. World Champs yep. last, uh, yeah, last time. And after they beat us, we were on the tramp on the way home. <laughs> they were playing music out loud and they, <laughs> yeah. they chucked on a, an Aussie song just to take the piss out of us. So <laughs> it, was, uh, it was good. <laughs> yeah, really nice. Really funny. Really, uh, uh, yeah, good bunch. Really like them. So, Hesu is uh, pretty chilled. One minute. And uh, the war cry. Something ununderstandable. Oh, short. <laughs> Do they have a longer version? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, I've never heard it. I was just wondering. I right heard now some screaming that. yesterday around the floor. I wasn't sure ah. who, who, what team that was. <laughs> they were getting pumped up. But yeah. What is your, what's the war cry of your team? Oh, it's pretty simple. I think it's just dragons. <laughs> well, dragons are a powerful species, so you just have to know their name. Yeah. The whales, the whales have some good, good uh, cheer songs that they sing in the comps. So, um, <laughs> yeah. It's unfortunate in Berlin. You would have a lot more Australians here. Which <laughs> change? I'll take them off the right. Second half now. And I'm uh, curious if we see a Both change. Ready, I think we will see uh, one score, and this will be the decision of this game. Not more. Okay, Hesu with a high speed attack so through the pool um, on the Aqua Quick basket. Call from the referee, attack to the hat. Dark free throw. And it's a free throw for. Uh, Finland. Okay. Here we go. Finland is going in after the free throw from above. Stopped from an Akowik uh, player. Ball is on the close side. Tried to pass it on to the open side. Didn't manage. Was kicked out of the way. Akawik is uh, in ball possession and uh, the forechecking from Hesu tries to prevent them from uh, going into their uh, pool area. Don't succeed, Akawik is there. It was a quick attack. Yeah. Aqua quick. <laughs> Gosh. 
and we're already <laughs> at the finished basket. Yeah, Ackle Quick are good, good at getting the, pool, the ball across the pool um, through those counter attacks. But they don't get that close uh, to the basket as the Hesu players go to the can approach the no. aqua uh, the 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 aqua basket. So, uh, huh, it's it's a really. Do you think there will be penalty? Uh, not, uh, but but uh, 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 a penalty shootout. At yeah, the end? potentially. It's possible too. Yeah, but I guess we will see one goal, and that will be the decisive goal. Now Hesu is attacking one oh. on one. Yes, and here we go. Good goal. That's the goal. That was really nice. One player on the bottom from Hesu from the middle of the pool going in. One on one situation. Here's the replay. And he's Nine really no goal. hesitation number to bam, pushing himself up with one arm and pushing up the goalkeeper who didn't seem that prepared. That could be the decision. So, but it's seven minutes, more than seven minutes to go. It's quite a long time. The chat, I uh, have to restart the chat. Give me a second if you ask questions. Hesu is in defense. Aqua Quick now wants to step up the game, equalize. Yeah, they're definitely throwing a bit more at it now. They definitely have to. Good work from the Finnish forwards. Yeah, they, Looks like they they've recovered. Yeah, th and they know they they have to keep this one zero. Yeah, um, it's the the easiest way for them to win the game if they yeah. stop everything that uh, Aqua Quick is throwing at them now. So, and from what we've seen, they've got what it takes to yep. just hold it off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Aqua Quick does not find a way to get into the cracks of the defense, to get into these little, to create uh, the enough pressure. Now could be a situation, uh, we have a quick player now, but it's resolved immediately by Hesu for checking, and they don't give them the space to establish any pressure on the basket, and we have a cluster on the surface. Pushing down on uh, the head. Oh. Six minutes left. Jack ref call. Pushing down on the head. Call of the free referee. Throw. It's a free yeah, throw. So like he said, Really calling up that surface, yep. rough surface play. At once. Come on, blue team. The winner of this game will meet. That's a good question. I guess they will meet Maldi, yes. I guess so too. It's not decided here. So, game was uh, hauled it again. White free throw. Five minutes Holding, left. I believe. White free throw. Aqua Wicked uh, takes its time here. I'm uh, surprised because the clock is ticking not in their favor. So, Echo Quick coming in. Uh, less than five minutes left for them to score to equalize. Hesu in defense, not giving an inch of their. Uh, wow, this is this is oh. a good ex this is a good attack. Really That's heavy coming in from the open side, but uh, immediately checked. This is close. This is really close quarter cluster uh, attack. But pretty good result from Hesu. And Aqua Quick were good to get like two two players around the basket. Yeah, really close, really taking position, up the space. Yeah. But um, yeah, looks like either the back or forward from Hasu wrapped it up again. Both were neutralized by the Hesu four checker, and the uh, goalkeeper and defender exchange uh, regularly. So it's a really good game. And Hesu now is in ball possession. 
Less than four minutes left. Four people in the counter-attack. Stopped on the surface on a close yeah. side. Slowly crawling in direction. Ball roughing. in possession of Aqua Wake. Yeah, Dark roughing free throw. on the surface roughing. again. Roughing. Dark free throw. So again, uh, free throw for Aqua Quick. Time out, dark team. Time out, dark team. Yeah. That's, uh, Probably would have been good to have more passing in that counter attack just then from Hasu under the water rather than yes. getting to the surface and the roughing. But uh, um, it's always a question how free you are to act. And, and um, uh, Hasu really does a good job interfering. Both teams, each other, they really stop these these advances and it's not easy like you've seen in other teams to pass back and forth while yeah. counter-attacking. They really intercept really fast. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of the textbook things, <laughs> you could say, as soon as you lose the ball, you attack. Yeah. So you switch and as soon as you lose the ball, you attack the one uh, who got the ball. And they both do it very well. Getting close to the magical three minutes time left. Can you stop the time? And it's uh, not impossible for Aquaquick to score now. But Hesu knows that too. And they will do everything uh, in their power to prevent them. So Hesu in ball possession uh, after the free throw. Holding on to the ball. Passing back and forth in front of the Aqua quick basket and the Danes are uh, trying to get hold of the ball but uh, Hesu oh, is good. not doing them the favor good opportunity here from oh, Hasu yes coming in from the open side he worked his way around the yeah. basket gave it to the next player who pushed into the defense but uh, good defense work Out of bounds. Dark free throw. Two out minutes bounds. left. Dark free throw. Ah, the time is, is now really working in favor of uh, Hesu, and I'm pretty sure we will see the end score as a 0 1. Because two minutes you can definitely hold on to the ball. And Hasu has a lot of experience to do that. And Aquavik uh, is, is desperately trying to get hold of the ball. One and a half minutes. Aquavik is in ball possession, though this could be getting close to their last chance, but the ball carrier is immediately locked up between the uh, three Hesu players <laughs> in a really tight cluster. But here we go, Hesu is going for the finish basket, going in. Ball is free. And uh, Hesu does what they did. They interfere, did they so long? They really interfere with the attacks of uh, the Aquavic team going in again. Less than a minute left. Aqua quick. Throw in everything you have. Cluster on the surface. Call from the referee. White number nine, two minutes. Oh, oh. two minute penalty. Holding. For Aqua quick. Uh, well, that's it, I guess. Wait and then wait for the timeout. Timeout. White. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Okay, no, we can start the timeout. Thank you. 30 seconds. Uh, Did you catch that? Was that on the surface? Roughing or? No, I didn't see what was yeah. the reason yet. But it's, in my opinion, uh, pretty over. Two minutes for holding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. warming up for their game. 
That's an intense warming up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, I have to admit, wow. it's really important to warm up your uh, wrists, fingers, and everything. Not many teams do that, but uh, this is intense. Never seen this kind of... Uh, inspirational. Yes. And that's the coach, Sebastian. <laughs> yeah. Throw that but wrist in the air like you don't uh, care. Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> really good. <laughs> so, what do you say uh, about the game, Jared? Any chance for Aqua Quick? 30 seconds? Uh, Come on. Pretty unlikely with <laughs> one player down, but I've seen, you know. You, you never say never. Yeah. Back in the game, 25 seconds left. Yeah, but. Uh, Call from the referee, time is ticking, 50 seconds. Uh, pointing at a Hasu player. Stop the time. Uh, nine seconds. Pointing. Looks like. White number 23, two Another. minutes holding. Wow. White number 23. White number 23? Mm -hmm. I was uh, so down to four. It looked like uh, he po she pointed. I he thought pointed he was pointing at a Husky yeah. player. Yeah, me too. Blue free throw. Take it easy. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> he has to pass before he can take the ball. We all know that. In the last seconds of a game, telling the players, take it easy, boys. <laughs> Four seconds left. <laughs> He has to pass. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Then we learned something today also. <laughs> Get so the ref teaching the players a bit of manual the rules. can be so dry in his commands. <laughs> but it's like, then we all learned something today. So it's, it's just like on point. <laughs> because he knows these are things that the players are so experienced. Um, that they, they definitely know what they do. So no question here. Jared, will you stay with me until Lorena arrives? She's on the way or do you have to... Uh, I was going to quickly take a break and come back. All and right. And I'll probably be here for the Victoria Sea Dragons game okay, then at, you could, at uh, 2 when p.m. When Lorena comes. Um, yeah. what, was, what was the score? One zero was the score right now. Next game coming up, uh, yes. Sea Lions, US against Barcelona. So before you leave, I need to know your, uh, I give you, if I could uh, give you 50 euro, on which team would you bet, Tariff? To which, win. Yeah, this next game coming up. I give, if I would, if I would, I don't, but if I would, you give you a betting man. Yes. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, not at all. I hate it. <laughs> I know. I haven't seen much of. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I haven't seen much of the Sea Lions play, but they did put up quite a fight against Marsh. Yes. Yeah. Um, but also Barcelona, yeah, Barcelona really uh, is a different team uh, than the one uh, we saw in the last Champions Cup. Yeah. They're pretty good. So. I don't know. Probably. Maybe sea lions. Sea lions. Yeah, I might go out. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see. If Barcelona wins, you owe me 50 euro. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. I'm off. I'll, uh, I'll be Thank right you. back. Yep. Thank see you, you later. Bye-bye. So, I'm... Uh, waiting here for Lorena coming uh, she told me she's on the way but uh, since she's living uh, in Argentinian time it's always a little bit difficult to estimate when uh, the really the time is um, she actually will arrive so I'm curious if uh, it is in the estimated time it's uh, one o'clock now already we started at eight o'clock it's already one o'clock the time is really moving fast 
and uh, watching these exciting games is just pulls you into the commentating, watching the games, and the time is flying, and it's really exciting. I'm uh, uh, super happy here. As Christian said, enjoy your time uh, in the commentator booth. Yes, I do, because it's so close um, to the action, to the atmosphere here in the Champions Cup, and it's a special event for me. Every year I'm here, um, after all the preparation, after all the thoughts put in, it's a uh, to release this energy and commentating for me, since I'm not able to play. Cool. So here, New York Sea Lions in white against Barcelona in blue. Game started and uh, both teams are fighting uh, for possession of the ball in the middle of the pool. And Barcelona seems to take uh, the lead. We're in the area of the Sea Lions, but the for checking of the sea lions, of the um, sea lions managed to hold on to the ball. We have a cluster on the surface, so it's. Uh, don't see what's happening now. We're on the surface. Looks like a cluster, a sign from the referee. Free throw against Barcelona. Blue free throw. Good chance. Yeah, and already uh, sea lion is no. Yeah, already a uh, uh, um, Barcelona player is under the basket of the Sea Lions. And free throw executed, but the player under the basket has to leave. It was a blue free throw, ball outside. Barcelona in ball possession under heavy forging attack from the Sea Lions. But they can hold on to the ball and... Uh, trying to get closer into the area of the basket of the sea lions intercepted ball was intercepted here by the sea lion the barcelona player fought back is back in possession of the ball and barcelona players here um, positioning themselves around the basket defense is in position really good uh, the teams are pretty much on the same level here right now uh, they are really eye to eye. And Sea Lions in ball possession trying to change the territory and have a look at the Spanish basket. Stopped in the middle, but now they break through and we are already at the Spanish basket. Goalkeeper is away from the basket. That's a dangerous situation, but recovered easily here. Uh, the ball was too far away, but that was dangerous. And it uh, could have been a chance for the Sea Lions to score at this point. So Barcelona really has to be careful where they put uh, their uh, uh, goalkeeper. Don't give them uh, too much space, too much gap. Fighting right in front of the basket. And uh, we already see the Sea Lions position positioning themselves under the basket of Barcelona. Now the action is a little bit farther away. From the basket, we have uh, the ball locked up. Sea Lions uh, lost the ball to Barcelona, and now we are already in the basketball basket area of uh, Sea Lions, but right in front of the basket, um, Barcelona lost the ball and is in possession of Sea Lions, who are pushed back to their own basket, and now recovered and are trying to break through the middle into the half of Barcelona. It's a really fast game uh, and it's uh, pretty equal in the on the level right now. A little bit to the advantage of the uh, Sea Lions. In the middle of the pool, a call from the referee. Uh, ball was out of the Wide water, free throw, free throw for the, the Sea Wide Lions. Two meters, blue team, two meters. Okay, warning for the blue team, they were too close to the ball carrier and executed. Sea Lions already 
in the close side of the pool next to the Spanish basket. Now right in front of it, passing through the open side. The player is on a heavy attack from a four checker. Ball squished out of their hands. Back again in sea lines possession. And the player tries to come from right front bottom of the pool to the basket. Does not succeed. Four checking is relentless here from Barcelona. Now we see the first gaps, but the ball is on the surface. Only goalkeeper now on the on the on the basket. And the action is on the surface. We don't have a clear view right now, but it looks like goal. there is a okay. The referee uh, stopped the game and it's a referee ball. And back in the game, we're in the middle of the pool. A uh, little advantage here for the Sea Dragons. Uh, lions, sorry. <laughs> All these animals. Um, sea Lions, I see a little bit uh, th the advantage tilting on the side of the Sea Lions with more ball possession. <coughs> Even though, the, like I said it, and jinxed it again, um, Barcelona recovered the ball, lost it again to the Sea Lions. It's a back and forth, but most of the time played in the half of Barcelona, close to their basket, which is always super dangerous, because if any chance um, opens up, the Sea Lions are fast enough to react quickly. So we're now on the surface in a cluster, I think in the corner on the surface of uh, the area, in the pool area of Barcelona, of Spain. Still a zero zero here, and uh, Spain is defending heavily. <coughs> and stand still, ball is on the surface. Cluster lock up, sea lines are uh, getting in position under the Spanish basket. And it looks like I uh, cannot see it correctly, but the, the ball is on the close side. Now free again to the surface or the, the close side. So we're still in the area of uh, the Spanish team. And I, they seem to don't cannot find a remedy to break out of these, uh, the fast ball play of the uh, US team who are structuring their attack around the basket, but they don't succeed really to go in really close on the basket. Now we have a player from the sea lines right above the goalkeeper from Spain, but he was tackled away immediately as soon as he received the ball. So hey, Lorena, you're in the comments. Come here to me and comment with me. Don't write in the chat. <laughs> so really fast. Uh, game around the Spanish basket, but with no decisive uh, uh, action from Sea Lions. Ah, this is a, a, a move to steal away the basket. Didn't work out. Still on the close corner side uh, with the Sea Lions in ball possession, but there is a cluster now on the surface as far as I can see. And uh, the ball is locked up. And we have uh, less than two minutes left here in the first half. In this game, uh, Barcelona against uh, the Sea Lions. Blue free throw. Free throw th for the Spanish team. Now, that will be a chance for them to turn th this game around and go into attack mode. Let's see uh, if they can hold the ball there and um, raise pressure on the US basket. They're in the half of. Uh, the sea line team and that pass was quite far away from uh, the Spanish player and as I expected the sea lines player was faster than the Spanish player and the ball is in the lockup fell to the ground into the hands of a sea line player and uh, that was too risky and you cannot uh, do that in a, in a against a team that is as fast and Blue aggressive as the sea lines oh luckily oh for Spain it's another Blinger, free throw yeah. for them so they can redo their attack 
And there's already a player lying under the basket of the sea lines waiting to receive the ball. And the ball carrier tries to break through but is attacked heavily by the forechecking. And we have a melee here. We have a really tight fighting around the basket of uh, the US. But again, sea line player recover the ball pull the ball out of the pulk of the cluster. Oh, this is a chance, lost it, the player lost it, and we have one player from Spain getting really tough into the defense, but he was all alone, and uh, for this, the sea line defense is too strong. They will not uh, be, uh, they will not allow one player to break through their defense. Even though here Spain is coming in in force, there is one player holding the ball right above the uh, the U.S. basket, but uh, Spain cannot cannot succeed in uh, turning it around and getting really into the defense. So interesting uh, half with a, like I said, uh, um, if you if you have like a, a, a sign tilting the advantage and one to one team to the other, I would say the sea lines have an advantage. Um, <coughs> they are uh, more. They have more time, ball possession, and uh, our spend more time in the half of uh, the the Spanish team. But the defense of the Spanish team is holding up so far. But as we've seen in the previous games, <coughs> with a constant attack, it's only a question of time until uh, uh, little mistakes appear and. As what we've seen from the game of the sea lines, they are absolutely up to finding these little uh, cracks, these little holes uh, in the defense and going in and pushing the ball into the basket. So <coughs> it's uh, the, the team's equal in their strength, I'd say, with a little advantage on the sea line side, considering uh, ball possession time and uh, territory control in the area of Spain. But uh, this doesn't mean this game can be won by Spain because uh, Spain is totally able to go for a counter attack and uh, especially if you're always in the offense like the sea lines are, you tend to get into an offense rhythm and uh, the Spanish, if they recover the ball, can break through if they can switch it fast, they are dangerous to go for a counter attack. So curious how the second half will play out, less than a minute left. So uh, please tell me in the live stream chat, uh, what are you thinking about the game? What's your opinion? What's your analysis? Um, who's, your, uh, who's your winning team? Let me know. which team is uh, your favorite and which team uh, when you're a neutral watcher is the one you will bet your money would bet your money on that's an interesting uh, information uh, the water of the pool is getting colder the longer the day i don't think that's true don't know. so teams getting ready two seconds left one second left Team. And uh, teams are getting ready. And uh, game started. I don't see the ball probably on the surface in a cluster. Looks like the reaction of the players under the cluster is typical for a... Now, Spain is here on the attack. That was almost a one-on-one -on -one situation, but there wasn't a, a forechecking attacker of the Sea Lions ready to tackle the Spanish player trying to attack the goalkeeper. And so this problem was solved. Um, Spain in ball possession from the close side going in. Spain is now in the attack mode. You can see that and uh, this can be interesting because we haven't seen that much of these close attacks from them right now. And uh, 
They're holding on to the ball better now than in the first half around uh, the basket of the sea lions and their attacks are closer and more dangerous for the goalkeeper and the US basket. And it's not that easy for you, Mark. Here we go, I just jinxed it. Sorry, Spain. <coughs> um, US recover the ball, trying to break out of the forward uh, defense of forechecking of Spain which is quite difficult because it's heavy from the moment on they lost the ball, they go into forechecking mode and stop uh, the attack of the sea lines. Okay, um, call from the referee and it's a free throw. <coughs> Sorry, uh, it's a white. free throw for the sea lines. White free throw, choking, white free throw. Blue free throw holding. Blue free throw. And another free throw for uh, Spain. Now this, this really could go into a penalty shooting. Um, I think, uh, Jared and me, we can both keep our 50 euro. <laughs> this is going to be a zero zero. I'm, I'm pretty sure right now. Are you worried you're going to lose some money? Well, money is just uh, imagination. The only thing that calls is uh, that uh, th that is necessary is uh, underwater rugby and love. But you need un money for underwater rugby, so. Well, you can you could <laughs> pay with love. <laughs> All right, Spain is attacking again. Um, it's a back and forth, Jared, uh, from what we've seen so far, with a slight advantage on the sea line side. But the second half started pretty well for Spain. They had uh, more ball possession in the uh, sea lines half and had some nice attacks on the basket of the sea lines. But none of them really went uh, for the for the kill and uh, were able to score. Blue free throw. <coughs> so many, a lot of free throws because. Uh, what we said before in the game before, the, the tension is higher and because they know they have, one of them have to win this game and none of them want to go into penalty shooting. So the, they will both step up in the last uh, six and a half minutes to, to manage to score. Spain now in the ball possession, still in ball possession on close side in the corner, under attack from the sea lines for checking attack. And don't see what's happening. Ball out of the water. Free throw for White uh, free throw. for the sea lions. Spanish defense is going in position. <coughs> Back, back. Six minutes left, less than six minutes left. Ah, that free throw was uh, was very good prevented from being executed from the Spaniards. So they, they, the, 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 the player didn't have a partner to, to play the ball to. And Spain is now on the basket of the sea lines. And they didn't expect that, I guess because they uh, had a little bit of uh, trouble to get into their defense, but managed pretty well in the end and got out of it with ball possession. So on the surface, fighting for the ball looking for an advantage to start up their text call from the referee holding without ball and a free throw for Spain again Spain had a um, holding a lot Blue of uh, free, free throw. throws holding and uh, since the time is counting down in less than five minutes it's the time to throw everything in which is I have to admit more risky uh, than anything else if you weaken your uh, defense capabilities to go into a forceful, more forceful offense. Yeah, but I'm 
My guess is zero zero now. I take out my fifty euros and put them on zero zero. But what about uh, the penalties? Yeah, I think we so go one on nil penalty. <laughs> no, I think we go into penalties. This yeah. this is gonna be uh, yeah. with with a cluster like that now happening. Um, both teams should be very eager to have room to play but none of them want to give uh, any advantage to their opponent so spain coming in really fast on the open side that could be a chance oh there was even a pass to the close side he didn't the player didn't try to do it himself but uh, stopped uh, by two defenders from uh, sea lines and a cluster again on the surface time ticking Spain still in ball possession, but it's uh, really difficult for them to get right. in a in a dangerous position under the basket. The sea lions are wide awake, and now the sea lions in ball position again. And now Spanish in ball boys in ball possession. Everything <coughs> can happen in these last three minutes because it's just uh, dropped down. No one, no one's picked it up. Now the sea lions have got it, trying to swim out of their closed corner. Good pressure from Barcelona in the corner there. Sea lions making their way across the pool. But uh, not that easy. Not they that are easy. under heavy forechecking attack from Spain. Oh, this is a nice chance. A little bit slow here from the sea lions. He was under the basket with the ball and just a goalkeeper on top of it. But uh, immediately attacked by the defense. <coughs> Reaching the two minute mark. Oh, attack from above. Tackled Good away. From the goalie there. Yes, that was a really nice exchange of the goalies. And the attacker was tackled away to the surface. Yeah, the goalies. <coughs> yeah, scrum just above the Barcelona basket. One minute less than two minutes left. Looks like a ref call here. Yep. You're right. Timeout, blue team. Timeout, blue team. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Uh, with uh, one and a half minutes left, I would think blue it's uh, possible on, for team. Uh, a team, for each team, to team do one separate. action, on, blue team. to do one attack uh, on the opponent basket, uh, and uh, the goal could be a could will be the decision of the game then. But I don't yeah. see it coming. I don't see any of the both teams let that happen. Zero, zero, and penalties would be my... Are we yet to see like a last 30 second goal decider in this comp? No, I think it's penalties are, uh, at once. No, I mean, um, <laughs> have we seen a, a goal in the last no. 30 seconds of a game? No, not as far as I remember, yeah. not a decisive Not a dis not this yeah. uh, Mulch, uh, we saw the Mulch score, but they already were leading like... Uh, uh, Eight nine zero. Yeah. So this got again in the last thirty seconds. Yeah. But uh, we haven't really seen a see. deciding uh, deciding goal <laughs> in the last uh, thirty seconds yet in this Champions Cup. Two thousand twenty one in Berlin, by the way. White team, two <coughs> meter. White team. Time is ticking. One minute fifteen left. What was that? Call from the referee, holding. Holding, one holding. Minute. white free throw, holding. Less than one minute left and free throw for the sea lines. Okay, this will be the last chance for the sea lines here to score. And that's something uh, oh. Spain knows too. The picture is frozen right now, which makes it even more exciting. Thank yeah. you for showing us the warm-up of the Swiss team. Come sense, stop
Um, um, there we go. Here we go. Sea Lions trying to go for their last chance. Spain breaks free. Oh, dangerous if the ball goes back this uh, fast. That's always a point where uh, the defense is Ten already seconds. on the way to for uh, forward. <coughs> Looks like a ref call holding, holding the mask. Zero, zero. And full time. Lorena just entered uh, the commentator booth and I will uh, give her my space so can she can uh, go into the next game with uh, Jared. But I will <coughs> still be here. I stay here uh, to comment uh, the penalties. I love to watch penalties. I hate to do them. <laughs> What's about, what about you, I Jared? Think, yeah, same here. Uh, there are guys who love to... Uh, hold penalties to be a goalkeeper. Lorena is one of them. She loves penalties. She's a goalkeeper and she loves penalties. And uh, there are also uh, guys who like to uh, uh, attack um, penalties. N none of them is me. But so when I, uh, I was a really young player, I played for about a year yeah. and we played against uh, the White other team, Berlin one team. White team. We played against one the other Berlin team. team. And uh, I was totally new. I had no experience. And yep. the coach said, uh, Wolf, you, you throw the penalty. I was like, what do I have to do? And I as, as he said, uh, score. And I did. <laughs> White I was, team, uh, leave it. Keep it One simple. That's done with my carrier. One defender. Come on, leave it. <laughs> He's taking his time. Okay, um, if you're irritated, if you just switched in, we're not seeing uh, Italy against Luxembourg in the penalty, but it's um, uh, Spain in blue now here in the attack. A penalty shootout against uh, the sea lines from US to decide this game. So on the goal is a uh, US player, and the Spanish player is coming from above, trying to break through the fins, through the... Uh, heavy paddling of the US player, taking a breath on the surface, the Spanish player, and going down again. No, not yet. Now, coming from above, working his way through the, uh, through the fins, is on the height of the US player and trying oh. to put the goal. Yes, yes, he did. It was hard work. He got a good hold on his, yes. around his, yeah. off his neck, I think. No, around the yeah, oh, around the yeah, neck. Yeah. Yeah. Number 19. And he had the ball behind the back of the defender. There was a slight short arm in the basket there, but yeah, didn't. Uh, but it didn't was change advantage. The yeah, 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 advantage was on the on the attacker side. So um, well done by Spain here. Also well defended here by the sea lines. It was a really uh, difficult. Uh, uh, position uh, the goalkeeper was in after the Spanish attacker took a breath. A long breath, I have to say. Mm. <laughs> Go. Okay. Sea lines. Sea lines are now on attack. Blue US is on attack. Is and. Uh, White team, one attacker. Ah, yes. Uh, okay. Um, we have uh, the not the right uh, team players list. So let's check if I can uh, bring it up. <coughs> Sorry. Um. So for those at home, it's still the Barcelona versus uh, Sea Lions game. Here we go. US in the attack, coming from above, working, trying to get under the basket. The Spanish uh, goalkeeper was sitting f in front of the oh. basket, and then the, the player, the US player, pushed the ball over the head into the basket. So, uh, oh, very, white very team quick. number 69. Yep. Um, here are the sea lions. White defender, 99. 
White Defender 99. Ready. Andreas Toro Cortes. So uh, Spain is here uh, on the attack. If you just switched in, we are in the penalty shootout of Spain against uh, US. Don't see Friese, uh, Italy, Luxembourg. Oh, he lost. Did he lose his? Oh, uh -huh. another goal. Did you lose his mask? It looked like he lost his mask. I think there might be a referee call here. White number nine, two minutes. White number nine, two minutes. So the defender who was uh, defending number the goal got a two minutes. Two minute uh, penalty. Probably attack on the equipment. If and I it looks right. like it might be a re a retake. If he has uh Did yep, play it's a retake. So they didn't play advantage yep. there. Yeah. White team. White, white team defending 69. I think it might be one Colorado. Blue team attacker number seven. He got the previous goal and now he's defending this next penalty. So guys, you're not watching. Uh, yeah, you, you now it's all right. You're watching uh, Barcelona against uh, Sea Lions. <coughs> And uh, the Spanish attacker is coming from above. Uh, like always, uh, he tries to get uh, on the basket. No, he tried to make it over the head. And the Sea Lions player managed uh, to oh. recover the ball. Another call from the ref, though. Yeah. Uh, Spanish player lost the ball. White team number 69, two minutes. Oh. OK. Wow. So they're, we've had they're losing players fast. Yes. Yeah. Not sure what happened there. Do you it, so it, it should did still he leave be the zero, basket? Zero. I don't know. Maybe he's still not, pretty not close to far. the basket. I'm not sure what else. 26. White oh. team 26 defending. Blue team attacker number one. It's so repetition again. Um, I'd say it's still zero zero or one one. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, same outcome. Uh, same attacker again. White team ready. Blue team ready. So uh, the attacker um, is doing what he should. Attacking from above, coming from above. Try to get uh, through the fins of uh, the defender. He's coming over the head. Trying to get hold of the head, but pushed away back again uh, from the feet. And now lying right in front of the basket. And uh, very well defended. The another call was another call. The ref. Be kicking, I think it would be kicking. Yeah. <laughs> White number twenty-six. No. Two minutes. <laughs> White team twenty-six. <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> I've never seen that. You might uh, have the whole team. On the bench yes, exactly. That, 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 <laughs> that, 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 that it's going to be decided by the whole team on the on the on the bench. White team, number 26. Oh. White team, one defender. They might need seats in the, uh, hey, on the penalty bench. Yep. <laughs> Blue team attacker, number seven. Same attacker as... Uh, <coughs> the the one before the one we just saw. Uh, it's number seven. Which in my list. Yeah. Ah, oh. oh, that is. Wow, oh. Sea Lions player got hold of the ball and uh, has the ball safe. Not to the surface yet. Get to the surface and show the ball out. Well. That should be. Might check with the. No goal. No goal. So successfully defended. Yep. Cleanly. Blue team yep. defender 
number it was pretty 18. close. So, white team attacker number eight. If uh, the U.S. player scores now, Blue it's decided. Ready. White team ready. In favor of the Sea Lions. Here we go. Um, Defender on the basket. The attacker is coming from uh, under the basket. Puts himself into position. Tries to to f get a hold of the the goalkeeper who is uh, putting all his uh, might in his fins to paddle uh, to put his weight. Not be able to pull the way. Ah, yes. Uh, there was the, the the turn where he uh, pushed him away from the from the basket and threw Goal the ball in. White team number eight. So, in my point of view, that should be it. And the sea lines won. Game over. Yeah, and that's 50 euro. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 I have a sudden, sudden, sudden uh, <laughs> wave of amnesia is rolling <laughs> over me. <laughs> I owe you a beer. <laughs> It's going to be a really expensive Just beer. Just a, a euro beer. <laughs> You have to drink it in little sips. <laughs> ah, very good goal there. Yeah, and very well defended too. It was really yeah. uh, uh, because the, the, the attacker was uh, on the under the goalkeeper from the start, and that's a difficult situation that was for a the amazing save by the head. Yeah, <laughs> that's really uh, the ball got stuck. It's always hard if you if you have uh, two equal teams facing each other and it's a penalty shootout and penalty is a skill game but also luck. Yeah. And uh, it's it's just like okay, we lost that game, we fought so hard with yeah. with one goal. But that's the game. Nice to watch. Thanks uh, to both teams. Um Sea Lions from the US and uh, uh Barcelona from Spain. <coughs> That was uh, do 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 one, one zero. Next game coming up is Firenze against Luxembourg. So Firenze against uh, Luxembourg. Ha! Huh. Interesting. Gonna be an interesting match. Um, I would say. Both teams are on an uh, equal level from uh, from the games as we saw so far, I guess. Uh, the, the Luxembourg, uh, the referee was telling, uh, we were starting at once if you are ready. And the player from Luxembourg said, you can talk German with us. Uh, <laughs> and Bob said, uh, uh, we fangen sofort an. Really funny dialogue. Ah, there was a kick to the head. But like, I, uh, these, th I just said that, Jared, uh, in, in the, in the, the after the first day, <laughs> you, s you start collecting these little <laughs> Injuries and yeah. they are not heavy, they are not like stopping you from playing, but little cuts, little scratches. You got uh, your, your feet, your fingers, yeah. everything is sore. So, we are already in the game Firenze in blue and Luxembourg in white. Yeah, in saying that though, once you get in the water, it all seems to go away. Yes, yes, <laughs> adrenaline is, uh, is uh, amazing stuff, <laughs> <laughs> makes you forget all the pain. Okay, um, Luxembourg in ball possession in the half of Firenze. And Firenze is uh, doing their defender stuff. Wide awake, seeing uh, Luxembourg tries to come from the open side. Defender is getting into position. Quite a lot of space here for Luxembourg to uh, settle in under the basket of Firenze. All right, uh, Lorena, are you up for it to... Uh All right, I give over to um, Lorena. Uh, Jared, please be nice to her. I will. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So we've got some scrumming on the surface here in the middle of the pool. Luxembourg passed down. Ah, there. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Um, so, what did I miss? I was watching the game at home. Again, this year I couldn't have so much time, sadly, but Wolf is here commenting, uh, keeping you all informed. We have now uh, Fidenza and Luxembourg uh, just started, and uh, the, it's yet the uh, Luxembourg team trying to attack. Let's see how it goes with Italy. Um, and if they can, we have, I mean, um, some experienced uh, players in both teams, and I think they are quite uh, at, at, at a same level of, of, of technique, tactic, and experience. So it will be interesting to see yeah. which ones force the mistake in the other, or if already, you know, second day of the Champions Cup. Um, it's very draining as a player. Because it's three days with every t with every game, you start having more injuries. Everything start, you know, aching. Yeah, we're <laughs> just saying that, and there was uh, looked like a bit of a nose injury on the previous game. So okay. yeah. Um, yeah, definitely starts to. So now Italy is attempting to attack after they recovered the ball and could bring all the way to the goalie of the Luxembourg team. Um, they just uh, lost, missed the pass, and Luxembourg is good. trying to go out of their defensive zone yeah. and going a counter attack counter with two attack. players. But there are two uh, position players already by Italy, very good. Um, you were talking with Wolf before, this changing from the defensive in the offense um, yeah. or the other way around sometimes. Oh, that was a little bit, uh, yeah, uh, almost a gap there in the goalie, but uh, uh, they couldn't score. We have uh, now uh, Luxembourg trying to keep the ball and keep the, the waves coming and trying to pass the ball under the defender of Italy, but it did not succeed. And they're now in the corner fighting. Um, and Italy's uh, recovering the ball. Good yeah. job. Yep. And now it's Let's four. It's <laughs> <someone> <laughs> Luxembourg. <to pass>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. And that's uh, the next thing. When you recover the ball and you start the counter attack, if your yeah. players are not coming, then that happens. You are alone against uh, the wall that is the other team. The four checking wall, yeah. yeah. So now we've got one on three at the Italian, oh sorry, yeah, Italian basket. Good pass. Passing down. And. Uh, I hate that when I'm a goalie. When they try to press the ball, even if there's not a hole there, yeah, and that's your head, put it and you're like, yes, yeah. I mean, kind of. <laughs> it was not directly, but it was next to it, and Close. you can't yeah. get in injured. Anyway, uh, another good chance here, but stolen away by the Italian back. And now it's and one one. Passed down. And that's and I don't know. That yeah. was an yeah. That's a goal, but that's an attack on the on the head. I mean, White I don't know. Uh, internationally, three. they haven't changed that, but in Germany, we White changed that. That uh, you three. cannot attack the the head in terms of if the yeah, look at this. Like this. He's going to attack, and the head is moving like this. Yeah. That okay. that in Germany wouldn't be allowed. I mean, it's a, it's a fault mm. because a lot okay. of goalies got uh, injuries with that kind of attack. So if it's yeah. under the neck, it's okay. But the moment the head is is moving like that, then so um, like in that case in Germany, you would have to remove them using from the neck. neck exactly, then, exactly, yeah. exactly. But uh, internationally, that hasn't been changed. White, blue free so ball one for zero holding. for Luxembourg. Blue free ball, um, and there was one um, white uh, Luxembourgian player against the goalie and uh, was uh, attacking from the bottom of the head and. But yeah, it was good, good pressure to get it down to that one-on-one -on -one at the end there. Yes, I mean, uh, not every, I mean yeah. that's the thing we were talking yesterday, that you need to be able to have players that that all of them can take advantage of a situation like that because yeah. normally it doesn't happen too often yeah, it's a rare uh, in, rare a, in a game. So who is watching? We have 200 people watching. Where are you watching from? Um... Okay, apparently, ah, the video is freezing. Did it work better? No, I mean, apparently not everywhere it's like that. 
Another call from the referee here. Pushing, shoving on the goal. Blue free ball. Free throw to Italy. So it's very nice here at the pool with uh, all the teams. I really miss that. Can't believe it was two years without Champions Cup. We have the Italians trying to recover. We have one Italian positioned at the basket, but the ball is still too far away. And mm, that's, that's a pity because, uh, you know, um, well, it's Antonio. It's already there, <laughs> waiting on the uh, next to the to the basket, trying to wait for the pool. But their uh, teammates are not being uh, able to bring the ball there. They are now in a cluster, fighting uh, almost above the the basket of um, Luxembourg team. Looks like Luxembourg removed the ball and passed it down. However, Italy. Yeah, the, the rain, I mean, they yeah. are really uh, uh, fighting every inch mm. and making it really difficult. Both teams, what happened there? Which Dread way? Call. Just, yeah. Do you hear what the referee said? I think putting his foot on the step. Ah, um, yes. Wide the free throw. So exactly. They can gain some advantage. You are not allowed when you are in position of the ball. The in general, you cannot step on the little step that you can see there. Uh, on the wall where the black lines on the side of the wall finish that there's a step and sometimes if they're fighting against sometimes you do automatically right you put yeah the you don't realize you so yeah. you have advantage and that's what i think one of the italian teams did so that luxembourg now is uh, after the free throw on the half of the italian team and trying to see if they can it's still one zero is you know you want to have it to zero at least so one zero yeah. still everything is open right because yeah. they are quite equal and the fighting and then you know being there's almost 50 50 you are a little bit in italy basket and we're a little bit in luxembourg basket although the luxembourgians get closer with the ball and yeah. create more tension and and can you know yeah, really more create more chaos that uh, italy attack. italy arrives but c i went for the, the time i'm here i couldn't see that they create really um the same amount a, a of pressure. Danger, exactly. Yeah. Danger, uh, the dangerous situation at the basket. White 33, warning for holding without the ball. White 33, warning for holding Kay. without the ball. Um, Free throw, blue. Free ball, blue. White. Let me see. You have the, the list here of the players. White 33 is uh, Gilles Grün. There was a warning. Yep. Okay, we have here from the chat uh, some. That's true. We have we have a lot of families and fans that uh, don't play. So we summarized the uh, the rules uh, in a nutshell. <laughs> 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 Pretty much, you are the the player that is in position of the ball is allowed to 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 touch or to attack other players. If you don't have a ball, you cannot. Then everything is uh, allowed except uh, anything that could damage or injure a player Holding. meaning no fault not 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 um, push i mean not not grabbing the um, equipment not rough, uh, plays. rough play yep. but uh, rather than over. that um, and then over. there we are <laughs> and then the basics and then you need to six. score exactly yeah. six players in water six players outside and we have fly changing so um, you need to report who is changing for whom it's just main thing six players are in water we have three minutes, so uh, Tuvo Major. <laughs> um, if you have questions, a specific question that you don't understand, uh, just write it down. And while we describe the game, we can uh, make that clear moment, because there are a lot of elements in the game. The other team captain. Apparently, we're going to talk with the team captains. Uh, they're changing sides now. We are playing two times 10 minutes in a normal uh, game. In the league, normally it's two times 15 minutes, and you stop the game. Venus coming. Um, you stop the game every time something happens, like it's a four place or it's a score or anything. Right now in the Champions Cup, for the amount of teams we have, we have 25 teams. I have to 
uh, finish by the you know afternoon of Sunday. So we adapt the rules a little bit, and it's two times of ten minutes, and the time continues while things are going on. I mean, if a score took place, if a fall took place, the time is not stopped, right? So that's also an important uh, thing to keep in mind uh, by playing, because then the time goes so much faster. And if you are um, Preparing to uh, execute a free throw, like yesterday happened to one of the teams, I don't remember now the game, it was like 45 seconds left and they had a free throw for them. So they, they asked for a timeout, they have a timeout uh, in the whole game. Uh, within those two times of 10 minutes, you're allowed to take one minute of timeout. Probably to just reorganize and maybe think a tactic. And by the time they went, New when team, the timeout finished, and then the, the next 45 seconds they start uh, running, yeah. When they went into the water, prepared to execute the free throw, the game was over. <laughs> 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 so, you know, things like this, yeah. uh, you need to, to just remind uh, of that. It goes much faster. Yeah. So, who is uh, here uh, changing? for Luxembourg, who for Italy? We have 200 uh, viewers. Through. It's a great weekend to watch... Uh, Games at least here in Berlin is cloudy. Has been yesterday in. also raining. I don't know how it at home. Thirteen out, twenty-seven in. So just ten seconds uh, to finish the, the 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 time break, and then we start with the second half. You can always see also the number of the game at the underneath the name of the play the, the, the teams and then if it's A you know it's the first half if it's V you know it's the second half. Now, now please come over here. White team come over. I can't hear you from there. White okay. team twenty three so in and out. Okay. Seventeen That's out. White team seventeen out twenty three in. So, so Bastian is going in, and the 17 is out, but I don't have a, a player 17 ready? in this list. So ready? they are just announcing the change. This is a change of the, the players have not been playing. I mean, every team has 15 players total, or can have up to 15 players total. From those 15, 12 are in the field, meaning six underwater, six sitting outside, and the three are um, players you can replace change so normally use the break and the white team just just change one player so we're still playing with 12 continue um, explain a little bit the rules for the families and the fans that are friends and try to understand a little bit what's going on underwater so we have Luxembourg attacking Firenze needs to really uh, start pacing more if they want to score they need to dominate a little bit more. They just recovered the ball, but Luxembourg is doing a great job intercepting them. They are now fighting in the middle, one on one, and uh, Luxembourg like recovered the ball and is uh, coming towards the corner, waiting for everyone else to to arrive. I mean, it, normally, if, if you have a counter attack and you see the goalie alone, you can go into it. But when you yeah. have two in position already, it's better to wait a little bit and then try to attack. Otherwise, uh, mostly you lose the ball. Yeah, it looks like the Italian team still had their defense in position, so yeah. didn't go nuts. Trying to also, score. if you can read the game and you know that those two players have been there for a little for a bit, for a while, yeah, then you can. can but if they just uh, got there, you know, they're yeah, going to have full gear. Eye. Exactly. Yeah. What do you play? Uh, I play forward, usually. Forward, yeah. okay. So we have now Italy that is defending, recovering the ball, but he, they cannot go out. And uh, this is crucial. The moment you recover the ball, you need to have one of your teammates uh, being in position to get the ball and then swim away. Otherwise, what happens is it gets entangled by the... Uh, the, the attacking team trying to recover the ball, but the uh, Italians really successfully managed to at least bring the ball to the other half, but they cannot go closer. And again, uh, one player from Italy against two or three from Luxembourg lost the ball because their teammates arrived a little bit too late and they couldn't continue with this counter attack. So now we have Luxembourg coming on. Right now, Luxembourg is dominating more the game than it was in the first half. Yeah. For whatever reason, Italy looks like they lost a little bit the momentum they had. Yeah. Um, They're still putting up quite a 
a defense when they're on their basket, but mm -hmm. the I guess the counterattacks, the support might be just slightly in the wrong the place. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And a little bit late. Uh, it's like they, yeah. they wouldn't have the condition is failing, or sometimes you are anxious or a bit nervous. You know that that you start missing the air. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have Luxembourg right underneath the basket. The Italians play trying to stop. One of the uh, Luxembourgian has the goalie, has a goalie, and the ball is inside. And again, from the uh, shoulder. Goal. You see, that one was more from the head side, but he was pushing the whole number body. So whole the, body, yeah. the head of the of White the goalie. Goal, number 13. Yeah, he did already sort of got yeah. under his back. Yeah, exactly. Um, and was pushing. So, but you understand what I mean about the head, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that may I have to talk to Manuel. <laughs> 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 Actually, I have no power at all. But, uh, you know, with the, the new rules and everything. But me yeah, being a goalie, I evolves. had a lot of problems on my neck. Uh, I had to do a lot of work to to just prevent that kind of injury. Huh? Yeah. It's not nice. It's more the quick the yeah, exactly, quick the quick one. Exactly. Um, have those the, the ball is like three kilos and gets smashed against the back of your head. Yeah. Um, it's not nice. <laughs> mm. no, you want to be able to have your, your spine intact. <laughs> that's why I'm not a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's one of the disadvantages. But actually, <laughs> I, that's a I love to be goalie. And that's the thing with the position. You have to love that position otherwise. Uh, yeah, exactly. Anyway, well it was a good stole basket from the Italians. The ball never arrived there, sadly. And uh, Luxembourg uh, could recover and just do a counter-attack. They are yeah. now uh, at the, mm, at the uh, changing area. I mean, going toward the close area, which is a bit more protected to play. It's just two players oh. against the Italian goalie. Uh, and it's another goal. That was a yeah. really White great. And I don't know if it Italy hasn't taken the time out yet. Yeah, no, no back in position there. A great pass. I mean, it was three white players, and the, the Italians arrived a little bit later. Yeah. Um, Italy, I don't see them recovering from this. Um, let's see. I see them breaking more and more, and Luxembourg coming through more and more, I mean, mm. um, since the beginning of the game. So what do you think? Our, our audience, Forza Italia. Let's see, we have again a counter-attack of Luxembourg on the close side. Uh, and now the next Similar attacker. Situation, but yeah. It's, and it's always yeah, yeah. the same. It was pretty much three goals, uh, the same yeah. tactic. Awesome. So it again, underneath the, the goalie from the back, but uh, uh, couldn't achieve the goal. We have the next uh, Luxembourg play. Some good work from the yeah, Italian good forward. Good oh, exactly that was actually defending. the back before he got back into position. So we have now four players of Luxembourg yeah, coming Luxembourg in. Luxembourg slowing it down and yeah. setting up and with now more they are players. They are from the open side trying to use the gap because uh, it looks like Italy doesn't li li little uh, leave a little gap when they change goalies. So that's plus a little bit of pressure. That's how they could achieve the goals until now. So now Italy is in counterattack. They're trying to come through with two players. We have the uh, Luxembourg team on them and they are not making it easy for them. And uh, let's see. Uh, OK, there was uh, they went out of the uh, playing White area. White free That's ball, uh, ball out of playing area. Exactly. Uh, White the free the ball. blue player from Italy was pushed and was fighting so much for the ball that he eventually was outside the playing area. So that's a free throw for um, Luxembourg. A pity for the Italians because they had worked hard to arrive to the other side, but well, these things happened. And now we have Lu Luxembourg. I have the feeling they have more players on the water because they're coming with two, three, four, and then they keep coming. And that's making it very difficult for Italy. And it creates a little bit of chaos. You can see that the Italians are a little bit like all over, right? I mean, like they're not yeah. completely dominating the defensive position. They are sometimes in position, but sometimes getting a little bit late. And, and the Luxembourgians are coming from every angle. Yeah, there's some good teamwork there with the yeah. Italians, though. The what you can do when there's pressure on the goalie, 
the back to can actually hold hold, it, yes, hold their, exactly. their goalie down as well. So it's not that they were embracing themselves. Yeah, yeah. We didn't see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were consoling each other. That's that's a great thing because Blue sometimes it's ball. difficult depending with the fins you have. With the waterways, I love them because you can have a good uh, speed when you go through the pool. But to to keep you uh, on down basket. on the basket is difficult. You don't have the same. Uh, power so when the yep. defender uh, can hold you from the bottom it really makes a difference so anyway uh like a deck there. Ref call. yeah so three zero for luxembourg and we have one minute and a half left from the second half, and Luxembourg is on attack again. It's two players and the two players, and uh, the defender managed to take the ball and the player of Luxembourg up. Um, that's a tactic, but normally it's better that if you as a defender stay in position and then let that to... because. If if you don't manage to really block the ball and the player that is in position of the ball can make a pass, then yeah. you are you left uh, to I mean an open area. Yeah. yeah, but you also need to rely on that your other back to come down in, yes. that, in that scenario yeah. and fill it. But yeah, there's that that slight moment of um, the, t the timing. Yeah, that's the when timing. they're playing together, come together. Yep. Okay, Italy's in counter attack, and they stop. Now they continue. Luxembourg is in position. Still, they have 40 seconds. They're playing seconds. very aggressively. They didn't have a back in, in yep. position there. Yep. Um, yeah, three attacking the Italian team. We have the Italian trying to steal the basket. And uh, this is pushing a little bit without the ball. They're both a little bit pushing without the ball. But the ball is farther away. It's another 15 seconds. And I can't see who is the one. I think the Italian has the ball and the Luxembourgians are trying to. But it's like a cluster there. And I mean, five seconds left. Oh, ball dropped down. Three, Luxembourg. two, one, and, and zero. And on the, the game, three, zero for Luxembourg. Uh, great, um, great, I mean, great. Team effort from both sides. Actually, I mean, we started pretty much on the same level, and Luxembourg like built up more and more and yeah. more, and at the end was completely dominating the game. So let me write down. What's tell us who's coming up, Jared? While I'm uh, writing down so here. next game, we've got um, Vien and the Victoria Sea Dragons. So um, we might have a change in commentary because Lisa. Oh pretty Lisa keen on the Austrians and yeah. I'm uh, keen to uh, yeah see how the Victoria Sea Dragons go because they're my club so we'll see let's see if Lisa Lisa <laughs> if you're around Lisa's coming so right. I can pass it to her and I let and uh, Aussie <laughs> with uh, the uh, Austrian here well even Lisa is from Gr uh, Greece right Lisa and France but she lives in Austria so I'm going to give this uh, microphone to her so they know the teams better, and uh, see you in a bit. Blue and white team, get ready to start as soon as possible. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Jared. Hi, everyone. Thanks and for being here the whole day today. <laughs> that's okay. Hello, everyone back in Australia that's probably tuning in to watch the girls at 12 midnight. It's not too late. Should be have a few people. Our last game before bedtime. In. Yeah. <laughs> you should. So it looks like... So this is a game for the second place in this in this group. So it will be a tough game. Yeah. It'll be a very tough game, but should be fun. I think the level is kind of even. Um, they both won against Hibitsia 
Um, 2 0 for the Sea Dragons yesterday and 1 0 in penalty shootouts this morning for the Austrians. Yep. And they both lost against Akaren, uh, the Norwegian team. I think the Austrians lost uh, with a big bigger difference than the Austrians. Australians. Yeah, Australians lost 3 0. I think um, it was 6 0 for, six for nil. the Austrians, but. I think the Australians was al were also watching the game a lot, and analyzing and seeing. Yeah, what we're watching it. Could do differently, and we're start very so fast. A good start from both teams. Looks like Romy from the Victoria Sea Dragons got to the ball, and a bit of a scrum. They're still fighting for the ball in the center of the pool. Oh, sea Dragons. Sea Dragons. So I see Dragons moving towards the the end basket. And they're in the close corner. I guess they're trying to pull out a bit. The support was not at the basket yet. Um, they stay a bit out of the danger zone, as they call it. Yeah. So we've got you know, defense set up. The next wave of attack. Coming in. But one thing the Vienna team is very good at is having a solid defensive rotation. Yeah. We're seeing that already. Good pressure on the onto the Sea Dragons. Sea Dragons moving the ball around the basket. So we had the first bit of yeah, pressure. Scrumming. So we had the first subs coming in now on the Austrian side on both defensive positions. Oh, we've Ooh. got one on. And the back has left, and we had a good opportunity for the Australians, but I guess the one of the forwards came from the Aus from Austria and yeah. pulled them away. But Vienna is not recovering the ball. So we're seeing a bit of a sustained attack from the Australians. <laughs> Australia, I think. Aus Austrians. So they're mostly in the close corner, but they're yeah. trying to move around a bit. Have another scrum at mid depth. There hasn't really been any gaps in the defense so far. No, it's been pretty solid. Except for that one where they... <coughs> looks like a deck ref call. We have a blue free throw. Blue free throw. Looks like holding without the ball. Yeah, uh, looks like. Blue free throw. Oh, and we and have Ulrike went and Austrian stole the basket. Yeah. Australian basket and the goalie left her by herself. Let's see if the if the Vienna team starts the free throw fast enough. No, they took a bit too long, and uh, the player on the goal had to leave. So another white ref call throw. holding without the ball free again. For the white team. Now for the Victoria Sea Dragons free throw. Yeah, we had those two players fighting against one, and I think yeah. one held on a bit too long. That was interesting, the free throw is still mostly at the surface. Yeah. We pass it down now, but a lot of pressure from the Austrian team. Oh, but now there is no back. And now, yeah, three it's against one. Three against one, one and uh, we had a bit of subbing. This is a good opportunity. Yeah. And looks like a goal, goal. for the Victoria Sea Dragons. One. There was a mess goal. up. There was an opportunity here. Goal for the white Emma. team. Scored by number 21. Yeah, Emma Green. Uh, you see here we have um, Daria jumped in, and I'm not sure who the other one is, who were subbing in. Yeah. So that's why you only had four players in the water. The goalie was down, three were up, and two had to jump in. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 
good counter attack there. Yeah. I'm sure Emma's father, Owen, is up. Let us know if you're on the chat, Owen. Okay, so now the Austrians have um, to score. They still have 15 minutes to do so, but yeah, think still a lot, lot left in the game. I, rec I reckon that the Sea Dragons will try and score again because 1 0 is not a big advantage, especially since the game is quite even. Mm. Okay, the Sea Dragons recovered the ball and are counter attacking on the surface. A bit of a scrum. Vienna gets the ball, has Denise here by herself, passing down to Teresa, who's by herself in the corner. She didn't see the player on her back. Okay, three Austrian players at the goal, trying to build an attack. It's a bit of a risky pass to the back. Yeah, some good Exchanging in the goalie and back position. Looks like the Sea Dragons might have. Yep. Oh, got there the is. Ball, but there's some scrumming on the surface. And they pass directly into the hands of the Australians. Another counter attack with by the Australians. But caught up by the Austrians. Someone is shouting on the bench. Okay, we have a bit so of an idle face on the surface. The bottom. Still one. Oh, we've got two, three now. Sea Dragons underwater. And the Austrians again have the back yeah, the goalie solidly at the under the basket on top of it, and then the forwards getting between the goal and the ball trying to disturb the opponent. And Vienna got the ball again. Doing a pretty yeah. strong counter attack with support. Let's see if they can pass it off. Yeah, Jackie has the ball here. Australian against Australians. Number 26, Jackie Hayes from Sydney. Originally. Originally, yes. Mm, and the Sea Dragons recovered the ball again. So, counter attack. Ooh, we have. Number eight has stolen the basket, but uh, unable to get it there. And yeah. one on one, or one on two goal. I believe. Who was that? Goal for the white Great team. Great goal. That looks like Scored by against player Jackie. number. <laughs> player number. Player number. What? what? 50, 58. 58. Five yeah, eight. Nat Solano. Five eight. 58. Who's that? Natalie Solano. Ready? Okay. So, Jackie. Jackie was not lying very well on the basket. Yeah. So she had a big gap next to her head. Fizzy got the ball, passes down to Ulrike on the closed side. Some good support by Vienna. Yeah, the second player went down and was waiting on the other side of the basket, but they would have needed a third one to be able to, to, to bring the to ball the to the second side. This is the difference you see when with p teams like Germany or Norway. You will have one left, right, and one up in the center to pass up to and, and passes yeah, again all the passing down options. to yeah. the other side. Vienna still has the ball in the Australian corner. Yeah, it's a good sustained attack from Vienna. And the player in the corner is by herself again. We had someone waiting here at the basket. We okay, recovered the ball. And goes in again. It's 
Blue Dragons managing to keep Golian back in position. Bit of disruption from the Vienna team. And now scrumming on the surface. And swimming away Number from the goal. Vanessa Vane Lopez. Now see here that this happened this morning um, against Helvetia, the Swiss team. Yeah. Helvetia would get into a scrum and push the scrum back to the Vienna Half -time. side. Half time. Half time. That went quite fast. Yeah, so the Swiss would push the scrum back to the Vienna side and Vienna would like not counter it. They wouldn't push back. Right, okay. So they would have a uh, few times where they were over the Swiss basket and they, they pushed all the way the two thirds and two and a half. Yep. Yeah, I reckon Vienna now has to play a bit more aggressive, a bit more open. Go in a bit more. Yeah, they seem to have the support around the when they're attacking but sort of just not not quite in the right positions and yes. maybe some faster passes to avoid the um, those those forwards when they come down and support the defense and so much central though you would have a few times like a play on the other side of the basket but the ball cannot get yeah. there yet yeah and then in those occasions you make that assessment and then go and support so possession is probably always a bit more important than the position around the goal. Can you liberate? Can you liberate? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm not sure that we have to <laughs> get in there. <laughs> <laughs> has a, a few plays as well. Been playing since um, the summer. So. Yeah. For six months, four months, is their second completion. So their first two is completion as well. So it's different than playing like the Czech League against mixed teams or against men. So they they have one team in Vienna, or oh, yeah, you've got two. But one team in Vienna, and uh, in Graz we have uh, we have a team in three teams. So we play in the Czech league, position. but it's mixed. Right. Okay. Yeah, we've managed to grow the female league in Australia quite a lot over the last well since I've been playing um, for the last five years, and really ha being able to have that competition. Um, yeah. It seems like a big pool of players in Australia as well, but in Australia we're kind of struggling. I mean, Vienna's doing well and have a university course, so they always get new players to do that. So you're attached to the uni university? Mm, not really, but they, they're a club and then they offer courses for uni students and have a partnership Why with the university ready? sports organization. Oh, great. Let's see if they get to the ball. At the same time, I think Lizzie had from Vienna had her hands on the ball before Romy. I didn't say it. I should <laughs> I wasn't watching. So oh, you had the Romy still got it. And then off to Hannah. Sorry. Oh. Lizzie Schwarz got the ball again. Yeah, good recovery from Vienna there. And number 36 from Austria is um, very strong physically as well and very aggressive. Like she will go in and fight for the and ball. She's a, is she a forward? Or forward and back. She started off as a back and also plays forward. And now we had. Oh. Oh, that was a very nice goal. Yeah. Was that Sabrina? I think she she came in. Goal and for the blue team. Yes, that's so Sabrina Troyer, number 18. And she completely lifted. Yes. She lifted the lifted goalie. Sophie. And I don't know if she passed. I don't know who scored if it was yeah. the team. Time out for the white team. Time out for the Definitely white team. Um, capitalized on no back there. Yeah. And um, yeah, there was yeah, a back, but she attack. was on the wrong side. Ah, uh, I didn't see her. Was she on the close Swami side? Yeah. The attack was on the close side. Okay. Okay. The close side um, hey, sorry, the back was on the right. Right. Or in the center. Okay. But 
that uh, Sabrina came in with a lot of speed, he lifted yeah. Sophie, and I think she scored herself when she yeah, passed, she or the second person who was very close to the wall might have helped yeah, push. That was very scary. Yeah. 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 I think there were some sub substitutions in um, the Australian team. Yeah, it sounded like 12 in 5 out. Twelve in, so Hannah came in for not And I reckon it was also a change for Vienna because Bilim over. Ready. So we're starting off again after the timeout. Mm -hmm. You can see a bit of a shift in the Vienna's Game, game. Are we a bit more motivated now after the goal? And have to catch up. Oh, Ulrike passing up. Oh, we had an attack over the goal, but um, didn't land. So still in position around the goal on the open side. Oh, the goal is open, but the goalie, the goalie is, is fighting, fighting for the ball. Alicia's fighting. And getting out of away the from, from, away from the goal. Very good. But we had Vienna got the ball again. Vienna and is now the stolen basket. the basket. And we have <coughs> one swimming again, Daniela. Bit of confusion at the goal there. Looks like goalie and backer back into position. And a recovery from the Sea Dragons. But Vienna has amped up the intensity now of their game. Yeah. There's less scrumming as well as in the first half, but in the first half, the scrums start to happen after five minutes. There was no one on like the water Sea Dragons now. moving around, opening it up a bit. Romy's just going for a swim. For fun. <laughs> Doesn't she do that five times a week anyway? <laughs> I thought so. But okay, Vienna yes. got the ball back. It was very interesting. Looks there was like no one on the water for quite some time and yeah, Vienna got the ball. Bit of a bad pass, but um, yeah, Vienna's. Oh, and we have Denise now trying to score. And the stolen basket with two Vienna players waiting. But the scrum has gone to the surface. Again. Again. And uh, Sea Dragons look to have oh. got the ball back. But a lot of pressure from Vienna. Yeah, and they have the ball again. Looks like that yeah. ball fell down and Vienna comes back. Cut fast. Yeah, Sea Dragons back in, back in defense. Two mm. forwards chasing. Nausicaa here moving the ball to the close side. And three now we've got Vienna players three attacking, Vienna and we players. just have one. But oh. And then with the forward ah. from the s Victoria Series, Claire. The ball. the ball bounced on the floor, like in the very yeah. corner. Between oh, the bit of a risky pass there, but Sea uh, Dragon still got the ball. Oh, the pass ball fell to the ground. We have here, looks like Jackie recovered it. Is fighting. Yeah, good water. recovery from Vienna. Good pass. So, Sea Dragons still have the defense up. But, yeah, good recovery. From but they're not Vienna. defending as offensively as they did in the first half, which makes sense. They have five minutes to hold up and they have to see that they don't get scored on again. Yeah. So, you don't really open up your game if you do that. They're, they're Another basket. risky pass there um, that the Vienna managed to the blue team. get the ball and score on an open basket. By player number 54. 54? 54 from Vienna. But there is no 54. 64. 64 is Doris Neubauer. Doris is uh, one of the goalies in Vienna. Hasn't been playing for so long, but she's she's a very good player. Hmm? A 
I think yes, you can say that out loud. Jar was saying that's a very tight very game. Very tight game. <laughs> we completely It's agree. hard not to be biased from either of us, I think. Mm -hmm. Great job, both teams. And now we have what, five minutes left. It's going to be very intense. Basically, Neil all again. And the games can also end up in um, politics. Oh yeah, so penalties. We haven't had that many games. We had this morning, the first game. This morning, and then we had one just and before one. with the guys. Why is the referee not looking at the game? Oh. Okay. Sea Dragons getting strong, but Vienna really attacking the ball and forward checking. And they're really watching out that the backs and goalies, when they leave the baskets, also go towards the ball just to disturb the attack. Four minutes to go. I have a bit of a scrum on the surface. The ball fell down into the hands of the other players. Sabrina got it, went swam up, tried to pass down. was a bit of a risky pass. Now we're fighting for ball possession at the surface. Sea Dragons have it. Move back to the center of the field. And an attack from the close corner. Pass down to a player who was by herself at the bottom. But we had here the forward, the Vienna forward was swimming along the Australian player and didn't With let her pass. Yeah. It's a bit of a scrum here in the close side. One Sea Dragon, full defense from Vienna. The Sea Dragons are moving. They have to move back. They have to retreat a bit. Yeah. Now yeah, some very good pressure from the Vienna Fords. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, and looks like and yes, Vienna recovered the ball. Oh, and we had one. Sea Dragon player over. trying to go in, but she got immediately stopped by two forwards, <laughs> plus two people <laughs> at the basket. Oh, uh, so. Good pass down to Sea Dragon at the bottom. And the thing that Vienna is doing very well now is that if someone sees that a back or a goal position is empty, the forwards will go in for that position. Yeah. And so covering all those gaps. They will cover the positions because it's something <laughs> they've learned from having so many sick players with COVID last year and at the Euros, where everyone had to at some point assume some position. Okay, Vienna is attacking now the Australian basket. Mm, oh, I think it's Monica going in, but she was Jasmine a bit by herself. Jasmine Lee forward from Victoria managed to wrap up the Austrians again. We have a scrum at the surface. Only one hold. minute left, potentially. Stranglehold. Stranglehold. So strangling. Stranglehold. So. Yeah, free throw to Victoria Sea Dragons. Could potentially. Oh, we've got a stolen oh basket oh here. Oh, this is risky. Oh, fast, fast attack from the Sea Dragons here. Oh, the ball fell out from the Sea Dragons. It was a very risky pass. Okay, the Sea Dragons are trying to attack the Vienna. Goal again. 
but I don't think Vienna will really give him a chance. Oh, here we see Dragons have the ball out again, but yeah, not quick enough to pass down. No, um, it's like 15 seconds scrum, left. Scrum on the surface again. And yeah, 10, there's 10 seconds left and looks like it might go into penalties. And now everyone has, uh, Vienna has all the players on the water. Ooh, this is intense. <laughs> this is very intense. Uh, <laughs> Game over. Can I have the captains? Very good, um, captains yeah, come back from Vienna there. Mm -hmm. I think they, it took them a bit of time to get into, like, the game of the Australians. Yep. And then, like, okay, that's how they play, and let's... Um, yeah, and after that first goal, I think, yeah, yeah it's amazing what a goal can do for a team's confidence. And can yeah, and a timeout. Like yeah. Take a timeout, take a breather, talk about it, restructure a bit. Who starts? Vienna starts attacking, and it's um, it goes one 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 one. Yeah. So uh, basically, what golden? What do you, what do you call that style? Sudden so death. Yeah, sudden death. Yeah. Basically, Vienna scores, and then this sea dragons don't. Vienna has won. Yeah. And 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 vice versa. Looks like it might be. Yeah, looks like someone in the middle already. Drink pass, she does. You cannot have players in the play area. So we have Lizzie Schwarz attacking and against Solano from Victoria Sea Dragons. Lizzie scored the, pen the penalty against um, Helvetia before. Good first attack. Oh. Oh, call there from the referee. Th there was no penalty time clock started. Uh, oh, yeah. no. Oh, this is, this is very sorry, frustrating. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> unfortunately the, so the tech bench didn't start the timer um, for the penalty. 45 second timer. This is very frustrating because yeah. now you have that your rhythm yeah, with neither went of up the already. Team at fault there. Yeah. Um. Just to get a bit of a breather. I reckon they let the same people. Yeah, hopefully. Or, or they let them change. Because it might throw off the list a bit. Because you've got the set sort of lists of yeah, penalties. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on this comp. It was so complicated. Euros, it was a mess. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we go again. Penalty taker, penalty defender. I don't know if they were allowed not to change. I reckon yes, because if you had someone, if you had taken longer, mm. like if the, was, the yeah, goalie had been short. down for 30 seconds, and like, okay, let's go again. That would uh, be very hard. Take your place, approach the middle. Yeah, let's see. So we have Elizabeth Schwarz again attacking. Uh, different. Different goalie now, Alicia Fong. Okay, Lizzie got under Trying Alicia. Trying to lift Alicia. She's managing to oh, oh, oh. stay on the basket. And Lizzie goes back for air. 25 seconds left. This is very frustrating as a goalie when you see the attacker breathing. Yeah. You cannot really take the race, can go up. Lizzie attacker from the top, getting under Alicia. Oh, she lost the ball. No. no goal. No goal. So successfully by defended by Sea Dragons. Good work, Alicia. Shout out to the Fong family if they're watching back home. Mm 
Lizzie had a good gri grip of her, but she kind of couldn't lift her off, or like only halfway, but then the arms were too free, and mm. she couldn't really risk trying to push her ball in. Very well defended by Alicia. Mm, what do you have in chat? Vienna seemed like a different team in the second half. Get yes, they, the they completely minutes. switched their game yeah. and they got themselves together and started playing more organized and more offensive and not just in the defense. So we've got this is from the Sea Dragons. He has potentially has rubber fins. Jennifer. Wait. Ready. It's hard with these new bathers. Don't really recognize the, <laughs> the players. Okay, very interesting. Taking her time. Of Denise Schmutz on the basket. And the attacker got directly underneath. It's Jennifer, I think, number 77. Going back up. Yeah, Andrea. Andrea? Andrea, yeah, number sorry. 77. Oh, shit. Oh. oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Great goal from the Sea Dragons there. Well done, Jennifer. Sorry, Andrea. <laughs> Amazing. Very strong she defense there, but she managed to get on her backside and, and she that's definitely that, the vulnerable. Yeah. That's the thing that Lizzie didn't manage to do before. Like you see here, Andrea, she just put her heels on the floor and just yeah. pushed up. So she got her whole height, yeah, like whole what, one meter fifty, and then yeah. she could lift the knees high enough. Yeah. And um, Lizzie didn't manage to do that with Alicia before. Yeah. Great game so for yeah, both tight teams. Tight game. We always thought it'd be quite a tight game considering the previous ones in this group. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm not going to lie. Well done, Victoria Sea Dragons. That's the thing. Very well played. <laughs> well, no, it was a good game, though, and I think... The yeah, Dragons like started strong and then yeah, Vienna didn't give them any chances in the second half and um, switched the game around. Yeah, both teams have a lot to be proud of, proud of in that game. Yes. That was a great, good game. Well, so now we have the results for this group, meaning that the Sea Dragons are second, so the women's group um, F has is Akaren, then the Sea Dragons. And then Vienna and Helvetia, which gives us the schedule. And the Sea Dragons are playing again. Eight o'clock, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> they play. Oh, yeah, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, yeah. Sea Dragons and Vienna play again at against the Hammerheads at. 4.30, so in two hours. Great. Well, I think I'll leave you here, Lisa. Okay. But Sounds good. Thanks, Jared. Thank you for, for commentating with me. It was good to <laughs> have someone just as passionate. And, um, yeah, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, see if watching. someone comes yeah. to commentate with see me. Wolf might come back and join you. Yeah, now coming up, we have um, four men's games. So uh, we have two round robins, so to say, but for um, yep. already for like position games. Um, so coming up, we have Barcelona against Zurich from Switzerland. Then we have Firenze against Udevala, Molde against Hemelina, and Orcas against Malsch. Okay. That's the semi-final. Is Orcas Malsch? Yeah. That is hard. That will be fun. <laughs> Alrighty. Thanks, See everyone. So the game has started. Yeah. 
So uh, Barcelona got to the ball faster and was attacking the um, Zurich basket for a bit. Uh, Zurich managed to push out again and Barcelona recovered the ball. Is moving the ball around the Swiss basket. Now we just had a player trying to go. Okay, it was a goal by Colombo. He managed to push the goalie away. Hello, everybody. Oops, sorry. No, he got the ball underneath, push up, and scored in this gap created by pushing away the goalie. Pretty textbook standard. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Yes, uh, back again here in the live stream. Hello, everybody. Had a little break. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Wolf. How are you doing? Doing great. Perfect. So, Zurich, uh, Barcelona, uh, first half and uh, just started. Um, you had a bit of a struggle, a fight for the ball in the midfield and. Uh, Referee call free throw Outside for. Flanger. Okay, so we have two calls at the same time. We have out of bounds called by the deck ref, but under the, the closed side, referee was showing attacking the head by Barcelona. So there was no goal, so annulated. Yeah. No, no goal. Yep. It was a free throw. Yep. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. So Zurich is moving the ball in the Barcelona corner. Just have one player coming one after the other. But Barcelona has a very solid defense. They did in the game before. What I think is interesting, Barcelona is again in the water. They played uh, two or three games ago. So it's not that far away for them. <coughs> and Zurich uh, only has nine players uh, in the water. So it's a uh, challenge for both. No, Barcelona has not played this morning, have they? Yeah, they did. Against uh, Sea Lions against US, so that was a close catch here for uh, Zurich. Um, nice uh, interception in the moment here. Good save. I haven't talked to the Swiss players yet, but it's uh, pretty demanding for nine players to be here in the Champions Cup. They do a good job, and uh, we don't see them tiring down in the last games. In so. Uh, not not that easy with nine players mm -hmm. yeah this the Swedish have the same oh, okay. struggle the Swedish have nine players Udevala Udevala oh. and they're also missing like oh, some of know. their best players got sick I didn't know yeah they just oh, nine. That this is a nice pattern the referee has built with yeah, this and we uh, have a very fast counter-attack by Barcelona they recovered the ball and swam very fast to the oh. Zurich goal trying to push it in but the back is clinging onto the attacker. The, all the uh, offense goes now directly from the open side on the basket, but uh, very well uh, solved by the Swiss defense team. Another attack wave comes in from Spain, but he's not managing to lift up the goalkeeper. Second try, and no. Oh, the Swiss no recovered the ball and are swimming out, but the player here is missing some support. Managed to pass to a player coming from behind him. And uh, now we have number 73 from the Swiss, a bit alone. I have a call and we have a um, free throw. Free throw. Against Spain. Yeah, we could see the Spanish player, he was really holding him by the neck. Yes. Then he dropped him, like he put his arm down, it was really not on yeah. purpose, but still. Yeah, I would, call that, would have called it to uh, yes. the referee. Okay, uh, Switzerland tries to stop uh, Spain from coming up to... Oh, there was an empty basket. And that's the thing, I guess, uh, you face when you play with nine people and exhaustion sets in. You have to decide if you go into offense and you have to leave a little bit of the defense more open. And that was pretty close. Goalkeeper didn't make it. He didn't expect to change uh, the tide so fast. Thank you, sir. So a uh, 2-0 now for Barcelona, but uh, nevertheless, we go together with Switzerland now to the Spanish basket. Let's see what we find there. Switzerland is there um, with uh, one, two, three, four players. And 
And going into the attack, coming from the close side, stopped by the forechecking defense of Spain. Pushing without ball, free throw for Spain. I think it's two teams of pretty even level. But Barcelona has more players yep. and they're a bit stronger. Yeah. On the second day that shows, at least uh, that that's a thing that, uh, mm -hmm. that definitely shows. But they're a bit more organized. They have better support in position. Mm -hmm. And you're missing, like, a back was not properly in position and that was a goal. Another goal, yeah, yeah. That they were missing someone to to disturb the three Spanish players. It's uh, like what we've seen before. Here, the replay, um, the attack comes from the open side, and uh, the ball is uh, in the basket. Very well done. And uh, you, you, I guess, after two days, the exhaustion with nine players builds up. After a full team, you have a disadvantage from the start and Spain is growing was growing as a team again we are at the Swiss basket and again from the open side uh, player tries to push in defense tries to tackle away the player next player coming in going up to the surface and I guess out of bounds within uh, mm -hmm. yep, yes out, out of, of bounds. bounds free throw for Barcelona So free throw for uh, Spain again. <laughs> and already Spanish players are in position around the basket. Took a little bit too long. Positions have to be left. Rough playing free throw against Spain. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, advantage on the Spanish side. If we look at the... Oh, that didn't look like they respected the two-meter rule. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Call from the referee. I, I know that Barcelona... If you, are, if you are inside the two meters, you have to go out of the zone before you can go back in. Okay? White free throw. Manuel said something so funny after the game uh, Rixu against Akovic. He said, okay, guys, you all know... Hemelina, you mean? Uh, Hesu. Um, yeah, okay, guys. I hope we both we all learned something today. There's a two meter uh, diameter around in free throw. <laughs> really yes, funny. Barcelona and Barcelona tends to be very very close. I ah. know when I play against them, I really watch out because I, I have the ball usually. Okay. I tend to push them uh, away yeah. and not do my free throw before they have moved. Okay, span and ball possession. We have been in the half of uh, the Spanish team. But it, uh, they didn't succeed to get close to the basket. And Spain is already going back in the dangerous area. And already the Spanish uh, ball carrier is on the open side. Tried to push the ball in, but got stuck. That didn't succeed. The Spanish have stolen the goal now, but the Swiss recovered and trying to swim away. The scrum that moved to the surface, tw still pushing the ball away. And now we're on the surface, ball is uh, in the surface, locked up. And 50 seconds left here in this first half. Barcelona in blue against Zurich in white and Champions oh. Cup 2022 in Berlin. So the ball fell down. Uh, we now have Barcelona coming very fast. Two players are in. And the first one just dropped the ball behind him. What happened? Was there a call from the referee? Yes, yes holding. Pushing. Yeah. Holding, yeah. If you hold and make this uh, movement, that's holding or pushing? That's so holding the basket, no? Hmm. Free throw against Spain. No, that's holding. Spain. That hmm. Pushing is uh, with a on the against the fist. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the end of um, the half time, the first half. Yes, would you think, but I, I wouldn't think even if Zurich would be here with a full team, if it would make a difference, yes, in the exhaustion level, but in the in the structural level, there is, like you said, Spain is a little bit more uh, working as a team. 
Spain but plays more competitions yes. as well because they have the Spanish Championship, they have the yeah. the what's it called? Championship of their like um, the states. The the, the the yeah, and they have the, and they have the open league as well. And Tuli is not yeah. playing at the open league. Um, well, they have the Swiss Championship, and then they have some fun comps yeah. as well. Uh, but yeah, they have less uh, serious comps, so to say. Oh, now we have a replay of the women's penalty because it was not painful enough to watch for me. <laughs> <laughs> before it was a very strong penalty by um, Andrea. And but Denise the defended very well. Th th there was not much she could have done when she got lifted. The Spanish team uh, really grew in the last years. Um, the the either they had new players, I don't know, probably had a better inside. But uh, the men really grew. Um, their way of playing together, their strength. It's a more team like team uh, in the water. Yes. It feels more like a team, it feels more structured. They got some fresh meat as well, some young blood. Uh, but the level is pretty similar. Like they, oh yeah. they, they're more structured, but I think all teams are getting more structured and play more system, have more of a system, like those mm. lower tier teams, so, so mid level teams. Um, and so as the level evolves together, at uh, like in the open league, you don't really see the difference. Like they're not, they haven't gotten so much better that. Okay. Yeah, I get yeah, it. The, yeah, the games, yeah. of course, yeah. they yeah. they win against Graz when they play with 15 men against the team where we were. Like last time, Graz had seven women and five men at the yeah. comp. They're yeah. stronger, yeah. but um, they're not unbeatable. Yeah. Okay. It, it's not such a big uh, difference in level. And we see the more teams that are growing and have more experience from competitions, from trainings together, the, the teams uh, grow together. They, they, the structure comes with the training, with the knowing each other. That's when part of getting uh, becoming a better team. Yes, and when you have repeat opponents, um, you know how you kind of know what you expect from them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's. I don't see a chance here for Suri to turn the uh, game around in their uh, favor. No. <laughs> I guess you tradition to say it was time, yes? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we fixed the ball, we fixed the ball. Was a nice start. Ah, yeah, the ball has just moved away. Yeah, because uh, he turned around and the pushed ball it in. away. <laughs> Okay, let's try again. Here we go. So Barcelona was first at the ball, but they kind of lost it. Yep, uh, they tried to push it to, to the right, but it was actually in the hands of a Swiss player, and mm. uh, Swiss player lost the ball again. In uh, Spanish uh, hands, under the basket, well, that was a dangerous situation. The player uh, was on the close side at the basket and was an exchange of the goalkeepers, but uh, they managed not to catch a goal call from the referee. Shoulder in the basket, I guess. There's a sign on the, on the shoulder. Oh, strangling or attack on the neck. Huh. That's a wide free throw. Look, the free throw is in the center of the pool, and you already have a Barcelona player. Very close. Very close. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a call. Yeah. yeah. If you are under two meters, <laughs> then uh, you have to go out and back again. Next time, two minutes, okay? Yeah, this number seven player, who is that? Um, yeah, Leonardo. He does that all the time. <laughs> Well, sometimes it works. Well, they're winning, and if you have to repeat a free throw, you gain 15 seconds. Yeah. It's time you can breathe. Yeah. Okay, so we have a bit of a scrum at the surface. The Zurich player is swimming forward with the ball. We're over the Barcelona basket. Zurich has the ball. There is no passing opportunity. 
They have the Teresa has the ball, go, moves into the Barcelona close corner. It's uh, when the exhaustion hits you and you have only one player or two players down there, it's really difficult against a full team um, to withstand and to attack and to put enough pressure on the basket. Oh no, look, now they're attacking the basket. And okay, there was a second player down, but too many yep. defenders. Yep. Barcelona has a very solid defense, and as they are yep. enough players, they can really rotate and yep. do wave after wave after wave. You could go in a single uh, uh, player action, but it's not very... Um, Hello not very possible to score against such a organized defense like the one of Barcelona. The screen froze for some Yeah, reason. we had that already uh, in, a in few the times, morning. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but it's uh, recoming back coming back then. Okay, so Barcelona had recovered the ball, I reckon, and <laughs> went into the Swiss side and Zürich recovered the ball and now is but swimming away with three Barcelona players. What, what I have to say, there, uh, there are no weak big weak spots in the Swiss uh, defense. They are on the, on the basket, they are in defense, they are doing four checking. You wouldn't imagine there are nine players uh, on the second day of a big championship. No, they no, th th they're, play well. they're playing well. Yep. Um, was it out of bounds? Out of, feeling, playing field. out of bounds, free throw for Barcelona. There's a player from Zurich that has those very weird swimmers that are red and yellow underneath, like between the legs. I don't know if you've seen that. It's a bit questionable taste. Huh. The back. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Well, it takes all kinds. <laughs> okay, Spain is now going in. In the basket, in the... Uh, dangerous zone under the basket of the Swiss uh, area. Yeah, number one 18 for Spain moved the, the back away. Yeah. Managed to pass and goal. goal. Reckon number 18 came, pushed yeah. away the back and passed to 15 or to the other side of the basket. And there was yeah. a goal. I think it was on the other side. Uh, the guy or the 15 who was yeah. underneath. But this sure. is also uh, th typical to attack from one side, pass the ball to the other side. So the defense is concentrating on you and you deflect them and you pass on and there is a gap on the other side. There. Absolutely. And you know, Barcelona is fast and really going in with four players at the beginning to block the Zurich attack when they swim out of the yeah. wall with the basket. And we're back again uh, with another attack from Barcelona. This time fended off by the Swiss players and they even uh, managed to get out of this uh, attack cluster with the ball, stopped by Barcelona, recovered the ball. Barcelona is in ball possession in their own half, playing back and forth, finding to find an opening um, through the very tight uh, forechecking uh, of uh, the Swiss players. But they were missing a bit of um, support now, the player who was at the surface. And the um, Barcelona game has changed a bit right now. The last few minutes has mm. gotten more aggressive. Yeah. And the Swiss like also uh, put up a little bit of sp uh, speed here. The forechecking was really good right now. Mm -hmm. And again, Spain attacking the basket and another goal. One against one. Yeah, from the close side, coming in on the close side. Yeah, the goalie tried uh, to defend, but well it's really hard right. if you get attacked timeout by one right. player. Free throw and timeout wide. Out right. Zurich is taking a bit of a breather, I guess, discussing as well how they're going to proceed for the last five minutes. Probably the, the, their uh, uh, throw and then discussion point right. is surviving. Right throw, sorry. But they right do pretty well. Yeah, it's not a question of surviving, it's more a question like how can we try yeah. and score or try to really adapt. Yeah. But with a 4-0 lead, it's uh, solid, and I don't see a weakness in the in a Spanish defense. Mm -mm. But it nevertheless looks like uh, um, the Swiss player have fun because it's the Champions Cup, and playing here is a really special event for all the teams. No, and, uh, it's, it's for a reason that all small teams who cannot make it on their own try to get. Uh, 
foreign players into the team to join the Champions Cup, which is not possible. Um, but there is a good reason uh, everybody, every team would love to play at the Champions Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's a question of trying to get foreign players, but players from the for their own country, but from other teams. Yeah, foreign, I mean, uh, like an uh, alien. Mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> so we had a free throw, and um, now we have a scrum at mid-depth in the closed corner on the, ba on the Barcelona side. And it's on the surface, and this is a time-consuming... Uh, Process. Uh, yep, uh, Switzerland does not want that, and so they try to come in um, from above into the basket. That was a nice attack. Really forceful, and Switzerland is going out of this uh, cluster attack um, with the ball into the corner again. Now from uh, from uh, the front and the open side, pass to the close side. Oh, we have a player <coughs> very, very positioned at the Barcelona basket, but it looks like the Spanish recovered the ball. No, they didn't. Zuri still has control of the ball. So now it fell to the bottom. Recovered by Barcelona, pass forward, and we have a one against one. Oh! Attack from the top, still no goalie. The goalie made it to cover the goal. Very well defended here by Switzerland. It was a close call, the ball was thrown, but didn't make it in the basket. And um, out of it bounds. It's, it's these little moments when there's a chaotic situation when the goalkeeper is pulled away from the basket and you have these wide opening gaps and the ball is thrown so it was uh, it was close but well defended here from Switzerland mm -hmm. very throw. very well defended yeah they were out of bounds it's like the third or the fourth time that that, had ha that has happened that the Swiss recover the ball they swim out and they swim yeah. also out of the field unfortunately And another attack from Barcelona from above. Ball thrown again, empty basket. Swiss player tries to hold on to the ball and, and uh, escape with it from uh, the close, close area of the basket. But he's already uh, at once tackled by the Spanish players. And we're still in the area, in the middle of the pool. Still fighting. And I think it's still the goalie who's holding on to the yes, ball. Yes, I think so. It's a cluster on the surface now. And we have a ref do we have a referee call? No, we don't. It's uh, less than one and a half minutes here in the second half. Barcelona against Zurich. And still a cluster on the surface. Did I mention I hate clusters? Yes, yeah, scrums are not the funnier, the yes. fun most productive um, kind of game. One minute one to go. Minute. And Barcelona counterattacks one against one, and this is the goal by number seven, Leonardo Acara. Number seven. Seven. And we just had the goalie down. The backs were not even close. Like the second player who would have arrived to support the goalie would have been there at the same time as the third Spanish player. So 30 seconds to go, and Zurich is attacking. I would but just one player, with just one player, like the missing some support. I would uh, um, think uh, Switzerland earned uh, a goal here um, for the hard work uh, that he did here in this game. Yeah, had some rough play by Barcelona, and now um, free throw against free Barcelona, throw and the game is over. End of the game. 4-0 for Barcelona. Nice game. Um, both teams here put really a lot of uh, effort and heart in the water. It was an advantage of uh, Spain. But very well fought by Switzerland throughout the whole uh, 20 minutes. Thank you for playing, guys. Pleasure to watch. So what is uh, coming up? Coming up, we have um, another men's game. Firenze against Udavala. 
this will be a very uneven game because Firenze is um, the best, the good Italian team, and Udevala is a very strong team. They're from Sweden, and they were in a very tough group. So this Group C was uh, no, they were in Group B with Malch, Aquaquick from mm. Denmark, mm. Udevala, and the Sea Lions from the U.S. Mm. It was very hard games, yep. and Udevala landed in fourth position strictly because there were only nine players. I reckon it was very, very tough games, so um, it will be a very uneven game. I guess so too. Yeah, and uh, the Italians—they—they—they they, uh, they are experienced, good players, but they—they uh, they struggle a little bit with the with the consistency in their game. So against Udevala, it's going to be. Tough, yeah. I guess. They're not uh, really a match yep. for each other. Who are you rooting for? Uh, well, my heart goes with Italy, I have to admit. I don't uh, know Udevala, no disrespect here, but my heart goes with the Italians. So, uh, Italia, Italia. It was so beautiful when they sang it in cards. I always remember that. I'm not a fan of, the of, of national anthems. No, ne just neither am I. Neither am I. But it was beautiful when they sang it. It yeah. was just like the, the way they sang it, and, and they standing together, and the melody was was uh, good. Mm -hmm. uh, prefer it to the German one. <laughs> um, yeah, but national Is anthems are not uh, the, the stuff of my dreams. But it was cool. So um, Ball 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 probably I would vote. Uh, I would put my money on Odivala, but my heart goes with uh, Italy. Well, what about you? Mm, no, I have friends in both teams. So oh, that's difficult. Mm -hmm. So where do you put your heart? Where do you put the money? I think. I mean, Victor is a newlywed, so I think I'm for Odivala. Right. This would have some younger players. I don't know. I'm neutral. Let's be neutral for this game. You're Swiss. <laughs> French and Greek. <laughs> so Here we go. This game started and we're already under the Italian basket that was fast. Not a lot of resistance in the first movement. And the first... There was a goal. Whoa, that was... That was a very fast attack. Excuse me, did you see the watch? Look at the 69. watch. Mm -hmm. goal. It hasn't started White. yet. It's so it didn't start the clock? Yeah, it was the, the first goal was at, ten, at two seconds. What is it? Here, it started with a goal. <laughs> No, it was three, three seconds. Three, three seconds. I think it's a record so far. Yeah, I think Molly the last was pretty fast. But I think uh, the last one was four seconds. Okay, and again, a very fast attack by the Swedish. Ooh, ball kind of escaped them. Okay, I see where we're going here. And this, this is, is the goal. Yeah. This is going to be a massacre. Yeah, I think uh, Udevala is really um, hardened from the games they had before, so they are used to to opponents that overrun them and, and they, go, they go no for it. I think they're a bit frustrated as well to have that Please they the landed ball. in third position, <laughs> in fourth position. Yeah. Oh, it's 2-0 before this first minute is over. And Udevala intercepted the Italian player who had the ball. We have a bit of a fight in the midfield. So uh, Italy d does not really, is not really into the game yet. They have caught the first goal within the first second. And this is really difficult to catch up with this lacking behind, reacting to the movement and the play of Udivala, who are really controlling the game and pushing into the basket. We see it here. The, the Italian players are lacking behind, behind the, the game of the Udivala player who are really pushing hard, uh, massing around the basket and putting pressure there. So Italy, wake up and to try to find some space to, to open up and go away from your basket. We have a cluster on the surface. And the ball fell down again, directly into the hands of the Udevala number eight, who's at the basket, the Swedes are moving the ball around into the open side, retreating out a bit. Okay, the Swedes are taking a bit of time uh, right now, 
not rushing that much. And I reckon they will wait for some gap in the Italian defense to score, to try and score. So I will give the microphone for uh, two minutes to one of my uh, youth players. Uh, Antoine will be here and commentating together with Lisa. Let's see what Antoine has in store for you. Okay, so now we have number 31 from Sweden has stolen basket and created a gap for his teammate to score. Um. Who scores? You. 80. 83. Number 83, Gustav Kavalin light. scored. Um, time out. And Eric Blue time out. had stole, stole, stolen the basket to make the gap for him to score. It's not, not looking out. exactly Stop. great for Italy. It's not really. There's a very big um, difference in levels. Udavala is clearly stronger. And it's good for Italy that the Swedes just have nine players and not more, because if they had a full team, it would be even harder for Italy. Also, I don't think that Udavala would have been fourth in their group. So we now have 3-0. And Italy's trying Ready? to talk it out and see how they can Five seconds. keep on playing. The first goal was after three seconds. Oh, that's... That was extremely that. fast. That is very fast. That was very, very fast. One play into the water. More, one more. You get into because you take a timeout. There seems to be a player missing. And now it starts. Okay. okay, so Firenze still has the ball, but gets blocked in the middle of the pool. I don't think they really have passed the center line so far. They have a really hard time getting through the middle. Yes. And when they do, you have one player going through, but then they miss the support. And now White has stolen the ball again. So uh. Udevala, you could see that number 27 was showing with his finger where to pass the ball. Oh. Yeah, and even stealing the goal, blocking the defender completely. Yes. But still not getting into that goal right now. Just yet. And but coming very in. Very strong attacks from Udevella. As in they're retreating, they're pulling the ball out and coming in again with a lot of speed and three players again. Yeah, and waves and also with a lot of players, I gotta say. Mm -hmm. It could also be just one player hanging out but it's always always at least two no they don't go they don't go in by themselves or yeah. like for attacks that they know will not uh, lead into anything as we said there are just nine players so they try and play clevers and that's another goal by the number that's the 88 I think 88 yeah I think Finn's number 35 69. blocking Number oh. 69. 69. Staying at the goal for ages, then catching the ball and putting it in while no one was aware where it was, probably. Well, we have no number 69 on the team list. That's weird. Maybe it was an 88. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe it's 96. Uh, you all fall back. Now, Blue's playing again. And Ooh. actually, uh, it's getting, getting caught all of the way through. Just doesn't get a good chance. You know, the forward checking by the by Udevala is very strong. Oh, but, but now they uh just just when you think they get it down, they get cut. There's always uh, a white player on them. Doesn't yeah. matter where, doesn't matter why, how. But uh, Firenze is at Florence is attacking now. A bit in waves or kind of managing to yeah. keep the momentum. But they still lost the ball to Yeah, they did a, a big too wide pass and it got recovered by Udavala coming in very fast at the bottom counter attack with two players the back and goalie were in two position and that's another goal yeah. again with a block 
they took advantage also on the switch of goalies. When the goalies oh, yeah. swapped, they yeah. took advantage of the, yeah, of they, the gap. Yeah, they definitely did. There was a big gap in the goalies. Goal 15. There, there you can see the goalie coming down and exchanging and right in that gap. Yeah. He lifted yeah. him a bit too much. That's Number 15 that scored. That needs to be way tighter. He ends up going in quite doesn't fast. Even, doesn't even get the chance to pass and gets caught again. But now Blue has the ball. They recovered it. There's a problem if, you're, if your fastest player has the ball and the others <laughs> are not coming in as fast, then you cannot pass. Yeah, it's really hard catching up on that mm -hmm. side. And okay, they lost the ball and... Oh. Yeah. White got the ball when it fo fell next to their goal. And Blue almost caught them back, but now White is driving another attack. Okay, so Firenze is defending pretty well and not leaving many gaps in the defense. Yeah, no, now their defense is slaying quite low, but they still get blocked. We have, we have Eric Sostadios with the ball, pulling out and passing down again. Again, Udevalo with the waves going in and keeping the ball rolling away from the goal, away from all the other players. They're taking the time, they're pulling out. Fidens are not very dangerous for them, so to say. <laughs> Probably. And that's another goal. Um, yeah. 31. Number 31. 30 Eric Sostadios. Again, one of the national like team they players. Did the goal before, laying the ball below, and then the defender it's leaves, the and team. there's no chance left. It's just. Yeah. Six, no, six to zero for Udevala. This is a, a tough game for Fidenze. Before, before the, the half time is even over, the first one. Mm. The referee is taking a bit of uh, time. So the referees since yesterday, they said if they need to take some time to fix something as the as the games are running time, so effective time, yeah. if something needs to be fixed or else, they still stop the clock. They or if the captains uh, have to talk with the referees uh, to clear something up, that they stop the clock because otherwise the games are over way too fast and it oh. really ticks off. There's a button time. on the clock there that just stops it. You have to yeah. keep it pressed. Mm -hmm. I had to do that last game. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> of Florence went in with the ball and then she saw the ball carrier had it be behind them back, their back, yeah. and managed the way to protect it from the sweets and passed it down. They were also kind. They were also very close together in a bulk, right? Like passing over a long distance to get the other players lost in the momentum isn't really possible if you're like very close together. Like if you're three people. Yeah, but group. against a team like when you start yeah. and you want to make big passes against a team like Udevala, which is yeah. in this case faster and stronger yeah, and better probably. at reading the game, they won't land. That's how yeah. they lost a few passes before. Yeah, so time to keep them close is probably the best choice. Mm -hmm. And they've played to the uh, oh. to Florence's goal again. That free throw. Oh, that's and a free throw. Free throw for Florence. Yeah. For pushing without ball. Pushing. This is a Dark free throw. Interesting movement, hand movement by the close side referee. <laughs> Probably, yeah. But as long as the motion's right, there really anything goes in some of these cases. Mm -hmm. So I have for a bit of a fight on the surface. Uh, 20 seconds left on the clock for this half time. And they lost the ball again. And Udevala going very fast, counter-attack. I guess they the want to score once more. Yes. Scoring. Goalie was missing. Incredibly fast attack. Mm -hmm. I think the goalie had, had to move Goal to the... 83. Uh, 83. To back position to try and defend, but yeah. no one came to his Laying down. assistance. It really is, uh, uh, one needs to get the feeling for when to get up and when to get down. Yes. But that was just in time for the halftime break. Yeah. So we're at 7-0 at the halftime break, and uh, we'll take another short break. Um, I'll leave you with Wolf. All right. And uh, I'll see you later. All right.
So, Anton, are you ready? I guess I am. I hope so. But I hope the teams are ready in just two minutes because right now they don't have to. Be, well, the, the difficult thing is really the break is uh, halftime break um, is uh, three minutes, and that's not a long time. I know, I know. Especially after this, it's the second day. So, most of them already played uh, three to four games, three games. And it's the kind of intensity of these games is really exhausting. To recover from that is, is really. Uh, I can't. Uh, I mean, I, I can kind of imagine for the league games, you know, for mm. the, um, the German league, we play there, and then we have five minutes break. So those barely feel like. Yeah, and uh, now we have to imagine you have three days going on, yeah, and yeah. The, the, these little hurting things like scratches, like cuts and everything that that adds up it gets more i know i, I still know that from the uh youth championship in mm. germany with you and the u18 U yeah. and playing there and coming in the second day you know it's going to be the finale or the half finale or the semi-final so, and you just you're just basically dead your your hands hurt your neck hurt you have cuts on your fingers yeah and they still have a day Oh, exactly, right. yeah, no yeah, yeah. No matter how yeah. they play, they still have a game tomorrow. Yep. So, yes, um, Anton, uh, you're uh, um, one of the new coming players uh, in my club. How old have you been when you started? Do you remember? Uh, I think I was 14. 14, yes. 14 or 15. Amazing to start at that age. I, start, I started, I think, at 35. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's such an advantage because your brain now is wired to underwater rugby. Mine is still uh, somewhere else. I mean, I, I did experience that this year. I had to take a long break after breaking my finger. Then I got COVID after that. And then I got university stuff that uh, kept me occupied. And now coming back, it's really easy to come back. Yeah, it. can't imagine. Yeah. All right. It's Almost there. Seven seconds left. Back in the next half time. Are you ready, Anton? Are you ready? Our visitors here in the live stream. 200 people watching. And we start. Yeah. It's Udevala <laughs> taking the ball again. But oh no, uh, Firenze actually caught that and is having a somewhat clear pass at the goal, but with a lot of player from Udevala behind them. And Firenze tried to start their attack from the close corner of the Udivala basket side, but they are on a heavy attack. Uh, the, goal, the, the, the ball keep, uh, the ball carriers on a heavy attack from Udivala and uh, push to the surface. So, but they're keeping it in the corner right now. Yep. I mean, they're, they're heavily contested, but they're keeping it. Yeah, but still they the they're holding on to it. I think they are see their chance now in this. Uh, oh, there was ah, a pass that was, that was in the hands of the Udivala player laying right in front of the basket. That was really unfortunate. Oh, but oh. they recovered. And uh, the ball is back in the Italian hands. Well, not really half of it. I mean, uh, they're, they're keeping it in the right half, I guess. It's, it's a conundrum. Ball is still on the surface. I think Italy um, s uh, was thinking, okay, we have to go in on the start and try to score in the beginning. But no, uh, I mean, that worked against them for Udevala yep. in the first half, as I heard. Indeed, it was yeah. uh, incredible first. So uh, we are oh at they the have an open go on, and they didn't score. Yeah, that they was really just close. Hit the rim, and the ball was balancing there, but not going in. Well, might I add, two players from Florence had their hands inside the goal, but it was just an accident. Referees don't stop for that. The defense is holding from Italy now. Udivala is relentlessly going in. Now uh, the ball is on the close side. And Udivala is taking uh, the players, taking a little bit of a moment to restructure. They're still playing with the same intensity as the, the halftime before. They yes. Could, they could relax, basically. They're 7-0. Well, we were talking about that. Uh, actually, on this level, probably you don't relax anymore. Yeah, you probably don't. You, yeah. just, you just get used to just play, yeah, play like a madman exactly. for half an hour. Yeah, because if you relax, you, you change your game and you don't want that. There was a, a quote I heard from the um, one of the best German teams, Bamberg, that they said they always play the same no matter against who and yeah. when they win. 30 to 0, it's, um, I mean, matter. they're sorry, but um, it is what it is. Yeah. 
The, that was not a goal. It, it looked like uh, the Red no, attack it here. Behind, behind the yeah, goal. it was behind the goal. And uh, Udeval is really relentlessly going in, but uh, the defense of uh, Italy is still holding, but we see wider and wider gaps here. Um, less defense and empty baskets. Yeah. It's getting harder they're, they're and harder. certainly holding on stronger than before, Florence. Hmm. Definitely. It's, it's almost four minutes over, so... And not a goal for Udevala. So they should, uh, but it's easy. He said we have an uh, attack. <laughs> the play from Udevala didn't find the ball. It was right above his head. I reckon if you caught it, it would have been another goal probably. There was a very big gap on the goalkeeper there. Yeah. But he didn't, so now the game goes on. Udevala tried to attack from the Florence open side, they managed, and ball. Italy managed to get hold of the ball, and we are entering the Danish side of the pool, going for the basket of Udevala. But we have to add, it's a 7-0 lead for uh, the Danish team, so uh, it's pretty safe with six minutes to go in the second half. Florence again holding the ball in the half, but being relentlessly attacked by the attackers from Udevala, just yeah. holding them back. Uh, the best kind of defense, in my opinion, just having the defender and goalkeeper on the goal and the attackers just running around. You said we have to be like mosquitoes? Yes, mosquitoes is this thing. Yeah, you have like to be mosquitoes. annoying like hell. Yeah. Um, in Canada, they call them the black flies. There are black flies. <laughs> they the just black one flies. Could, could kill you. It's uh, just oh, they okay. are undestructible and they are everywhere and try to get into your ears and nose. And you have to be, as a fort checker, you have to be like that. You have to be everywhere. Oh, yeah. here the Italian player didn't see the and several Udivala players and coming very in. Very loose ball. And. But they're the really checking, going, yeah. they're mm. really going nice all Italy. in. Nice Italy. Udivala going all in with um, countering all of that by leaving their goal unoccupied for that. They were just very secure that Florence wouldn't catch that because it was kind of close. But well played from Italy too because it's very a back well. and forth um, in the middle of the pool, holding on to the ball, losing it. Now it's in the hands of Udivala. And we're going together with them in the half of Italy on the surface in the corner. And Udevala would uh, start their attack patterns from the corner or from the surface as they did, uh, as I've seen before. Italy's defense already, already laying secure, as far as I can see. Although that goalkeepers, I don't know, now they've exchanged the goalkeepers. Udevala trying to go in, getting caught by Italy loosely. Um, they're not as tight as Udivala was when they were in their half, but they're still defending them from an attacker side. Still holding on. There's a bit of a... Uh, no, no, they, they've lost... There was a bit of a rumble on the surface, and now they got oh, another goal. Oh, that was a Merla. Uh, the one of the Udivala players was uh, positioning himself under the basket, around the basket, and he got the ball and goal pushed up uh, his knee and, and scored. Yeah. Beautifully yeah. made. Just as they Light. did all of the other goals, or most of them, by blocking that and getting the ball. You really can't do anything against that when you're a goalkeeper, when you don't know where the ball is. That yeah. is just you need the four checkers to take care of that, otherwise you're, uh, as a goalkeeper you're lost. Four checkers are the defenders, but mostly in this position the defenders are not active. Because um, they are lying before the guy trying the Mela. Yeah, if you get it past the defender, the defender doesn't notice, it's basically already done. Oops, here the Udivala player uh, was trying the pass, losing the ball, and uh, <laughs> funny moment. You don't see that very often in these high-quality games, but it happens. I mean, they, they did lose the ball in the first half right at the other... And another attack goal. from the open side, stopped by the goalkeeper, and uh, uh, the ball was in the basket in the exchange of the goalkeepers. Yeah. Nicely done. Well, by quite a distance, Num right? Number 12. Close? Like, oh, no, goal. That's like they're off the goal, and now they're passing it down. Here it's we go, that's oh, from, that the from the close side, yeah. Yeah, that, that was really a due to the gap in the goalkeepers. Yes, yeah, in the exchange. Uh, wasn't really. It's just, oh no, and Italy just passing on empty. Udevala has the ball again on an uh, unprepared Florence. 
defense. Yeah, but they, but they manage. I think they're used to that situation. They, they yeah. are, yeah. yeah. And they come from the open side and with a block. Nicely textbook kind of uh, the block to the middle of the pool and the attacker was coming from the open side. 96. Holding the ball Light under the goalkeeper goal. and the body over the goalkeeper, yeah. just, just as you do. 9-0 now for uh, Udevala. And like Lisa remain. said, they are used to a really tough group. They started this championship. So um, Italy is actually no match for them compared to the opponents they had in the last game. Not even getting the ball when they have an open grab on it. So yes. again, another Udevala player just <laughs> got a hold of the goalkeeper, pushed him away, and pushed the goal over the head. That was really, <laughs> that was definitely number eight. A tight throw. Replay. Right. You usually shouldn't get those. Ah, he ho that did hold him on the wrist. Yeah, he, wow. he held, held, held him off hand. and yeah. threw it over him in the goal. It shouldn't work like that, really. Like, that is not a goal that you should get in as a goalkeeper. And. Uh, Getting close to the last minute. They're playing very openly on their goal and now. Yeah. Just Udevala just basically has it open there. Just all of the people on the ball. Uh, just and the next on. one, just diving above uh, the goalkeeper to the open side, passing to the open side. This one then again in. Uh, next wave coming. Didn't Not get in. It. It's, it's on the rim. Oh and it was in. really like squished uh, between the goalkeeper. It was, was held right above the rim for... Yeah seconds that was crazy really a fight for for those last centimeters but Goal 96 but we have to say uh, Italy does not give up yeah Italy really does keep playing yeah. they please shot the ball they're in the game they fight for every ball and they are wide awake but as you said, that's just that's just how it is at this level of play, right? It's yep. just no matter if you lose, if you win, you always play the same. You always play with the same yep. intensity. Yep. There's yep. no giving up, because just as Udivala could play it lightly, Florence could also say, "Well, that's it for today. Let's uh, yeah, save energy yeah. for games we can actually win." But, that's but they don't. No, no, that never happened in the Champions Cup in yeah. the games I saw here. At, um, uh, giving up is not an option. That's that's also not what the game is about, right? You yeah. Don't play yeah. to win, you play to win, you play to play, right? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, also against uh, teams that are so much uh, uh, overwhelmingly stronger, you, you still play because of the game. Yeah. I know. I, I've learned the most from games I lost highly. Yeah. I can uh, I totally agree with that. Y you were like two of those, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not on the uh, attackers, oh, but, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like watching from the yeah. sides, playing yeah. with the Turkish youth team once uh, we lost 20 to yes, 0. Yes, I, I remember that. Yeah. Yes. There's I try to forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I actually learned a lot. No, I remember no, no, coming no. out of the pool, no. you telling us that was the best we've ever played. And yeah. We lost 20 to 0. So. But it was totally true. Yeah. I totally remember the game. And I was very proud of you, of, of the youth team uh, yeah. that played there. Wow, cool memories, Anton. Yeah, I was 15 at the time. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Anton, for uh, doing his first live stream comments. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. And uh, we will see each other again, I guess. Yeah, hopefully in another game, maybe. Yep. Today. Let's see how it works. Then I'm giving back to Lorena. See you later, Anton. Thank you so much to everyone that is helping here. I mean, to do the marathon of, of 14 hours each day for the two of us. I mean, waiting too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> we need help. And also, you need some new voices, okay. some new people, so you don't get tired of us, right? I don't get tired of you. How could the people get tired of us? Uh, Teams, get ready. Ask, don't, don't ask questions you don't want to hear the answers. <laughs> anyway, so how are we doing? We have now uh, Norway against Finland, Molde against Hemelina. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> this is one that we were getting close to highlight games. Uh, every game here in this championship is a, is a highlight, I have to say that. But uh, some uh, games you are really curious about how this is going to play out. And uh, 
We have now two very intense games coming up. Yes. Um, uh, Norway against Finland right now. And right James. after this game, we have uh, ready. Colombia against Malta. White ready. I mean, against uh, Blue Germany. ready. Okay. So Molde, uh, blue and Finland white. And here we go. What was that? The time. Ah, timing the time error, was not the time was not ready, please. Oh, okay, that's, so a that's, a, that's a wrong start. That's a hell of Separate, a please. starting like that. Yeah, it's we hell. start yeah, over all again. All the, the adrenaline, Just give me a minute. Yeah, second. Put everything into that uh, um, sprint. Start, and this sprint, is, yeah. and then, yeah, it has to start all over again. Yeah. Oh, I hate this. Okay, clock is ready. Blue ready. Yeah, the referee is between the ball. Be careful. Boom. Blue ready. I'm a little White bit excited ready. now for this game. Okay, here we go again. Do we have Finnish fans and Norwegian fans watching? Hesu yeah. had the first contact with the ball, lost it to Molde here in the middle, and this is going to be physical. Look at that, and there's already a call from the referee. Free throw. It was an Free attack throw. to the head. Blue. Free throw. Attack on the equipment. Against uh, Hesu. Okay, we see the first uh, attack on the basket. Uh, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we will see that in within a second. Moll is coming in. Hesu is lying in defense. These are two teams that they know each other yep. pretty well. Um, oh, so an attack from the open side, and the attacker from Molde lost the ball and was recovered by an Hesu player. That was uh, a surprising moment because I've never seen a Molde player losing a ball in the attack. And we have uh, one against two at the Molde basket. Okay, this is going to be an intense game. And a quick one. Yes. Hesu is trying to uh, swim w around yeah, uh, the basket. Yeah, waiting until the rest of the team yeah. players are arriving and then getting into position, uh, trying to go attack over the close side. But Molde is not really given any chances, and they know that they have to keep the uh, Hesu players away from the basket. Wow, this is really these one-on-one -on -one fights are also really intense because these, very physical, these guys yeah. are all very strong, experienced, and uh, they don't uh, they don't give pres presence to each other. They well, take great like pass with the defender in the middle, but the from went from one player to the next one, and they're still right under the basket. Or well, uh, um, he's to recover the ball and is in a counter attack. Two players. From Hesu really against fast. already the two Molde players that got into position. They lost the ball. Molde has the ball, but uh, cannot don't find a player to continue with you know, the counter-attack or to start it. Both teams are very good to interrupt each mm -hmm. other in their attacks. We haven't seen several ways for Molde yet because the ball uh, gets snatched away by um, the Hesu player. And now we have another attack from the open side against the basket from Molde. But uh, the, the forechecking is relentless. Second wave from Hesu trying to get in. But the defense is really up for it. And they really know tight. what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's a close, close fight and almost not possible to play. Oh, great position from the Hesu player right behind the defender. The defender couldn't really get too much closer to the basket. But the ball was farther away. And now we have um, the defense line of, of Molde. The ball now is yeah on the surface. They have on a the cluster surface there. In a, yeah, and that uh, that's that's uh, surprising. This cluster here in this uh, uh, first three minutes. Call from the referee. It's a free throw against no free throw against Molde. Free throw against three. Molde. Can we hear the oh. referee not yeah. anymore? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. If he says something, yeah. probably he doesn't know himself. Holding, can't. Ah, there. Free yeah. throw, white. So free throw for uh, Hemelina. Um, and let's see. Again, these two teams know each other very well. Um, from e free throw e was for, for the Euroleague, for Champions Cup. So let's see. Oh, now massive. Wow, Hesio that's is coming in a massive. dangerous attack. Yeah, but... Uh, Oh, okay, still on top. 
They come from all sides. Hesu is really attacking now from all sides. The next uh, wave players are waiting right in front of the basket. Molde player has got a hold of the ball and is going upwards. Ball is dropping down. Play to his co-player and a call from the referee. There was an advantage sign um, made. Yeah. Let's hear what the referee says. White free throw, warning against blue team because of choking. Okay, so apart White from free throw. One player from Molde choke, another one from Hemelina. So now it's a free throw for Hemelina from actually from the third meter uh, from the basket. So let's see if they play this well. Uh, that could be, you know, maybe the score that they're yep. looking for. Again, and we have another the massive player attack. really being really aggressive uh, with the um, goalie, but he lost the ball. Uh, yeah, while we're right above trying. and snatched away by a Molde player. We are on the surface, we don't see the ball. White free throw, attack on the equipment. And the okay, free uh, throw. Uh, the Hesu player, player stole the basket away from Blue Molde. Timeout. Timeout for yeah, Blue. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Blue timeout and but the Emelina players basket, stole basket, that basket and they were trying to keep that uh, position because, you know, that could be the, the yeah, what makes the, 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 the score happening. But um, Molde asked for a, a timeout. Uh, very intelligent. I mean, I would have done the same. So that they can recover a little bit and, and for a ball just stop that situation with the two players from Emelina uh, trying, I mean, being on the basket. Because we know that with a mistake like that, that could be a score. I mean, this I'm is almost like a final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, no it's way. one of the top. It's it's two of the top teams uh, facing each other here, and uh, I'm I'm a little bit surprised by this timeout. So, uh, well, in, in the, in the, in just the day, okay, okay, they want to recover. They were under pressure. No, but because the, uh, also the Amina player was on top of the basket, and they couldn't recover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. A when but I mean, how, if you are going to yes, use tactically but they, a timeout, yeah, but you, they needed to take a timeout to get the, the stolen basket at, uh, free. So to time says something, over. you don't you steal do the basket that easily away over. from Nolde. Well, we have two experienced teams. Huh? Exactly, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it I has been three years without Champions Cup. It's the third year we are having it. And I don't know Super what the started okay. in, the, in each country. So, yeah. Back in the game. Small mistake like this happened. We don't know also if they have many new players in Molde. If we have fans mm. from Molde, let us know what's the configuration of the team, if we have new players. As far as I've seen, I know many of them, or most of them. Okay, Hesu is pushing relentlessly on the, the basket, pulling away the goalkeeper, trying from every side. Yes, yeah, basket again stolen away. Wow, that is really tight, really close. Yeah, but it, the ball is taking long to get there. Yeah. So, but and the, yeah. diffi the, the dangerous thing is what Molde, what we know Molde is very good in waiting for the moment to get the ball in this attack, and, attacks, attack, and yeah. they go for a counter attack that is hell fast and deadly. Yeah. So the ball seems to so be on the surface, moving. Total mix up. First of all, number nine, blue number nine, blue number nine. This is if you need to get out no. and there is a, a scrum, go around, not over the scrum. <laughs> I, I'm not sure who has the ball, referee ball. Joron Dale. No, referee ball. Like Advice from the referee, apparently he went over the scrum. Please, please, so it's please the ball. referee ball because the referee couldn't see they try to stop the scrambles uh, or the the, 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 the clusters, uh, clusters uh, on the surface yeah on the surface so that the ball flows but uh, he couldn't the referee couldn't see who had the ball so the ball player is talking to uh, the referee uh, unclear what the situation was well it does not seem happy right now Molde. I think it's Nienhaus, they are uh, talking to the referee. Um, referees are uh, discussing. 
And the okay. referees are discussing the situation. All right. So it's going to be a referee ball. Okay. Blue, th blue free throw for roughing came before the infringement. We resume blue free throw for roughing. Okay. So there's a free th throw for um, Molde. Molde. Apparently, um, wow. because of Stopped really by fast. Evelina. It, it's amazing how uh, Hesu succeeds in interrupting yep. these fast uh, attacks from Molde. Yes, and it's a completely different game between uh, them and uh, the USA yesterday. I mean, uh, when it was also a little bit of tight at the beginning, and it's amazing how the the the, the, the game changed it. The, uh, yeah, you know, with depending the, with the how opponent, the, yeah. the opponent what is really the disturbing or yeah. not your tactic. So it's that's also so Molde is starting their attack, um, going from coming from the close side, and uh, pushing hard on the goalkeeper. The defense identified the problem. There's another Molde player now trying to get a position on the open side, but the ball carrier is pushed up to the surface. Now another attack from the close side. It's really, really and physical, really, really strong. A lot of movement. I mean, the water is boiling. Yeah, That's how it looks player like. succeeded in getting out of this uh, cluster, attack cluster, but uh, was stopped again by a uh, Molde player. Oh, he lost the ball now, and the uh, Hesu player could uh, steal it, but the next uh, Molde player was there in the middle, and now Molde is back on the game with the ball, trying to start a counter-attack. However, he's alone, and just pass it to the next Molde player. They're going in the close corner to wait while the rest of the players from Molde are coming. And Temelina is uh, trying to recover that ball, trying to keep uh, Molde away because we have one player that they're directly under the goalie and that's going to get dangerous because they have the, the ball and trying now to keep, keep the, uh, one uh, minute the left. goalie away. But a good uh, job from uh, Hemelina. Uh, yes, amazing um, yeah, defense recover, work. Yes, and they recover and lost the ball, but now they have it and they're in on the counter-attack but something happened. What are the refs? Blue number five, two minutes for holding. Okay, Whoa, okay. Wow. first Blue time penalty time, please. in the last this is minute. Time out white. Sovic. I apologize to the Norwegians for my mispronouncing the names. Time out blue? The do yet. they have another time out? You do. <laughs> they had a time out before. They, c they have normally a time out in the game, not per half exactly. time. Exactly, and that's their second one. Am I wrong? No. He, they did it before. Okay, that's we need to. That's weird. Uh, as far as I know, they're only allowed to have one timeout uh, the whole of the game, and uh, Molde took their second timeout in one half. As far as I remember, fifteen possible. second lef left. Left. Hey, Irde, welcome to the live stream here. Stop. Hello, back to you. White free throw. Huh. Okay, free throw for uh, Hesu. Yep. And they're coming back in right above the goalkeeper. And tackled away by Molde, Molde with player. five players. Huh? Yes. And that's even Suvik. And I don't attack know from position. the open side with a block next to it. That was a goal. Goal. I mean, wow. great. Uh, I mean, in the last 10 seconds. White wow. goal, number 15. Num uh, that's, uh, yeah, one of the brothers. I think it's Tim. Or no, Jim. Tim is the 15 Half and, and Tim over. is the All 5. Um, I should know the numbers by heart now, but it's a lot of players, a lot of teams. Wow. That was uh, yeah. interesting. Team Holmbeck uh, just scored against Molde. Molde was playing with five players. And uh, Hemelina could really take advantage of this. And this is what happened at this level. 
um, with these teams. I mean, you know that. He was seen again. They went a pre yeah. I mean, he had like a free way. I mean, he could really take uh, there impulse. Was a block. There was a block to his left. Yeah. So he was undisturbed by the defender, and he could go in uh, all the way to the goalkeeper with all the push from his fins. Yeah. Nicely done. And it's it's, it's amazing to s end um, the the first half with a goal in the last seconds. That's a yeah. good push to start the next uh, half. Yeah, 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 I mean, in the last 10 seconds, really, now Molde has to see how they recover from this and how they can, uh, yeah, score. I mean, they still have 10 minutes, and, you know, in 10 minutes everything can happen, but uh, I've seen, well, I don't know, I mean, if Melina recovered, because at the beginning the, there were not that many attacks, I mean, they would arrive, and I had the, the impression that Molde was pressing more in the Melina uh, basket, but now they are, like, almost equal in the dominating the game, in the attacks, and if I remember correctly, I mean, one of the things that really impressed us uh, last year with Emil um, the last Champions Cup with Melina was, like, I mean, the teams would attack relentless and that they couldn't go through that def um, uh, yep. defend, even if it looked like precarious, it was like, okay, it's going to fall at a goal, but it didn't happen. So, yeah, amazing first uh, half here of these One two teams that faced each other on the same level. We have a bit of an explanation what happened earlier before. So yeah, we confirm that every team has only a time out of one minute per game, not for half game. But uh, the second uh, timeout was asked by the white team and it just that was a mistake ah, when they that it. Okay. Uh, press it. Uh, so it's all uh, clear and all good. Uh, no one's uh, infringed any, any rule. But I was a little bit confused because I thought maybe something changed now. Uh, no, it didn't. So, so this is going to be an interesting second half. Um, Molde surely has uh, a little bit more in star in this game and uh, they have they have something like the the, the second energy uh, level uh, they will go in to turn this game around because starting with a one zero is not uh, well but they're used to yeah but that sometimes makes teams play in a different teams way because ready? they have less to lose so they kind of it can both things happen it can continue that evelina built up more or it can be that molded suddenly like yeah. put up a gear we have seen both things happening. So now we have Molde and uh, Emelina uh, fighting for the ball in the middle. Emelina recover and is trying to get closer to Molde uh, basket. And they are now trying to get even closer to coming in waves. We have now the second wave with the uh, second player that got the ball. Uh, he's still in position of the ball, pass it to the next one. And the Molde player went in between, is trying to recover and they still Hemelina is in possession of the ball, but um, all this disrupting, so they are not being able to really mm. m build up the pressure to f to really force the mistake into Molde. What happened? Um, the the, the white player free was throw. in yeah. the middle of the, the pool on the bottom, was attacked by a Molde player uh, who stripped him off the ball. Pushing. But there was a call from the referee pushing, but that has been, probably. I guess that have been probably before, yeah. so there was advantage. And that's why the Molde player was a little bit irritated because he didn't make a mistake in this attack. I agree, but uh, the pushing was before, so it was advantage. And that yeah, was remember over. that the referees uh, sometimes see things. Normally, they held uh, the hand a uh, bit high, and they wait because they don't want to take the advantage of the team. And if the, um, the the situation develops not in the way that they were trying to to let the the, the team play, then they call it, and then uh, they apply the, the the fault. Anyway, we have now um, Hemelina that uh, was pushed a little bit away, but they're back in ball control. It's been difficult for Molde to really um, recover the ball, game. be in yes. possession and play their game. Yes, they are just reacting to Hemelina. That's normally That's never not good. That's never, never good. Yeah. So now we see a chance for Molde to build up uh, their own game in this free throw. They start with the free throw. And uh, we can see Hesu in the defense. This is going to be interesting because definitely Molde wants to score here with his chance, getting closer to the basket and start working on the defense of the Hesu team. Oh, that was a pass almost in the face of the Hesu player. 
And the ball fell down, holding without ball. And it's a free throw against Mulder. White free throw. It's not the game Mulder wants to play. Holding. Probably it's the game uh, Hesse wants to play. And they are really forcing Mulder into their own game structure. And they interrupt the, the ball playing of uh, Mulder pretty good. And Molde is uh, reacting, like you said, uh, Lorena, which is uh, not very often you see it. Here we go. Molde recover the ball, and uh, they are immediately attacked by the forward checking of Hesu. But you see that the players from Molde are coming always a little bit later to the situation. Uh, they should, I mean, the one that had the ball had to have already a, a team player uh, to continue the attack, and, and they arrive a little bit later. And this, this delay and the put being in position to continue the attack is what really makes a difference between dominating or not dominating the game. Oh, it's a penalty. Penalty. Okay. Uh, it was a really... Wedging with the shoulder. It penalty. Was a really uh, okay. hard attack on the Hesu basket. And um, the referee was holding on. And I was wondering, too, how he could withstand the pressure he gets from the attacker. And it looks like it was the the shoulder in the basket. Yeah, that's blue so attack now, place. now that's the chance that Molde has been waiting for. Let's see. So uh, no pressure <laughs> on the Molde player. Uh, I can read the numbers. How we are almost half blue ready. Way the the second White time, ready? right? Yes. So I here mean we go. It's Penalty. It's now Molde players attacking Hesu on the basket. Let's see who is the number nine, which is uh, holding. Yeah. Keeping, has to be very careful not to commit a fall by kicking or attacking. You know, now it's and coming from above. Molde player took a breath, uh, second okay. attack. Mm. He's trying to come the from, from the bottom, trying to oh, go around. It, yeah. oh, okay, great, great uh, work for both. But that's a problem, you want to goal and you are... number you six. You need to be... Uh, uh, to be always in between the basket and uh, the ball. And if eventually the, the, the attacker manage to, to get go in behind yeah. you, under you. So, and you have to be this game of getting at the front of the basket or on top of the basket, ah. uh, reacting to the attack, and that's, you know. So, 1-1. One, one. Now, Molde is uh, back in the game. Um, let's see if they can now uh, dominate a little bit more the, the game because Hemelina, until now, had a little more ball position and more uh, attack, more time attacking the Molde basket. So, Molde is back. Now, uh, the four Melina players <laughs> against the one, but that is what it means. I mean, uh, he was alone for, for uh, too long at this level, and then um, Melina recovered the ball. Hey, so, hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, what hey, happened? Hey, what happened? Stop. Okay. okay, what happened? The game has been stopped. The, they stopped the game. Uh, it looks like some. Wide free throw, roughing. Roughing, roughing against uh, from the Molder players, apparently. And uh, it's a free throw for uh, Hemelina. So four minutes, 20 seconds left. And if they are tied, they're going to go to penalties, right? Yes. Because someone needs to win this game. Definitely they will do. So now we have the Molde players in position. And Hemelina trying to attack up. However, uh, Hemelina lost the ball, and uh, Molde is in counter attack already. And um, they are at Hemelina basket. And again, I'm missing the Molde players being in position a little bit earlier. I have there's a bit of a delay. I know a different uh, game from Molde. And, and this delayed on the players and the teammates to be in position uh, when the one with the ball arrives on the other side is what I think, my opinion, is what is making it more difficult for them because then it's one player against two or three from Emelina and then he lost the ball. Uh, or they cannot take advantage of that counter-attack. Um, I, I know Molde doing counter-attack with two or three people, not normally with one, and I'm seeing this repeatedly today. So, uh, Hesu in attack, but only one player, second one coming in a bit, little bit late. And that's very difficult against uh, the Molde machine here in defense. Now the other Hesu players are in. Ball is still in Hesu. Ah, he didn't see that. 
That was a player who played it behind his back and the one on the open side. His teammate uh, waiting didn't see that. And uh, that was a chance for Molde getting hold of the ball. And this is the difficult situation. We have now a counter-attack of three Molde players now, yeah. really on the basket. That's what we know them seem like. Yeah, that's and goal. goal. Goal for Molde. And this is what I mean. Yes. No, this is what I meant. Uh, they would Very arrive well with the counter-attack just alone Blue and goal, really great. Four. And you see, so the, and let's call it, I don't want to call it a mistake, but uh, the pass the force, was very yeah, yeah. Uh, good Th behind his back. And uh, the player didn't see that. His teammate on the open side on the wall didn't see the pass. And uh, the Molde player got hold of the ball, and that was the start of the counterattack. There was a question in the audience who uh, was uh, holding the, um, the penalty, and that was the number nine, Ayari Hovikorpi. So continue now with, with the game. It's the last minute and 50 seconds. And now Molde is in control. Now it's Molde in control. And um, Hemelina is more reacting and, and dancing to the rhythm of Molde, right? Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you, we see it, how it changed the dynamic, right? Yeah. Um, it's amazing how you, um, how you can see that if you can read the game, how the, the impulse ca now comes from Molde since they scored. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that we were talking about that, that Molde was attacking or doing the counter-attack mainly with one player and the team players took a bit too long Luke to arrive so they couldn't take advantage. And then when they scored when was when they did a counter-attack with three players as this is what we know from Molde normally. Anyway, we have one minute to go. Himelina is playing also a hell of a game, and uh, in they need still a minute, and with these players, anything can one happen. One minute left. However, Emilia needs to be in possession of the ball and try to start a counter-attack, otherwise, this game. Oh, great, oh, that was snatch. a very that was, nice. That was like in Harry Potter, the snatch uh, with a with a, with a flying. Stop the time. Oh, time stopped. It's only 35 seconds. What happened? Two minutes, blue number five. Okay, number five again? Wasn't he out again? I don't before? remember. Actually, I uh, don't remember. The time, time penalty, has but stopped, so that he can get out. So the time is stopped now because it's 35 seconds. Remember Why that we so nothing will happen uh, in these 35 seconds. Nothing. Yeah, but nothing. This is free happen. throw for Hemelina. They can still score, yes. and Molde is with five. Everything can happen. <laughs> Everything can happen. Look, look at that. Look at the, look the wow, pressure. It's everyone wow, is there. Wow, yeah, and but if they, they do get the ball, it's, yeah, it's now or never. He the, to the, the ball. goal is oh. stolen by Hemelian in 15 seconds. And we have ah. now a cluster on the surface. This is really like, uh, you stop see, time, a snorkel falling down. They the stop. Blue free throw. Blue free throw now, nine seconds. Let me see who was the player from um, Holden, number five, Eben Suvik. That was an uh, intense uh, 15 seconds right away. And uh, the, the, the tone Nine of the games are, are like, you know, getting more complex, let's say. No? And after this, we have Colombia playing against Malsh, the German champion. Stop. Just gonna okay, be an that's game the game. end of the game. Two for Molde, one for Emelina. Over. Great game. That was really a thriller. Uh, let me write down. So two one. Really at the beginning of the game, it really looked like Emelina could win the match because Molde was like reacting a little bit too late and, and started the attacks uh, with just one player and really they completely turned the, the game even Emelina did the first goal so really really fantastic um, uh, game and now uh, what's coming up is uh, Orca the Colombian champion against uh, Malch the German ca champion so another kind of final I mean what we just saw is the top teams that we had already in 2019 Finland Norway um, Colombia and, and Germany, right, Wolf? Did I forget? Uh, I, mean, I mean, the, the last uh, Champions Cup where also these, these, these two games are having the, t the top four teams. Yeah. Uh, really. So, um, this Orca's coming up. Exciting. Colombia is already, we have, <laughs> we had 200 viewers before this game. Now we have 370. 
So I think the whole Colombia uh, and uh, the whole Germany huh? <laughs> uh, are uh, now uh, connected to watch this going to be another thriller. Um, yeah, super yeah. exciting. And we see Malch here, the team of the German team of Malch, uh, on the, the back in the, uh, the black uh, man here is Rainer Schottmüller, his two sons, uh, Jochen and Martin, are playing uh, in this team. There's a, uh, wow, that's prof professional excitement uh, rising up here. Colombia! I'm, wow, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, like uh, agitated. So, auch noch ein paar Grüße hier jetzt nach Deutschland. Uh, wahrscheinlich haben wir relativ viele Zuschauer aus Deutschland, die sich uh, das Spiel von Malch jetzt angucken wollen. Also, das ist wirklich eins schon praktisch der Finalspiele jetzt, dieses Champion Cups. Um, noch nicht die Finale, war nein, aber Malch, so ein bisschen Malch sind, sind die Qualität vom Finale. Top ja. Teams und uh, die Orcas bestehen zu 99 Prozent aus dem Weltmeister und sind die... Um, die noch aktuellen Champions Cup äh, äh, Champions. Also da treffen jetzt wirklich in diesem Spiel treffen zwei absolute Giganten aufeinander und ich bin sehr gespannt, wie Malch mit diesem schnellen äh, kolumbianischen Spiel zurechtkommt. Ich glaube, es wird schwer okay, für Malch. Das ist meine Theorie. Aber ähm, lassen wir uns sehen, wie sich Malch vorbereitet hat. Kann ich was auf Spanisch sagen? Ja, wir können. Hola, Colombia, ¿cómo estamos? Ahora que, bueno, vos estabas hablando en alemán, diciendo que estamos eh, presenciando casi, o sea, finales, ¿no? Los, el último partido y este partido están siendo ejecutados por los cuatro equipos eh, tops de la Champions Cup, que son Finlandia, eh, Noruega, Alemania y Colombia. Así que, bueno, eh, no es la final, pero es como si fuera la final. Eh, y nada, es un juego muy físico, es un juego muy rápido y vamos a ver qué, qué pasa. Así que bueno, vamos a estar entre hablando entre alemán, inglés, eh, español. Así que bueno, estén ahí, vayan comentando lo que van sintiendo, viendo. And back to English. Yeah, we can speak a little bit in German, And here we start. The game started and March is in ball possession. Really fast start. Uh, sorry, no, Ocas in ball. Sorry, they're there. Uh, <laughs> I exchanged the color. Ocas in ball possession. No, March. Let's get. Oh, that was a blue. What is a blue player? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was so it was fast. Too fast for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're uh, in the half of the Orcas. March is in ball possession in the corner and up. Call from the referee. Let's see. Free throw, white. Tiro libre para el equipo alemán. Okay, March gets on the free throw. That's a good start uh, for them for the game to go with the free throw into the attack. They give it to the player on the back. I think it was Jochen Schottmüller who got the, the ball. Ah, the ball was falling down. This, this is a killer against the, the Orcas. Call from the referee. Uh, hopefully the, the game is not totally interrupted by... Free uh, throw wide, rolling. I'm not, I'm not saying they're making a mistake, the referees, but it's, it can be that some games are really cut up by referee calls. Tiro libre para el equipo alemán. Uh, the one German player from March is under the basket of the Colombians in the Merla position. And uh, the, they try to attack from the close side. Heavy forechecking by the Orcas. Here we go, Jorge has the ball and uh, pass it on to his teammate going, going forward. The forechecking here from Malch is really relentless. Uh, they don't give uh, an inch well, away. They, they lost last Champions Cup against uh, uh, Orcas, right? If I remember correctly? I or so, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's too long here. So now they want to be uh, on top of the game from the very beginning. And uh, it's still a lot of a fight in the middle. Uh, both teams cannot really advance the way they, they want to Here have a counter-attack now from Oviedo, the captain uh, of the Orcas. But uh, you see the strategy of Malch is to intercept any uh, forward movement of yep. the ball carrier at once. So they go in with one, two players and the forechecking is a huge part of their work to stop this uh, pattern the Colombians try to establish. But nevertheless, we are on the close side um, of the Malch uh, basket and the Colombians take their first bite into the defense of the German champion. 
Now attack uh, from the open side, passed into the middle of the pool, called from the referee, free throw against Malch. Free throw. Blue, holding. Tiro libre para Orcas, aparentemente por retención, sin balón. Eh, we are now, uh, Federico está atacando, creo, desde el lado cerrado. ¿O ver a Fede o quién era? <laughs> Después se me enojan que no lo reconozco. Um, we have now Colombia trying to attack, uh, to, get, to get closer, but really Germany is, uh, again, uh, call from the uh, Retro, deck referee. Blue. Holding. Otra vez eh, un tiro libre a favor de Orcas en contra tres metros de, de la portería por retención de, por parte de un jugador alemán. And here we go back in the game and we have uh, two players are in a, in a cluster fight um, on the close side. Malch is in ball possession and Malch is doing pretty good here in this uh, game and they're putting pressure on the the Colombian players are not allowing them to play the game, but before, before uh, Colombia is adapting really fast to the playing structure, the game structure of the other teams. And uh, let's see what they do with this, uh, what uh, Malch Rembe. is offering. No, uh, Rembe? Good. Well, coming in, a Colombian player with a ball from the open side, pushing in, trying to push into the goalkeeper, pulling him away. He's still holding on to the ball, pushing and pushing and pulling. It's a quite chaos now, a little bit chaotic uh, situation above the mulch basket. Very well played. Both teams here. Ball is still in the possession of Colombia and a call from the referee. I don't think I can talk as fast as the game is. No. Nope. It's uh, almost impossible to talk as fast as the game is because it's a really fast game. An amazing White level. Three, warning for grabbing the mask. Free throw blue. Okay, un nuevo tiro libre para Orcas por ataque a la, a la máscara de uno de sus jugadores three. por parte del equipo alemán. I'm. Let, let's see because you know. Col oh, the 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 Colombian tried to to give a pass and went directly into the hands of the German player that was really in the middle. I don't. I mean, it was almost like giving it to him. Probably didn't see. Um. And we're in the middle of the pool, uh, heavy fighting back and forth, and uh, not much movement. Now Colombia tries to break free, and the pass is to the player who's coming from the corner and close, and another one La verde. is already playing. Ball ah. dropped out in the hands of a Mouch player. Very well played here and oh, solved. Oh, that, that could have wow, been great a recovery, yes, but it's on attack head. on the head. Free yes, throw. it was uh, it was half Why? in the head, half in the neck. Yeah. In the neck. The equipment. Sí, ahora bueno tiene un tiro libre los chicos del equipo alemán porque eh, no, no sé qué jugador estaba cuando estaba tratando de recuperar el balón pudieron ver que tenía la mano White como team. en la parte de la cabeza y atacando un poco White la parte team. de la máscara. Eh, so um, time out, White. Así que mal already we are al almost halfway uh, through the first um, and they have a free throw now so they're probably trying to see if tactically you know a lot of teams have for situations like this uh, a configuration of players they want to have in in the water and then uh, they have they have um, a strategy how they're going to do the free throw, the positions and everything. So I'm sure this is what they're doing. And to see if they can use this opportunity to score. So uh, Colombia needs to be very, very, very awake and attentive because this could be it, right? A ver, vamos a ver, tienen tiro libre los chicos del equipo alemán que pidieron tiempo fuera para organizarse, quizás poner los jugadores que quieren tener en ese tiro libre y ver si pueden usarlo como ventaja y, y bueno, intentar hacer un gol. Okay, the end, uh, that's the free throw, and Malch is on the attack uh, on the Colombian basket, and already positioned here on the open side, we see one player that is... And, uh, and one wrap around the, the yeah. basket. But uh, call throw, from the referee, blue team. free throw against Malch, 
Um, I didn't holding. see the sign holding uh, was without holding. ball. He yeah. was holding without ball. Probably the player that was under the basket was pushing too much the defender. And in this case, it's super difficult for the for the referee to yes. see because you have both players pushing without. I mean, the problem is who pushed more and is being seen by the. Yeah, normally, when you're in that yeah. position, no yeah. no one is a saint. Yeah. Both are doing. <laughs> <laughs> so here. Uh, um, the Colombian player tried to get through and was uh, stopped by March and now it's getting really physical right in front of the basket. You see them moving with a whole body and it's uh, this hurts and this, this close contact is really the point where after the game you start feeling what happened. Um, and both teams are now a little bit annoyed. Nothing is, is moving in their good direction. I think it's a little bit in the favor of Malch as far as I see so far. Uh, the Colombians cannot play their game. Uh, Malch is really good in interrupting what the Colombians try to, to build up here. Yes, and, and Colombia plays the ball very, very open and very, very flow. And the, the Germans are being very good in, in getting throw, in the middle of team. those passes. Ball was out of bounds. Okay, so the the Tiro libre para Orcas porque la pelota salió del área de juego. So the ball was out of the playing area and it's a free throw for the Orcas from Colombia. So let's see. And uh, they are coming. There's two players uh, from Orcas close. Uh, Federico. Is the covering one? of the Malch players, of the Orca players, is no, really good. Calenio. Because normally they really have two or three, uh, at least one uh, station they can pass to. But in this case, they block Malch. Oh, one this player, one on one, one situation. That's close. That and was now really. It's he hesitated. Like Smash of people on top of each other. That was a really, Let's really. Let's see in the replay here what happened. Great, the ball fell and Samuel. Samuel yes. was on he the way got down. Hold of the and, ball. and it was a bit like a hesitation, yeah. A bit of it. No, I don't think it was don't a hesitation. Think so? No, no, no. I think it was just he was getting into position. That was really, really. Okay, that was that was close. Yeah, really close. And. Uh, that was the first situation I would have uh, uh, saw, thought. Okay, this is uh, very was very much in favor of Colombia. And Colombia is adapting. I think that we see the process here live. How Colombia is adapting to the gameplay. We have a little bit frozen screen. Happened uh, this today um, several times. Hopefully, we'll be back in the stream within seconds. But that was impressive uh, game. Uh, what I saw from March too, how they cover the. The, the player's position from Argent, uh, from uh, Colombia. And again, a, f a very heavy attack from uh, the Colombian team. And they're coming from the close side. I mean, Malz is doing a great job trying to keep, but the, 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 the <laughs> Colombians keep coming and now they stole the, the ball. And it's, let's see if Colombia can recover and be in position, but it's, it's, a, it's a great uh, stop in the middle um, because there was no other match player. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be the, the interesting part. And the, uh, we're almost at the end of the first half. Four seconds, three seconds left. And this was exciting. This was a really exciting game. Uh, total respect to much what they put in the water here. And uh, Colombia is adapting. So uh, the second half going to be very interesting. Ok, eh, tenemos el medio tiempo, todos los familiares ahí presentes, <ríe> ¿cómo están? Eh, Hacía tanto tiempo que no los escuchaba, que no los leía. Eh, eh, así que bueno, estamos acá este, vibrando con el partido. Eh, está siendo un partido verdaderamente... Eh, <ríe> para, para, yo no, se me van las palabras, eso es difícil que se logre. Eh, es, Así que bueno, a ver, todo Colombia ahí alentando. We have already 436 people. Half of them are pro probably Colombians. Um, what about the German uh, fans? Ja, ich wollte auch gerade anfangen, silent. was äh, auf Deutsch dazu zu sagen. Ich hatte gerade auf Englisch schon erklärt, ähm, dass Malch äh, wirklich ein, ein, ein wahnsinnig geniale erste Hälfte hingelegt hat. Sie haben es auf mehreren Ebenen geschafft, das ähm, schnelle Spiel von den Orcas so weit zu unterbinden. Sie haben sofort vorgecheckt, wenn die Orcas im Ballbesitz waren und haben den Orcas nicht erlaubt, ihr Muster zu weben im Wasser. Sondern sie sind sofort auf den Ball tragen und um die Anspielstationen zugegangen. Und wenn ähm, die ähm, Kolumbianer dann am Malcher Kauf waren, haben die Malcher 
jede Anspielstation unterbunden. Ich habe es so selten gesehen, dass äh, eine Situation entsteht, in der die Kolumbianer ankommen und zögern müssen, weil sie nicht abspielen können. Und das ist genau eingetreten. Und da hat man halt wirklich alles richtig gemacht in, diesem, in dieser ersten Hälfte. Und trotzdem, man hat gesehen, wie sich die Kolumbianer Sekunde für Sekunde an dieses Spiel angepasst haben. Und das ist die große Fähigkeit von der kolumbianischen Mannschaft, sich anzupassen an das Spielsystem der anderen und entsprechend einzustellen und so reinzugehen. So, ich bin extrem gespannt auf diese zweite Hälfte, was beide Mannschaften da ins Wasser bringen. Ja, <lacht> ich kann nur zustimmen. Das waren zu viele Worte in so kurzer Zeit. Uh, yes, we're talking um, about how the, the, the Colombian game has been Uh, adapting to the, the, the strength of the, of the Germans um, and still, I mean, Colombia, we couldn't see the, this, this completely flow that you see, I mean, yep. uh, they're always being intercepted, like you said uh, before, Wolf, uh, but still they created a lot of situations, we were really, really risky for a miles, we can, until now, I haven't seen how many times did uh, Colombia attack the German basket, how many times the Germans attacked the Colombian basket. Yes, I would I say five to one. Yeah, five to one would, would be my and same estimate. And this is something that Marsh needs to change because they're doing a great job defending, but that's not the enough. thing. It's, uh, it's not enough to win, first of all, you yep. need to be on the other basket, but also the more you're in the basket, the more you start getting in your head and, and then uh, the other team can Keep force it and the Colombians are great to Okay, to uh, my blood pressure is pretty high. Rate. Second half is starting. Wow, fantastic. Uh, that's a pity. The Colombians uh, took the ball. <laughs> but <laughs> but Lamer 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 nevertheless got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was no one behind. Okay, so Pacho, Colombia is going in side. really strong. Great defense. This, I think this is uh, Jochen Schottmüller that defend that wall, I think. And the ball is on the surface, probably in a cluster there. We don't see it yet. Samuel, the coach of the Colombians, is ready. He got the ball. Free throw, uh, free throw for Colombia. Oh. Yep. Free the throw. Ball. Blue. And they try to execute the free ball throw as fast as possible, so March yep. will not have time to establish their defense. Took too long already for this. Okay, back in the game. Oh, in the past, th this happens doesn't happen very often that Colombian players give a wrong pass in the wrong direction. So there's... Well, because they're farther away and the Germans are being good and just intercepting. Yeah, they, they must be really under a lot of pressure here, uh, Colombians, to make these mistakes. So uh, it's a compliment to the Mulch game. Call from the referee. Free throw. Free throw. Blue. No, white. 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 Free throw against Colombia. Okay, tiro libre para, Colom eh, para eh, Mulch. Holding, ¿no? Porque parece que, bueno, retuvieron a un jugador sin balón. Y vamos a ver si Colombia eh, puede recuperar el, el balón y, y seguir atacando por hasta ahora. O sea, son cinco ataques al, al, al arco de los alemanes y uno de los alemanes al, al colombiano. Así que, bueno, vamos a ver si, si pueden mantener ese, ese, ese ritmo o si mal se recupera. Wow, I'm a little <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <we don't laughs> this, is, this is the kind of game uh, I was really like waiting for and now it's here and I'm, uh, I'm totally speechless. Yeah, speechless in shock and awe. Um, it's eight minutes left and both teams do pretty good stopping the other team, but none of them is... Uh, the, the Colombian chance uh, from Samuel at the goalkeeper What's was the, the, best, was yeah. the best option uh, for a goal in this whole game so far. So uh, both teams pretty much cancel them each other out. Uh, the Colombians try to come from the open okay, side, swimming against. over the bar, the goalkeeper, and uh, Colombians are positioned around the basket. And the second wave comes in. Here we go. Now Colombia is taking the initiative. Uh, it looks like a little bit March is uh, not doing the same as they did in the beginning, covering all the, the playing, the, the players. Well, but they had a couple of heavy attacks, so, you know, now they are... Um, Losing the structure a little bit here in March. They're not so, not so much for checking like before. Then we have, again, three Colombian players coming. I think La Verde is there, the 99 trying to attack. Uh, Samuel now recover the, uh, the ball. Fede now with the ball and um, Malsh now. Uh Colombia is again probing. It's, it's again, now they're going really fast. Three players on all sides dangerous. of the basket. 
and uh, their top Mucho scorers presión. in the middle. Wow, this is... De los colombianos para el arco, alemán. Uh, eh, Malch no really does an amazing gol, job. Pero están construyendo una presión bastante, bastante interesante. Y si siguen así, quizás puedan forzar el error eh, y meter el, el balón. Colombia is dominating the game, even yes. though they are not being able to score. And Malch, uh, are, it's doing a great job defending, but they There's will have to... Wow. from the referee. Number 24. Two minutes oh. for holding. Oh, 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 oh. So we have oh, a time man. penalty. Team, so leave Suchauer uh, um, here in Deutschland. That was my my Blutdruck is, glaube ich, gerade um, weit von den uh, natürlichen Werten entfernt. Um, Wahnsinn Spiel hier, was wir gesehen haben und ein bisschen wie ich es vermutet habe. Uh, Kolumbianer haben sich mehr und mehr an das Spiel von Malch angepasst, haben den uh, das Tempo erhöht. Und in den letzten äh, Szenen ist Malch nicht mehr in der Lage gewesen, genau das zu machen, was ich am Anfang so bewundert habe, die Anspielstation der Kolumbianer zu decken und eben mit dem Vorchecken die Angriffe zu unterbinden. Und jetzt haben wir natürlich einen krassen Fall in, diesem, in diesen letzten Minuten hier, dass äh, Malch eine Strafzeit gekriegt hat, zwei Minuten. Das heißt, für zwei Minuten wird Malch jetzt Unterzahl mit fünf Spielern im Wasser sein. Und das ist gegen eine Mannschaft wie die Kolumbianer, wie die Orcas, Schwierig. Sagen wir mal. Welche Spieler ist raus? Mit welche Gruppe war das? Ich weiß jetzt nicht, welche Position. Die Zuschauer, wenn ihr weiß, welche Spieler raus ist oder mit ein bisschen mehr Position. Also, liebe Malche-Fans, drückt eurem Team die Daumen, weil jetzt kommen harte zwei Minuten. Okay. This is going to be tough for Malch. Um, it was a uh, tough uh, scenes, and now they have one player less. One player is for two minutes on a penalty bench, and uh, Colombia will throw in everything they have to uh, score now because I guess this, the next goal, will decide this ah. game again of these two players. SF, uh, two games. Defender Matthias Oten. Danke. Thanks you so much. Uh, that is sitting outside. Okay. And so an attack from the Verde from the on the open side. But wow, and it speaks a lot uh, for the defense of Malch that La Verde was not able to execute this uh, attack because normally, oh, penalty. 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 How did, do they want to kill me? Uh, penalty. This I game. mean, La Verde got, was in Blue a great team. position, was trying penalty to. Uh, and white goal wedging. Um, okay. Liebe Zuschauer, um, liebe deutsche Zuschauer, wir yeah. haben einen Strafstoß uh, gegen Malch wegen Verkeilen im Tor. Um, wie ich gerade gesagt habe, der Spieler, die 99 auf der offenen Seite, uh, Juan Jose, uh, Jose Juan uh, Laverde, ist einer der Top-Spieler. Und wenn er nicht in der Lage ist, uh, mit dieser freien Position, die er hatte, das Tor zu machen, dann ist entweder die Verteidigung sehr gut, aber tatsächlich war der Torwart anscheinend so eingeklemmt, dass er das gar nicht konnte. Um, der Krimi Penal geht weiter. Haltet euch fest, schnallt euch an. Okay, genau. Luft. Das, äh, 45 Sekunden lang Luft anhalten jetzt. Gol, pero bueno, se fue defendido un poco, pero bueno, eh, aparentemente el, el, el portero alemán tenía el hombro metido, entonces eh, como no pudo ser convertir el gol eh, por esto, por la falta tenemos ahora el penalty. Penalty is on. Who is uh, executing it? It's uh, uh, La Verde. La Verde. Uh, wow. wow. Gol. Gol de Colombia. Muy, muy bien peleado. O sea, muy bien. There was the same player, La Verde, it was the same player who was prevented from uh, scoring by wedging. And uh, he's just amazing. He was a youth player in the World Champion Youth uh, Championships in Oberhausen. I saw him playing there uh, when I do the comments there. And he's the youngest player yeah. in the uh, Colombian team. So Malch now has to step up and they have three and a half minutes left to equal the score. Otherwise, they lose this game. And they did pretty well in the first half and it will be, uh, uh, be devastating for them. Let's see if Colombia can keep up and really it's, it's, it's about holding the ball away from the basket for three minutes and I trust Colombia to be able to do this. Yes, I, I do too. And um, let's see. I mean... I love both teams and I love both players and this is... This is hard for me too. I yes, mean, it's like rugby the on a level <laughs> that... Uh, uh, these two games, uh, Hesu and uh, against Molde, and now here Malch against uh, 
uh, Colombia is, is, is amazing underwater rugby and this is really a standard. And uh, Malch is trying to push hard on the Colombian basket, but they are kept at distance and not... Uh, now the next attack is coming in on the oh middle, oh. and this is heavy, but the ball is free, occupied by, by Pacho. Jorge, uh, he's the one doing the, the equipment from Guasabro. Oh and yeah, recover that, uh, ball and, and to we go away. to the mulch basket, and this is something that shouldn't happen uh, for mulch, because playing in the mulch half is uh, counting time for them, and they are getting closer and closer, losing this game, so they have to break free out of their own basket area, but uh, I don't think uh, Colombia will allow it. Two minutes uh, left, and for, for, uh, for, for, for both of us, as Harvey, we know players <coughs> on both <coughs> teams, we, we love them both, and it's just really a necessity to uh, Yeah, Titans, Titans, meeting of the Titans here in the water. <sighs> Time is ticking, less than two minutes. Mulch really has to step up here. Yeah, it's one and a half minutes still. You know, everything can happen with this kind of teams, but... Uh, and La Verde again on the open side. But that was a really good move from the defender, uh, bringing his arm in between and stopping this, uh, this ball from getting behind the back of the goalkeeper. And, and this is what I love from Colombia. They're not trying to play safe. They're not trying just to hide the ball yeah. and keep it in the corner so that the minute no they're no, attacking they go for it. Call from the referee. Free throw, free throw, white team. Okay, Tiro Libre. Okay, Brian. that's, that's Malch. Malch. Free throw, white team. Colombia, I love you, but Malch, that's your last chance. Das wird die letzte Chance sein für Malch, ja. hier in dem Spiel ähm, äh, auszugleichen und äh, sich in die Penalties reinzuretten, sage ich jetzt mal, weil äh, wenn sie jetzt nicht äh, den Ball in das kolumbische Tor versenken, dann haben sie das Spiel verloren. Das wird jetzt eine sehr intensive Minute, bzw. Uh, 40 Sekunden. El Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Tenemos a los alemanes que tienen un tiro libre y es el único, el último minuto donde puede intentar hacer algo y ver si puede meter un gol en estos últimos 30 segundos. Uh, Pero Orca se está defendiendo con todo, va a mantener ese balón alejado lo que más pueda. Celis tratando de llevar a jugador, pelota, todo afuera. 25 lejos. seconds. My heart is breaking for Malch and my heart is beating for Stop the clock. Uh, Orcas. Stop the Okay, stop the clock. One seconds. Blue team. Okay, tiro libre okay. para Orcas. Tiro libre para Orcas. Han parado el reloj. Quedan 18 segundos. 1 a 0. <laughs> Wolf cannot stay seated here. Oh, yeah. uh, it, <laughs> it, it, mein Herz blutet für Malch. Wirklich tatsächlich. Yeah. Gleichzeitig schlägt mein Herz sehr für unsere Freunde aus Kolumbien, mit denen wir schon sehr viel Zeit verbracht haben und erlebt haben. Ein Wahnsinnsspiel, was wir sehen. Aber ich denke mal, jetzt mit dem uh, Freiburg von Malch wird es nicht mehr möglich sein, äh, mit der Frage von äh, den Kolumbianern wird es nicht mehr möglich okay. sein. Free throw, free äh, throw, das blue team. Hier. Wrapping. Para Orcas, cuatro yeah. segundos por juego. Two minute penalty for attacking the mask, number three. We have a time penalty for uh, another Malch player. For attacking the mask. Yes. Y vemos uno de los jugadores de Colombia que se retira sin la máscara, creo que es Samuel. Eh, pero bueno, nada, terminó el partido. Ya well, está. Yeah. End of the match. Congratulations, Congratulations to Colombia. Colombia and amazing game from Malch. Um, and uh, I have to take a break now because uh, I think my heart is beating too fast. Thank you for being in here with us in the live stream. Uh, gracias, Colombia. Vielen Dank äh, auch zu Hause. Es war wirklich ein grandioses Spiel, was Malch hier abgeliefert hat. Die erste äh, Hälfte war unfassbar genial. In der zweiten Hälfte haben sie dann leider, leider ähm, ihren, ihren Drive verloren und die Energie verloren. Super sí, genial. Pero, äh, ein, ein Spiel, das Kolumbien wirklich dominiert hat. Ja. In, in, also im Sinne, dass die haben wirklich mehr Zeit. An, ich würde sagen, 70 Prozent der Zeit waren die ungefähr an der deutschen äh, Ecke. Ja. Um, okay, um, ich geb, übergebe jetzt zu uh, Lisa um, und wir hören uns up. nachher wieder. Who's coming up? Uh, Vienna is coming up. And uh, uh, Hammerhead. We have now the games of the girls. Lisa is coming. She knows all the players from Vienna. And so we have the US against Austria. So hi again. 
So it's the women's game for position seven, right? Is yes. third, like the, the, the yeah. women are playing for each position in groups exactly. of three, as we have three groups, yeah. and they each play against each uh, rank yeah. the yeah. same Hello. position Hello. in the group phase. Um, yes, and we have also the next game is also another uh, female game between Italy and Switzerland. For um, the spot 10, for the 10th yeah. position. This will be a pretty uh, intense game, I think, and it might get quite physical. They are, yeah, because now the teams are meeting more and more. Their uh, teams are at the same level. Eh? At the beginning, it's a bit everyone, everything, everyone against everyone in the groups. No. And then that sort of Six players, players. Out, and then Six they start players. playing more and more with teams in the same um, level. level yes. So we have now uh, the Hammerheads and um, the Vienna team. And Vienna played their Two games they played today ended up in penalty shootouts. Okay. They won the first against uh, Helvetia this morning, 1-0, okay. and lost 3-2 um, against the Sea Dragons from Australia. All right. It's zero. Everything is zero. Here. Do we have fans okay. for uh, Austria here, and for the US okay. here? And the we have 436 people watching. Where are the fans? I don't know where the fans right. are from, but now Everyone we have... Ready? ready? Looks like the deck referee is uh, Esteban from Colombia. He's the candidate for international referee. So the Hammerheads reached the ball a tiny bit before Vienna. Um, but we're in the Hammerhead half. Have a bit of a fight for the ball here. But the Vienna players are there and think they don't want to get into a defensive phase from the beginning on. So Vienna has the ball and is going for the American goal. What do you think how the game is going to be? I mean, do you think that one of the teams is going to do many more than the other? Have any? Uh, I'm not guess? sure. I, ha I haven't seen the Hammerheads play, actually. I somehow didn't see any of the games. I well, they, they have very similar Colombian way mm -hmm. uh, of playing, so... I'm also interested to see how this is going to be. Right now, uh, we are in the half of the of the US team, but uh, Aust Austria couldn't really build up a lot of momentum or. Oh, that they they they've been twice already at the rim. Yes, but um, they are, it still doesn't look that dangerous. Let, let's no, say it that. it's not that dangerous, but, but they're yeah, there but and they're, they're stressing the yeah. team pretty well. They have two, yeah. three players coming in um, pretty solidly. But the Hammerheads have had a very good performance so far this competition. Like they've scored against uh, who did they score against the Germany against Langen, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, they lost two one, but uh, mm -hmm. but they managed to score. So we have Austria trying to build up more more uh, of a risk situation so that force a mistake uh, in the defense of uh, the U.S. team. But great recovering from the. Uh, hammerheads that uh, started a counter-attack but it's been stopped by two They Austrian get stopped players. midfield and Teresa Vihan has the ball and swims back towards the US basket and Austria is again in the hammerhead zone just outside the danger zone no they stay around like this two three meter zone they're they're not not dangerous like the yeah. the defense cannot really uh, gather itself But they're getting closer and closer, and as you said, the longer you stay on the half of one of the teams attacking... Oh, that was a <laughs> bad pass. I, I'm not sure if that was a pass or the ball just fell. dropped. It I think fell. it just yeah. fell. Drop, yeah. um, but it's not that easy for the Hammerheads to go through. The Hammerheads still in position, and now the we are out of their half. They're uh, in the Vienna corner, in the closed, closed corner. Three minutes from the beginning of the, of the game. That was a very sustained attack from Vienna. Oh, and one of the Hammerheads stole their the Vienna goal, actually. Yeah, that's there in between. When, you know, when they do this kind of action, they need to be very careful not to push too much without the ball, because otherwise, if, mm -mm. if that happens, then... But she moved away yeah by... Yeah. No, no, oh, and now we have Lise Schwarz again, get, got the ball and counter-attacks very fast. Uh, oh, no, what did, did she do that pass? 
well, probably she didn't have any more air and so. It could uh, be because I think she was already underwater yeah. for quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But that put quite some stress on the on the hammerhead. And now we have someone attacking by herself. Didn't see the support player coming in down at the corner. Yeah. Okay, the Hammerheads tried to recover the ball, kind of dropped it. Now we have yeah, the scrum at the surface. And the Hammerheads pass oh down. Oh no, goal, goal completely and open. open. Wow. This was bad. Wow. Okay, Hammerheads, who was that player goal. who can tell me? Goal dark. Fantastic counterattack. She just 20, recovered. did he say? I didn't hear you. Time out, white team. Time out, white team. So if that's Daniela Jaramillo, number 20, I guess. Um, yeah, what? Yeah. No. Yes, Daniela. Um, <laughs> it yeah, sometimes we have the wrong numbers on the player. That's why we need sometimes. And also, I don't have a team list That's here it, for yeah. Austria yeah. for some reason. No, but here, um, Vienna, the players were swimming back yeah. at the surface and they didn't realize. They might have not realized that you someone think was there. They didn't realize that they had the. the I, because I couldn't see how the ball fell, and I just, you know, with the replay, it showed the moment where she had the ball and she started uh, swimming a, a counter. Do you see? I mean. She I got it? Like she. Yeah, she got it, like three meters away from her. But and they, they were swimming back, and they realized very late that she was countering. Yeah. Because she Six came from players. behind all the yeah. players who were rolling back. All right, so I think it's a good idea that uh, Vienna take a, a timeout now to, to, you know, when something like this happens, you're a bit under shock, so you want the players to regroup, to think, to keep their cool head. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, in that attack from Vienna, it's a pity that the player that was in possession of the ball had no more air, because ideally you have to go both until the, the, the goal, goal and try and maybe cover the, the basket. The yeah. pass mm -hmm. behind the, the, yeah. the, okay, so now the, the back not in the front. The Hammerheads have Wait. recovered the ball somehow from Vienna and uh, are again attacking. Now they got the momentum, I think, and they, I reckon they will try and score again. Well, the old Austria is defending that basket right now and, and they recovered the ball. And swimming again. Didn't see the support early enough. But the player stayed on the water. I think that's Monika Spottl. Vienna is taking a bit of um, <laughs> recovery time in the corner, building up their attack, waiting for support to arrive. But they need to have more players coming in and waves. Now we have one player coming in and then the second and then the third, but they don't have enough people at the same time attacking together. Okay, we're at the surface. I guess we have a surface crumb in the open side, open corner of the Hammerhead basket, and again the ball is down in the close corner. Vienna is pulling out. I don't know if they have exhausted themselves a bit at the beginning. We have I now one player got going going in by herself. I think that uh, maybe you know a little bit of the shock of that kind of goal because it's on an empty basket. Wasn't even sometimes it can bring you're a little bit out of off the situation of the game. So I hope that they can, you know, because we don't see the same intensity and the same connection and, and focus. Uh, they're a little bit more like, I don't want to say lost because it's not that much, but a little bit more like. Yeah, but before they were really attacking yeah, like exactly, two, three players exactly. at the same time. And now, no, that's why uh, I say it's like they're a little bit off. The, they lost yes. the focus somehow. And Hammerhead is now uh, in position of the ball trying to attack. Good kick from the defender on that ball that couldn't arrive, and then and the uh, Austrian are really on top of the of the. The forwards are doing a really good job yep. at uh, going for the ball and trying to keep it away from the basket. Here we have Monica fighting for the ball, but the Hammerheads keep possession. Remember today we are playing all the game for the positions. The finals are being played tomorrow, so we have Hammerhead putting oh. a lot of pressure. The, yeah? the women don't. Ha that's kind of the finals. The women play. Yes, no, no, I know, no, but they were asking about the men. Uh, the men uh, and, the, and the women have the same system that the last time, where they all, all play for the position. They mm. yeah. It's like a yeah. So have Vienna has a, a good defense. Um, 
The last goal was really a counter-attack on an empty basket, but uh, they have a very solid defense and very good at rotating. And also the forwards know to look out for possible gaps. Oh, ref call by the referee. Light free throw, light free throw. Free throw for Vienna. It looked like it was pushing. It also seems that the referee deactivated the microphone. No, but uh, when they don't talk, then we don't hear much. Okay. Uh, yep. So uh, let's see if Austria, they still have less than two minutes on the first half and the second half, and let's see. And there was a, the pass was not very good. The Hammerhead player managed to get between the ball and the receiver, the intended receiver of the pass. Oh, the ball now just dropped to the bottom. And yeah, the Hammerheads are still in position, or are fighting. Uh, but they're still in position, which is good. And now, um, yeah, when they go. When you go to the surface with the ball like this, and it's easier to, uh, to be than get held by the by, by the opponent. But great! I mean, we have now two players from the blue team from Hammerhead uh, trying to get to the basket of Austria again. But Austria is really doing a great for checking, trying to keep the ball away. Oh, and Billim pushed the ball away of the Hammerhead player's hands, but the other one was here to oh, recover oh, it. That's that yeah, was, was a little bit close. That was a <laughs> that was a risky change by the goalies. And Vienna has a ball. Vienna has a ball and swims out. Gets blocked by the hammerheads. Now Teresa is la lacking a pass possibility. She had support ahead of her. She didn't see it. And now, okay, now Vienna is back in the hammerhead corner. 30 seconds to go on the first half time. And let's see if they yeah they have 20 seconds and it, they come with everything they're trying to keep coming and they keep in position of the ball. Uh, but the hammer has a very good on keeping the ball away from the basket. So now the next oh that was a great position but she lost the ball. However, we have again I mean they, they you know they do this thing where they rub themselves on the on the player around and that makes it so complicated to keep the it's ball. It's really hard. Play. Okay, end of the first half. One zero for the hammerheads. Um Vienna still has a big chance. Oh I mean sorry. End of the first half. Sorry. <laughs> first half. Three minutes break now, they have to change sides and um I mean I think Vienna everything is possible. Hammerhead are playing very good, and the Vienna for a moment there were a bit like shaken, <laughs> but now we see that they recover a little bit more and they were attacking in the last 20, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we well, know one zero. If the Hammerheads want to have a, a sure win, they need to do another score because yes. um, Vienna can can still achieve a, go a score. Uh I reckon that Vienna will switch it up, and um, if they are playing again like they were playing at the very ha at the very beginning of the game, or now that they did last two minutes, mm. they m might yep. uh, they have might score. Yeah, it was the same their previous game against the Sea Dragons. The first half they got scored on twice, and then they scored they equalized on the second half. It was an another game. Yep. And here we had we had almost a pretty yeah, that's good such um, a pity. It was the, the, a great the counter attack, attack but Lizzie yeah. and Denise was a very missed opportunity. Too bad, but. Let's see what happens the second time. This this game is not over. It's really not decided. No, nope, not at all. And as uh, Lisa said at the beginning, here it is from places 10 and 11. Yeah. So the semi-final. Hold on. Let's let me see the page. We have too many pages What's here. What semi-final? <laughs> For whom? For the men? Um, yes. The semi-final A, I mean, already we have the semi-final A and B, and when I have to write down, I mean, we have that um, Molde uh, against Orgas, no? And the semi-final B is Jesu um, against... Uh, One minute to start. Well, they played those. Yes, yes, no, but they play, and now they went, those, the, the, the two games before were to the semi-finals, right? If I if you understand correctly. Wait. Let's okay. mute ourselves for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we can solve this game plan. We're back in a minute.
No? <laughs> 30 seconds. Six players in the water, please. Okay, now we are. <laughs> now we're just. Uh, we solved. We Who solved, plays yeah. against whom? Yes, yes. Remember that the girls are playing for the position, so every game will give them um, uh, a position on the on the last on the on the, the last uh, table. God. Um, uh, table. table. Yeah. Okay, the game has started already, and yep. we're s fighting at the bottom of the pool. The Hammerheads got the ball, and are in the Vienna half. Moving the ball around the basket, but Vienna are not letting them get too close to the goal. I think. I mean, we have a player wrapped around the goal mm, with her. Yeah, she's pushing a little bit without the ball. No, she's completely pushing the goal yeah. <laughs> without the ball. I was trying to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> wrapped her hands around yeah. her, pushed on her. Uh, but well, I think that the referees gave advantage and just waited. The it was not very dangerous for the goalie. Yeah. If something had happened, I reckon they would have um, said something. We have a scrum at the surface, and Vienna is trying to move the ball away. Hammerheads keep possession. But Vienna is giving them um, a hard time getting close to the basket. Let's see now if uh, the hammerheads are putting a little bit of pressure. Yena needs to really be in possession of the ball and start attacking on the opposite basket if they want to win this game. And right now, the hammerheads are doing it very, very complicated. Yeah, but Vienna needs, I reckon they at some point need to recover the ball yeah, and, and go for that counter attack. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they will, they will get tired. This is the risk when you're defending a lot. They're very good at this, yeah, this bunkering down and defending. Ooh, yeah. this. That was risky. But uh, the defender got the ball, but the Hammerheads are uh, wrapping around the defender trying to get that ball back. Now Vienna needs to move the scrum or something like that because the scrum just above your basket ball is out of bounds. very risky. Ball Blue. out of bounds. Free throw. Ball out of bounds. Free throw, Blue free throw. for uh, the Hammerheads. Okay. That's a pity. I mean, if, if uh well, Vienna could try and intercept the ball here. That's always an opportunity. But Show we have ball, we have a hammerhead player clued to the goal. Good job by the um, forward from Vienna trying to uh, knock the ball away of the attacker's hands. But Vienna has been defending for now over three minutes and gets a bit tiring. So let's let's see if they can turn this around. Yeah, for our ball, when you're defending so long, eventually you start doing mistakes. You have, you have yeah. a gap. Like here, the, they yeah. don't have a back end position or like just very yeah. on the closed side. If the hammerheads get the ball yeah. to the open side, it's risky. Yeah. Okay, now recovering from the ball. Let's see if they can get out. Ah. Okay, so Brina gets the ball Ray from the attacker. from the, the US team. And now the US team keep coming and wait, right? One after the other one. And Austria does good uh, attempts to get the ball, but cannot completely get out of there. Mm -hmm. And they're moving the ball. They're not just staying in the close corner. They're very... Um, they're a bit better than the Austrians at this thing of moving completely to the other side. The Austrians never went really in from the open side. Yep. But they're doing a very good job and have very solid defense. Teresa got the ball from the attackers, but she's pushing out against three hammerheads. Now we have the goalie going 
out as well. We have no one under the scrum. And no one at the basket. Uh, it looked like it would be a one against one situation. Oh, this is risky. This is really risky. The goalie alone, we can't see exactly how she's being attacked, but... It she was being atta attacked from the head side and she had uh, the, the attackers were grabbed yeah, from grab the back and pushed away. Daria Roden got the ball again and pushes it out, passes down. Yeah. Looks like Jackie, I reckon, got the ball. Support is there. Yeah. Lizzie Schwarz Let's swimming. By can. herself, yeah. <laughs> support is a bit late. Ah, that's the path. Oh, that's such a pity. Okay, now they are coming into trying to attack, but hammerheads are all in position already because that counter attack took a little bit too long. Sadly. So now Vienna should maybe pull out a bit and make sure they stay in control. They, they, they keep, keep yeah, they went. They went in. They should have maybe pulled out a tiny bit. Another counter attack by the hammerheads, very fast. Oh, oh, oh and the, the basket was also like took longer for the goalie to get there on time. She's and not a goal. It's not a she's not a goalie. Okay, so the it's goal not a goalie on the goal. Okay, and then that's gonna mm, oh, that's very, very risky situation for Vienna. I mean this is really good save. Very good saving. Very good save. And this is something that um, Vienna has been and Austria have been working on with all those people who had COVID last year. If the person oh, is not there. Oh, amazing attack. She was she got the ball right under the back of the goalie Goal of Austria and, and the number forty-four four, four, for hammerheads. Number forty-four is uh Charity Ramirez. Timeout Blue Team. Ramirez. Time out just Blue made team. a score, the second score for uh the hammerheads and with only about three minutes left from the game. There's no much that uh, Austria can do. I mean, three minutes sounds like a, like a bit of time, but to recover from two goals and to recover from the domination that the Hammerheads are having, I don't see it happening. I don't know, maybe one goal if they... they I really hope they manage to, to score one. They're, um, they're, doing, they're doing well. Th this was a, a, a good goal. This was a fair goal. The first yeah. one was, was yeah. a pity. This yeah. one was... An actual goal. For, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Six players in the water, please. One that you don't Six regret players. that much. Mm. Yeah, and we have the finals. I mean, we have the finals. Molded Orcas, which is going to be played tomorrow at 3 p.m. Berlin time. No? And the places uh, for 3, 4 is going to be between Finland and Germany. Okay, so the game has started again, and now Vienna is attacking the Hammerhead goal. I think they really want to manage and score one goal, if not two. Well, let's see. I mean, if they have in, in possession of the of the ball and they they can't recover and be a little bit like they were in the first three four minutes of the game. Well, I think the Hammerheads now would just bunker down yeah, and. Of course. They're gonna just play maybe safe, but at least they would try to recover the ball, just you know, being in position of the ball, make it easier. Okay, Vienna is attacking again, but we have a player a bit alone. Vienna really needs to be more systematic in having three players on. Okay, the hammerhead goalie recovered the ball, is pushing out, having a scrum at the surface and dragging the Vienna players away. That's something Vienna seems to be struggling with today when they get a scrum. Pulled into a scrum at the surface, the other teams swim out to them, yeah. and they're they not very good at they're not very good at countering it uh, yeah. at uh, stopping the uh, stopping the yeah. being pushed. Okay, the Hammerheads got the ball and are swimming towards the Vienna basket. Vienna recovers, but they're missing a second player here to get the pass. Advantage for the Hamheads. Okay, there was a pass towards the back by Vienna. 
So we have the goalie now. She received the ball, pushes out. One and a half minute left in Austria. I still in the middle of the pool, trying to get closer to the basket of the US team. And the Hammerheads are really fighting to keep them from happening. Now we have two players against. Oh, we have the player. Players. Sabrina yeah. has the ball in the corner just behind the goal, and she starts pushing up. Okay. We have a stolen basket from the Austrian player. And Let's see if she scrum. can get the. How long she can hold there and if she can get the ball. It's one minute, and uh, oh. the, 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 the Hammerheads are doing very good just the keeping ball the ball, the ball again, is yeah. too far. The yeah, ball is too far, the Hammerheads are swimming yeah, that's away. That's a pity, because that was a very good uh, situation, mm. as that's what I meant. The referee was saying something, but they're still playing. Vienna has the ball and goes back to the basket. The goal is free. Daria hasn't seen that. Ah, oh, she said too late. 30 seconds left, and Austria is giving it, it all. Hammerheads as well, and the uh, Austrian player has, has the ball. The ball. She's, she's on top. just over the top. She should oh, Jackie is on, on the goal now. And they, the, the Austrian have the ball. Let's see if the ball can get to them, and the basket is empty, but uh, the Austrian player is not being able to get there or even try to uh, do a score from the, yeah. from, the, from the far. So we have another one with the ball attacking from the side. It's getting really, I mean, we needed this game. Eight minutes ago, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or they needed the game, uh, and now it's end of the game. End of the end game. End of the game. Two zero for the Hammerheads. Really great. Let's see if we can. Which position are they gonna be? I mean, this 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 system for the girls is really confusing. So <laughs> we don't have the positions yet. No, no, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. But now, what's the next? Um, because uh, I'm trying to see which uh, what's going to. Have be the there. Hammerheads played again? Yeah. Helvetia already. Oh no no sorry no. against uh, against Barcelona. Yeah exactly. Did they? Yeah I think so. Or did it? No they play tonight so we okay. we will know. Okay. We don't know yet. Okay we are yeah putting all the teams in the positions. The <laughs> that was a very good game but bo by both teams. Um, Vienna kind of broke broke down after bit, they got yeah. scored on, and they didn't really manage to build up this momentum again of having attacks, uh, like having structured attacks yeah. of waves. You it's would have, you like would have people attacking. It's so unexpected. I mean, that, that goal on an empty basket is always so um, yeah. frustrating, probably. You know, and then it kind of like uh, struggled because when they were attacking the hammerhead goal, you would have one player going, yeah. then the next one, and like they would be like, let's go in now. Yeah. But the player would go by herself. Yeah. And in those cases, maybe it's better to have the ball, swim maybe to the other side, yeah, wait for your teammates to wait. come, because there was no one. So it's a bit of a suicide mission when you go by yourself, then yes, you give the yes, ball to yes. one player who's yeah. again by herself and gets grabbed. And then you lose, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you start always from, from scratch. Anyway, great game. Um, and now it's coming up, the next female game. Uh, I mean, Fir Salis uh, from Italy against Elvetia from Switzerland. Pirsel is in blue, is the back of the girls we're seeing now in the screen. And Elvetia from uh, Switzerland in white is the 45th game already. We started today at 8 o'clock in the morning. There's a still a few games going on. The last one is going to be played at 8. So we still have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 games to go. And tomorrow we start again at 8 o'clock for the last um, distribution of places among the teams and the semi-final for the men is going to be played at one between Finland and Germany and the final is Molde Orcas at 3 p.m. Exactly. Um, so now for this, the upcoming game, uh, Fersalis has... You, you also know the girls from both teams more than I do. No, then, then the a bit like yeah, Fisalis, like is from. Sometimes do trainings together. So so not so with the Italians, but I've met them uh, at the Open League, for instance, and at several other competitions. They have some very new players. I think they have two, three players yeah. that have been playing for months, like yeah. since summer uh, or since September is their first competition. And um, they also have some players that have been playing for, for, for very, very long, yeah. <laughs> like Valentina Ali, Anikino, yes. Fafe. Um, 
And yes. then we have on the other side, Helvetia is the Swiss national team. So it's two teams of, um, like two women's teams of countries that don't have a women's a league. league. Exactly. And exactly. they don't have teams, like it's um, the women of the country, exactly. basically. Normally, if I remember correctly, well, if, um, in, Firenze, in, in, in Italy, the girls play in the league with the men, I believe. Or yes, they but they don't have a women's they team. They don't have, exactly, they don't have, uh, no, no, they... I thought that they play the women team at least before the pandemic. That's they in, Aus in Austria, it's like, that. but like now That's they don't have enough. No. Oh. Okay, so they don't have. <laughs> the the players keep uh, coming and bringing us sweet things. We have here some Colombian candies. We have some uh, Ferrero Rocher candies. Some, you know, pastries. <laughs> some. Uh, Candies for the so that's for from the throw. That's from me because I know <laughs> <laughs> how hard it is to be speaking nonstop three days long. Um, yes, but the Helvetia is the same. Oh, here we have uh, Roman, who's yeah, one of our staff bit, okay. in the background. So uh, we're taking so long to start. Wait. They should have been started uh, a few minutes ago at five o'clock. Let's see if they're having problem with the equipment or with anything. Mm -hmm. The players getting out of the water again. Yeah, so Helvetia is uh, players from a bit of all over Switzerland. Um, some so Luzern and Basel, because and Zurich, because they have a few female players in each of the teams, but not enough to have a known team. Yeah. Mm. So do we have fans from uh, Italy and from Switzerland? Are you there? Are you cheering up for your teams, the friends, the family? So we're still waiting. I'm not sure what's happening. So we see number 71 from the Fisalis team um, has taped her arm. Yeah, she uh, to her body. Do you know exactly what happened to no, her? No, I haven't. <laughs> I, I was wondering the same yesterday, and I couldn't. You yep, know, I, I forgot to ask her. Me too, me too. I don't know. I mean, but she was injured like this when the, the competition started. Yes, right? yes. She came to the competition injured and uh, um, yeah. Yeah, that's it's doing I her mean best. It must be hard. It's yeah, not like yeah, I know in France there is a player who is m uh, missing um, an arm uh, and a okay. leg, but he's a Paralympian swimmer. Okay. And his he was at the s uh, Summer Paralympics and everything. Um, but he always has just like one leg and one yeah. arm. But Kalindi must be quite hard because well she's not I used I to see him to play like that. I would say there's something wrong with the shoulder is what it looks like. I think she's in her shoulder. It's, it has to be painful because you still, when you move the one part of your body, you see moving the other. Huh? They come together. It's not that this one stops and getting moving. out in this pool, getting out must be quite hard with just one arm. Yeah. Anyway, okay. we don't know what's... White ready. Okay. Now Blue ready. ready. Something with the replay. Time. We are now seven minutes behind schedule. We should have started with this game at five. Okay, game's on and Switzerland arrived second before Italy. Mm -hmm. So uh, Helvetia is um, a team that has a very solid defense. They're not, when they get in offense, they're very good at moving the ball, circulating the ball, building up momentum, but they are not. White team, free throw. They White don't team, get free throw. They don't get to the goal very often. They okay, like I understand. It takes them a bit of time to go in. You know, sometimes you need to have a couple of players that, that go and, and go for the goal. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in some teams, uh, mm -hmm. for our, these, is, these are not as experienced or as good technical or tactical like other teams. Then yeah, but they've been training a lot. Like uh, Helvetia yeah. has been training a lot since, especially last year, they decided, okay, let's put together a national team for European Championships. I takes I mean take more than than a year and just to you know to to get that uh, and effect they've been playing to together for uh, for a long time they always come to champions cup no not always some years they didn't come mm. and and I don't know how much they play in Switzerland with the three nations leagues and everything and how often do they train together and if they don't have a the league to practice all of these you know it That's just cool, it yeah. adds a little bit uh, mm -hmm. for the time to achieve yes. that uh, so now we have uh, Simone Büchler attacking. He came in with the ball, brought the ball to the basket, pulled it out again. And Helvetia has been um, around the Italian basket for some time. 
bring it up. It is a bit chaotic, but the Italians are only defending so far. And that is very tiring when you're only defending, especially if you have newer, newer players, that's when it gets quite risky. Yeah, because you also don't know the condition, how long they're gonna... And also, the, the, let's not forget about the mental part of it. You know, when you are only defending, if it gets to you, mm, yeah, then eventually you are more susceptible for, for a mistake. So, So Helvetia is still attacking, trying to get into the uh, Fiscalis basket. And now we have a first pretty good chance. The back is missing and has a player play pushing from the bottom. Why do we get to replay? The face was not over. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> now we have need some music and then it's party time. Okay. Sorry about that. Not sure what happened. Okay. A replay of this attack, but we okay. Oh, it's like the software gets uh, uh, stuck. Okay, Wolf is going in the background to try and solve that. It's like a loop. This is terrible. Okay, uh, she. But it's still a replay. Still part of the game, yeah, sometimes it's like the software got a little bit crazy. Let's see if we can continue watching the game. I think here we are and um, the Swiss team is on the Italian basket trying to see if they can score. But Italy is doing a, a good job at least, I mean it's what you said Lisa before that maybe the um, team from Elvetia still have to build up the way of attacking in, in way for two, three at the same yeah. time. And Italy is defending, have a lot of good experienced goalies and defenders. So the mixture of both things then make it more difficult to, to have scores. But remember that they need to win. I mean, one team needs to win. So if it's uh, at the end tight, then it's going to be penalties throwing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Fisalis and Helvetia are in a surface crumb. And we have Federica from Pirsalis pushing the scrum very strongly, but Helvetia still has the ball. White team free throw. Okay, they got a free White throw. White team free throw. I'm not sure why. Got a free throw and swim pretty much without a problem all the way to the Italian corner. Um, there's a question from the audience. Um, the Sea Lions are going to play at 6.30 against Zurich. So let's see if Switzerland is still on. We are have been more of the time uh, on the Italian basket. Um, and Switzerland is trying to attack, but they don't build up enough pressure to force a mistake until now uh, in the Italian defense. So let's see. I mean, Italy is doing a good job on always stopping the player with the, um, with the ball. And there on the close side, we have, um, I mean, I think we need to have like three plays at the same time, right? I mean, one on one side, one on the other, and one in the middle to kind of play. If you don't outplay the defender by moving the ball quickly, or by coming with all you have from above and trying to move, uh, force the goalie out of the of the basket, then I see if it's like it's taking too long to have more people, so it gives the Italians enough time to 
just yeah. get the... And now the Swiss have fallen into the same pattern as the Austrians, the game just before. You have one person has the ball. Yeah. It's, and it goes, it's, like it's, it's not really attempt. dangerous. And no. then comes again, passes to the next one. And okay, now you have three players attacking. And this is what is dangerous yeah. for the Italians. Mm. Okay, now we have... Oh! A goal. That was talking about... Uh, exactly, I mean... Um, there was a little My bit of a chaos, goal. for whatever reason, there was no goalie at the Italian basket. Number two. And then um, there is, you know, the right moment, the right time. It was one player, because they were forcing, they were playing with the, I mean, forcing the, the attack. And there was a mistake. The goalie didn't manage to arrive because it was a lot of people. Yeah. And there was one uh, player, but the ball arrived and there was no uh, opponent. So Yes. And so... Um, Number two, Sandra Vogel scored. That was a, a very nice goal. She really seized the opportunity. So, 1-0 for Elvetia. And still two minutes left from the first half and 10 minutes left from the second half. So let's see if Italy, sometimes some teams need this kind of shock to exactly provoke the opposite thing. Not to stop playing the way they were playing, but maybe to put up a notch. I, uh, we've seen it with some of the male teams, mm, maybe. I, I think Italy will struggle now. Number 10 is swimming by herself to the goal. Swim stop. Let's shoot it. But um, Switzerland still in possession of the ball. I, I mean, I think that Italy has a few goalies that are inexperienced. Uh, I, I remember um, some of the games uh, from yesterday to see uh, and some attacks they, they yeah they couldn't hold it so if Switzerland they are to come more and more um, to do attacks and maybe they can force more mistakes in mm. the Italian defense yes let's see Italy now is playing in the in the surface uh, with trying to get the ball but they don't have anyone underneath Switzerland does but yeah. Italy doesn't which is every time you have a surface crumb, you should always have a person underneath to be able to recover yeah, the ball and, and get it pulled down. Just one person. You leave one person fighting for the ball against one person, and the rest of the team needs to be available to play because, like this, you have three Italian players in a dead zone. I mean, mm. nothing's happening there. So that's also, you know, uh, important details. But okay, Italy recovered the ball, and now it's trying, but just one player against the goalie, and they're the rest of the team of uh, Switzerland they're defending mm, they need to start coming two or three together one against it's just it doesn't work at this level of rugby thing is that um, Firenze um, is doesn't have a full team either and they have a few newer players as we were saying before so sometimes they're missing this this support in this system. Yeah. Oh, but now one player is positioned above the goalie, which is what do you do when you're like that? Well, you don't receive a pass just above the goalie. The goalie will get it. Half time. Okay. Half time. I mean, first time is over. Uh, one for Switzerland, zero for Italy. Mm, but uh, Italy seemed to have recovered a little bit and was attacking a little bit more consequently against uh, Switzerland. Let's see if the um, second half is an opportunity for Italy to build up. But, um, you know, anything can happen still. Uh, these teams are at, uh, at the same level. And uh, they we were like, talking about that um, they don't have a, a fem... A, a women leagues in those countries so um, it's not the same I mean when you can practice in, in a national league and you can play against other teams uh, when you have when you are the only team in your in your country then you have to see how to practice in tournaments or just you know, it's not the same you cannot practice together again you cannot practice some, how you're going to attack you cannot practice who is going to do what and you know all this uh, so Pretty much, um, let's see if the, if the older players, the most experienced players of Italy can help the, the youngest one to have a bit more structure, maybe uh, to be able to, to force a mistake. Uh, 
in the Switzerland defender. But, but yeah. if they keep playing like the last two minutes, the first half, maybe. But right now, Switzerland is the team dominating the yes, game. Yes, they are. You can tell they, they have more structure and a better tactic uh, and, and what they are doing. They're more consequent, which is showing up with, with two or three players and not just one. Um. Yeah. But um, Fitzalice also had some good um, tries and um, some attacks. They're just less lacking the support or the structure for an ongoing one minute left. attack. Okay, so we have oh we have um, twenty seconds um, to go, to go until the beginning of the second half. You can see how the uh, White, ready. the players are in the Blue. in the in the pool. And uh, you know it's a very nice atmosphere here. It smells so nice of one second and the horn is gonna go and let's see who gets the ball now before Switzerland got it. Now it's Italy, great job and uh, that's a pity because the player for Italy almost got it. Then the Swiss uh, uh, the, the Swiss uh, girl got it and then Fefe just came from behind and and tried to to hold the the ball. Now they're fighting in the middle, but uh, Switzerland recovered the ball and is trying to go to where it's uh, swimming through. That's number two. Katrin Hayali is very strong, basically. She always... And the score. Exactly. She got the ball and we saw right that the team, goalie go. was having problems to be in position. Mm -hmm. Number 55. Now, the 14 played behind, I mean, behind the defender to the other side and then she had, she had a great... Uh, yeah. Space to attack the goalie from the back. Yeah, so we had um, Katrin number 42 had got grabbed, but she was still swimming. Uh, she managed by keeping her movement to go, and then she passed down. Uh, Simone B uh, Buchler was there to grab the ball and passed it then to Cecily Merkle, who pushed the goalie away and scored. So it was very good action by very, very well done. By exactly. Helvetia. And it's 2 0 now for, for Switzerland. And let's see if now Italy can recover. We are at the Swiss side, and Italy is trying to start uh, the wave to put pressure. But mm, Switzerland is being very consequent, and they are not really getting to position where it's really, no. really risky. And we have the forwards are doing a good, good job at forechecking, yeah. and. Um, the Italians are also not getting in too close, and I think they're not really daring to go in because they lack the support to do so. Now the Swiss have the ball, have a scrum, passes to another <laughs> player, to build a second scrum, and the Swiss are pushing to the center of the pool. So I can see who's the player in position of the ball, the blue one, right? Yeah. Um, Italy in position Federica. of ball, Fefe trying to start a counter attack, passing to the next player of her team. And now we have, you see, you can tell, I mean, she's arriving with the ball, but she doesn't know exactly what to do, and then she has to She's also it. too high. If yeah. she wanted to mm -hmm. go to the ball, she would need to be lower, but also she was by herself. Okay. The now Swiss got the ball, tried to swim out, got grabbed from the back. Oh, now the Swiss goalie. Got the ball and is swimming. A nice counter attack. Irene, why aren't you here? We have some of the Italian players that used to play in the past cheering from the team. And Switzerland has the ball in the corner. And again, now we miss the support. Like the wave is lacking. <laughs> yeah, but they have moments two. where they manage to do that, and they have moments where. Mm. Well, but you know. As we repeat, th this is not as experienced as some other teams. So of course, you know they they know what they want to do, and sometimes they manage to achieve that. I think it's the, the difference between um, the very good teams and uh, the ones that are a bit less good is that in the very good teams, they all play very similarly, 
and and the teams that are a bit lower on the scale, you a bit more mid level, you have players and you can really identify players. Yeah, and beginners. Or and n not beginners, with, but but, but people who are like less less good. And in the very good teams, they have a system and they stick to it and they all do it. And then you have the very good players who are the ones who score, will do an incredible action. But in the more mid-level teams, um, you have a noticeable difference between some players. You have the ones who bring the team forward and the other ones who are, who are there as well. They do a very good job, but they're not those star players of, the, of their team. Yep. Okay, th we had uh, number 22, I think. Swam over the goalie and tried to push from the bottom. But didn't manage. Oh, Ooh. okay. The number 55 almost, I mean, was almost made another score because there was no goalie. And but Fefe put her hand. Yes, yes, yes. God, I mean. <laughs> oh. This was really, really close. This is very tight now for the Swiss. For, for, the, for, the, for the Italians. Time. They managed to save the face quite well. But this is the thing with, uh, with Switzerland. I mean, they start and they look like that slowly, and eventually they manage to create a lot of pressure. And then, uh, mm -hmm. and but now we yeah, have good a job. I mean, they're doing good job. But it's almost a third uh, goal. That was really, really close. Uh, one of the Italian players saved the, the yeah. situation. But now we have it. I mean, so Italy Hive. is still yeah. trying to get out of their zone. I mean, they're, they're not. Being able to s to stop the attack of, of now the ball fell now and the the back didn't really see it and we have a player in the close corner going in and gets dragged up by the Italian defense. I think both Four teams are a bit tired now. Yeah, four minutes to go, and... Helvetia have played two games today, I think? Um, I think so. I it's here. No, hold on. Uh, here, at the, at the morning here. Uh, yeah, against Helvetia uh, have played two games already today. Akarian, yeah, and uh, Vienna. And Vienna. Ooh, this was a pass or like the ball dropped down then was a empty basket that was um, also an in intent of attacking the the goalie but it was you know tackled away by two players from Italy and the next player from Switzerland coming from above trying to score from above and pass the next one I mean you know they are very very they they, they got more structure in their in their attacks uh, and they really built up the tactic in the in the mm. game and Italy doesn't have really a chance um, to get out of their of the of the uh, basket. I mean, no. they recover a little bit the the ball, they go a little bit away, but then um, Switzerland goes uh, and recovers really really well. Well, there was a bit of a sloppy pass here, but um, Helvetia maintains control of the ball. They're playing well. The Swiss are playing well. You notice that they're a bit tired. Yeah, but when I see this girl that is all like <laughs> bent like this, like it just <laughs> so she has a fracture on her shoulder between her shoulder and her rib apparently. Uh, anyway, okay, hope that she doesn't hurt herself uh, more playing. Anyway, uh, we are in the middle of the pool and uh, players from Italy are trying to recover the ball, but uh, Switzerland got it back and now they're trying to go towards the Italian basket again. The support was well positioned, hub. like in the wrong direction, but Elise got the ball, she was there. Another player is coming in. The one who had the ball didn't see her early enough, so she just tries and swim at the surface with the ball, moves forward, passes down. You have someone going in by herself. Less than two minutes, and this half of the, I mean, the second half, we've been, I think, 80% on the Italian basket, and that was a very close. Okay, that was a goal because the goalies left a very big gap when they cha changed, and White that was one of goal. the players from Switzerland with the ball. And it took a little bit. 87. 87? 81. 81 is a Morgenstern. Okay. 81. Okay. okay. And 
3-0 for Elvetia. So really great uh, yes. attack and there's, yes. yeah. Valentina w tried to move the ball away, but then when she tried to settle into a goalie position, uh, Isa managed to score. Let's see if the Italians can score one goal. <laughs> Here's the thing, is I let's try and score at least one. But I don't see that happening, we have one no, minute left. I mean, the I think, you know, also when you are scoring and, and the game is going good for you, the team, a lot of team then even can get more done because the motivation mm -hmm. and they're, they're not scared, they can leave the fear and sometimes when you play with fear, you're not playing at the top of your game. So we can see that Switzerland is playing much, much freer, much more free than it was at the beginning, right? Because they have now 3-0. Um, yeah, yeah, you understand what I mean, right? I, mean I like completely uh, do and also the Italians are less present, yeah. um, but there's also way more scrums than at the beginning of the game. So Fisalis is trying to push out and push, swim away with the scrum, but we have another attack by the Swiss from above the basket. Never the best idea, but well, it's always a try. And that's it, 3-0 for Switzerland. Congratulations. Game is over. Good game. That was really, it started really much more equal and it built up in a way towards Switzerland. But zero, three. So we have now those two teams, we know the positions. So um, Go on. Yeah. Firsalis is 11th and Helvetia is 10th in the women's competition. Yeah, exactly. Do we have the list? We have here so many pages. Okay, so we're waiting for Triton Berun, the Czech champion against Aquaquick, the tennis champion. So we're waiting now to start the play between Denmark and the Czech Republic. And um, let me see. This is the Waiting for Bolf to come here to help me and put some clarity. All the teams are getting. Uh, <laughs> you can see who is the um, the team 
of formation for each uh, country. Uh, we are a little bit delayed, actually. Um, this game should be starting a few minutes ago. Let's mm. see. Blue team ready, white team ready. So, we start uh, the game. And uh, we are already on the uh, Triton half, and the Danish team is attacking. Blue free ball. Hello, Lorena. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to understand. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same problem we have every year when we're getting yes. to the final places and we're trying to read the, the Okay, I talk to you, I uh, will comment the game and you can check. Uh, yes, please. Let all right. Out. Well, that's an interesting game. I was looking for Triton Baroon against Aqua Quick. Um, both teams are pretty much on a on a on a on a eye to eye level here, I would guess. And uh, we see uh, Triton Baroon in uh, Blue and Aqua Quick in uh, white, you know that, but I have to tell it to myself. Aqua Quick here in the offense, attacking the basket of Triton Baroon, trying to find the weak spot. They're establishing three are on every side, one in the middle, and the ball was uh, tackled by a Baroon player in the middle, brought up to the surface. And uh, the Aqua Quick player stripped uh, the player of the ball, and now the attack comes from the open side. Defender is in the spot, and oh, Aqua Quick player tries to put his arm into the basket. And uh, the defense here from uh, Triton Baroon is, as we expected, very up to the spot, very powerful, and very experienced, which is uh, with a lot of the tricks here. Oh, that was dangerous, giving the pass, uh, the, yeah. the player from the defense was giving the ball back to the um, no. goalkeeper. But that's the only thing you can do in a certain uh, circumstances. Now I have it, sorry. This is the second semi-final of the day, right? We already had the four teams that uh, are playing for the first, second, three and four plays. The uh, winner of this team is going to go and uh, fight on the place five. Okay, and then after this, we have the second semi-final um, that's going to play for places uh, also, I mean, it's five, six, seven, and eight, okay? They're the, the winners of the next two games, this one and the other. Okay, Triton Baroon now in the half of uh, Aqua Week and working its way from the corner uh, to the basket, but Aqua Week is... Uh, Port checking really concentrated, really in masses, and uh, Triton Baroon has difficulties to hold on to the ball here because the frequency of the attacks is quite high. Interesting game, and as I said, uh, what do you think, Lorena? This is a, a game on uh, both teams are pretty much on a on an eye to eye level here. Well, yeah, we are toward the end. Uh, or the middle, I mean, the second half of the competition, and at this time we have now the teams that, that are, you know, sorting them out uh, in the in their um, in their level. So now we're going to see a little bit more of um, how you say thrillers-like uh, yeah. games <laughs> than before, and so um, we have now uh, the Danish uh, attacking, but it has been until now quite. Mm, equal. equal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd say the same. Um, fr from where I jumped in, which was two minutes into the first half, I saw Aqua Quick a little bit more on the offense, and Triton Baroon uh, tried to uh, attack the basket, mm. but didn't get that close. That this is uh, he's now the Aqua Quick player is uh, trying to build a tunnel from uh, the closed side. Waiting for the ball to arrive. Yep, uh, but the ball is coming from the uh, open side and was stolen away from the Aqua Quick player. But another one recovered it. Um, the Aqua Quick uh, cannot um, 
make any mistakes, they will be uh, immediately exploited by Triton Baroon. But uh, Aquaquick is holding on pretty good to the ball and playing around uh, the basket. And oh, from time to time, like this oh, is starting a an attack. Yep, a that's great a goal. goal. That was really a good attack. Really fast, really nice White done from the, from the middle of the pool. Number seven. And we see the replay here wrapping Number the seven. arm White around goal. the goalie. There was just the because exchange. Because the goalie wanted to do the exchange and he was about yep. to start leaving. That was, I mean, a, that was a on very point good attack. Yeah. Very, very good. Do we have fans from uh, Denmark and from the Czech Republic? Are you here cheering it up for your teams, families, friends, relatives? Let us know. Who are you rooting for? We have now uh, the um, team of uh, Triton Barum uh, having the position of the ball, but not being able to really move forward towards the basket of the Danish team. Denmark being very, very uh, aggressive and the foot checking and recovering. I have a counter attack one on one. I mean, it's a pity he was held um, fast uh, for one of the uh, defenders or one of the players of uh, the Czech team. And then uh, we have now everyone into position defending the basket and Aqua Quick trying to. Blue what free happened? ball. Free ball for uh, the blue team. We have a quick message here in, yeah. the, in the chat. Natalie, um, Anja or Patrick, uh, könnt ihr bitte ans Telefon gehen? Sophie um, schreibt es hier. Natalie, uh, ruft euch an, bitte ans Telefon gehen oder ruft Natalie an. <laughs> that, das ist meine Durchsage. Back in the game. Triton Baroon here <coughs> in uh, attack mode in the corner of Aqua Quick. But it's, it's not that easy for Triton Baroon to get out of the corner. Now they do over the basket from the open side. And there's an attack from above on the goalkeeper. But uh, it was a little bit too high. Yeah, he was too he high. The and the, the forward, the four checkers were awake from Aqua Quick and took the attacker away. So that was very well done. Uh, preventing this attack. Another wave coming in from Trichon Baroon. But also pretty much stopped. And uh, now it looks like the ball is on the surface. No call from the referee. Let's hear what it is. Penalty. Penalty shoulder in the basket oh. against oh. White. Okay, this is a chance for Trishan Baroon to equalize. No pressure. No pressure here. <coughs> so and one defender, please, and one attacker. It was funny, all the Trishan Baroon guys were looking at uh, the same guy who to execute it. They were <laughs> like, everybody was patting his shoulder. Yeah, go for it, go for it, go. You're right, you're all go on. <laughs> Let's see if we can see. <coughs> Penalty, that's a pretty good chance. And uh, also for the rest of the team, time to take a breath. Here we go, 45 seconds. Coming in from above. Um, in, the, in the feet of the attacker. Coming from, oh, that was oh, over the head. Good job. Yes, uh, he tried to. Blue goal uh, number hold on three. To yeah. the attacker. See here Blue in the goal replay. number three. Pull him away from the basket, Stabil stabilize him, and then go uh, with one move this is over the Jan head. Dopirak. Just converted a goal against the captain of the Jan team. Jan very well. So he's the specialist number 13 um, for... Against Andreas Wieland. Huh? I think if I have it correctly. Okay, so it's 1-1. One, one. Everything is open, we said, right? That um, both teams are very equal and they need to be see, you know, who can really mm, do the game. And, and Warning white right number five playing roofing. Free ball blue. Interesting now with these warnings um, for Jack the Nethergaard, yeah. Aqua Quick. Um, <coughs> so Aqua Quick, uh, either where the referee is waiting, seeing it, and now uh, calling it, or uh, Aqua Quick is a little bit frustrated here and playing rougher. Okay, zooming in on the Triton Baroon basket. Defense of Triton Baroon is on the spot. Uh, the attacker with the ball was tackled away. Now there is no defender, and uh, the Aqua Quick team is coming from both sides. And another goal, yes. 
Well done, Barco. Quick here. Let's see it again. Yep. Uh, there White were two goal number five. Attackers. White goal number five. And they had uh, the whole basket for themselves, and the attack Jacob. came from the close side. Another guard. And then now we understand why they are aqua quick. Yes. They were quick and doing that. Ha, ha, ha. I brought that joke already, I think. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, late. Yeah, but it, I like it. You can repeat it again. And Trito Maroon now um, has to step up. Two seconds in the first half and break. So end of the first half. Already. Yep. I'm Time eating chocolate. Yes. Uh, My brain was going to stop working. So. So it's a one, uh, uh, two. I think the 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 number the, the goal count is not right. I think it's a two. Two goals for Aqua Quick and one for Triton Baroon. Really that was nice, a very nice penalty. penalty yeah. Well defended from the goalkeeper, but the move of the Triton Baroon player was really behind uh, the goalkeeper, turning around over his head. That was really fast and really uh, precise. Yep. And the last goal of Aqua Quick was pretty good. That was. Uh, yeah, really, really nice. They li like the one in the exchange before. It was uh, on spot. So it's 2-1 for the Danish team, but still anything is possible. We have 10 more minutes to go. And we've seen how first the Danish score, then Triton uh, Berum forced a penalty, and then Aqua Quick uh, scored again. So it's really like a pinball, right? Yeah. Back and forward. And everything is so possible. White the team who can changing. take the mental strength? Yes. Uh, how long the, they are going to change the team, uh, team member? Let's see. I uh, don't think that will tell okay, the... Okay, I thought it... Yeah, no, they, 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 before they did it, so... Okay. okay 86 out, white team. 83 in. 17 white out. 44 white in. So Fleming in two out. 96 out, 21 in. Okay, they changed three players and I couldn't keep up. Right. <laughs> okay. But I didn't have some of the players you mentioned. Um, but uh, remember that we have 15 members of the team, 12 are playing, six in water, six sitting outside, and, and you can change up to. Uh, three players uh, in the game. So the, this is what the uh, Danish team did. And that normally gives you more air and more condition because you have three new players that they are not exhausted. They are, you know, that's the idea behind. You yes. get some more air under water. So let's see. Fresh lungs uh, in the exactly. water. 86 Søren uh, also is out. So what is your uh, guess, Lorena? Oh, everything is open. No. I mean, White team I ready, blue team ready. I see that the Danish team is a little bit more, mm, how put this, uh, a little bit more uh, a structure in the way they play and they bring the attacks and everything. But uh, Triton Berum play looks a little, bit, a little bit more chaotic to me, but nevertheless, they get the job done. So, I don't know. Do you well know what I mean? I don't know yeah, if but the, the Triton is, is really experienced in the way they play, and they play solid. And uh, they I think they can deal with the game of Aqua Quick. Yep. Um, the question is yep. if they can hold it up throughout <coughs> it and score to win. I think they're able to, definitely. Yes, I mean... But uh, uh, um, Aqua Quick is uh, leading with one goal and it's uh, one half away. So it's up to Triton Baroon to step up and score. Well, but they have been like, you know, almost equal. So oh we have the next attack. attack. from the open uh, side. Didn't succeed. Ball mm. is still in Aqua Quick possession up to the surface. Dropping down in the hands of Triton Baroon player. Oh, he lost it right in front of the basket. Dangerous situation. Always is. And uh, the Aqua Quick player recovered it. So this moment with the, with the movement forward when the players think they are in the attack is dangerous if mm -hmm. the ball gets lost. 
Pedersen, but yeah, trying to attack now, passing the ball to the other player on the other side. Something happened, holding without... Uh, pushing. Or pushing, yeah. And holding the ball. White free ball. Free throw for Aqua Quick. Three please. meters from the goal, please. Three meters from the goal. So the the one in position of the ball needs to be three meters away. And now they start the free throw. And this is a very dangerous situation if they play it right. Um, that's the kind of situations where if you can build up the, the pressure, you can score a goal. I mean, having a free throw th within the three meters uh, from above to the bottom player of Aqua Quick that is attacking, I mean, it's attacking the, the, the goalie, but lost the ball. It was a good pass, was a good um, way of attacking, but uh, Tito Merum was very good at, at recovering and blocking the, the player, and now they are like uh, uh, fighting in the surface, but uh, we are back at the half of Tito Merum. Tito Merum just recovered the ball and is trying to swim away, but um, he doesn't have another team playing to pass it. I mean, it was a little bit too far away, and the Danish players got in the beat in middle. And we are going back and forward with the ball, and now Triton Beron recovered it and is trying to go toward the basket because they have seven minutes left and they need to score at least one more time if they want to go to penalties and have a second chance to win this game or two scores, right? You're quiet, Paul. Definitely right. But it's, uh, it looks difficult for Triton to um, win the room in the area of uh, Aqua Quick, saying that they are already at the basket, so I jinxed it again. Um, Aqua Quick uh, got hold of the ball from Trijan Baroon. They, re, uh, they uh, conquered it back out of their hands, stripped it out of their hands, and again the ball is loose, kicked away. And Trishan Barun didn't make it. Uh, there were two players, Trishan Barun and Aqua Quick, uh, swing for it. Uh, call from the referee, holding without ball. Holding. So free throw against uh, Blue free Aqua ball. Quick. Now it's a, the same situation uh, for Trishan Barun. It was a player uh, position just behind the defender, but uh, didn't the ball didn't make it on time. So now we have three blue players trying to attack on the um, white team of uh, Denmark. And um, Denmark recovered the ball. They're trying to go away, but it's been protected by the uh, Czech team that is, you know, uh, using every opportunity to really um, stop the, the Danish team. Aquaquick is now um, building pressure again on the basket of Triton Varun and the time is ticking. Uh, five and a half minutes left here in this game and we have one Aquaquick player around the basket for the Merla but tackled away by two Triton Varun players. That's uh, pretty much enough to strip him off the ball but uh, another push from uh, Aquaquick player uh, pushes the ball free into the hands of his teammate and uh, ball back in Akawik possession and again attacking the basket. Triton has to leave their basket now and uh, yep, they got the ball and they start through, stopped immediately, pass back to the goalkeeper, dangerous pass back to the forward and they are trying to swim as fast as they can through the pool, stopped uh, three meters from the basket away and uh, Step by step, uh, inch by inch, Triton tries to go into the into the area of uh, the Akamovic uh, basket. Didn't succeed, and another fast attack of one play, one on one. And now the defender is in, and the goal is there. Yeah, bah, white was a goal number 83. So Here's the replay, one-on-one -on -one for a second. 83. He got hold of the goalkeeper. The defender tries to get in. The, the Aquaquick player turns around behind two, the yeah. back and push time, the ball inside. Time out blue. Time, time out, out blue. Barun. So 3-1 and how many minutes left? Four? 
Yeah, about uh, four minutes uh, left. Ha! That is really well played by Aqua Quick and uh, difficult situation to get out of uh, for Triton Maroon. 3 1, four minutes left. I can only give a team warning. I don't know the goalie. Here we see it again. Goalie so was. Let me see what Blue team, team warning, holding the basket. Yeah, he was holding his hands behind his head. Well, he was not holding the basket, yeah. but pressing his head against the ring. Uh, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, when you have the, pos the, the, the hand in that position, when you're a goalie, also the hand underneath your back, it looks, it could be both. You are holding it's, it's it, but it looks, it, looks, it, it looks bad because it looks like you're holding, but you are not. You are just going into a position that's is here, could, so you could do something you could, with your hands. When, when, you, when the ring is behind you, you can you ping your hands behind yeah, yeah, and press the ring against your head. Yeah. Yep, so... Okay, uh, the break is over. Three and a half minutes left. That's uh, not much for Triton Baroon. Again, with this score, I would go forward, but uh, difficult on the level. Oh, difficult on the level. Uh, Aqua Quick is playing here for Triton to open up their defense and go with uh, with more players forward. Okay, Triton player is waiting behind the basket on the open side, already blocked by another Aqua Quick player. And we're on the surface. Warning right. number 13, you got warning number 13, blue, hard game. Okay. Free ball, white. Oh, I didn't see that. Was it on the surface, the, the push with the hand I did see? I I'm not so sure. So it's a free throw for uh, Aqua Quick. They started. Bam, bam, bam. Ooh. That was, oh, again. <laughs> that was two times really close. They almost lost the ball. Uh, and they did against Triton Baroon. And now Triton Baroon is coming with uh, one player. There have been two players. Another player comes behind on the close side against the basket of Aqua Quick, pushing into the basket. But it looks like the defense is massive there. And both <coughs> for checking uh, defender are going on, going into the defense, trying to strip the ball away from the 3 2 Broom player. Hmm, 3 2 1, that's very hard to recover from. And almost, you know, 1 minute 40 seconds. And even if now 3 2 is on the basket of the Danish team. Uh, the time is running away from them. So we have, oh, they just got the ball, a good position to attack, but lost it. And now the Danish team is going, in, a counter attack is going to maybe do a goal on. Oh, oh no, that was he got it. No out. goal. It was not, no, no, because it, it was, was not under the not ring. completely under so the ring. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a, that was an amazing that catch. Yeah. <laughs> it looked like, just like a, ba -ba 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 -ba. here we Gosh. go. Wow. That was really nice. <laughs> Amazing. A I mean. uh, uh, longing to see the replay of this. That was, uh, <laughs> he was like doing, like uh, holding his coffee. Like, so, oh, okay. <laughs> Nicely done. Yes, remember that. Just we and another attack from the uh, open side. The tackled away. Underneath the ring. The ring. The totally under the ring. Totally under the ring of the basket. So it was just a little bit. <laughs> Amazing. And another attack from uh, Aqua Quick. Stopped by the Baroon players. Less than 30 seconds left. Uh, yep. Uh, this is... Yeah, but it's, it's done for Triton uh, as, as uh, much as I regret to say. I would, uh, would see have them a uh, chance and Blue building free up. ball. Hold for holding. Here we saw it probably again. Blue free Sit ball. The replay with a no, it was counter attack. That's the attack on the basket, and not the throw of the ball. So let me write it down. What's coming up, Wolf? Tell us. What's coming up? Yep. <laughs> it's a replay still. 
and back in the replay and uh, one minute huh now we have one minute 20 left no 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 that's a replay ah that's a replay still <laughs> wow i'm getting <laughs> tired getting here tired. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna give up our position here as commentator mm, wales against vienna coming up i'm gonna give it back to anton and lisa and jared okay Jared, okay, I didn't know that Jared was coming, sorry. We have a lot of people that are helping ah, us Ah, Jared, out. you got my 50 euro? <laughs> Why? You had a, he he we lost a bet? We, the, well, he didn't want to participate, but I made him to participate. But uh, we, we agreed on a beer, and I lost. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks a lot to um, Triton Baroon and... Um, to uh, Aqua Quick for this game was a pleasure to watch and especially the save uh, of this last attack was amazing. Thanks a lot for uh, listening to us and talk to you soon. Yep. Lisa and Jared here. Good everyone. That was a very really ugly greeting. Service to some. We are back for the second Australia game showdown of the day. Ah, uh, yeah. I yeah. didn't realize. Yeah. It's the second time we were commanding on an Austria Australia game. Right. Very easy to pronounce. Let's see how to do. One minute, one minute. Both teams have had um, three tough games so far. Yeah, what group were the um, Vienna team in? So Vienna was in um, Group D, actually it was a Group of three and the whales as well were in the group of three. Yep. Siena played Molde and Luxembourg. Both teams ready. And they played Orcas this morning. And they're going this morning. That was pretty tough. Okay, so who's the, the ball first? The whales were a bit faster. Um, they keep control of the ball. They have a lot of players in the center of the court. Yeah. Good pressure from Vienna. Mm -hmm. The Wales did a not so good pass. Vienna recovers it, passes down. Looks like out of bounds. Out of bounds. Free throw for the we Wales. We have a light free throw. Hit us off. So free throw for the whales for out of bounds. It's a quite interesting way of doing a free throw, swimming all the way back. But Vienna didn't have a back end position. They went quite fast. It's a fast paced game. Yeah. Yeah, good start from both teams. There's no quick quick first goals or anything like that, so 
No, I think that the level is too even for that. Yeah. The whales are trying to move the ball around the basket, but um, the forwards, the Vienna um, forwards are doing a good job at keeping them away. Wales attacking the Vienna basket. Yeah, that was the first actual attack, first I would attack. say. Yeah. They really went in and kind of got hold of the goalie. Yeah. Good passing around. Maintaining possession. But so far the Wales are dominating. Like they're yeah, they're testing, they testing the defense. Oh, good. Ooh, Piana oh. knocked the ball away, but Wales kept possession. Yeah, almost recovery from the Vienna forward, but Wales maintain possession. When they come in, they come in with quite some speed. Now we have two Go. Vienna players on one whale, but the whale still managed to pass. This is a little bit more like the whales I know. The game th <laughs> this morning against Malsh was a bit, bit rough, um, but they're, they're looking good. Mm -hmm. In possession and attack. Vienna still holding them off though. <coughs> Looks like Vienna recovered the ball. Yes. The dead start looking for support here. Some four checking in the middle by the whales too far. Okay, Vienna keeps the ball and keep on keeps on going. But that first defensive, like the first four minutes, were basically only defense, and they look quite tired. Like now, the it took some time for the players to come out in support of um, the player who had the ball. The oh, goalie got away from the basket, and somehow the ball got out. We have a whale with a full elbow in the basket. Yeah, we'll see what happens once. Okay, they moved away. Vienna keeps possession of the ball and swims out. But again, we have just one player at the bottom. And it takes quite some time for another one to come and support him. Oh, good fast end to the counter attack. We have Matthias Neuenteufel here pushing Tackling and trying. from the open side. Again, a second person trying to push. That's a pretty sustained attack directly on the goalie by Vienna. We're back at the surface. And yeah, a good, good sequence of attacks there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get through. So the whales have spent more time in the Vienna half, but this counter attack was actually dangerous. Yeah. And we haven't had that much. Um, Actual danger on the, the goal by the whales. Oh. Mm. That was risky, there was no <coughs> back there. Yeah, good opportunity there. Mm. Diana keeps the ball Recovered. and Thomas Juchmann gets the ball and starts to counter-attack. Support is a bit slow, but it's there. But looks like it was Akko swimming with the ball all the way to the Wales goal almost. Gets grabbed by one of the whales and pulled up to the surface. A 
of the scrum had passed down to the Wales player and made his way back to the Vienna basket. Passing it around, but recovered by Vienna Ford, I believe. I think that, I think that was Peter. Ball fell down, but stays in uh, a Sydney position. Wales seem to have recovered the ball from the middle and now attacking again. Still could use a few more players or a couple more players around to help pass and continue the attack. Yeah, the when the whales make mistakes, Vienna isn't really give them, giving them the space. Whoa. Almost a good good goal there. Pass over from Emmanuel to Sebas. But unfortunately, didn't quite get there. It just looks like... I guess it was an interruption of the game. <laughs> the yeah. goalie went up, the back went up, and no one was underwater. Yeah. But the whales... Uh, had possession of the ball. They don't really get the opportunity to get in. I think they're looking for gaps. The whales? Yeah. yeah. I think that they're looking for gaps, but Vienna is not really leaving many gaps. Or if there is some, they're close very fast. Okay, the back is not in the very best position. Okay, because the other one was already coming in to push him away. Two whales there, but he immediately gets a forward there. Getting his hands on the ball, pushing out, passing down. Looks like a ref call. A ref call. Dark free throw. Yeah, another good... Yeah, sustained the attack throw. from the whales. Yeah, it was an attack on the head, I think. Yeah. But yeah, definitely looking for the gaps, but I'm not sure if they're, they're good. getting the right right moments. Again, is playing way better than yesterday. Ooh, who's here with like grabby fingers on the basket? On the other side. Both forwards on the Vienna <laughs> player. So it's just like a few seconds left and you s hear the fans from outside like down, 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 yeah. down. Shouting. And it is yeah, well half time. Good first half from both. Half time. I guess we saw more please. sustained um, possession by the Wales around the Vienna basket, but there was maybe two or three really okay. good attacks from Vienna. Yeah, for the amount of, of time. But yeah. like the Wales had possession, like, I don't know, 75% of the time. Yeah. But Vienna had as many attacks on the goal as the Wales did. Yeah, like very promising. Yeah, and here you see like Matthias Neuenteufel. Like that was almost a goal. Like you and saw one and two and three coming and pushing against the goalie. This was also very promising for the Wales, but didn't turn into a goal. Yeah, I think both teams probably need... Is it the refs just practicing their throws? <laughs> Did you um, see yesterday the game Molde against Luxembourg? Oh, where yes, there this was is a, a paper rock. I didn't see <laughs> yeah. it this morning on, on social media. It's the first one I saw. Funny. It's great. Um, yeah, I think both teams probably need to have a bit more, I don't know, going in, attacking, out, and it back in again, sort of more repetitions. They're sort of going in, doing one attack, coming out, yep. and letting that the defence rests a bit too much. Um, 
yeah, more, you know, quicker, harder attacks probably is needed from yes. both teams. I reckon Jana will try and be a bit more um, offensive and play a bit more risky, maybe. Because they've been playing quite, quite safe. Yeah. What is the ref saying? No. Försök visa en precis innan vi startar uh, igen. När du ligger på plats, då är det enklast att se. That was Swedish. I wasn't sure what they're saying. Jared, your fans are again applauding your work and welcome you, welcome you back. Thanks, thanks, fans. <laughs> I think it's just Bobby, really. And Sarah. <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> Bobby and Sarah. One minute. Going to go into halftime. The game is quite fluid. There has been just a two free throws so far. One. It was uh, one out of bounds and yeah. one attacking the head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so quite, I guess, quite clean. Benelton Vienna is like a one player or two that are a bit sick. Um, and a couple are pretty new to the game. It's like the second tournament. Okay. Like two of them. And they're doing well. Yeah. They're doing very they're, they're doing well. Mm -hmm. So this is the game. Um have them gotten also into some kind of round robin the men? Yes. So it's for the position. Nine, I think. Yes. Super ninth position. So second half started now. Okay, so the goalie got a hold of the ball and pushed out. The whales recover keep the ball and have a scrum. So the whales couldn't really pass the center line. But now there is, there wasn't really any players underwater. The Wales player picked up some speed, but got stopped again, around two thirds. Yeah, good forechecking by Vienna. I think the whales are passing the ball, like they're moving the ball around the goal, but too far, so that like the, the, ev the players see what's happening. Yeah, and the Fords are able to sort of yeah. have a good so rest, and they then really have space to swim around. Yeah, the defending Fords, that is. Like here, you could have one of the two defensive players could push out already. You have one of the Wales players going in. So they're moving the ball quite far. And then when they go in, they should go with two players at least yeah. there to confuse a bit and to have directly a pass opportunity and not be at the goal and then try to pass it around because this is, is not working so far. But I've been jinxing, jinxing teams all day, so let's not say anything. <laughs> Okay, ball got recovered by Vienna. They managed to swim. Oh, nice ball checking the in the middle there. Vienna gets the ball again. And lagging some support. The pass lands. We have Vienna in the close corner of the whale side. No one's seen a loose ball. Ball fell. The fumbling here. And yeah, good recovery from the... Wales trying to get back out for a counter attack. Managing to get it across to the other basket and on the basket now. Yeah, that was a bit hard now for <laughs> Dawson. He was around. by himself. Uh, one on one. The back was a bit late. But uh, still good save by Vienna. Got the support in there just in time. 
Okay, and the ball dropped. Again, pushing out and trying to swim through. Player coming down at the very bottom. Can they pass the Vienna player, the Wales player? No, but they keep control of the ball. Some good forward checking by Charlo in the middle there. But unfortunately, didn't come away with the ball. And here's another attack on that basket. Ooh, oh, good. nice goal from the Wales there. Looked like a gap. There was a gap. A small and the gap. Back, the back was very late. Yeah. Number 55, Ben Maslin. Good work, Benny. 55. Yeah, Vienna. Time out. Light team, please. Time out. The light team. Yeah, so by similar to what we saw in that previous attack, that Vienna defended really well, like managed to just get in, get in and defend. We had another similar attack just then. Yeah, but the, it wasn't <coughs> the same this morning against uh, Orcas, but Vienna they had a couple goals where you had the goalie and the backs were way too late. Another player like the blue bottoms. Um, like he tried to get the ball, but you had the goalie there. The forward came a bit late, but the back was missing. Yeah. And against two players counter-attacking from the very bottom, that so doesn't do it. Still five minutes left. We'll see see how the rest of the game goes. Mm -hmm. I think now Vienna kind of needs to go all out. At least equalize. Yeah. And I reckon they would have a chance at penalty shootouts. Okay, Vienna is positioned at the Wales basket. Three players in the water, four. Let's see if they can keep this up. Vienna fighting really close to the basket, trying to get the ball down to their player that's set up. But unfortunately, he's gone up for a scrum on the surface. Not sure who's got possession. Probably just equal possession at the moment mm, in the scrum. Wheels have possession, and we have... Two Vienna players fighting for it. Have I told you that that ball likes crumbs? Vienna got the back control of the ball. Keeps control. Matthias Neuenteufel has the ball, the and Thorsten Lütke is over the basket. Not sure if that's holding or not. <laughs> oh, he put and his, then his arm like I'm on the other sure, yeah. side. Okay, the ball went too far again. Let's see what the rest say. No free throw, out of bounds. You are swimming with the ball. No free ball, out of bounds. Oh, I guess the whales got bad possession again and wanted to swim at the surface, but yeah. they had the ball too high. Yeah. That's the thing. If you s swim at the surface, you have to watch out how you hold the ball. Blue free throw. We have uh, Tosten is on the <laughs> on the goal again. Love stealing the basket. He's he, he has good at it. Yeah, he's a coach of the Austrian um, national team of the yeah. women. Yeah, great. And he has a lot of hair, but he's a bit sick. Let's see. Very close again there. Also, he's in his fifties. Well, he's a he's, he's versing a, he's a very people player. probably half his age on average, so <laughs> he's doing very well. He used to play for Germany, the national team. He lives in Berlin. That plays for Vienna in the Austrian Championship. Now Vienna had too many backs <laughs> getting to position on time. And now we have a surface crumb again. 
Yeah, now back at the Vienna basket. Wales maintaining possession, trying to move it around, waiting for the gap again. But yeah. they don't seem to be moving it around as fast as they were previously. Well Maybe they they're just hold they're just holding possession. Yeah, they don't really need to yeah. score. They just need Vienna not to score. Yeah. Ooh, now we have one against one. No, the Carlos trying for a attack the goalie. Fortunately, he's gotten wrapped up by the Fords from Vienna. Manages to pass down to Nico. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, intercept pass. Jeez, a lot of changing in possession around the Vienna basket here. Mm -hmm. Matthias was again by himself at the goal. Yeah, Vienna really wants to get that ball back if they want to try and score. They have one minute 30 left, which is not much time. Ball fell, have J.O. and Thomas going for it, but they don't manage to recover. Ball's at the surface. Looks like Wales have possession still. We're now in the last minute. One minute to go, that's when you panic and do mistakes. Fiana has to go all in now. Matthias gets the ball, passes down. That's not a very good pass, not enough players down on the Vienna side, Wales recovered it. Yeah. Vienna gets the ball, tries to swim out, J.O. has the ball. 15 seconds left, let's see if they can get it across. Oh, not sure what happened there, but the Wales managed to get the ball back in the surface and goal a quick, number 31, three one, goal. quick counter number 31 the number 31 Charlo, Charlo. I, it was a scrum and I think nice goal Charlo I think Charlo got the Game got over. the ball got and the ball shot and it from the, threw it from the yeah. from above managed to get down and I think Vienna was really making pressure to push to get the ball out to the front very good game on both teams yeah could have probably could have gone either way but yeah. I think by the end UNSW were really, yeah, holding possession quite strong. Mm. So was that was that before the end? Yeah, yeah ten seconds, seconds left. Yeah. So, so yeah, two zero. nil. Zero two. So coming up, we have the Sea Lions from uh, the US against Zurich from Switzerland. I will take a break for this game then. Yeah, no worries. And Anton will be coming in to moderate this Jared. If you want to say Jared, see you in a bit. Ciao, ciao. Americano. <laughs> ah. Grazie. Hello. 
Oh, I'm fine. I'm just reading there's someone asking you to do whale noise in <laughs> Um Lisa's gone. Yeah, Bobby in the no. chat uh, oh, requesting okay. a whale noise if the whales win. Yeah. Um, I'm not really... I mean, they, they did win, so yeah. uh, I don't uh, know if we should call Lisa <laughs> back to do whale noises. Maybe I'll... Uh, yeah. Maybe we should. Maybe, we should. <laughs> maybe next game, Bobby. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be down to the main whale noises, just for the record. <laughs> Okay, so, um, so sea lions versus Zurich. Ah, yeah, that's uh, oh, it's Zurich playing a very, very tight team. I see, just missing a lot of people, right? Yeah, not many. What was that eight players? Yeah, I don't okay, maybe I need to look at like any. Or maybe that is legal because one of them has the number zero. I did know, I wasn't aware that this was allowed. But apparently it is. I mean, otherwise, I wouldn't be competing. So, what what kind of game is this now? Is this a uh, like quarter final or like a play for place five? It says. Yeah, round robin one. Round robin one. Okay. Is uh, So it's still some of the pre-rounds. It's the last one of the round robins in this. All right, so that is clear. The game is about to begin. Okay, we're getting ready to start. We have to fix the thing on the, on the basket. Referees are still fixing something down there. There seems to be a basket loose. It's one of the problems of one of the baskets. The one of the window side is Blue team ready. Loose. A little bit loose. White team ready. Yeah. That's what happens when you've got two 90, 100 kilo men running into it. <laughs> oh yeah, but the, the, the basket's also loose on yeah. its own. Uh, uh, okay. Last week there was the uh, German League of the North and uh, it can lose on like some very light goalkeepers. So yeah, right, okay. Uh, yeah, but now um, Zurich taking it's the ball, well. but um, yeah, Zurich getting to the sea lines C basket. Oh, that was close. We've seen Is games that a goal? where that got That in. was a goal. That was a goal, though. I'm I'm very curious at the replay. Yeah. I did. I wasn't aware that this guy. That was three. very quick. That is. Oh wow. yeah, it got right yep. under the rim. That is that is actually Yeah, the cool. goalie wasn't quite on the basket, he managed to get in the gap. Those are the most annoying goals. Very actually. quick game. Yeah. Very quick goal. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Oh they're contesting it, I think. A goal? Good goal. Refs goal. just talking to each other, oh, okay, confirming so a goal. Confirming it was a goal because um apparently that wasn't yeah. clear. They might have seen Ready? something they weren't quite sure. Uh yeah. I remember one, one practice we had a goal like that and uh, we had like a GoPro recording and I had to contest it after the practice to just say, <laughs> well, yeah, actually, I did a frame-by-frame -frame analysis because I was so mad because they just kept playing. <laughs> it was very annoying. Sounds like a competitive training session. <laughs> ah, no, it wasn't. I was just a bit petty. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm sure it's taking the, the side, attacking on the Swiss side, but um, still not quite sure, playing around. Making the ball go around, but but Zurich has a very very strong attack side. But now they're they're with the ball very close to the goal. Um, and oh no, the ball was behind the goal. That is from this angle a bit hard to see. Oh, that is yeah, that the is, sea lines that doing is it. awfully close. Um, yeah, good sustained attack. But those are attack. That's a very strong goalkeeper though. Yeah, that is hard to stay on with that. And apparently there was a problem with this. Shoulder in the basket. Shoulder penalty in the basket. Okay, penalty. For the white, for the blue team. Okay, so, so they will get the, the basket. chance for that after all. Ah, oh, that's a. Oh yeah, I guess from that, angle, from that uh, angle. From that angle. Yeah. Out. Okay. That's why this goalie didn't move. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But I've seen goalies do that the legal way to stay yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, some of them are just that good, right? Stuck on with magnets. 
Yeah, but I mean, now the Sea Lions okay. will get the chance at the goal, right? They have one defender and one attacker, that's fine, yeah. okay? Ready? Yeah, I guess that first goal was quite a surprise for the Sea Lions. Let's see. Probably, they can equalize, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was very quick, so yeah. uh, you just get startled like that, and it doesn't look good for the Swiss team, and that's it. Yeah. yeah that was a very... The defender was just laying Goal there for the blue loosely. team. Yeah, Scored got out of position quite quickly. Six, need a stick at the bottom to just even have a chance. Or like tight on the goal. I've seen goalies do that as well. Some of them can just do that for like Ready? 50 seconds laying flat like you're glued on top. Good goal from Sea Lions yeah. to equalize. That was definitely... Yeah, yeah, I, I was just focusing on the goalie before, but the attacker was also very good, like very uh, organized play there. And now they also did a counter. They're very secure in w knowing where the players are, right? Just they don't have any doubt of knowing where to pass. There's nothing oh, there like, one. oh, I can't find him. I gotta say, now seeing that I'm, maybe he was, uh, he probably was in the goal actually, but the goalie seems to be laying very tight there. Yeah. Regardless of uh, actually doing a foul or not. Or maybe he did again, who knows. Looks like another. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, from this angle. Penalty throw for the blue team. Okay, yeah. Shoulder, Shoulder in the wedging. basket again. I guess we'll can't quite see it from this angle, but he must be. Um, yeah, maybe we should go me. over there and tell him that if he does a fall, he should do it in front of the yeah, camera. Yeah, do it this so direction. We can actually <laughs> comment on it. That's that would be. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. Well, yes. We'll take that in consideration. Ready? And the white player seems to have argued a bit with the referee. What he said, we couldn't hear, but uh, seems to be something of an. Uh, ah, that's wow. another goal for the Sea Lions. It seems like the uh, white team has some. Goal for the blue team, scored by uh, player number know, points 69. Points to make on this whole situation of having the shoulder on the goal. Maybe there's like some. Unavoidable scenario. I don't know. Maybe one of them has like a very slim back, so it's yeah, yeah he's easily ready. falling. I know some goalkeepers like that. So another start from Zurich after the goal from yeah. the Sea Lions. Getting caught in the middle quite quickly by the Sea Lions. It's just uh, getting to a bit of a, a uh, scrum in the surface. Yeah, scrum kerfuffle. Who knows? Just a bit rumble on there, but they pass the ball down and now the sea lions are attacking. It's a bit unclear. It's right in this blind spot of the cameras because we don't have a middle camera. I don't know. I haven't noticed that, but um, they they nearly got a fully completely open goal on the Zurich side there. there. The ball uh. seems to be in. Yeah. Goal for that the blue team, scored um, by number. Very curious on goal the replay. Scorer. did not even... Another goal from the sea lions. Just yeah, when the six, oh, yeah, oh was, the interchange of the goal. Who scored the goal? Who scored the goal? Number thirty-six. Okay. Thirty-six. Ready? Don't have a thirty-six on our sheet, but yeah. <laughs> they don't have a thirty-six. That's interesting. Yeah, I think probably in. probably the twenty-six. There's twenty-six on that sheet. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, so Sea Lions managed to get the ball back after another start and are attacking and, and the ball's in again. Another goal. So we can't get, to get themselves 69. together. It's just Number a bit lost on the defense side, right? The yeah. The, the defender, they could they they push just push displace. Over the side. Yeah. That's not something that a defender should have. <laughs> have. It's oh, we do have a middle camera. I'm just noticing. We just didn't cut to that before. And the sea lions 
taking a very, Another very strong recovery. stance on getting that, but then losing the ball at the goal. Uh, that's unfortunate. If you do, when you don't see the ball as an attacker, that is it's falling behind your back. But managed to still there. pass it around. Yeah, they, they st they're still and occupying the goal, and it's the next one. They're just staying there, just... They, they the really team. do know the Scored gaps. And they're taking a lot of space around the basket and yeah. three. Nine, three. making those, yeah. They, they're very the capitalizing they on those gaps. They do very strong positioning yeah, there. They have to push the basket back. And that basket they're is also the loose the one. Maybe that position. plays into that. Maybe that's the reason there's okay. uh, that much. Ready to go. So just under two minutes left. Yeah, for the first half. For the first half, yeah. It's yeah. not looking good for Zurich. Zurich tried to just swim on the surface for a bit and pass it down, but didn't manage to yeah, pass down to their player. The surface swims are also always very risky. And now one of the referees seems to have... Um, it's calling up a player. Yeah, yeah. Two player, uh, blue player number eight. Two minutes, two roughing, minutes. kicking. So a two minute penalty for player number eight. Player number eight on the sea lines. Yeah. Blue player number eight, please. And a free throw for throw. white. Now they're playing a goal again. I think I know why that is. And the person in the control center should maybe point back to where the goal plays because right now we have a free throw, free throw and they're already playing down there. Someone seems to like to watch the replays in the control room. So one minute left. Yeah. Let's see if um, Zurich can take advantage of the one player out for the sea lines. Yeah. But it looks yeah, like no. the sea lions are holding them quite well at the center of the pool. Uh, if there was one player more down there, there they probably would have had a chance, right? There was some strong play from Zurich to actually have the ball in a secure position. But then there wasn't anyone to pass to, so the sea lions just took it again. Yeah, and now they have another of these scrums at the surface. Or yeah. they nearly had one. Looks like the sea lions were scrumming to hold possession and let the clock tick down. And that's the last minute intermission. Uh, blue free throw. And Bye. half time. Yep. Uh, okay, that's the first half. So yeah, good good start for Zurich with that quick goal but um yeah but that really seems to have been a stamp or like luck maybe yeah caught the sea lines off guard came out there but yeah good goal like managed to get the gap and then there were like then there were like five well coordinated goals from the sea lines yeah just strong positioning right at the goal and knowing what to yeah. do a and couple of penalties as again. well. That was the one where, oh yeah, where they threw it in right at the exchange. These goalie exchanges are deadly if you don't do them correctly. In these positions, you really ought to do them tight as tight as nails. Uh, no, that's tough as nails. No, tight as something else. Uh, I need to get my uh, English sayings in order. I know one, but it's probably not appropriate for the live stream. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I kind of get your drift. Yeah. Yeah, two two good um, sort of well practiced penalties. Yeah, I mean from the, the sea lines. The sea lines are strong in attacking, but I gotta say the uh, Zurich team was also oh. very, very loose on the goal. Yeah, they had like they had one of them where one person was laying half between defense, half between goal. And that's not a position you should hold ever. It's just either lay flat on the floor or tight on the goal, and in between is just inviting people to just get in either one of these gaps. Resume in one minute. The other one 
had a, had a strong start. Actually, pushed the attacker back. I don't know if we can see a playback. Uh, we saw it before, laid on the goal, and then the attacker came from the top and got pushed back. And if that defender had laid down on the floor, that could have been a very strong defense there. Yeah. But those are always... It's tricky. It's really hard to get that right. 30 seconds remaining of the halftime break. Let's see if we get more scruffs on the surface. I kind of feel like we will. Yeah, uh, potentially as the Zurich team get a bit more tired with I um, mean, less subs. and All teams are kind of tired. Now. I think both yeah. teams have two games already behind them for today, or one at least. Yeah. They've already played one. And yesterday also and tomorrow they also have games. It's teams just get ready. terribly exhausting. See a lot of support for the sea lions in the chat. And seems to be seems firing to them on. Yeah. They've got the ball from the start and yeah. they're feeling the energy for the YouTube live stream. That was a bit the sea lions tried to attack there and couldn't get quite get the ball to the floor, so they um Ooh, and bit of a oh that was unfortunate <laughs> <laughs> hit him in the <laughs> oh, dang. behind the head sea lions had a strong attacking game in front of the goal of the Zurich team and then played a goal ball directly at the head of a teammate and now they they're close to the goal and that's and another goal yeah but there seems to be issues with mm. the goal because yeah, the no referees goal. are signing that this is not a goal so let's see what the Things about potentially pushing. Wide free throw. Wide free throw. Oh, there seems to be seems to have been some fouling. Maybe some pushing without the ball. Maybe, maybe. Or like from that other play on the other side. The, the holding on the rim would have been a penalty. So yeah. There's a free throw for White, and now they executing it. Uh, but that's just really the blue team really knows where the white team is going to play. Good recovery there from Zurich after yeah. not unfortunately so good pass from the the Unfortunately, they're swimming in the wrong direction, you know, because the goal is in the other way. Yeah. I get that they're trying to free that, but yeah, it's always trying to make some room. But uh, Is the ball? Oh, no, I thought the ball was below the referee. Every referee is a nightmare to have the ball below you, so you just have to get out of the way and just terribly clumsy with that bottle on your back. Uh, that seems to be a ball for Zurich, and now they're in their half. Advantage. Yeah, back at the Sea Lions basket. This could be some very strong attacks. Putting some there. pressure on the back. Yeah, but there's also some solid defense from the Sea Lions. Looks like. Oh no. Yeah, that's good a block positioning from Zurich, by but that block has been. Yeah, has intercepted. Been cut short by a by defender laying there just at the right time. I mean, it hasn't backfired yet, but those goalies also have very loose exchanging. There are just large gaps there. I guess it's not relevant because the ball just keeps getting caught either on the surface or in some scruffs. It doesn't matter where it is. And now the Sea Lions have the ball again. They're playing back there. And they nearly got the empty goal. That was close. Fast counterattack. Ah, unfortunately, attacking from the top, that is always a bit of a risky play. Those can go well, but usually they don't. And now they're trying to attack. And well that's a solid goal. Goalie displaced. There. But the yeah. second goal is come down and fill the gap. Push the ball down again right through the arms of the defender. But then they're also two other sea lions just attacking and holding on. Oh, sea lions wow. now got now the ball one on is one. No. Uh, I thought I thought yeah. was caught there with just one one goalie laying in this sort of awkward twilight zone position of not even oh, one but side or the other. And that could be oh, oh. no. Well well, Zurich, uh, Zurich intercepted well caught that by Zurich there. Just turning in the right moment and holding it tight and actually capturing the ball, but 
doesn't really help you if you get caught in your own half. So another scrum at the surface here. Yeah. You can kind of see in the way they're playing that Circus really is playing with, what is that, four players less? Yeah, but they're, they're doing, appears they're doing quite well, well, better in defense to this half. Uh, th they they really are. Yeah. yeah. They they caught themselves, but you can see one time before they, one player had the had the ball and there wasn't any player of two um, offering themselves at the bottom to catch yeah. it. Yeah. So, that's uh, um, that's another goal. Uh, nope. Yeah. One on one with the goalie. Yeah. And Sea Lions scored another. Scored by player number eight. <coughs> time out for the white team. Time out for the white team. Now they've got to catch themselves again. Yeah, it looked like he moved to try and grab it, but yeah. unfortunately missed and <laughs> Sea Lions chucked it straight yeah, into the goal. Another good idea. Let's have a look here. I think that's uh, no, that's. I don't think that's. Is that the replay from right now? Uh, yeah, I think it is. And yeah, so he's yeah, spun. Just yeah, right on the side. The defender didn't notice it. That was unfortunate. That's us. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a nice game, right? Yeah. No, I think Zurich's going quite well for, yeah, the the, the number of players they have. Um, but, uh, yeah, obviously they're getting tired. And I'm seeing now a lot of support still in the chat for the Sea Lions. Just comment after comment. Strong fan base, I see. Now, ah, that's Zurich was playing there and had some good plans and some had good some good strategy. options there yeah yeah they, they they really did play their players in good positions but then unfortunately just laid it right in the hands of the sea lion and other sea oh, lions are playing forward and four sea lions down yeah. like a swarm of two now just getting there and straight ahead Zurich wrapping the ball up yeah it's gonna be another sea lions scrub. still have like possession uh, and then the sea lions get back and Zurich is very empty at the goal. But now they, they've they come to eight and seems it didn't get in. Uh, oh, oh, it's a it. goal. <laughs> goal for the blue team. Scored by player number 26. 26. Yeah, I didn't qu quite see what happened there. I think, I think 26 was one of them who did the free throws earlier, right? Or was it someone else? Oh no, 26 was the one who got the timeout earlier. I think. Ready? Zurich starting with the ball again. And now actually getting it to yeah. one of the players at the bottom, Pretty but the player pass. gets caught just the very second they get in the half. A very rough. Yeah. See around. Like around. Mauling them a bit. being held by the Zurich team. Closer to the Sea Lions basket, but still not quite not quite there. Yeah. And then passed down to Zurich and now they're maintaining possession. Uh un unfortunately being intercepted again. Uh Sea Lions making a fast counter attack. Catching it right one there, on one. Just one on one that could end badly. Yeah second Sea Lion. Uh, let's see, I guess no one saw that because I just saw the glimpse of one shoulder very deep in that goal again. <laughs> but I guess we had enough penalties for today. And that's it. Yeah. Just very dire situation. Yeah, Sea Lions there. managed to keep passing it around, applying pressure, and Scored just waited for that gap. Two Sea Lions. Right at the goal, waiting for the pass down. Yeah, and we actually lost connection on our chat. Ready? I don't know if we should. Fresh it's not easy seeing the. It's not easy seeing the number. And now, uh, uh, so he's playing forward again, but being intercepted. Oh no, no! Actually, one player makes it close to the goal, but. Um, 
It's getting caught then. And the ball. Ooh. It's first of all a very uh, unfortunate pass to the Sea Lions, nearly getting caught by Zurich there. And then it got you another Sea Lion again, now there's a scruff at the surface. Just as it goes this entire game. But Zurich holding strong still. Ah uh, oh no, no. Looks like Sea Lions have come out with the ball. <laughs> uh, I was getting ready to say Zurich actually got the ball. But oh. oh no, no Zurich you got the ball it. again. No, I know. <laughs> I should I should be the only one on this these games I probably know. Best what's gonna happen next <laughs> now. Now my track record is set. Uh, no, the Sea Lions got the ball again. But that was a close one for Zurich. Nearly got it there. Playing around the defender on the goalie. Just as the Sea Lions were doing to them the entire game and now they're in. Uh, Looks like an out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. Right. a bit of a tussle in the center, and it's quite easy to get pushed out. Yeah, I know. That is just something that does happen. I just saw that in the replay, right as it was over, that the ball was just punched out, just flying you have out. To keep the two distance, three seconds. Oh, and the sea lions are not keeping distance. Just getting very close on. Seems like our live stream is back. Okay. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Yeah. Clock needs stop for 17 seconds left on that half time. Doesn't look good for Zurich. You have to stop playing when you have when you hear the signals. You have to stop playing when you hear the signals. Okay. I don't know what happened. Can we go again? Why free throw? White is starting the free throw with 15 seconds left on the clock and uh, losing the ball. It's like he yeah. played the ball to someone they didn't see it. Yeah, he played the ball to someone, yeah. but that someone slipped and that then it got to a sea lion and passed to another sea lion. Just yeah, sea lions going at out and that is the end of the game. Oh. Landing in the goal right after the bell rings. Just I gotta say, I had one of Game these over. balls in hand earlier, and they're very slippy. Oh, okay. I had some weight, like they don't have any grip. Oh no. All right. Oh, the, I mean, they have grip, but the grip is limited. No, no, no. That was could just, have uh, that. Uh, but that was the game. Sea lions against Zurich. Yeah. yeah, good, good first goal from Zurich, um, but unfortunately. Also yeah. very tight one. Right? Very Just, tight. Uh, yeah. like two centimeters, not a goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then Sea Lions had some more structured attacks and managed to just break down. That last one's not a goal. Uh, yeah, that's not <laughs> a goal. <laughs> it doesn't count, but it's just uh, this a, one good, a good replay though to describe how this game went. Anyway, um, I believe next up is Lisa again on commentator. And for our next yeah. game. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Uh, it was lovely.
So, Welcome back, Lisa. Thank you, Jared. We are back for another of the men's games. Um, we have in blue Luxembourg against Udevala from Sweden in white. Um, it will be a quite intense game. As we were saying before, Udevala landed fourth of their group. They had the toughest group, I think, in the men's competition. There was uh, Malch Udevala from Sweden, Akkwakwik from Denmark, and the Sea Lions that we just saw play. <laughs> it was a very, very tough group, and yeah. Udevala, unfortunately, is just with um, nine players. Right, okay. So they're really hard. Similar to uh, Zurich. Yes. So basically, of the 15 you see here, <laughs> yep. a few are missing. So of course, they what had a hard time against just? full teams. It was very, very hard games with very small differences as well. They had uh, team ready? But like 1-0, 2-0, 2-1. Right team ready? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, good work with just so the team nine. Luxembourg uh, is not a bad team at all, but they will struggle. So, so a good start. Looks like Luxembourg might have the ball. Just caught up in a scrum in the centre. Okay, Udavala got control of the ball and have two players swimming towards the Luxembourg goal. Oh. Have one player under the goalie, pushing off. Very good pressure around the basket. Unfortunately, Luxembourg like recovers a yeah, ball and s <laughs> hide behind the, the referee. referee. <laughs> it's one way of avoiding <laughs> the opposition. As long as you're not caught in the cable since you're right. And now we have again the surface crumb. Udavala with a fast break, but there's a goal in a back in position. <coughs> Luxembourg pushing out, applying a lot of pressure in defence here. Mm -hmm. They've recovered the ball now. Swimming slowly across, looking for passes. Now we are in the centre of the field. Luxembourg still has control of the ball. Yeah, making space, going down the close side. This is interesting. I was not expecting them to be in control of the ball that much. Udevala hasn't... I expected Udevala to be dominating by now, but uh, not really. They've been at the goal and making pressure on the goal a few times. Luxembourg hasn't gotten there yet. The ball fell down, oh but recovered by the Swedish Udevala. goalie. Now we have one Swedish player counter-attacking. Passing in the closed corner. Good two quick passes there to get rid of the forward. And good pass into the closed side. But unfortunately, couldn't push off the goalie. There's quite now. a few players on the water all the time. Yeah. So so now another wave of attack here. Udavala is quite precise with their passes. Um, I think has a scrum again. The Luxemburger back. Uh, got started fighting against one of the Swedish attackers. And the scrum is moving towards Udevala half. Udevala recovers the ball and swims towards the Luxembourg basket. Okay, we have an attacker under the goal. No, gets the ball stolen. The back recovered the ball, holding it in the Open corner, behind the back pass and a counter attack here from Luxembourg. Held up in the centre by 
Ölü baba. And looks like a referee call. Referee no, call. no, no. He's still playing. Just slowing it down a bit. Yeah, I think you notice that Udevala has a few players missing, especially when attacking. They kind of have, they don't have those full waves of three players all the time. You have one player going again, and then another one. Doing some good sustained attack here. Mm -hmm. Good passing under pressure. And just wave after wave of it. Yeah, single player, as you said, Lisa. But they're doing a very good job of disrupting the defense. Absolutely. And then... The yeah. classic Swedish Madla. He was in position, just Goal waiting. And it looked like the goalie had left. So, so we had <laughs> Eric Sustadius again from Udevala scoring a goal with the Nala technique. Technic. Which when the posi when the player is uh, well positioned for Medla it's really hard to then defend it. Yeah, it looked potentially like the goalie was also coming up to change but Could I'm be. not sure, yeah, the other goalie wasn't there so yeah, just it's really hard to really defend. Like for the backs, like the, the means of the opponent is like all around your basket. You can't get the position. Yep. Okay, have uh, one of the Swedes again at the Luxembourg basket. Luxembourg recovers the ball, and we have a surface crop. Very good game so far by Luxembourg. Bit of fumbling for the ball there, but Luxembourg have managed to get. Looks like a mask has been knocked off there. Yes. Uh, and a ref call there. Attacking equipment. So we have a free throw. Blue free throw. For Luxembourg. Luxembourg took the free throw and have moved to the Swedish basket. Moving it around a little bit further away. The player here is lacking support, though he didn't go in because he didn't have anyone going with him. Let's see the deer and attack the basket the dead and Udevala is fighting for the ball have a surface crumb directly above the goal Luxembourg maintains possession and they stay in the corner above the Udevala basket Got two Udavala players in the scrum, versing one Luxembourg. So we're st Luxembourg is still moving the basket. Uh, the goal, <laughs> the ball around the, ball the, the basket. basket. <laughs> <laughs> it's all relative. Moving the basket around the ball. <laughs> yeah, I hope they don't move the basket too much. But um, yeah, they don't really dare and go in. Now I have a player on the open side as well who got in oh. behind the goalie. Can they bring the ball to that player though? 
Yeah, they did well to take the back position, but looks like the Swedish team have recovered the ball. Oh, it was a risk to take. Yeah. <coughs> Luxembourg holding them up at their own basket. Not not able to break out. I think that Udavala has the ball so far. On the surface crumb moving towards the center. They still move towards the Luxembourg basket. Udavala has the ball. That it looked like it would be a free throw. It's just that they were all the team at the surface almost. Yeah, it was a bit weird. It's having a bit of a break. Uh, bit of a but drop in energy. Also, think that's the last game for them, I reckon. And that's half time there. So yeah, good, good first half from both teams. I think from both teams. They both had. Good possession around opponents' baskets and yes, and Luxembourg is playing really well. They're really going for it and not letting Udevala really break through. Yeah, and it's just one zero at half time. Luxembourg managing to get it and holding it around the Swedish basket, but not really applying too much pressure. A little no. bit further out, but yeah, still really good possession. Yeah, Udevala starting started quite strong, but uh, now they've had a bit of a drop in energy. How do you feel it? Especially this whole like last five minutes. It yeah. was a lot of defending on their side as well. Yeah, they'll probably still want to try and get at least one more goal before just holding holding the defense. But Definitely. Let's see if they can do that after a nice half-time break. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see if Luxembourg maybe can, yeah, put some more pressure on and find some gaps. I reckon they will. Yeah. How many more games we got left for today? Mm. It's three more. We have no, two more games. Two more, two sorry, more. So not including this one. Yes, now we have two more games, uh, two women's games. So the Hammerheads from the USA against Barcelona and then Isbjordana from Sweden against the Victoria Sea Dragons from Australia. White captain. So the referee is calling the captains. Because they want um, to tell the captains about maybe some kind of warning. Yeah. Mm. The referees often do that. That they notice something it's not worth interrupting the game for, but then they will bring it up in half time. At the half time, like watch out, you're doing this or that, or that could get you to warning or a pen time penalty or something. Yeah. Because referees, like the goal of the referees is not to penalize the players, is to make sure that the game is as safe and fair as possible. And bringing up some attitude problems, <laughs> maybe, or some like mistakes that the teams might be doing um, is at halftime is a great way of making sure that everything stays as clean as possible. Like, that's a good time to bring those things up. Yeah, keep it at bay. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're just about to start the second half. Do we have some Blue team ready? supporters from team ready? both countries on the chat? I've seen Luxembourg, but not many Swedes so yeah, far. Good. Lux uh, Swedish team got to the ball. 
first, but I'm not sure if they passed it to right to their player. Luxembourg have now got possession. So, oh, now back to the Swedish team. Budeval has the ball and swims towards the Luxembourg basket, and again one player around, like wrapped around the goal. Oh. Very close there, but unfortunately didn't quite get the ball in his hands. So we have two, three Swedish players down. It's a fast start to the second half here. Mm -hmm. I think both teams really want to score. Oh, oh that was a pass, a missed pass. You could see yeah. he was just about to get the ball around and in, but um, was confusion. stolen there from a Luxembourg player. There's a bit of confusion here among the Swedes, but they keep control of the ball. Now I reckon they will pull out a bit and go back in in waves. No, they're not really managing to go through. Okay, Udova has like the ball again. Yeah, Udova. Managed to get the ball back in uh, Luxembourg's half. And now playing some more pressure. Set up at the basket. Attempting him. A medal again. Medal again. So number 96 has been wrapped around the and basket the last few minutes. Looks like a goal. That so was a goal from Sweden. Ball managed to go Both up wide. to another one. player and I'm finished right. past the goalie there. So by Eric Sostadius again. Another goal. Great goal. Yeah, that sustained yeah, attack and Disrupting the back position mm -hmm. just causes some chaos and, yeah, the, the gaps open up. Would have well dropped the ball now. And they're counter-attacking. We keep on moving towards the Luxembourg basket. Opening it up. Swimming around. Pass down into the corner. But good for checking by Luxembourg. Yeah. They have very tight defense and good for checking. Um, Udovala is having quite a hard time scoring against them. Yeah. Once again. Eric around the basket. But the ball doesn't um, made didn't make it to him. Yeah, ball locked up in the corner. Ruvala still passing it around nicely on the closed side. And another attempt at, at Madla, but, uh, uh, Mala, but uh, ref call here. Pushing. Pushing. Um. Blue free throw. Time out, blue. Time out, blue. So Luxembourg is taking a, a time out. I guess to discuss what to do in the next five minutes. Yeah. Looks like the Swedish team have sped back up again, yes, like after half time. So. And applying a lot of pressure and taking that back position quite a lot. Luxembourg is playing really well and not really not letting up. That was a very good game. Not so letting far. them get it into that mm. into that uh, position. Yeah, no, it's very good so far. And they really ha had some opportunities. Like at the beginning of the game, there were a lot in the Swedish half. They move into scrums, surface scrums, a bit uh, quite often, which is what you yep. do sometimes when you don't have the condition or the the communication necessary to be able to have players Blue always Blue. enough players on the water to keep on bringing the ball forward. That's how you end up moving into uh, surface crumbs. 
but uh, very good so far. I think the game is about to restart. It has re has restarted now. You, warning. Oh, ref call. Zone. Okay. So we've got a warning for the free throw. The two meters zone two meter again. Zone. So they had to repeat the free throw in favor of Luxembourg. Udevala recovered the ball. It's a quick, quick counter attack, but unfortunately ran out of support there. Mm -hmm. And Luxembourg has four players on the water in the defense, um, which is pretty good. But Sweden is very good at was having one player wrapping himself Around behind the basket. Yeah, behind the back. The backs always have someone behind them. Oh, was that a goal? That was no. not a goal. That was close. Wow. Yeah, Looked like he managed to get the ball and had an attempt there, but unfortunately didn't didn't yeah. get it in. Yeah, the player who always wraps, like having someone always wrapped around the opponent's basket, doesn't guarantee that you will score. No. But it is so stressful for the backs. Yeah. Because they cannot get into position. And as soon as they don't lie completely glued to the basket, the Swedes take the opportunity and just wrap themselves around the goal. Luxembourg is there with their good defense. Someone lost to Finn. Luxembourg is having fast counter-attack, but unfortunately it was just one player. Support was missing there, and the pass uh, was a bit too risky. Got immediately recovered by Udevala. Falls down to the bottom of the pool. We're still on the close corner of the Udevala half. And now we have a surface scrum in the center of the pool. What is a fight for the ball? They've still managed... Yeah, I'm trying to swim through on the surface there. Along the wall. Looking for a pass below. Udevala gets the ball and swims uh, on the open side to the Luxembourg basket. And they're moving the ball in the Luxemburger half. So just under three minutes left now. I think it's going to be hard for Luxembourg to turn it around would be impossible, but uh, yeah. I think we'll have a hard time uh, scoring. Strong performance. Some good defense here. And it looks like goal. another goal. I have to stop saying that teams are doing a great job because I'm goal. systematically <laughs> <laughs> jinxing all the teams I've talked about today. <laughs> but I think they scored okay. on this... Ah. Switch of the goal yeah. goalies. It looked like he maybe. I'm not sure what he got out of position to try and grab the ball. Um, yeah, it could be. Yeah, not sure there. Not sure who scored either from Luxem from Udevala. But we're again in the close corner of the Udevala half. Luxembourg has the ball there. There is tiny bit under two minutes left to the game. Luxembourg needs to go all in. And try and score. Yeah, Luxembourg holding it here at the Udevala goal. But they're not um, they're lacking yeah. support. You have one player and the second one is very late and uh, Udevala just recovered, recovered the ball. ball. Have uh, three Luxembourg players on him, but the ball fell directly into the hands of a Udevala player. One of them stole the ball. Good recovery by Luxembourg. But again, support is missing. The post pass the ball down. And Luxembourg keeps on swimming towards the Udevala goal. They're in the close corner. Oh, 
quick pass into the closed Two side. Passes. Pass out again. With this uh, Jill Grün, number 33. Has a great move, like a one two goal and one two attack yeah. uh, the goalie. That was pretty To good. try and um, unsettle the defence a bit mm -hmm. before going in. But I'm not sure what that pass was going. Yeah, oh. directly to Eric from the other yeah. team. We have someone from Luxembourg on the Udevala basket, but he left. Um. Oh no! Uh, ref call, ref call uh, out, out of bounds. Wide free throw. And, and it's probably pretty much time over. Pretty much. If um, Udevala stalls a bit, then the time is over. Yes. And game. Good game. Very, very strong performance by Luxembourg. Yes. No, great defense. Um, and great actions as well. Like they had actions, the yeah. good um, offensive faces. They're a bit like the um, the Swiss women, the Helvetia team, who think they would pass the ball around. They have good counterattacks, but then they don't trust themselves enough maybe to go win and try and score. Yeah. But they're good at building up. They have a good system. Then they struggle a bit to have those offensive waves with two, three players going again and again to the goal. Yeah, they're sort of letting the Swedish team mm. rest, being so far away yeah. from the goal. Um, and they're able to come down and take the ball back. But, yeah, Swedish team also just, you know, <laughs> taking that possession of the around the basket, taking the position and... Um, Doing some really good, yeah, really good goals. I reckon that Luxembourg plays tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. against uh, Zurich. That is the last games for those two teams. And now we have coming up a women's game, the one before last tonight from the U.S. in blue, the New Jersey Hammerheads against Barcelona from Spain in white. I think Jared and I are switching out and coming back for the next game. Yes. And so I guess we'll Wolf and Lorena are coming back in. Hear you everyone. in a minute. Five minutes. It's five minutes. Five minutes. Hello everybody, this is Wolfpack again. Yes, I still have my voice. I don't know uh, how this is possible. I have to agree uh, with the people asking me here in the, How's it going? Uh, in the pool area. Hey Wolf, you can still talk? Yes, I can. Hello. And with me I have uh, this beautiful woman uh, <laughs> who is <laughs> an... Uh, Former world champion in underwater nice rugby, um, a goalkeeper, yeah, and the love of my life. <laughs> I have to repeat that from time to time. So, next uh, game coming up um, is uh, the New Jersey Hammerheads against Barcelona. That's that could be the third or the fourth game of Barcelona today. 
the third. I'm just looking exactly. I'm reading because we have the list with the pretty exhausting day for. Uh, so many did they have? Yes, uh, they started this, is the this morning, I guess. Let me see. No, it's to say the third. The third. third. All right. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay. So how's the audience doing? Do we have Barcelona fans? Uh, do we have uh, Hammerhead fan? Are you there? Let us know if you are watching. I hmm, somehow the live stream chat doesn't work right now. Let me see. Teams getting ready. Yeah, I think you have to reload your. Yep, yeah, you have Friday. You have to go Saturday. Oh. Wrong day. That's fascinating. Hammerheads. So, have you uh, already seen both teams playing? Um, yep. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. One minute. And they're playing here. Yeah, because, you know, the girls are like all together and they're just, you know, playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still yeah. Every time. Yeah. Every year they change the system when <laughs> I start getting confused. Um, so, we have here. Um, yeah, I mean tomorrow are going to be for the places. Well, uh, we have to see how they Both they are ready. Let's let's get into the game. Playing all against each other and team. All right, yeah. that's uh, one of the last games of the day, and uh, we start uh, Barcelona in white hammerheads in uh, dark and blue, and uh, in the middle of the pool, hammerheads start with a ball possession going up to the surface, passing down very nice uh, combination here to start up, and already they are at the basket trying to uh, swim around the basket and pass to the player waiting on the open side. Didn't succeed in the first run. Second player comes, plays. That, that was a little bit uh, unnecessary. Um, and uh, the pass, pass was intercepted by Barcelona. And uh, now Barcelona is in ball possession, trying to work their way in direction to the hammerhead basket. That is not... That easy because the hammerheads uh, do a very intense forechecking. They don't give them the room to uh, reach their basket. We are still in the middle fighting for the ball. And now the hammerheads recover the ball and we have oh, a oh. really fast run on the basket, empty basket. We they had th that th happening Yeah, earlier. Barcelona didn't expect this one come in so fast. We see this here, this change switch and uh, the whole Barcelona team is behind or a buffer and uh, the goalie Anyone? or the, um, it's the it's defender funny because was coming into we late. Have a, we had the same situation um, when the Hammerheads uh, play against Vienna. And the first goal was like this, or the 20, second, I remember now. But it was exactly the same four. like this. I mean, all Vienna was at the front, like, attacking, and they, they either they didn't see the player. She started from almost three meters away from their, from their basket. <laughs> Um, okay, we have a Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona is in the defense, and uh, the Hammerheads. Oh, there's a call from the referee. Uh, I don't see the sign. Oh, Holding see. without. Uh, Dark free throw, roughing. Roughing. Dark free throw. So tough game, and uh, it's a free throw for the Hammerheads, and Barcelona is in defense. White number twenty-one. White number twenty-one. What was the? Uh, didn't get. Yeah, well, um, I'm really Okay, the hammerheads audience. are uh, in the ball possession going for the basket of Barcelona, coming from the close side under the basket. But Barcelona is Hello. up for it now. Hello. They're for checking. And it's. Uh, Barcelona recovered the ball, but they're under heavy pressure going up to the surface in a cluster. And Hammerhead is one ball possession uh, from Barcelona. They are fighting for the ball on the surface, not so far away from the Barcelona basket. Ah, and the Barcelona player almost got the ball, dropped it on the ground. And again, Barcelona in ball possession under heavy forechecking attack from the Hammerheads, inching their way in direction to the US basket. Up to the surface on the close side. And uh, interfered and recovered by uh, Hammerhead. It's a back and forth and back to the Barcelona team. Let's see if they can get closer. At least uh, 
to start um, building up uh, pressure, the, the but attack, the pressure yes. has to find the structure. It's it's a little bit back and forth here for both. <coughs> well, let's see. Barcelona is coming from the close side, but it has done a pass uh, to the player that was in the middle, and it was uh, snitched away by uh, the hammerhead player. You know, when you have to attack, sometimes you have to be avoid unnecessary passes and try to really attack the goalie and then do the pass in between so that between two players you eventually uh, score the goal. Yeah, um, it's, it's again, Hammerheads uh, made it. It was easier for the Hammerheads and now they stole the basket from Barcelona or uh, lying on the basket next to it and the attack comes from the open side, the close side, from above to the open side but uh, the forward checking of Barcelona is up for it there, interfere. The goalie is on the, on the goal, but torn away. She, she hold on to the ball from the hammerhead player, and they are on the surface, and call from the referee pushing. Light free throw. And it's Holding. a free throw against hammerheads, I guess. Light free throw, pushing away the goalie. Holding. Yep, pushing away Light the goalie. Free throw. free throw for Barcelona. Blue team, two meters. We have uh, 150 viewers. From all over the world, I guess so. Where are you watching from? Barcelona is in attack. Three players are going in on the bottom, trying to put pressure on the basket, but they are tackled away by the hammerheads. And, oh, that was a dangerous pass behind her back. Luckily, there was a hammerhead player waiting there. If Barcelona would have been uh, down there on the bottom, that would have been a dangerous uh, kill pass to the opponent. Hammerheads are in the middle of the pool, trying to pass through, stopped by Barcelona, and then the Barcelona players... Uh, oh, that is pushing without that ball. Yes, a lot of pushing both. here yeah, on the Barcelona basket. Yep. I think they go. Uh, the referees go for advantage here. Yep. If uh, Barcelona can obvious. recover the ball, <laughs> the ball control here um, is in favor of the Hammerheads. Barcelona has a little bit problems taking control of the ball. All the players are almost. I can. I, I would say. Here we go. Barcelona is going in on the bottom with two players to the basket. The third player coming from above, too high to be part of the game. Uh, yes, Barcelona is now on the closed side, going to the corner, trying to pass back and forth to uh, build up uh, their numbers around the basket. But they have to get in with one point. Now they go in, they're building, uh, there's one on the bottom, on the closed side, and uh, already Hammerhead players block the ball, go in and uh, try to rip the ball out of the hands of the Barcelona players. So it's a back and forth with a slight advantage uh, on the hammerhead side, I'd say. Um, they have uh, the a little bit of better ball control yep. and uh, swim faster and in a, in a more coordinated way. But let's see, Barcelona is really getting into the game. Well, but Barcelona is doing a good for check-in, but what I'm missing here is the, the, the way of getting organized at the, at, the, at the front and really do an effective attacking. Like now yeah, we have yeah. one of the players, she's trying almost to positioned, trying to steal the basket. But um, it's not, I mean, it's a little bit chaotic or not the, with the consequence that the hammerhead does it when they go uh, to Barcelona basket. So we have now um, again uh, the white players from Barcelona, from Spain, trying to get closer, but uh, the hammerheads are doing a great job defending. And uh, they uh, lost the ball, and now it's the hammerhead with uh, two players starting a counter attack. And again, the mm. goalie is a little bit late, but she just managed to at least try to grab the ball, or it's a risky situation. And now the basket is empty, and the next hammerhead uh, had the ball and tried to turn around, but Barcelona really just saved the situation. But you don't need that this kind of, um, how you say, uh, hectiness, you know, like because. Uh, if you cannot bring uh, your game defending to be a little bit more uh, calm, then eventually you're going to do the mistake much, much quicker. No? And hammerheads are being very successful. White team warned for holding the basket. Okay, holding the Blue basket. Blue free apparently. throw. 
Free throw for uh, Dejame has it because throw. apparently Barcelona for the basket. Uh, is uh, holding the basket uh, while defending. Probably that could be a defender. If it would have been uh, uh, a goal, it would have been so a penalty. So I get think I would say it's a defender. Yeah. Okay. Warning on the white team. So defense uh, of Barcelona reacted pretty well uh, with this attack of the Hammerheads and they break out and are in the middle of the pool but the one player is uh, attacked by two Hammerhead players and now it's back and forth again with a, a tackling situation, a cluster going up to the surface in the middle of the pool. And Hammerheads are in ball possession again trying to get through stopped by the four checking and now two hammerhead players again it's the same picture we see a lot but now there's a little bit more of a defense here in front of the barcelona basket right in front of it and the hammerhead player tries to go on from above in the middle of the pool to the game uh, to the goalkeeper but barcelona managed to hold on to the ball lost the ball in the surface now in the corner close side on the top, ball is dropping down in the hands of a hammerhead player and she's trying to come from above to attack uh, the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper it looks like has uh, herself wrapped around the ball Yeah, they do it a lot but then they are pulled up yeah, and they are then pulled up and that's the difficulty because then you yes. have, uh, you cannot go down or you go down and you yes, are very and if exhausted you're one of the goalkeepers that will interrupt uh, the, the up and down of the goalkeepers call from the referee and Half it's a time. free throw against no, it's half time First break. First the free throw, sorry. First the free throw for Shoking and half time. Okay. How, how does this work? They do the free. Yeah, white free throw, Shoking. Throw and then stop the game? Okay. Well, it's half time now, so they stop. And we have the families here uh, cheering up for their uh, different teams. I see more people commenting for the Hammerhead. I don't know that we have Barcelona fans as well. Karina, Karina is there also. How much? <laughs> Suffering. How if you're much? not here, you're sick. I hope you recover. Um. Yeah, there was a uh, nice run for the Hammerhead player swimming through the through the whole pool. And I think we're against almost stuck in this uh, logo in 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 the Ferno. Makes me really dizzy, but I try to watch it. I concentrate. I think we can it. use it for another referee also. I think we can use it for oh, another referee. Yeah, we. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we're in the Again, half time break. So one what's, zero. what's your uh, um, well, sum I mean up of this first half? For me, uh, the Hammerheads are dominating. Um, they have a more uh, structured game. They are more consistent in recovering the ball and swimming with two or three to do a counter attack. And they're also more consistent when they attack on the basket. And Barcelona is doing a great job um, for checking, defending. They've been effective, but with a lot of bit of chaos in between and a lot of like for us just like so breathing and watching what's going to happen and they are failing almost completely and to achieve um, a structure attack One minute. One so, minute. That, so that um, they're going to score I mean they need to okay what was that so uh, that's my I mean if, if Barcelona want to score they need to be able to really attack and do contra-attacks with two or three uh, players. Otherwise, if they continue like this, I'm thinking even one or even two goals for the Hammerheads because the the problem of not being able to, to attack at, at when you are in front and, and not being very good um, in position when you defend is like the mistake is will start happening more and more. So let's see, I mean, sometimes the halftime really changes uh, a ready. lot, the head of the players, <laughs> and they are even more aggressive or not. I mean, we've, we've been seeing this uh, throughout the, um, the competition. Both teams um, ready? Yeah, I'm I think Barcelona too. has the potential. Yes, absolutely. The thing is... They are all good they players and they are in with the heart. Um, so let's uh, go in the water. Thank you for the picture. We would like to have an underwater picture. Technical team, could we have an underwater picture, please? 
I'm reading the commentaries on my, on my mobile. Okay, I have to go to the yeah, guys. Yeah, go on. You want me? Sorry. No, okay. So, okay, we're back. But we are back over water, now underwater. Okay. All right. So, uh, we have uh, Barcelona going towards the Hammerheads basket. Let's see if now they can get a little bit so more. So, well organized. done. Yes, uh, played left and right, but they needed a block on this side. Uh, the, the attacker is under too much stress already. And that pass was uh, a little bit too far. Call from the referee. It's pointing out a player. Let's see. see. Switch in the sound. Okay, one of the Barcelona players stole the basket. No number 11, two minutes for roughing. Ha, two minutes for roughing. Number for 11, but I don't know if it's the, the, the blue or the white. Two minutes for roughing. Time out, blue. Time out, blue. Time out, blue. But good, I mean. This is the Time chance. Out, blue. So if Barcelona managed to do, manage to do the same attack they did right now, but not alone with one player, uh, but uh, number with two, three, in blue. they would have two a good chance roughing, to score here it's a blue uh, against the Hammerheads in this, uh, this power play they have with one more with one player more in the field. But I'm pretty sure the Hammerheads have a plan. Plan B. Well, now they how have to deal uh, with the situation yeah. when they Let have one see. player less. So w they will go into defense mode Let and try yeah. to prevent the attack. Let me see the. Um, All right, I'll let you see. <laughs> the player, the number eleven, and we have the families. Uh, what's the position that number eleven the time plays? The time is Probably over. defending or. or wait for my start. From the Hammerheads. So the timeout is almost over. So Have I told you to come out? Go back. So, Gomez. I don't know. Oh, this is only the family name. Gomez is. Uh, and I don't what know what, what kind is of. happening now? <coughs> they ordered them to go back to their site. Yeah. Huh. Okay, Gracias. Dave. All right, let's do a white free throw. <laughs> so free so throw. So Manuel is establishing here uh, his authority yeah. as a referee. Uh, that's a good thing from time to time to remind the teams who has the final word. Um, ah, a goalie. Okay, now they're missing a goalie. Oh, that's that's tough for the Hammerheads. Well, but if they have four, then the, the other three will have okay. to make it work. Okay, here we come. Barcelona is going in for the for the goal. Already one uh, player lying on the open side, but she's immediately tackled as soon as she got the ball. And uh, they would have to, to put a block there so the, the attacker from the open side can work on it. Oh, okay. We have one uh, oh of the Barcelona teams yes, in open. a good position. She, was open. Yeah. she should have turned around to the wall, so she would be, have been protected by the wall. Like this, the ball was snatched away from her. And is up to the surface in a block ball. is dropping down, recovered on the close side by the Barcelona Barcelona player. needs to put everything right now because um, otherwise, uh, you know, it's a big chance. They yeah. have now, they have free throw, they can attack and they are in the side of the hammerhead. So they have to continue. They need to be a little bit more structured. They're going one and one and one. They need to have two yeah. or yeah, three yeah, to help themselves. Especially th like this, that... <laughs> You just uh, spend your energy, but you will not get anywhere. You have to go in position. You have to be the player in their position and then attack. And don't pass the ball to one waiting on there. Just go in yourself yep. if there's someone positioned. You would have, Barcelona would have uh, some chances here right now to score. But like this, the Hammerheads are uh, They are experienced players and yes, yep. I mean, they, they know what they're doing. So now they're... Um, get one <laughs> player with the ball hostage almost and uh, let's see if they the Barcelona players can get the uh, the ball and they are trying to position that's good okay they are yeah, coming yeah. to attack that's we have one and uh, she didn't see this there was a block she had all the space on yes, the left hand side and she didn't see well it perfectly well done by the one lying on the open side that's that's a pity because there was a good situation and it was not that far away for the Barcelona player. No. Now we have again this she player who didn't really see it or didn't go for the other player. She's up on a, on a cluster 
on the surface. Now the basket is stolen away by Barcelona. If they manage to bring down the white ball, that throw. would be a, oh, it's a white free, free throw. Free throw for white. So if someone from Barcelona realized that they need to replace the one that stole, great. 